welcome to the Brawlhalla World Championship. The Brawlhalla World Championship. The event that has brought players from all over the world to compete in Atlanta, Georgia. There's so many good players down there. Can anything KO oh finally? God. No, but he doesn't oh. get the attack. Make sure you're on top of it. Make sure you're helping your oh. people. Sometimes an act though, trying to go nice. off stage. They do. Oh. He's playing out of his mind, but is it going to be enough? The sideline to chase Dodge away. He doesn't want to get caught by experience, but it's not enough. Throughout all of the obstacles, the challenges, the heart of a champion is determined by one person. So what makes a champion? The courage to risk failure? The oh. arrows, we get a slide charge! The determination of never giving up? Nice. Right. But nothing at Dolly left the dancing grip in the side. The aspirations of conquering one's fears. Oh, the ability to power through and conquer. Mickey has no one else to be able to save him because he's gonna fall and made an experience popping up as they should. Nothing is worth it just as much as the BCX World Championship. It's officially day two of BCX 2023 live from Atlanta, Georgia at the Cobb Galleria. We saw the laughter, we saw the excitement, but ultimately we saw the determination as they fought through the bracket and put themselves one step closer to being crowned a champion. From expo floor to competition and more. We've got an action-packed day two in store for everybody as we're really only halfway through the competition. Our singles competition is just getting started with this beautiful trophy and $250,000 on the line. It all comes down to this. What's up, everyone? Welcome inside the venue as we kick off day two of BCX 2023. I'm Winnie, better known as White Sheepy, and alongside me to kick things off are some of the most snazziest men I know, Duke TK. Guys, it's day two. We're heading into our competition soon, but I want to know how you guys are feeling. I mean, the energy's electric. We got to love it. You know, it's the world championship. The competition's on point. Anything can happen. That's South right. America can't win a 2v2 medal here, but a lot of things can happen. They could win a 1v1 medal at least. Man, the 1v1 action is going to be absolutely insane. We got a, a super huge crowd too, like pulling up. We got some crazy cool stuff to talk about. We have some crazy cool stuff to do that we're going to be seeing throughout the day. Obviously, I'm super hyped for some ones because that's when you get to really see someone get like absolutely dismantled. You know, there's no teams here. I love teams, but like, there's no teams here for you to like back to be backed up. It's about you versus them, and if you're gonna do better than them or worse than them, we're gonna find out real soon. I love it. Well, before we get into the intense competition, we do have a little bit of a reveal to show off first, and I know I think that's what everyone's waiting for behind me here, right? Okay, so those of those of you guys at home, gear up, guys. We got a great reveal to show you guys. Check it out. Hugging, hugging it out with 
SpongeBob and Patrick. Oh my gosh. Y'all, y'all have no idea. We have been working on this for a while. We've been putting our blood, heart, soul, tears, everything into it. But yes, SpongeBob SquarePants, Patrick Star, and Sandy Cheeks will be coming into Brawlhalla as epic crossovers. And that will be available on November 29th. You see it here first. Oh my God! All the, all the shouting oh, and cheering behind like me football. was incredible. That was something different. <laughs> Duke, how do you feel about this one? Because you know about I, this I'm too. I'm so excited. This is like my childhood. I know so many people's childhoods, and also like nowadays, there's so many memes for this that I've been saving them up. I'm like, I can't show anyone these because I've just, I'm so excited. I love the IP. I love SpongeBob Patrick. I love all the little references that are coming out in it. I know I heard TK laughing as you guys see some <laughs> of the stuff happening in the six. Y'all didn't even get to see all of the stuff that's happening in the six. Oh, I'm man. so excited for this IP. Uh, I just, I'm ready to bring it around town. That's all I want to do. TK, it doesn't matter what happens. I, like, if I am if I hit anybody with any type of, and I'm streaming, I'm bringing it around town. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to happen. Also, I mean, I'm also super excited to, uh, to see Sandy, Sandy on a character. I do play Cassidy, so I was like, "All right, I'm I'm big in there as well." Now, this was not exactly what this. I did not expect this at all. So, <laughs> photo was <laughs> photo was correct. This is a super huge reveal, and uh, I'm I'm excited to see it. Yeah, we are. Everybody in the studio has been so thrilled to finally be able to talk about this and reveal it because legitimately we have been working on this for a while, and it. Seriously, everyone in the studio has worked so hard on this to make these wonderful characters and bring them to life in Brawlhalla as they should be. So there it is, SpongeBob SquarePants crossover event coming November 29th. And that does include SpongeBob himself, Patrick Starr, and Sandy Cheeks. So incredible. So now, guys, let's kind of loop it back in <laughs> to, to the tournament here because we do got a singles competition. now. Day one is in the books. However, I gotta put my Krabby Patty hat on correctly. Oh, yeah. You know what? This, this yeah. is very important, guys. Okay. <laughs> so, day one's in the books. However, let's take a quick look back at some of the awesome moments we saw yesterday. And here we are, day one recap here. The whole, honestly, yesterday with the doubles tournament, I feel like everyone was on their on their focused A game as best as they could be. Yeah, a lot of people definitely came out to play in the double space and uh, definitely you saw a lot of people putting in a lot of practice prior and you can see that come into fruition here. Unfortunately, only so many teams can continue on as we get closer and closer to Championship Sunday. But you can see so many people were ready, so many people were willing to compete and you just, you just saw the energy again coming out from everybody. Yeah, that was Jeff and Fred Fredberger right there. Yeah. We got like, and it was like a good mix of like who was here. We had a lot of our old school talent, you know, coming through. I had Crocky playing, obviously, Boomy and Samstorm, you know, they've been around uh, making things happen. Then we got like a lot of new school talent as, uh, as well, a lot of uh, people who are like making waves for the first time here at BCX. And as I always say, man, it doesn't matter if you're the one uh, clipping or getting clipped. If you're getting to play some people that you've been wanting to play for a long time, I know that's one of the, the beautiful things about BCX is how often or how much the community comes together and how much uh, time you can actually get to play with people you've probably known for years or known of for years. You might actually get your shot, you know, it's a good time. Yeah, and oh, here it is, May and Experience. Oh my God, did they turn up? And they're actually sitting in top four right now. Earlier today, Sidestream was continuing on to finish up the doubles tournament uh, stuff yesterday. Mm. And Godly Zen and Maid Experience are on the winner side of doubles for yesterday. So incredible. So not only do we have a competition happening here, we're also super excited to see the expo floor to see our Brahalla family once again. And we know everyone here is just loving it just as much as our team. It's honestly, BCX wouldn't be BCX without an, an incredible crowd, incredible expo experience uh, for our community and everything like that. And of course, my folks at home, where can you tune into the tournament? Well, for those, you probably are watching right now, but yes, We've got a lot of great content and matches happening today. You want to make sure to check out, of course, the mainstream, a stream, twitch.tv slash Brahala, but also the side stream. There are so many things happening. I was literally tuning in this morning to watch stuff. So twitch.tv slash pro Brahala. Now, everyone loves free stuff since we're talking about Twitch right now, okay? Oh. 
So rewards are officially enabled once again on Twitch for our viewers. All you have to do is just watch the stream, just watch the competition to get access to the exclusive Brawlhalla rewards on Twitch for BCX. And you can see it right there. We got all the different RGB, RGB items and the champion uh, belt emo, all brand new, all exclusive to those watching online on Twitch. So another thing that we're actually doing this year uh, Blue Mammoth Games has teamed up with Make-A-Wish Georgia as the Ooh. official charity. And yes, amplifying our commitment to creating positive impacts and, of course, unforgettable moments for children facing critical illnesses. So what you can do is you can... Uh, there's going to be a QR code actually here at the venue. You can actually QR code scan that thing. Oh, it's also Get on the there. screen as well. Or visit bcx.live for more information and to donate to an, an, actually an incredible cause. Um, and for those who donate that, you can unlock the custom Wish a Make title award. And I don't know how, I just want to know your quick thoughts on, on this charity I, event I that think we're doing. It's great that we got to partner with such a uh, powerful and impactful charity. And of course, our, our community always comes out in, yes. in full force whenever we get to make a good impact. And I, I absolutely appreciate it. And uh, the, the, the title is just kind of a nice little way to give back to those who are, are helping to help others. And I'm, as, as you said, this community is definitely one of the, like, I've, I've been in quite a bit of them. And this is definitely one of the more positive ones as far as like just the people that I've, I've met. And, like the positivity around the, uh, the venue, it really seems like people really enjoy like one being here, being around, but it also just seems like people are just generally nice, man. So like, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate the, the teamwork or the team or the collaboration that we got going on here. And hey man, you know, get your stuff, get your stuff. That's help right. Out. You do get a title reward for that. And yes, our community is so generous. Now, let's talk about what's happening today. As mentioned before, we've got an action-packed day of singles matches ready. And of course, gearing up for y'all. So let's take a look here. We've got folks already literally going into the gaming pit to do their pools. And we're going to be doing that all day as we narrowed it down to, correct me if I'm wrong, top eight? Top 32, top, top 16, 13? I think. I know there's going to be some 32, happening yeah. on Pro Brawlhalla. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about it. as well. I mean, it's just hilarious to me because we literally paused the competition pit so that we could be like, hey, come check out the cool reveal. And then they all ran back. We're like, okay, I got to play my set. <laughs> yeah, that was actually pretty cool. Everyone's like, wait, I got to go play my set now. Thank you for the reveal. I got to go. But yes, we're going to be dwindling this pool phase all the way down till our championship Sunday. So speaking of all the singles competition, guys, I know we talked a little bit about your predictions about doubles yesterday. So what are your thoughts going into singles? Will we see some upsets? Well, what are you thinking here? TK, I'm actually going to start with you. I'm thinking uh, we're definitely going to see some upsets. That's like, it's not BCX without somebody getting upset. I mean, like, the, <laughs> the, the champion of last year <laughs> was basically just one entire upset. And, like, we got to give it up to him. Like, once again, showing up here as well uh, to see if they can defend the crown, grab, the, uh, grab another trophy, or, you know, Maybe there's going to be another upset on the horizon. But uh, I'm going to have to say this year, I'm going to have to agree with the upsets on the horizon because I feel like South America's taking it 100%. Somebody from South America is grabbing that first place. That's what I feel. Dude, your thoughts on this? Uh, I mean, I've been saying time and time again that there's, there's going to be upsets. Nobody can really predict this. Honestly, my predictions are purely based on the performances in twos uh, just yesterday, and so they're a little bit biased. I hate it. Look, <laughs> if you're at home and you're like, oh my god, he did. Yeah, I hate it, but I, you can't deny Godly sitting the top side of doubles. Like, I, I had to put him. He's just looking so stinking good, but like TK said, you, can, you just can't predict. I, I went into doubles thinking, you know, Luna Snow I ended up thinking Kaina Loras. They ended up both getting knocked out. So it's like uh, anything can happen. Really, <laughs> genuinely, anything can happen. That is so true. And that's what makes this so interesting and so fierce. Everyone is literally so passionate and competing today and doing their best. And so we'll see who comes out on top. So talking about some of your predictions, you talked about some of the players here, or the, the viewers saw all the predictions you guys saw uh, put posted. Let's talk about some of the players that we could be seeing today. And Duke, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> I know you didn't put them in your predictions, 
but he is your favorite player. Tell me about Luna. I love the kid so much. I've said it, like the passion that he brings. He, he okay, I think he is a better 1v1-er than a 2v2-er, but again, as of late, he's been struggling, struggling a little bit, and then in particular, from what I heard of the results in 2v2s, it seems he's a little downtrodden right now, and so it was really hard for me to not want to put him in, or to, to not put him into my top three, but I have the utmost faith in him. I hope that he wins it. If he wins it, I'm going to be the first one crying, screaming, and cheering for him. <laughs> but the numbers don't really look good for him, especially, again, the performance at Autumn Royale and his performance in doubles just yesterday. Well, I mean, things have really changed here. I mean, Luna, I know last time we talked to him a while back at one of the Royales, he said that the pressure is what makes him go. And there's definitely going to be a lot of pressure. Now, speaking of someone who can put on the pressure, uh, we cannot talk about Sandstorm. And TK, I want to hear your thoughts about that. Sandstorm, that front, that's always going to be my guy, bro. I don't. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much time has passed. If Sandstorm, Sandstorm will be in every single one of my top three predictions at some point in time. He's got the goat factor, as we like to say. I mean, the man has been making bank, been getting a bunch of Ws. If you ever, every time we pull up his stats, it's like seven million golds. It's like eighty thousand or like one hundred and fifty million dollars. Like he's doing it. Like that's Mr. Sandstorm. So you know, even if he's if he's in your bracket path, it doesn't matter how long it's been. You're definitely gonna have a hard fought battle. And I expect to see him like actually perform uh, well here. But you know, it's it really just it's really the X factor of him. Can he perform the way that we know Sandstorm to perform? Or are these people really? catching up to him. Look at these combos. Look at him. Ooh. Like, he's taking people all over. He's taking you, he's taking you on a trip, man. You know, I'm going to take you for a ride for sure. But I'm excited to see how he plays today. Uh, I'm also ex excited to see some more Tesca. I know he's been on the Tesca uh, train lately, and I very much, very, very much like that character. But I want to see what he brings uh, for most of his matches. Here's some more Tesca stuff. Uh, and to see if he's going to perform like the Sandstorm I know. Yeah, and I, we'll see, because the Sandstorm said he's getting his stuff together. He's got it going. Now, we're going to jump to a very talkative, like most talked about region, I feel like right now, is South America. Duke, I want to know your thoughts about Kaina. Kaina is kind of the figurehead of South America right now. You have the big three from South America, who everybody has seen them all take a W in offline events. But right now, Kaina is a little bit ahead of everybody else. In terms of just general popularity, people believe in Kaina. He's got this pressure. He's got this ability to kind of beat out everyone. I think it was Ajax or uh, Taza who was mentioning that, like, it's kind of a musical chairs at the top of South America where anyone can beat anyone. But right now, there's just a little bit more favoritism towards Kaina with his character pool, with all the stuff that he's bringing to the table. His neutral has been impeccable. He's so good, especially with this Taros. He kind of put Axe and Hammer back into the 1v1 scene because there was a while where everyone's like, oh, it's too slow, oh, it's too punishable. And Kaina's like, no, just watch me use my movement and force you to come to me and I will win. And that's what he's been doing. I will point out though, didn't do that hot at the Autumn Royale. So again, you're seeing these people kind of musical chairs. They're not 100% guaranteed to win. Well, since we're talking about South America, Duke, I'm gonna keep picking on you. I wanna know about yous. Yous is the curse breaker in my opinion. He's the first <laughs> one to really show other regions are gonna be doing stuff. He's the one who made 2023 so exciting to me because he, he was the first one to win at a Royale that wasn't a North American. He was the first one to win in a dream hack that wasn't a North American in 1v1s. He's the one who really started to make people think, okay, this isn't all about North America. The big question mark for me with Yuse is what is he playing? Is it gonna be the Vector? We saw him play Arcadia in 2v2s. Is it the Jay Yun? He's said in the past, he does not like Greatsword in the 1v1 space and offline events, but I also haven't seen him play Vector in like six months. I have no idea what this guy's gonna be bringing to the table, but you know he is a serious threat because once again, all the South Americas came to play. That's right, and uh, of course, just like you said, the South American region is kind of playing this musical chairs. Who's gonna be on top? And let's talk about the person who literally won Autumn Royale, Duke. Tell me about Lores. The baby of the South Americans. He has long been considered the up and comer, but he's shown he's here. He has arrived and he is looking so stinking good. Winning in doubles, winning in singles. He is such a powerhouse player. It's tragic that we don't get to see him in the two space continue, but that means he gets to put all his focus into 1v1s where you know he's gonna be a monster. One of the only other kind of 
pure locked in Kainas out there. We've got Impala, and Lores is like, you know what? I'm gonna take from that, and I'm gonna play that throughout the entirety of the year. Lores looking so good, and of course, coming hot off the win off of the most recent offline event. There is a lot of energy being poured towards Lores. Oh my goodness, these three South American players that we just talked about, just highlighted, kind of used, and now Loris that you're seeing, uh, who knows who's going to take it on top. And TK, I just want to know if you had any thoughts about this South American region. I I remember, I think this might have been a little further back, but I remember like the mid-season when uh, Loris, you know, when he like first originally yeah. popped off, they were like, oh, you know, South America's going to last, and he went into that crew battle and absolutely slapped, and ever since then he's been on my radar. So, I mean, like, that's the thing about South America, though. I think you can never, ever count them out. They seem to be they seem to be making themselves one of the strongest regions of all time right now, um, but I want to see if that, continue, that trend continues here at VCX and if they can prove that they really deserve that title. We'll see here, and I know a lot of people are rooting for them. Now, I'm going to jump to the European region now and TK I know you wanted to talk about this guy godly my man look that's the, one, one of the most <laughs> animated players bro like <laughs> this guy like if he's gonna talk that stuff he's normally going to back it up as well and for good reason I mean godly has been quite a bit of top threes uh he's just been kind of performing like kind of insane for like the last I'd say like the last two-ish years and I I know he wants to continue that trend I mean he's pretty far I think what did he get last year was it second yeah. So okay, yeah, no, was, he was right there, man. You know, right at uh, the, the finish line. Unfortunately, was not able to do it, and I'm sure he wants that get back here at BCX 2023. So, Godly, even though he's not in my predictions, I'm not saying that he has no chance of not making it. I just, and if he does make it, I'm not going to be surprised. Not at all. Well, we'll see. Uh, Dig, you have any quick thoughts about Godly? Yeah, I think uh, if you don't know about Godly at this point, all you got to know is if you like the European region, that's your guy. He's the big representative, and he's the one that if you're rooting for uh, the EU or the UK, you're rooting for Godly. He's the first person to get an EU W in 1v1s, and of course, he broke the EU Autumn's Curse by right, winning right. Autumn Championship. He's got a lot going for him. Yeah, a lot of people are going to be looking out for Godly. Now, we have to go to the North American region, and we can't forget our current world champion, Impala TK. What do you think about Impala? Impala, you know, came, coming through last year, he said himself, like, he wasn't even taking it that seriously. He casually made himself a VCX champion, which is absolutely insane. He wasn't even actually going to show up to this one, but he was like, you know what? It's actually convenient to have a payday, place in the money. I'm sure he is a, a very much going to make it somewhere in the money. But we got to know if he still has that fire, man. That's really what we're, like, you know, worried about. I know that he is saying he's kind of taken casually, but you are the BCX 2022 champion. So regardless of if you feel like you're taking it casually, the competition is not. They want to take out the champion. So you still got to, you know, you still have a title to defend. And I want to see if he's going to be out here making that happen, playing on that uh, that uh, Kaya, very, very popular character right now. But, you know, I feel like when it comes to him, his Kaya is on a different level. Very true, very true. And honestly, I, he, he's he been busy with life and school right. and things. And for him to come back out here and that's yesterday. All John's. No, he's got no, to no, win. No, he's and got, yesterday. No, that's, all John's. Wait, no, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's John's because what I'm about to say is that yesterday for the doubles, when he got interviewed by Glitter, he just said, Yeah, we good. He is still as cool <laughs> as a cucumber. And you, we don't know. Maybe he will take another W, another championship. We have no idea. And just like you said, TK, everybody, the competition is legitimately fierce. We do not know what region will come on top. So Can I add one more thing? Yes, you may. You may. Bad. But we have not had a situation where the world champion did not win after their first world championship win. LDZ won, and then he went back to back. Sandstorm won, and then he went back to back. Impala's the third person ever to hold up the 1v1 world championship title. And if he goes back to back, then we're keeping that trend going. Okay, well, dang, we'll have to see. We have just under a minute to go, and we have our first match coming up as well. I do want some quick final thoughts from you guys as we close our pre-show. So, Duke, I'm going to start with you. NA, please bring, please, <laughs> Nor North America, you're, uh, you can hear me in this room. North America, you got to do it. We, can we can't let Godly win, especially everybody. Just will team up, unplug his keyboard. I <laughs> what? can't let you. We can't. We can't, okay? I can I can co-sign with that. We can't let Godly win. But I, look, I said I like him, but I know what comes with the Godly win. Okay, <laughs> I know what comes with Godly win. So NA, I mean, look, I, you know, I said I'm Mr. South, South America. I'm even happy with him winning because I like those guys. But NA, SA, let's join forces. Let's shake hands. <laughs> and take out Godly. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, you heard it here. We'll get some more thoughts as we go through today. We're going to take a quick break.
breather. When we come back, we're going to kick things off with Friderzel versus Pugsy on our way to the championship Sunday. Stick with us. We'll be right back.
Welcome back from break, everyone. We've got Frydersol versus Pugsy going head to head in just a few minutes. And of course, I got now Ajax on the desk with me and TK. So first, I want to ask how you guys are doing. And then I do want your quick predictions on what's going to happen in this match. Ajax, I'm going to start with you first. Are you ready, kids? <laughs> because holy crap, it finally happened. SpongeBob looks incredible. I will be using this quite a bit in that crossover. <laughs> I had to get out of the way. Me boy. We have me boy. <laughs> <laughs> Sponge boy, me bob. We have an incredible match coming up here. I uh, so Friday Soul obviously gone a little bit more the content creator route. Pugsy still competing, but hasn't had the same peaks that we're used to seeing out of Pugsy. With that though, it is BCX, and because he's had greater peaks overall, I'm kind of leaning towards him on the paper basis, but I'm for the content creator, so I'm gonna go with Fried for the first one. I think I'm gonna have to go with Pugsy, only because that's that's the gamer's gamer, bro. Like, I've seen that <laughs> man, uh, like, perform in almost every platform fighter I've ever seen him play. And just honestly, every game that he's decided to be competitive as, I've seen him actually perform pretty well. I understand that, like, you know, he, this is his, like, base game, his main game, and as you said, you know, he hasn't been performing the way that he has uh, in, in the past, but again, BCX, Different vibe, different aura. He might be performing this time around. Uh, Friday Soul, though, apparently, I mean, there's a lot of people in the chat right now that really, really want him to W. So, like, yeah. we'll have to see how that goes. But I'm gonna say right now, Pugsy. Well, it looks like before we get the match started, we actually have Glitter ready to chat with some of the players about to head up in this match. Glitter, tell us about them. Yeah, we're gonna be hanging out with the players before all their matches all day today. First match on the main stage of day two. How are you guys feeling heading into the singles competition? Well, I'm very excited and I know I need to play well because uh, after this crazy announcement that we just had, we need to show some uh, very good gameplay with Boxy. Yeah, it's um, been a while since I've been on main stage, so I'm really excited, but we'll see how it goes. All right, well, we heard uh, the desk talking a little bit about the fact that you do content creation now versus pro. Do you think that that plays in to the match at all? Yeah, well, uh, I'm a content creator mainly, but I'm on the side, I'm still like a somewhat good player, so I'm trying my best and I'll, I'll see how it goes. Yeah, I have a content creator practice regimen, so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be looking good here. All right, all right, well, a little bit of smack talk time before I send you away. Do you, th do you think you're taking it home or? I honestly have no clue, probably. I think he's got it. All right, I love the sportsmanship. Go back to your stations, get yourselves ready for the next match, and back on over to the desk. <laughs> Thank you, Glitter. I love our players. Yeah, I think I'm going to win. Very humble, right? And then, yeah, I think he's going to get yeah. hey, <laughs> guy, He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna yeah. mop me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> After just talk about he's got a whole training regimen against content creators. Like, line him up. We put him in King of the Hill. I free them up back to back to back. I make the video. Well, I, I, I do think that Fried kind of hides the skill a little bit behind the joke because it's something we've seen out of his fate for so long. Like, being able to utilize Orb, even with the changes that have consistently happened to Orb over time, different forms, always makes Enchanter just look extremely good up there. Pugsy, though, known for the Jawa, specifically Finn most of the time. Uh, it, it, that's one of the things that not many people are prepped for sometimes because he's really good at lining up that sword neutral sig that's going to make you explode off the top. So if Pride isn't careful, you can get knocked out very quickly. Yeah, and Jala too. I mean, like Jala, one, her sword stakes are just insane. That uh, that down stake is just great pressure. It's almost impossible. Oh no, I, I, I got fired. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, it's almost impossible to punish. But I mean, she's got great force. Uh, she is a character that I'm a little afraid to use in uh, in doubles because of the fact that like you know you can get juggled to oblivion. But in singles, if you got good evasion, she's fast and she hits very hard. You know that's the character for you. So excited to see how he pilots this Jala to a well, I guess a defeat in his eyes but <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how that goes victory in mind hopefully he gets it but you know as he said Friday soul you got it bro well it looks like the match is pretty much getting ready to start here so you know what boys Ajax CK I'll let you guys kick off the first match of day two take it away you talk about that history with Jala you take a look at some of those medals over there and talking about twos that's the most impressive part about Pugsy with it is that it was always used in twos, backed up with a little stretch as well there with uh, Luna for a bit mm -hmm. before it kind of started to switch over to Snowy. It, it's hard to operate with that, but that means you got good movement. That means that your disadvantage is good, so you're not getting hit often, and that's what you need. Because at any given point in time, side take might just come running through, 
if you're not paying attention in front of Fate, and you get launched off the side because of that defense. So yeah. Bugsy's going to be heavily looking for that. Yeah, and Fate is definitely another character with some very, very high uh, force, too. So something he's going to have to worry about. May try to go into the, uh, the defense stance, get that four de uh, defense. But, you know, me, a madman, I actually go with the two defense stance. <laughs> what is this? I, I, I was like, I don't know what that. Like, getting hit isn't crazy. That's crazy. That's not happening to me. I'm moving. You did mention <laughs> earlier how you, like, go on. It's like, what if I do 10 force zone? Yeah, 10 like, force zone. <laughs> You gotta really send a message with your force. You're like, bro, he, this man doesn't care about his defense at all. Like, what is he about to like, do? To what me? is neutral if I hit you twice and you go away? <laughs> that's that's all. That's all we need. Uh, a lot of history between these two. They've both been around in the game for quite a while. Of course, they've had their great peaks. They've also had what we refer to as slumps a lot of times where people mm -hmm. will not have that same consistent performance, but it's about learning. Right. And these two have been at the top or performed at the top many times over. And like you said, with the chat, a lot of support for Fried. So you know he wants to put on a good performance. Yeah. We're going to have to see how uh, this goes, though, as we get our, our two competitors up there sitting down, getting serious with it. You know, obviously, the game faces are on. Although the Astros on, so that way it's time to hear. I gotta, I'm, I'm a, I'm a player that definitely needs to hear the game. So um, I do not want to hear you breathe. I want to hear every I single hear, footstep yep. that occurs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on that stage. Which honestly, uh, it, it was actually impressive how they go from the interview to like having some fun. But once you see it, it's game face time. Yeah, They're it's game face time. Locked in. One hundred percent. So like, I was gonna get to it. Like, I see uh, we are already loaded up on the screens, which means we're already getting this match right here, right now. Pugsy Friday Soul gonna be going at it first. And uh, I think we're getting, oh, oh hold up. Oh, looks like we might see a Got the crossovers out. We're going to go to Air Temple. Two, we actually don't see one, this bro. too, too often. Uh, majority of the time, we always just go to APOC and kind of go from there. But uh, OK, so we're going to get the Simon crossover here instead Love of Finn. Still the same lineup, mm -hmm. but just a different skin. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, with the crossovers here in this game, I mean, they're, they're, <laughs> they're always bringing some new spice. I mean, we just got the newest crossover uh, announced here. Going to see some SpongeBob action re relatively soon. But right now, we're hanging out with Castlevania. And we're hanging out with Pugsy and Fridasol right now. Nothing uh, super crazy happened in the first part of this match. It's a pretty, uh, you know, pretty all right neutral going on. A little back and forth. But no one taking a super huge advantage. OK, here we go. Fry. Oh, oh, oh that would have been a yeah, great yeah, no, pickup. Weapon toss up. He's going to be trying to look for the clip at least. Oh, yeah. Point. But it also controls so much space. Because if you fade back, you get caught by that weapon toss. If you decide to stay on the soft platform, you're going to probably spot dodge, which is going to give you a free punish. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. Ooh, there it is. The reverse down out. air. Is that going to be a no? Oh, that misses the ground pound, though. Okay, they're all, they're both ground pounded. <laughs> the ground is getting pounded. Like that's these boots are like. made for stomping, but unfortunately <laughs> he got knocked back up to the stage, so that whole interaction comes to a close. But they did both put each other right at that KO window that we needed. We're gonna see the first one go to Pugsy. There it is. And again, you know, these are two, both these characters putting out real damage when they get these hits with these high, uh, you know, these high force uh, stats. So. Yeah, I expect to see some socks dropping relatively soon in this match. Sidelight Sarah is inbound in three, two. Oh, oh actually, good. Very Never close. <laughs> he was very close to getting that two. Almost like a, a little short, you little anti air action coming up. Tries for again the reverse down air, but this time around, Puzz is going to take a wide recovery, and he is just moving around Fridasol right now. I actually like that switch off to the side, too, because something that can happen with Orb is the obviousness of Sidelight Sarah, so it's pretty easy to move around and get a quick punish on, but not going to be able to get that uh, recovery to push him back off stage, and Puzz, Movement this damage so much high in his favor. Mm. Somehow not, not getting the uh, the follow up here of the recovery to try to take that stock or at least push him up uh, into the skies. But and that is going to be enough. Yep, just a raw side air is going to be enough to do it uh, from Fighter Soul. But he is taking so much damage. It's going to be uh, you know borrow time on the stock. This is the time for it too. If you got sight in hand, you could absolutely make it happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Now We're you not making orb, anything happen over here. there. You got to ponder said orb and figure out what in the world just happened <laughs> in that last knock. So yeah, look into the future, man. And then maybe look into the past in that orb, like what could I have done differently? Because that's what it's feeling like right now. Pugsy with a very, very solid lead, a full stock ahead of Friday Soul. But again, this is the, both of these characters doing mad damage. You can see Friday Soul starting to get a little bit of momentum here. Boom, unanswered damage all the way up to orange. That's good stuff right there. If you start seeing the side light into the near read and just continuous pressure like that, you got a solid four piece. Ooh, 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 that would have absolutely been a stock off the side cancel. Just misses it though. I like the, also with the gravity cancel, the neutral shake just kind of say, back off me, let me rock. If you jump into it, you're going to take a lot. Yeah, it definitely takes a lot of space right there. And I mean, whilst I do think that uh, Fry, uh, Pugsley could potentially try to go around, if he's not like preemptively thinking about that, it's going to be a little hard to go around and try to maybe get a ground pound or something like that to uh, line up whilst uh, Fry is one charging and two uh, doing it well enough to avoid the actual hit. Fry, though, 
doing a good job of making getting himself back into the game. Is going to just let him come back to the stage, or maybe it was a bait because he immediately I was cleaned that up. That. I, like sometimes we like try to overhype. It's like maybe that maybe that was a read, but it actually kind of felt like that's like movement bait. The obvious thing you think is going to be a downer off the side of the stage, but instead I'm going to catch you. You're going to rush in. I'm going to get this orb recovery. Now we're back to a pretty solid even game because that last stock is actually not too bad compared to stock two. Oh, not at all. So, but uh, unfortunately though, he is he is start, starting to get hurt. You know, we are starting to get into those uh, deeper oranges now into the uh, red and oh there it is <laughs> the neutral sig if you are not paying attention at a given point in time he's gonna find that opener he's gonna find that delight you might get caught up boom and lights too like will get you scared in that position to kind of keep pushing you back so you don't want to take that V light stare off the side it makes you kind of jump happy yeah. and that's exactly how he was able to catch it that is such a strong sig and it's going to be used so much throughout the set yeah i'm going to need to see that again definitely in the replays but i think did he, did he hit that like that new dash to get back down to the that was yeah, yeah man yeah, that, was, that was that was a whole lot of One that throughout more. that shout out to that new dash drop uh making things a little bit uh what, what, what did uh flamo said it's like this is no longer uh, an old man's game. This is purely a young man's game. Oh, yeah. i be able to get those reactions. I saw him trying to do it offstage. It was, uh, it was looking kind of rough. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, we definitely have some Flambeau still, you know, one of the uh, conferences that plays quite a bit. And, yeah, he was uh, kind of struggling to get that uh, stuff down, too. But, hey, man, you know, like, as he said, old man, it's not an old man game anymore, bro. If I see you moving like that, I'm just going to go ahead and call next. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll play the next guy, bro. Pull up with the hitbox. You got it. I see you doing that kind of movement. You got it, bro. Yeah, you got I'll, it, man. I'll, 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 but Fried got it right there. Got to go ahead and get that recovery cash out. Catching it back up with the Nair. Weapon toss up to try and maybe go for the D-Light. No, instead, Satellite coming through. Big uh, hit there with the ground pound. Going down with the Weapon Toss. Dude, this is a perfect uh -oh. stock. Goes for the Weapon Toss again, but misses the last hit he needed to finish it, but a message was sent. Yeah, I mean, uh, he definitely probably could have just dropped a, a ground pound there. Oh, he is looking for some big plays right now. The slide charge into the neutral sig. Uh, reversal. Oh. Okay, that managed to slide through the shotgun. The, the, just the toss-up orb almost made him get hit into the sink, and so he ends up walking away. But these weapon tosses up have been utilized so many times to try and get Pugsy to go low, but Pugsy said, I don't really care about that. I got an axe and a dream, and I'm going to go ahead and throw the side air out, shut that down. It seems like Fry right now is definitely trying to make some like some highlight real plays, some ESPN-worthy plays <laughs> right now. And Pugsy is just like, you know what, basics. Fundamentals, that's what I do. Uh, it's getting very, very easy punishes. I mean, that, the last part of the, the first game was pretty flashy in itself, but the, even now, that's for the young man. That's the fundamental uh, punish right there. Back to this old discourse. Look, you may have had the hard work, but I got the natural talent. Mm -hmm. That ain't going to work on me right now. Uh, you're right, though. He definitely needs it at least one so he can go back uh -oh. and look at it later. Might be able to get the Wapatos toss over. Looking for unarmed cider. Nope, just goes back. Not worth it to try and keep pushing there. Okay, there he is. Fry is going to be able to make it back to the stage one more time. Pugsy, though, just dancing in front of him, like, just kind of walking him down. Like, that's what I, that type of neutral I like to see when it's like, you know, I'm, I'm threatening your space and you're just continually backing up. So he backs him all the way up to the to the uh, edge. But, okay. Kind of makes it. Oh, nice. Off the wall. Keeps Looks some like good pressure up. He's been picking it up a lot. You can see mm -hmm. it, like, uh, be between trying to go for that big GC side, like, uh, call out before, it's mostly because he had just got that spot dodge read and. It seems like Friday's starting to pick up on some of the defensive habits from Pugsy, which it is a long set, so you got to make sure you're prepped for it. But Pugsy's struggling a little bit to find an opener lately. Yeah, I and mean, Fry, Fry's still, you know, willing to, willing to throw out some of these sigs just kind of haphazardly. Pugsy really doesn't really see, uh, seem to be the one to swing first too often. So I think that's something Fry's going to have to look out for, maybe try to force Pugsy to swing first a little more. Finds the side light, side air for that stock, and now he's got a good lead. As they say, defense wins championships, and that's a lot of what Pugsy has been able to do. But finally, having a stock where it wasn't perfect the whole time. Mm -hmm. That was just one time. Can you keep that up? Because all throughout the first game, Pugsy was controlling the pace well. Tried to go for a big play right there. Not going to find it. Sider, at least give him stage control. Oh, okay. Another big down air. Nope, cannot get that second down air to, uh, to rock. Great weapon toss there from Friday Soldier. We'll go ahead and get back to the stage. Oh, the ground pound's going to hit above him and send him packing. So that's going to keep uh, Pugsy into this game, only in the yellow. And this is uh, definitely easy damage that Jala, uh, or now Simon, can make back. Very close game here, too. Like, first game was pretty close, but it started to slowly shift away. But Fried looking better, not just on the orb, but very much better so on the scythe, which is what we're going to see right now. One solid four-piece gets you that much closer. Okay. Oh, nice. He's right back there into the lead. I mean, it's, it's a small lead. Oh, that's going to be, yeah, that could have been big damage right there. Fry, once again, trying to force Pugsy close to that stage so he can get a good uh, ground pound, maybe a solid punish off of that with these weapon tosses. And he's still got the, the percent lead here, unarming Pugsy, who again is sliding through this shotgun. 
And now Fry just looking for that last big hit to go ahead and take this low defense champion across that blast zone. Right, almost Alleged. had him too. I tried to go for that weapon toss. He backed off, tried to catch that dare, but it's just not going to hit. These weapon tosses have been really good for Fry, but he hasn't been able to finish off the combos he needs. Now he just needs sidelights there. One good call, and he Ooh. takes it. No, it's an Ooh, that could have been a potential punish. Sider won't be enough from Pugsy yet. Weapon toss forces him to have to burn the dodge. And somehow he gets back, back on. That GCD light into recovery would have closed the match. Mm -hmm. And now Pugsy. Here off on the side, how is Fry gonna, Fry didn't try to go for the, the I was, that's what I was looking for first. I thought he was gonna do it the first time, but no, he actually does go for the reverse uh, down air. Doesn't get it this time around, and they are playing Again, some intense neutral. Is that going to be enough? It, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> even, exactly. even the announcer. Wow. Is that really? <laughs> that? <laughs> Bro, go get a burger or something. Put a little weight on there. Uh, help. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, 1-1 one, one now on the uh, on the screen. A very, very close second game. But Friday Soul was able to find that Trey side air to go ahead and take it. I'm, I'm surprised. The announcer surprised. Yeah, and a much better game there with the Scythe, too. 350 mm -hmm. damage on the Scythe. Overall, uh, cracking over 600. But the Orbal is always there to get the string started. We saw a couple of four-hit strings, but the Scythe kept the pressure up a lot, which is what started to make Pugsy go exactly into the position that Friday's looking for. The only thing he couldn't get throughout that set, you kept talking about it, was the layup toss mm -hmm. to try and get one of the weapons to hit to confirm. If Fried starts hitting those, I don't know how Pugsy rebounds after that, but he's been very good on movement. Like we talked about with twos earlier, his defense has just been playing out here too. Yeah. And so, I mean, looking at this damage here this time around, uh, before in the game before this, Pugsy actually had uh, two um, signatures, and they both hit this time. Two signatures, neither one of them hit. We're getting mad signatures here from Friday Solo, as uh, I was kind of expecting. Ten six, Three, only one of them two, hit. Uh, one, but, you know, whoa. hey, man, the damage is there. Yep. It's just, that's that just kind of goes to show you, the stats and the stuff just go to show you that uh, Friday Solo is willing to big, take those big swings a lot more than Pugsy right now. Yeah, definitely something you'll see on Fate pretty often, too, because of how much range she does cover with that. So it's like, you got to put that fear at least in there that right. it could happen. It may not hit you, but it could. And when it does, you're not going to like it. Yeah, watch yourself, basically, is what, what Fate's <laughs> you know, I got the shotguns both ways. I can shoot it up. I can shoot it forward. I got a, yeah, I got a rifle as well <laughs> if I charge it up a little bit. Boom, there it is. Shots are happening. Bang, bang. He's out of here. All you need is one to hit. Doesn't matter if all the other ones mess up. If the one sends the message, that's all you need. Switching over to Triplats here, too, with Small Enigma, it's a little bit easier for Fry to actually get some landing options. I'm kind of surprised mm -hmm. that this is where we ended up overall because you don't want to be anywhere near Axe at all times. Right. They're going to be throwing out big hits on the platform, sure, but it's a little easier to see it coming now. Oh, yeah. And so now we see Pugsy now trying to get back into this game. Fry not Ooh. wasting no time. Oh, it still catches the weapon, too. It's going to be in a slight disadvantage uh, state right there, but it does make it, manage to make it back to the stage. And as you said, you know, the triplats are going to give you more places to land now, you know, refresh your jump, refresh your options, and really, uh, you know, get back into the match. But, and now Pugsy, he doesn't look like he has a home here. Oh. Yeah, definitely feeling a little bit more comfortable as the match has progressed. This is what you need, but he is behind a full stock because of that earlier hit he mm -hmm. took. It is jolly, so you can get rid of stocks pretty quick. I'm kind of surprised that recovery didn't take it off, but a little bit higher of a blast zone, not too much higher. But if you cannot get that KO right there, Fried is going to probably play a little reckless right here because it's like, well, you're already in the red. So if I take a trade, it might work for me. Okay, hold up. Try to get back down to the ground one more time. Manages to do it. Now they're playing that, that neutral in the middle again. Pugsy has been on the receiving end of a lot of damage already. Finally finds himself a stock, but sitting in the red as Jala on your uh, second while you just took the first one off Fry. I mean, some crazy combos could happen to get it back in this game, but Fry has been definitely cooking as far as uh, this game. Oh! All right, well, yeah, he, he, he believed a little too hard. I don't know. He was looking for a hard read. <laughs> yeah, I think, it, I think at this point, if you're Pugsy, you probably look for a D-Light read into Dare, follow, drop back down, get another D-Light Seer. So you can get some damage in, but that was a borrowed time stock. So you had to find some opener at some point. But now you just put that in the back. Just now, I know this is easier said than done, but just don't get hit. Yeah. So Fry, oh, man, Fry has definitely been getting uh, good at fi like, getting these uh, dodges out of Pugsy and then punishing accordingly. Hasn't got like the longest combo just yet, but he has uh, definitely hit him once and just waited, and Pugsy has given up that dodge quite a bit. And Pugsy is, like we said before, it seems like Fry is starting to figure out some of the defensive habits, and that does happen often with Scythe, too, because you never want to get caught by the active inputs, but... Pugsy has minimized the damage here. One good ground pound or one good side arrow take it. Actually, DLI recovery might do it as he looked for it. Their recovery by itself was not enough to take it off the top. He needs to get rid of this stock soon because it's been a good amount of time since Fried has hit him. He wants to make sure that stays that way. Right. All right. How's he going to get? 
back to this uh, again, the, the top side of the ground pound. Managed to work out uh, again for Pugsy, who is round back in this game. Hasn't, uh, you know, has played this last stock quite well, only in the yellow. It's a, it's a little deeper of a yellow, but it's still good for him uh, to, you know, be at a position where he's not going to lose that stock immediately off the next hit. And, and maybe get this comeback. Broken the rules of gravity twice. Uh, it's actually tripped me up seeing it get the knock back up two times in a row. But for Fried, the problem is you haven't gotten too many hits in a while. But now here we go. Tried to go for the recovery read. Maybe look for a dodge to the left hand side. And you were talking about that force that damage that it puts on. It took so long before he finally got a hit. But look at him. He's already back in the red. Mm hmm. Bugsy. Okay, fighting his way back to the uh, to the stage. Oh, getting some good damage there. A little, little three-piece, and now keeping that Ooh. pressure off. Oh, no, you're gone! Oh, oh my God! Look at his <laughs> hands on the face went up immediately. It all That's all it takes. That's all it takes on Small Enigma, especially if you make a mistake that high up. Oh, yeah. so much damage that was put on. But what happened past that stuffed recovery on the side, you try to almost force the situation again because you see the stuffed recovery from uh, Pugsy. It's like, okay, maybe I'll try to go pressure. Oops, you got carried all the way up to the top. That was the third time that uh, Pugsy had looked Three, for that GCD two, light to get that one, recovery. Four. Missed two times before, but we mentioned it with the SIGs earlier. It doesn't matter as long as that one you needed hit. Oh, yeah, man. And Pugsy, I mean, that that's how you take an advantage. I mean, he literally fought. That was from the edge. He, he had to break a recovery. And then off of that, off that neutral later break the recovery, he turned that into an entire stock. That is crazy. What a, what a run right there from Pugsy to get that last stock off. And now 2-1 over the set. Uh, and Man. that game was quite literally as even as you could get in it every is. way. I'm looking back at the stats. 537 damage done for both. An early stock coming in here for uh, Fried. But their stocks prior were actually the same amount of time, essentially. So Fried needs a lot more of that to send a message after what just happened. Yeah, you got to get to this game five, man. It's very uh, easily shown that Pugsy is able to explode and turn that into a great, great uh, opportunity into a great stock. Uh, but right now, Fry is just kind of playing the slow and steady game, which is uh, allowing him to inch closer to victory. We need, uh, we need some more damage here from Pugsy to really turn the stock into a victory. I think he might be able to go for that, that dash you were talking about, though, Maybe. or the, you know, the uh, down light dash into the neutral uh, sig. He might be able to hit that and get it uh, for the stock now, but Honestly, he has to find that. He's got to find the first hit. He's kind of throwing uh, stuff out right now. That side light, no one home, or that side sig, no one home for it. Yeah, seeing if you maybe catch it, like you talked about before mm -hmm. with the race, you know, you got to you got to pace yourself. It's a marathon, even with characters like this, is because of the fact that there's so much damage on board. Right. You can't be the one to take the hit. And even after that really early stock that happened, you can see it. Pugsy is establishing fear in Fried. Fried just looking for one big opener, finally finds it, but doesn't get to go over there to look for that active deep uh, input D light to maybe try to keep pushing. Okay, Pride is going to get sent out of there finally. You know, back into uh, playing relatively defensive right now. You know, he's been kind of chilling out, uh, but that's what you're allowed to do. And platform fighters, genuinely, if you have the lead, you do not have to approach. Like, it's now up to the opponent to make something happen. And Fry has really kind of taken that mantra, uh, like, tenfold uh, in the later half of the set. Yeah, we'll see if maybe he could push it to that game five. I think Fry is completely capable of doing it, especially because in that last match, it's not like he didn't control the match all game. He just made a crucial error right at, at the, the end, end yeah. that was uh, punished heavily. Ooh. But there you go, catches him underneath, minimize the damage. That one is a way cleaner stock, but that last stock is what Pugsy brought it all the way back, borderline hit. Fry can't let that happen again, and that's why he's playing a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, I mean, he's making it uh, so that. I mean, he's definitely forcing a lot of zone control right here is coming out from these SIGs. I mean, they may not be hitting, but you're definitely not going to jump past me with this long SIG going around, which then allows me to set up a lot of, uh, you know, of my attacks that are just going to continuously throw you down. So, love to see it. Pugsy right now, though, on a little bit of a tear on this second stock, just looking for a way to even this up as quick as possible, and he's doing a good job of doing that. Siders built up damage so fast. We're, we are, we've seen a couple of recoveries not taken off the top yet. That other one, of course, had to be all the way in the skies, but it's near that range where you could go for that D-Light Sarah off the side. Another attempt to try and catch him. Sider won't be enough. Tried to go for a Sider off stage. That definitely would have hit it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, oh, this is going to be an issue for him. Can he make it back? Does do such and looks for of the ground pound, but no one home uh, on that either. Luckily, though, does live to see another day on this last stock of his. He's still trying to find a way to get the second one off of Fry. Uh-oh. Goes a little deep. You got to weapon toss up to keep yourself safe. Ooh. Gets the reversal here. Doesn't get the unarmed, so it doesn't matter. Fry is still drifting off, though, with the side cancel. Bro, he's been trying to use that on those platforms the entire match. Very similar to what we saw with the GCD lights from Pugs. He said, I can do it, too. One of them's eventually going to hit. Uh, in, what was it? It was five count, only one hit, but it was the one that mattered the most. Damn, man, he hit the, he hit the parting gift right there on that one. <laughs> Slide now, but actually, here, I left you something. <laughs> Boom. God, get him out of here. So now into game five. Again, oh, for the for the most part, 
this has definitely been Fighter Souls like um, his control. Yeah. The pacing of the matches here. So Pugsy, you know, he may be a little uncomfortable uh, with the way that he has to play this match, but he has shown that he can do it at least twice. Now we're getting into this game five. Let's see if he can either control the pace of the match a little more, or can he just match the pace that Fighter Souls playing and get this W? Yeah. I mean, he's uh, Pugsy's really showcased like how strong Simon on the Jolly crossover five. can be, where you could lose neutral most of the game. But all you need Three, to do is get a couple two, hits in, one, and you four. are at KO windows. That puts a lot of fear in people. So the fact that Fried has been in the lead most of the time, but we are still in game number five, that will be a lot of stress because the fear factor starts playing in the last game where you really don't want to get hit, and maybe Pugsy makes another thing happen, much like what happened in game number three. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see if he can do it, though, man. Pugsy. Now, uh, was kind of on the sword for most of this, I think, uh, is what we're saying. Yeah, the sword has been uh, quit for 73% of the time that last game. Uh, now, you know, and on this axe play, maybe he's trying to, like, mix it up a little bit. The axe doing big hits and causing big damage. And he's going to finish that off with a gravity cancel down heavy. Love to see it. That's a, that's a good way to start this fifth game. I never really thought I would see Simon break dance in my lifetime, but, you know. Here we he, are. He got it. <laughs> he hit that. He got those. <laughs> right now, uh, that was a, a hard-hitting move as he needed it to be. That entire stock was dominating his favor. And now, from this point forward, Fried basically has to do what he did before. He needs big combo strings. I think the Scythe is the play to try and get to ASAP, which is exactly what we're going to see. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, this is a great start, though, uh, for Pugsy 100%. I mean, this is, like, pretty much how the, uh, most of the games have started against him. And now he's got a very, very solid lead. Uh, seems like Fry is... Full on struggling against this axe, getting sent way far away. Can he make? He cannot make that back. I mean, he, well, that was super low, and he got hit, and it already kind of sends it on kind of like slightly down angle too. So got sent super far away. Wasn't gonna be able to make that back. This is a all, all plus, this puzzle game to win. And if he uh, loses, this is like the maximum throw, bro. Like yeah. I can't say I can't be any nicer about it. Bro. Well, that's one good start right there. Oh no! Like <laughs> <it's Well>. <laughs> hey, you know, Fr Fried has not been shy of throwing out a whole lot of sigs. I would not be surprised to see another attempt of a full stock like that too to try sig. Oh, oh no! He, oh my God! Okay. He got the recovery. He might have actually just speed ran the first uh, those two stocks and brought us back down. Okay, big damage right there coming in. Uh, plus a little three piece now. Actually going to add a little two, uh, you know, the side piece right there with that, with the two piece of, of the downlight recovery. And Fry needs to make sure he minimizes that. Like you said, that was two solid plays in a row. There you go, snatch him up. Trying to catch him on our early recovery, maybe trying to get away from the continued pressure downward. But Pugsy finds his way back on stage. Uh oh. Ooh. Okay, nice dodge right there from uh, Pugsy to get down and around. Another side air. Is it going to be enough? Yeah, it's going to be enough. Go ahead and throw the hands up back there. Good stuff to Pugsy. Absolute domination there on that fifth game. Dominantly taking it. No questions asked. Yeah, the uh, the custom taunt, if you will, of constantly throwing out the neutral six. Like, look, it's over. It's yeah. over. Just, just go ahead. It's over. Retreat. Uh, Fried set re reciprocating as well with the GC kids. So down on the bottom of the stage. Solid set overall. Everything was really close when we talked about it before. Everything that can happen might be just moot point if Pugsy hits you a few times. But what happens when he gets a massive lead on you? Mm -hmm. After trying to go for that ground pound second stock, it kind of felt like this. Everything was ripped away because as much momentum as you could try to get back, he almost did it. Mm -hmm. He had that one quick stock. He almost caught the sight again, but that was kind of your one shot. And after that, Pugsy said, absolutely not. Yeah, man. Looking at these stats real quick, we had the axe really showing up in that last game. Oh, I got to this, this, the That was so clean. I gotta, I'm got. i glad they put that in there again because that was super clean. Like, like, I, I thought he was like, I hit those. Like, nah, nah, no, I hit like, those. like, like wins the set like, nah, nah, nah. Oh, you know, that's the, that's the top player classic right there. Like, <laughs> never happy with how they won the set. Pugsy almost ended, ended that last one with a uh, three stock, really. And he's still probably like, could have done better. No, uh, okay, but yeah, man, on that last game, 53%. Uh, on the axe, so my man, like I, the way that that last game started was nothing but axe play, and you can see it in the damage 282 damage dealt on the axe, only taking 180 while he had it in hand. But I mean, Buddy was doing absolute work with that axe on that fifth game. You talked about it before the prior match, just before that, I was use, utilizing 73% usage on the sword. You might not be mentally prepped for that going into the next match, mm -hmm. it's gonna kind of trip you up a little bit, and uh, that's hard to rebound from. But what a great way to start off the day. We have a game five as the first opener, which means a lot of people, A, are warmed up because it is a bit early. Mm -hmm. Everybody trying to get, like, get things going. It is an all-the-way straight-through play to who makes it to top eight 
for the finals championship today to, uh, day tomorrow. And Pugsy looking pretty good. Yeah, Pugsy. I mean, like again, a lot. There's a lot of people in here. I mean, the P obviously it's BCX, so the PR for like the top 50 on <laughs> from everywhere is going to be here. <laughs> uh, it's, they're going to make it happen. And so you never know what this top eight looks like. It's all. Not, it's not about who's the best on paper. It's who's the best right now. And that's what we're trying to find out here today as we uh, finish off this first match between Friday Soul and Pugsy. It was good stuff. We got it to a game five. A lot of uh, a lot of control inside of Friday Soul, but Pugsy on that last game absolutely just said, you know what, this is my set, though. Yeah, like, and like you said, it was, like, every single match, like as you take a look at the charts here, it was way more Pugsy dominant, obviously, but mm -hmm. those charts were neck and neck all the way through. They played as close as you could get. A lot of times when you see this type of lineup, you're like, all right, this is going to be like a, a two-second match. But right. they showcase, nah, it's, you got to play Nucci. You, you cannot afford to take too many hits. And uh, Fried still looking good out there as uh, as he was playing. You know, the whole content creator joke is one thing, but this is a competitor through and through. If that ground pound finds the mark, we actually probably see a last stock, last hit game. Yeah. But that side air reversal kind of just took that all away. But still a great set yeah. all, overall. 100%. So, yeah, we're going to be moving over to the next part of our bracket. Before that, let's talk about what's going on in this venue. As you can see, we got all kind of cool stuff. All the way in that corner is where everybody else is playing. We got some nice seats for you to go ahead and sit down and lounge at your leisure to go ahead and watch these games. And, of course, the arcade. We got all kind of games here. I see a little cornhole back there, yep. some uh, some Jenga if you're into that. We've got the 360 camera so you can make yourself a cool little, uh, little gift, you know, a little gift. We gotta do it later. And also, we do gotta do it later. We do. We do actually need to do it later. But also, take a look at that merch booth in the back because if you were paying close attention yesterday, not only can you get the exclusive merch that is going on over there right now, but a certain meta dev code will be available throughout the day there and tomorrow. That meta dev Val. So mm -hmm. make sure you go check out the merch booth. Do not miss out on that because you do not want to be the one who has to hunt everybody down throughout all the other events to try to check it out. And of course, brought to you all by Yeti. Thank you so much for that. And uh, like, make sure you go ahead and check out. TheYeti.com slash Brawlhalla to you to for one get 25% off all the merch. And two, again, this is an exclusive time. Do not miss out. Yeah, I mean I I'm still trying to get that one at the top right. I I I was now that the laptop's up here, so I wasn't when, when I cut the break, I just want y'all to know where I will be, okay? I'm gonna be at this site getting that, especially with the 25% off. That's a huge sale. You know what I mean? Like that, that is a huge sale. So definitely get in on that. The Yeti.com. Not the not the Yeti like the thing. The Yeti, like a t-shirt. And uh, grab yourself some merch. We got all kind of cool merch like that. If you're here, though, you can go ahead and grab your merch directly from uh, the merch uh, store in the back. But if you're online, definitely look at all the cool stuff we got. We brought here this time around the BCX new logo shirt. We're really much feeling that. I don't think we identified. Me and Sparky were up here yesterday. Did not identify what that shirt in the middle is. It still looks cool. I just can't tell what it is from where I'm sitting. So. <laughs> And their version will be available online next week. Make sure you get it in sight right now. Uh, I'm not going to lie. After I'm all done with this, that Red Raptor shirt is going on ASAP. Okay. I love Red Raptor. Mm -hmm. I also, I, I'm going to need that. I'm going to need that SpongeBob merch ASAP. I don't know when that's going to happen, <laughs> but we need that. I just saw them walk past me a second ago. It's like, all right, look. Like, I, I've been so tempted to put this hat on, but, like, I can't. Yeah, man, we got a... <laughs> We got SpongeBob Patrick really just walking around vibing now. It's BCX. It's like, what kind of, what, what life do we live where SpongeBob and Patrick are here? Oh, well, right now we do have the chat involved with us as well as we take a look back at stage in the next match coming up. We got XJ Cool J versus Volse and uh, chat. Uh, well, Quite a they, bit of favor they, for they, XJ Cool J. Mm -hmm. they really, they're really a big fan of Cool J right here, man. Volst, uh, you know, you got some uh, naysayers in the chat. It's time for you to prove, try to prove them wrong. Or is everyone going to be like, look, I told you so. Normally we have insane NA bias when it comes to the viewer votes. And currently we're getting stopped. Uh, but, of course, XJ Cool J, <laughs> one of the uh, better reps to be able to pick up. Of course, mm -hmm. actually back-to-back -back for uh, the seasonal champs getting top eight. So, been on a tear. I get it. But... And rise up, come on, help help both out a little bit. Re regularly makes it towards like the top 32 range or just outside of it. Still performs very well. Uh, did the meter, that when I looked away, did the meter go down more? It went down. It went down more. Come on. I, said, can we get some help? He's a night. He was at 20 said, before this. Said, nah, you can, you, can, you can struggle on your own, bro. That's it. <laughs> All right, man. We're gonna figure out if you like. Look, I, I know what the. Hey, there we go. We got it up there. Right, 23. There percent <laughs> A little more people are like, you know what, man? Let's let's give him some credit. So, it, is it gonna be an upset? To the chat, it will be to us. I'm just ready to see some good matches, bro. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like you said, XJ Cool J, one of uh, the strong threats coming out here from EU. I'm curious to see whether we see like Taros pop up here. It I keep getting fired, man. <laughs> keep getting fired, bro. Just won't let me stay. I'm just crabs, like, nah, you about to work for free, bro. Yeah. You keep dropping the hat like I'll that. I'll try one more time. Let me just. That's it. You still getting on the clock. We got. 
We got patties to be made. Yeah, I got. There we go. Yeah, I got. I got to put the brim in. There we go. Now yeah. I'm back. I'm back on the clock. So, yeah, man. But uh, let me see who the. We got Volst coming. Uh, these are not their characters. Are they? Oh, there we go. That's the bottom. I was like, what's going on here? But <laughs> all right, we got Volst on the uh, a potential. I guess the Orion, and then on the other side of things, we got X J Cool J, who who could play Linfei or Taros. Linfei, I like that character. I do not like her amount of force though. Yeah. That's the, that's the only reason I can't play her. There's just no force at all. Yeah, I need, <laughs> like, I need some hits. It's like you get hit and go absolutely nowhere. Well, yeah, have fun with that. I'm a cannon at that, too. <laughs> yeah, it's me. Yeah, I do it, that, really like the like Sakura crossover, though. That's the problem. Is the Sakura crossover is so good, so it's like I want to use it, yeah. but they don't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. there's a complete opposite point to that. Taros. Taros. Which will be Patrick, by the way. That's actually that I, I I might finally have to I might finally have to play it. But there's also, of course, a very popular rise that has happened over the past year that could be happening here mm. with the Asuri. Okay. Uh, and somewhere in the venue, phone is popping off. <laughs> so Asuri gang rise up over that. But Orion, uh, obviously Spear has been doing great. Lance is always a great easy pick to be able to go up against something like Katars because you want to be able to push them out. The problem is, is when you start getting dodge happy after they read that one bad side air or that one really obvious side light. It's like, okay, now here's the mini game. Where do you think I'm going to go? What are you What are you going to do to guess out of it? Mm -hmm. We're gonna. I mean, that, that's the that's always the scary part of of this game, uh, too. Is that that fifty fifty area? Uh, the fifty fifty area is always for, uh, crazy. It's like, did I get hit? And did I guess wrong? And now am I dead? Or am I going to take a uh, full colors worth of damage off of this? And that's what we you know kind of watch out for, for these faster characters uh, and these characters that have so many fifty fifties like that. So we'll have to see uh, what we get into, man. Volst, you know, no uh, no big wins here on his side. Did get a little made a little cash here, uh, but yeah, XJ cool. Now I see why. <laughs> now, now I see why. <laughs> Actually, cool day number five. While well, we got both sitting at 56 here, and as I said, top 50 will be here. But like, we have a lot of competition just in general in the building at BCX 2023, and we got two more competitors ready to uh, go head to head, toe to toe on this stage as we get everything set up. Looking at those stats, I just thought about the the, the the hilarious meme, and I'm almost thinking about it, like, okay, would you take 500 thousand or dinner with Sandstorm? Which one would you do? Like, like, is the answer I'm gonna teach you how to be able to make all that money? It's like, no, folks, every single time, it doesn't matter who it is, take the money. Oh, yeah, I take, just want the, Take the money. Yeah, just give me the Talk cash. to Stan Stone for five minutes, bro. He's gonna tell you that he's good, everything's ready, and then he lies to you because he told me he was gonna win yesterday. I was like, I'll figure out what to do on my own with that <laughs> thousand, you know what I mean? Uh, that's, that's, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm, no, no advice will ever get me when, you know, that. Two, just give me the cash. One, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a quick spender, I'm a quick payout guy. So here we go. X, J, Cool J and Volst going up at it here on a uh, uh, well. We're here for our first match. It's going to be a good time. I see the Orion out. I see the Asuri out, and my man is definitely scrapping up. Going to have to use that Asuri speed to go ahead and stay in within these hitboxes of Orion and yep. make it so that like we don't get any type of that uh, far type of gameplay. It has not worked out so far for uh, Volst. It's going to swap weapons now. The thing with uh, Lance on APOC is it can kind of get baited sometimes because everybody kind of hovers around the soft platform. You want to find a big opener, and then someone like Asuri will just keep empty jumping around you until you make a mistake. And that's kind of what happened early on. So now we got Spear. Go ahead, side light near. Try to look for recovery. Keep that pressure up. Just barely missing that cider. So Volst is trying to pressure hard, but sometimes oh. it's all about not moving forward. But does Volst actually just switch it up? No, Mr. Man. Compound. That could have stolen. That was such an opportune nair too down there, but unfortunately just was not able to close it out the way that he needed to, and then ends up getting reversed on. I know that doesn't feel good at all. So now Volt, who had a chance to grab himself a very, very cheeky uh, lead, is now, you know, kind of suffering, uh, you know, suffering from that mistake. And now starting to take some damage, some more damage. This is the scary part, the double recovery at the top. Let my man, let my man play. Like we said, the mini game of you get hit by one end light. It's like, all right, do I end this now or do I get put in orange? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's not one nobody want. It's not one anybody wants to deal with. But okay. great job, there you go. Satellite's here. We're gonna go ahead and take it out. Not gonna move up too early from XK, uh, actually Cool J there, and Volst actually kind of minimizing the damage. Volst. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Okay, yeah, no, Volst is definitely woken up a little bit. No, he's like, I'm not gonna let this mistake uh, define my entire uh, game so far. It's starting to find these hits that that we come to know, I would say no and love, but not really love, you know? <laughs> but to, to know from uh, the Lance. Gas price is too high to be driving around like that, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we are in Atlanta, so, you know, it's kind of kind of accurate to the local area. But <laughs> you're gonna miss out the following uh, follow up there. Everything is kind of working out all of a sudden for Volst. Like, after that streak, you know, you start getting confident in that. And there's the burn dot. He actually had the burn dodge read available, mm -hmm. but XJ Cool J just went too high around it. 
Got to find out the uh, got to find out the engine system here on that Lance man. Is that a is that a hybrid? Is that a Hemi Electric? We need to find out. You know that's a V8 in there. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> got the Hemi engine going crazy. They All need right. you to hear the exhaust. Here we go. Now into uh, our last stock for Vols, but he has managed to keep this relatively close. I mean, we got good uh, damage uh, on 2x J Cool J. Oh, doesn't mean uh, able to find that side uh, light though to go ahead and finish that off. Now puts the pressure over the edge. Actually, Cool J had actually that soft platform was the best time momentarily that it could have been there to try and help out. Then he said, "Let me go scrap." Like, no, 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 stay up there, stay up there. That's why you got it. The game tried to help you. You tried to catch the smoke. You weren't ready. I like that idea that Vols is going for. A lot of people are gonna like whenever they start getting hit. You do you do want to try to get back to center stage as quick as possible. So looking for that center stage uh, dodge in to maybe turn that into a combo across the screen, but. Uh, you know, a seasoned person knows that that is going to get you, uh, get a lot of damage yep. sent on to you. So I like to dodge out from XJ, uh, Cool J as well. Who is now getting the big chase down. Can't find that uh, final hit just yet. Okay. <laughs> it's like diversionary tactics. Look it, at this. It feels like he stopped playing afraid. Because yeah. that last stock, I, I mean, you, he was getting hit a lot. But this one, it's like, I'm going to side light Katara at you over and over again. And I'm just going to keep swinging these end lights or finding their mark. XJ, Cool J looks like he's kind of put that in his back pocket. Said, you had your moment, and it's now my time to shine. Oh, my God. The weapon starve is so serious right now from XJC right now. He is making sure that he is not, uh, <laughs> he is not eating any type of good uh, here. Finally finds himself a weapon. But... Is it too little, too late? It's feeling like it. It is. It is XJ Cool J with a very, very solid uh, ice out there on that last game. Yep. Man couldn't have a. He didn't have a weapon in his hand for a good like 30, 40 seconds there. Yeah, that whole situation of that last stock. Like I said, it really did feel like he said, "Okay, cut it out." Like, I'm gonna stop playing scared. I'm gonna start pressuring you. And I'm gonna see how you react to it. Because Vols was able to get away with a lot mm -hmm. for a solid stock and a half, which good, good on him to be able to find those openers because it didn't look like he was gonna find it at the beginning, like you said before. The lance just kept getting whip punished, kept swinging. But when it did hit, it was four pieces left and right with Lance. That yeah. was some really good reads. And then that last stock said, okay, well, like, what if you just don't hit me? And it worked out very well for XJ Cool J. Yeah. I mean, like, looking at it, looking at it right now, XJ Cool J uh, with the, uh, I mean, that, that weapon star. He didn't get hit for so he long. He did not. The weapon star was crazy, too, man. Let put. Put Volts up to 30% unequipped time Three, while he was only two, at 17. One, uh, a lot of time on the sword there from XJ Cool J. Uh, but also, you know, the, the guitars, they did their work as well. Um, 197 damage, but only given, uh, only taking 91 while he had him in hand. So good stuff to XJ Cool J. Volts gonna have to, you know, really shine a little harder here in the second game as he, again, does find the connections. He just needs to find more of them uh, more often to really turn this into a, a game for him. Yeah, that part has been perfect. Right. When he does get a hit, Everything is running very well for Vols. Yes. It's mostly once XJ Cool J starts pressuring him. That's where he's been struggling a little bit to try and back him off. But because of the fear that comes in with the Black Knight, uh, the crossover for Orion here, you don't want to overly do it. If you're constantly side lighting like so, and if you're doing it directly in front of him, you're going to take those four hits. So XJ Cool J has to pick and choose his points very carefully. Okay, XJ Cool J is still getting a good chase down right there, not allowing him access back to that stage. What a toss as well. I mean, that was a perfect edge guard there from XJ Cool J. Went low, saw him going high, managed to still hit him and push him back off the stage, and then just kind of the the you know the final uh, touch of throwing that weapon to make sure he cannot make it back. That's stock. It's going to be for all for XJ uh, Cool J, who is continuously keeping himself on that sword. I like that. He's definitely favoring the sword. That means Vols has to figure out the sword, or otherwise XJ Cool J is running away with this game quickly. I feel like for those tosses too, we can't say to Brett Favre anymore. It's too far away. We got to start saying to Mahomes. Oh yeah. Like at this point, <laughs> <laughs> throwing it. Yeah, he's throwing the throwing the bombers right there. Okay. Like the attempt at trying to go for the spear, d -Sig off the side too, because if he jumps up too early, you disappear, but he's most likely gonna burn a dodge anyways, and mm -hmm. he tried to follow up on it with the Nair to push him back off. But actually, Cool J holding on to this first stock for a very long time. It's definitely borrowed time. Pretty much any straight hit will do it, except for that singular straight hit right there. Oh. Yeah, I mean, this is, my man is in brick red right now, and somehow is still living on this first stock. Vols cannot find that final hit. Oh, but he's getting scooped up. Another weapon toss. The stomp, no, didn't actually just go for the raw stomp. Looks for the confirm into actually it. Actually helped him out there too. He tried to catch that GCD light into ground pound, but that allowed him to get that near, get the chase dodge mm -hmm. up, get back to stage. If that doesn't happen, he makes it back. But that paint dried red finally removed for a clear coat, but it took so long. Yeah, it took him quite a bit. So, I mean, luckily he didn't take a crazy amount. He's not into the red yet, but he is getting very close to that that area where he can't get Shamwild out of a stock if he's not paying attention or he's too close to the edge. He's got to look out for that. And he's definitely playing very close to the edge. I mean, XA, uh, 
uh, Cool J has not allowed him any space on this stage so far. One thing is he, he hasn't broken his defense yet over there. He's been pretty calm about it, but D-Light's here. Gonna force him to have the weapon toss up again, and that time trying to read the high recovery. He's always gone low with it and tried to make another attempt at the ledge with that too. That absolutely would have gotten rid of it, but Volst, one of the things that happened at the end of the last game, you mentioned it, it took a while before him to get back to the weapon. This time at least gets it, so he's gonna be able to get a little bit more damage in. Okay, looking for the stomp. Man, just reverse. Don't don't dodge through me. I'm hitting. I'm throwing the reversal on here, and immediately send that man packing. Volst, yeah, 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 I'm scratching him up right there. So Volst though, uh, really got to find himself a weapon. Does manage to do it. Doesn't really seem like this is his favorite weapon at all though. So most likely gonna be looking for that lance uh, pretty quickly. Although I do think he needs to bring something new to the table because it does feel like XJ Cool J has figured that part out. Yeah, I actually like to switch up here to try and maybe play the spear a little bit longer. It's not like he didn't have the combos with this dude. Side light looking for the nair, trying to maybe catch the dodge in because that's the mini game now. You got to look out to see does that dodge come through. You get that D light. Oh, tried to go for a double up because with that burn dodge, he could have gotten that D light afterwards. But Volst is continuing to pressure on. It's just all about finishing his food, which XJ Cool J has been more consistent at. Yeah, Volst on me again. He has he's got the damage up. You can see it right now. XJ Cool J in, in the red, but. He needs to be able to find that last hit to really take this man out of here. And he has not been able to do that just yet. Another uh, very, very high damage on this second stock for, uh, for XJ Cool J. High damage output Ooh. game in general, too. There Finally finds a cider to close it. But I guess that's the big reason why he's been so comfortable on the Lance. He's been able to get the damage done on Spear, but he hasn't been able to finish the job on that. And if you're not doing that in front of a Surrey, they're going to take full advantage because, like we said before, one end light into a dodge read, you are now in the even game or potentially overlapped in damage. Yeah. So now Volst, you know, he has a chance to maybe take this game, but he's got to make some, some things happen. He has not been able to find the other connections like we saw a little earlier on. Luckily, though, there's not a crazy amount of force gear on this character of Missouri, even in uh, the force stance. And check, and one dealer recovery will oh, do it, though. Yeah. All you needed is one more. It was pretty close on that last recovery, but at APOC, a little bit too low beside the stage. Plus, you're talking about the force there. All you need to do is just wait for that one mistake. Yep. That's something that XJ Cool J has done phenomenally so far. Every time it's gotten close, he knows that Volst hasn't been able to finish it. But Volst has very much so sent a message many a time over that the damage can be applied. Just needs to find those finishers. Yeah. So now XJ Cool J, man, is uh, up there, big, chilling. He's like, you know what? <laughs> I mean, everything's good. Everything's right good. Too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything's good, man. Like I, I've not, uh, I've not really been close to defeat yet. You know, there's some really good uh, shining uh, points for the game for Volts, but he has not been able to shine hard enough to get that W just yet. Yeah, like we said before, the biggest thing really has just been if you, if you want to hold one of those trophies at the end of the day, you got to be able to get the job done. That's what you have to do. The damage has been. Always there. There's never been a single issue of Volst finding an opening and getting damage. It's about finding the opening and actually getting the KO. And XJ Cool J is taking full advantage of that. Three, no scenery two, change either. It one, seems pretty one. comfortable yeah. playing it out on APOC. So we get that game three. One more shot to try and get one on the board potentially. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, the scenery doesn't really seem to be uh, the issue. That It's just really about uh, turning these hits, these straight hits, into real big opportunities. He's not been able to do that just yet. Uh, but here we go. First uh, weapon for him in hand is going to be the spear. And from looking at that last stat, yeah, it did seem like he is uh, very much favoring the lance. 58% of the time on the lance, only 17% on the spear. A whole lot of damage evenly put across the board for actually Cool J2 because the comp was always there and he's always playing it out and it takes a long time before he gets KO'd. So putting up 600 on the board in ones just because he's always catching them. And Gonna go, not gonna be able to catch him there, but even with that, he's still establishing so much fear into Volst in those situations. Yeah, and like uh, looking at it too now, it does feel like right now Volst should have to, uh, should have to play more on the spear. Uh, on the spear, I'm looking at the damage. He did 255 last game, but he took 453 while the lance was in his hand. That just means he is getting punished a lot uh, while the lance is in hand, and he's not really getting the big reward of having the lance if you're not going to be putting out damage or at least getting stocks. Uh, the way that you are probably wanting to. So it, it's looked like it's kind of happening now. He put the lance in hand, does finally get that first stock, but he did have a pretty solid uh, damage lead before that. Yeah. I mean, they talk about like something that can shift your mentality. It's like, I always get four hits, but I'm taking eight before I get those hits. Right. So is it really worth it in that position? I got to think about how I'm going to change it up. That time, at least he walked away with the lead first, but can he get anything else out of it? Good dodge away to be able to drop back down underneath, never really fully committing to avoid that GCD light. Yeah, man. So let's see. Oh, okay. Well, just immediately getting sent out of there. Uh, not going to waste any time to get this game back to even. 
as we have uh, now, you know, just a lit, slight bit of damage here onto XJ uh, Cool J, but you know you can get that back quickly when you got Katara's in hand. Yeah, we'll see. Looking if he can find an opener, tried to go up and just go for a straight nair, but XJ Cool J is kind of been cornered a little bit, but doesn't really care about it. Kind there we go, going back in with the nair, just going back over the side, like double up on recovery. Do we go for one more? And instead, just tries to see if Bolst would maybe dodge back over to the left to try to hunt him back over to the left, and that doesn't happen. Oh. Losing the weapon there. Now, the weapon star could start. I mean, XJ Cool J has been very good at doing that so far. Oh, oh wait. Two weapons actually going to spawn. He's going to have time. Yep, managed to get both of them out there, going right back to the guitars. Said this is for you, but it belongs to me. Psych, I never bought you a gift. But right now, XJ Cool J is looking very similar to that previous uh -oh. game. Oh, oh look at that. Like, yeah. That's the first time he went for that. You're on the soft platform, too. You want to maybe move down. You try to go for a hard call. Mm hmm. I like that though. Actually, yeah, actually, Cool J was able to get quite a bit of damage now, but a good weapon is now in the hand of Vols. The one he doesn't seem to as comfortable on, but he has been making work more often quick down air right there. That moment for many may not think about too much because he just got KO'd, but mm -hmm. when you double up on a ground pound, going for like a big play, trying to make something happen, and you get reversed, that's going to make you play a little bit scared, and that is kind of what's happening here. Actually, Cool J actually gives him a gift though. That could have been the end of the game, but now all of a sudden, you're going to feel a little bit happier because you still have another shot. Yeah, I mean, uh, giving up that uh, stock a little early and they like, didn't put a like, crazy amount of damage on for going for something so risky. But, however, he does still have a lead. Does have to figure out a way around this spear, though. The spear's been doing some work now for Vols uh, in this set. I can see if Vols can maybe put one on the board because he's always been right there but hasn't been able to just complete the job. XJ Cool J trying to make sure that that doesn't happen. D Light Cider, actually, it's just straight up Cider. There's a guy to catch him popping up. But all you need is a couple more. Just like one, a little bit more damage. We're that much closer to closing this out. Uh oh. Okay, off of the screen. And we got the, the uh, recovery to go ahead and push him up. He throws that weapon away. Managed to get another one, but cost him the entire set for trying to grab that weapon. That was just great defense around it, too. XA Cool J making it look very enticing. He's like, please come here. Yes. No, you can have it, brother. No, you can't. You can have it. <laughs> Take this chop chop gone. <laughs> I can't wait to see that replay back because the way that he moved around the soft platform was the best part about how he was able to force that to happen. Because mm -hmm. he went on the right, threw out a cider, made it look like, hmm. I think you're going to try and approach from over here. But he actually was never really caring about that. No. He was just putting out the idea that he's swinging recklessly so he could then drop underneath, sneak under the way of that soft platform because you have to get the weapon. To, uh, you have to get a weapon immediately bait him to approach. You had no other option. He had to do something, man. It was some type of swing. I mean, it might have been better for him to try to maybe hit him away. But I think he just, you know, he just really felt like he needed a weapon in his hand. It was going to be his more favorite weapon. But again, looking at the stats, this time around, 39% here on the Lance. Took 288, did 124. 33 on the spear, did 227, took 200. So again, like the spear was really, it was really doing some uh, work for him in the later half of the set. Fortunately, does really feel like he wants to be a lance uh, main, but sometimes you gotta, you know, you got, you gotta just bite the bullet. You gotta be like, you know what, the lance is not doing it right now. Let me go ahead and play my, my off weapon uh, and really make it happen. There was a lot of situations like that, too, where the options were just covered so well by XJ Cool J. It's not so much about how quickly you burst in on me. I'm just removing all the options you have. You can see the slight bit of frustration that will kick in in those ones. Like, damn, what did I do wrong? Like, what do I need to fix? But right there at the very end, you saw how he kind of drifted around, snuck underneath. A lot of that was the main occurrence throughout the whole match. The weapon tosses were really on point for XJ Cool J, too. And just shut it down and maybe gets a little bit closer to getting towards one of those trophies. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, got to give it up to XJ, XJ Cool J, though. Just great uh, gameplay coming out from him this time around. Uh, love the Asuri. I absolutely uh, did exactly what I was expecting him to do. You know, play quick, weapon starved well. And, uh, you know, it was, like, it was a very, like, a simple and, like, uh, effective game for him. While on the other side of things, Vols, I mean, he just said, like, he had such high, like, again, another person that has high peaks, low valleys. Because yeah. when he was getting those hits, great, right? You know, I'm, I'm getting three or four. I'm stringing. Uh, I'm, I'm getting stage control. But when he wasn't getting those hits, yeah, it just didn't look that good and, for him. I mean, you take a look back at it, dude. Like, the average amount of time that XJ Cool J was able to survive is very similar to, like, the joke people make. I don't think both falls in this category, but it's like, don't overlap because then you'll have no neutral. He had some good nooch, 
He had the ability to get the damage, but he wasn't able to close it out. You only get that situation by playing a ton and getting more experience throughout bracket because people know how to avoid those spots. Right. And that's kind of what happened. I think both against many is going to run through them, but once the defense starts getting stronger at the top, as we saw there, the average amount of time it took to get some hits was just way longer, especially through the previous matches. Mm -hmm. XJ Cool J was able to win the stamina war as the match went on. He said, I don't need to rush in. I can wait for you to approach first, and I'm going to take the stock. Yeah, you, if you look at that second uh, stock right there of XJ Cool J, like, like Look how long those lines are, you know? My man was not taking no damage uh, for good stretches of the match right there. So, you know, that's something, you know, Vols going to have to keep in mind. And honestly, I, I really just, I, I do feel like he should, uh, you know, like he should like look into a second weapon a little more, man. Uh, the, it's not to say that his lance is bad. It's just sometimes you are getting outplayed when you're on the weapon of your choice, but the other person doesn't really not deal with the other one. And that's what it kind of felt like. In that last match, XJ, XJ Cool J had such a harder time dealing with the spear than his lance, but he just wanted to be, he wanted to be on the spear, like, real bad. So, I don't know, man. It yeah. happens. We got a lot more players who want to be on stage. As we come back, we got more matches for BCX. Stay tuned. Did you think you could keep me out? I can't tell if you're sweating or crying. You're stronger than I thought. <laughs> I'm not cheating, you're just not trying. You're so predictable. I'm Loki, and you're who again? Lord something? <laughs> Very good, Legends. <laughs> I 
think he likes you. <laughs> I'm finally here. Or am I? <laughs> Welcome to Brawlhalla. ダイオ裏切られた仲間よ。誓うよ。死ぬまでこの世界を守ってみせる。失われた魂を見つけてやる。魂を貸してくれ。残ってるのは俺だけだ。最後の防衛。ブラルハラへようこそ。Welcome back to BCX 2023. You know we're back. We're still on. We're still on the desk. We're about to make it happen. We got more matches coming up for you. But first, I gotta say, man, I love that trailer. I, I love. I love that trailer. Unite. Red Raptor is amazing. I don't care. He's been giving. He's been so fun to play. I love the story behind it. Whoever it was that decided to start doing all these animated trailers, you are the best. Just know that they have been phenomenal. Uh, the Loki trailer also hits as well. Everything's been really fun. Uh, like you said, we got a lot of really fun ones coming up too with some cool character lineups, but also a little bit of a, a difference in the way people have looked at these players before. Boomy will be coming up here in a moment, going up against Stingray, one of the original, the NA rep for many, for so many years, it's been around since the beginning. Stingray on the rise, not as strong a performance that we're used to seeing early on in the previous year, but still always right there in that top eight. So still very much holding on to it, falling out of that fourth place in NA down to 12th, but it's BCX time. So you already know, it's time to pick it up. Yeah, we're at the area now where like all the matches are just gonna be people who should, who could win the tournament and also definitely can be making that top eight. So I wanna see what we'll be getting out of these two players real soon. As you can see, you know, Boomy, legend right there. Look at the, look at the medal count. My man has done it all. He's been in several top eights, several top 32s, Several W's, several, uh, you know, like, look at it. Just like all those. He's got 32 medals in the top three, just like that. Here on the other side of the thing, you know, we getting, so we're starting to get some W's here from Stingray. He's got a, he's got a gold medal, a couple silvers, a couple, uh, couple bronzes. Uh, but you are still going against the legend that is known as Boomy. Not too much of a difference between them and PR, so this should be a really good match. Yeah, that championship coming in from that Steel Series Invitational that Stingray kind of really boomed onto the scene with, if you will. But always known for the Orion, but has been playing more of the Zol lately, kind of mixing it up a little bit. But the Orion has been a huge staple for him, so would not be surprised to see it. Of course, my favorite match last year, I believe it was against Wes, if I remember correctly, that Game 5 set to make it to Top 4, or Top 8, it was one of the two, but it was one of the closest games five sets we had seen all tournaments stinger really picked it up representing na but right now it's about kind of picking it up for himself even though he's been performing well he hasn't had another big dub in a little while like we said only the one where boomy has sported many and boomy believers are always there so i'm very curious as to who takes it and also just what the crowd feels is like their favorite between the two. Yeah, man. I, I think genuinely, like I like both these uh, these guys a lot. I think Singray, you know, we we chat, we actually just kind of tap like on the regular. And then Boomy, you know, I've known him since the beginning of time. He was around Brawl alone, like just as long as I've been. He was here year one, bro. Beta, Beta Brawlhalla. He was there. <laughs> so uh, Boomy, you know, obviously a legend. If you know Brawlhalla, you know Boomy. 
You know, if, you, if you're uh, kind of new to Brawlhalla, but you still know Brawlhalla, you definitely know Stan, uh, Stingray as well. Yep. And uh, Boomy, normally we know Boomy very much off for the Blasters, usually Three, always playing two, on the Blasters Legends, one, but has been really comfortable on that Chun-Li, the Wushong crossover, mm -hmm. and not only having it be in twos, but bringing it over here into one, so we're going to see that spear and mirror match lining up in the set. And I think that's actually, I mean, Wushong, another one of those characters, I feel like it's just never been bad. Like, these are just good weapons. And you got the you got the gauntlet, you got the spear. Oh, you get getting oh, up right now. You're, the dodge you're ring, that was man. a perfect stock. He got him all the way off, and as soon as he saw it burn, it's like, oh, okay. I got the D-Light into GC D-Light, Sarah. I already punished you off that Nair read before the end light caught you as you tried to catch back up. That is a dominant start for Boomy. And there's just something about the way that Boomy plays, too, where it just feels like it's just nothing but confidence exuding from him uh, and throughout his gameplay. But Stingray is starting to fight back a little bit here. He's back on to the lands. Unfortunately, though, I was like, start to take some Oh, nice as shot. That stock happened. The entire venue started moving towards the front, <laughs> realizing what was going on. They said, hey, yo, <laughs> like, what's going on? Not another one. Okay, looking for a big read right there at the top. Luckily, though, that, he's one of those characters that can definitely just throw some cigs out from a, a distance and more often than not, not get punished. Nice down there to go ahead and poke him away. Doesn't actually touch the stage either, so loses. Doesn't get any of his uh, resources back. Just gone. Talk about the 50-50 situations earlier. He's creating his own in a way because last time he fell with the near to cover the drop down, so you cover the idea of a panic rise up, and then he closes it out. But finally, Stingray being able to put one on the board, it is a all best of five, so being able to still adapt will definitely be, uh, need to be needed. It, but it would be better if you could do it here in game one. Mm-hmm. Uh oh. And swinging, trying to find his way deck down to the ground. Managed to do it even without, uh, even unarmed. He's still going to find uh, some hits. Good three-piece and almost actually turned into a four-piece. He found that down there at the uh, at the bottom. Another one, and then it's going to be the dunk to send that man packing. Like we said, if you could figure it out in game one, things would be looking a lot better. This was looking like a game that would just disappear in Boomy's favor, but here on Small Brawl Haven, you already know stocks will fly. But these two are playing so aggressive. We're going to find our starter. There's the nair uh -oh. against the extender. Stingray needs to guess right. Not, not guessing right uh, just yet, Boomy. Controlling the area, looking for him to uh, come through at the top. This mount. Reverse minute bird kick. That's going to be enough, though. And the quick dog. I'm telling you, man, Boomy's his confirms. They're just so quick. He gets one straight hit, and he always turns it to mad damage. I needed to look at the chart, too, because it's like they weren't hitting each other a lot. It was when they got hit, they just went away. Yeah. It was always off of one full advantage push, and Boomy was able to shut down Stingray, who started doing the same after that double end sig play off the side where he almost got KO'd the first time and then got caught again. Stingray really picked it up. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm looking at the, the chart one. Uh, there was okay. just a okay. long wall again where Boomy is just not getting hit. 46 damage per engagement to the 40 from Stingray. Those are just high damage per engagements, like yeah. straight up. So good stuff uh, to both of these uh, players, making that thing a work for them. Good uh, hit. Try to get the double. If he had dropped down, that definitely would have been enough. I like that extra chase there with the recovery. It wasn't able to hit, but t t the message is being sent regularly here. I like the weapon toss start, but nothing really comes of it. And Boomy saying, look, if we're going to play the scramble, I know you got spear D-Sig, but I am not anywhere near, uh, anywhere near that type of damage, so I'm just going to throw out my own. Oh, okay. Nice. Oh, let him play. Let him yeah, man. <laughs> give him some. Give him some time, bro. Okay, looking for a big read right there, but no one uh, home for it. Luckily, San, uh, Stingray has been able to turn that into, uh, you know, advantage on the stage. Still looking for a boomy to. Well, you know, is one of these shots going to hit? That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> the down sig or the neutral, uh, neutral sig, something's going to hit. Managed to find that neutral sig to get that stock off of Boomy. I Boomy think that's actually right what we the... were missing from both gameplay prior to. He wasn't really committed to being able to try to put that fear, fear. in for how much range you have. Right. With the Ryan, but good spot that's be able to get around that gets a reversal stare. Now you just need to try and take advantage, and he misses the end light to try and do exactly that. Man. Look at uh, now that you uh, brought it up. Yeah, I had to look back at the stats there. The fit, the lance in hand for Stingray was not in hand too often, but he did do more damage than take uh, the damage that he took on it. But yeah, he's definitely favoring that spear here, and the spear seems to be a little bit of a problem for you know the people who are going up, who've gone up against Orion today. So. Yep. I mean, that's where the moneymaker has always been for Stingray. Like, when it comes to being clutched nice. that for one, the sig there, but two, the biggest thing has always been that D-Sig. He always finds a way to make it hit. But Boomy is trying to minimize that right now, get it back off, trying to look for a, just a straight-up Poco on stage to try and confirm after, but the side air will take it out instead. 
All right. And like, uh, Stingray actually did have the chance to get his, uh, get the stock to you. Saw him go for uh, the uh, gravity cancel charge heavy, but like just uh, might have been a little bit too late on the draw. So therefore, uh, Bumi gets the free dodge out. Another shot, though. The neutral SIGs are blasting right now. Like you said, look, one of these is going to hit. Yeah. At, at some point, it's going to hit. And the fact that he's doing it without getting punished for it, that's the most... That, that's the most beneficial part. There's that D-Sig uh, we're going to be seeing more often, this but the Lance is what's been putting in work. Ooh, I was a little afraid for him right there. I wasn't sure how far uh, we were to the edge or if he was going to try to go for a Sig finisher, but he did get the dodge out of Stingray, and then uh, got some low, some extra damage off of that Stingray. He's got to watch the way that he's dodging back down to the ground. We'll be switching on over to the Gauntlet, see if he can maybe uh, find something happen here. One good recovery read. Oh, we're just going to go for the Gauntlet D-Sig. We got positioning off stage, mm -hmm. but a little out of position to try and really continue that pressure. Recovery will just do it, though. Man, he is, again, the, the cleanup. He's just so quick with it. Uh, all of it, like the way that Boomy plays, exuding confidence, knowing that he's going to be able to hit his confirmed, never seems to really drop them uh, at any point in the game. I mean, like, he has hit every single one of those, like, oh, I got a, a sideline, I got a recovery. Oh, you got you burned your dodge. I'm getting big damage for that. He's up. He yeah. is up right now, for sure. He's up in the set, but he is up as far as his gameplay. I know he is. He's turned. He's locked in. He's dialed in. He's turned on. We just saw in the crowd, too, and more people walking two, over. The Boomy Believers one, have started one. to show up. Because mm -hmm. he's always had a big fan base. Everybody wants to see him perform. But Stingray is one of those saying, look, I'm sending a message. I'm one of the best in the business for good reason. He's got a message to send this weekend. But uh, honestly, biasly, I know he's up 2-0. I am a big fan of Boomy. I want to see this go game five. They have been beating each other down. Okay. You're a Boomy believer, though. I am. Like, yeah, we but you know it. But I still like, want the game five. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. But we, we, we got to get some Stingray believers in here to uh, see if he can, Stingray can even uh, mount himself his first game. Now, he's not too far behind. Boomy is just a little more calculated on his uh, approach when it comes to his confirms, in, in my opinion. I think that's why we switched to APOC, too. He needed a soft platform to get away, but also he was just getting KO'd too early too often for him. So I think the idea of kind of switching it up will help. Gets that D6, see if he can maybe close it out here on the side. Goes for another attempt at one, and he tries to go for a reversal slide cancel, but it doesn't find the mark. And that's the first time he's really been punished for that with the end light, but not that much as he takes his stock. All right, that's good. That's good for Stingray, man. He does not get uh, leads uh, uh, in front of Boomy quite often, so this one uh, should uh, be nice for him. Hopefully he can turn this into a game if he can keep this type of pressure up. Wow, at that, the difference, the mix. I mean, there's not even DI in this game. I still feel like he got his DI mix. <laughs> Like Chun Li would also break dance like that. Like, oh yeah. Like a she do, she do extra damage because you know I, obviously it's Chun. She got I, the legs for that. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of sad for Boomy also because that weapon toss into the pickup would have actually been a really good string. Mm -hmm. But he ends up not getting that D light starter he was looking for. Tries to go for one right there, but Stingray has positioning and more importantly something that's really uh, big for him is that he's been keeping the damage even now compared to the stocks he was just losing. Right. Okay. Got to get away from that nice little step back right there. Gets uh, the extra little neutral light. Another neutral light. Keeping Boomy at bay right now. Looking for that jump off the corner, but... No. Oh, okay. I mean, I was about to catch maximum <laughs> hands. The order orders was out. <laughs> Double up on the dare is not what I was expecting in that position at all. Mm -hmm. Figured, you know, normally it's that dare into the drop down there, but he's like, look, but what if I do two? Hold this. I mean, he got the dodge out too, man. I thought he was actually going to turn that into a lot of damage, but uh, unfortunately was not able to get the neutral light after Boomy. Now trying to grab himself a little bit of a lead. I'm surprised not to see that uh, the reversal of Fortune right there from Stingray to try to go for his own ground pound. Stingray does have a fortunate position right now to actually get the weapon in. Looking for a straight-up recovery, and he doubles up on it. He's been pretty content to regularly double up on options. Boomy just keeps running into them. Yeah. Boomy now has uh, you know, a slight deficit, but he was able to even that back up super quickly. He's got the advantageous position right here. No a weapon in hand, though, but it's meant to find. Oh, there it is, yet again. He's so quick with it, finds the weapon, finds the side light, and then immediately recovers. And the first time, too, a slight delay to it. Because mm -hmm. every other time it was always immediate. Stingray wasn't ready. Yep. And it's not so much about dodge friend. It's just like, let me miss the timing. If you do dodge friend, great. But if you wait, I got you anyways. Last stock potential here for the winner side of Stingray. Like, I, like he's been playing bubble. What's like the thing that he's just been missing? Like he just barely finishes. Like he just barely misses closing out the matches, but he's been playing great so far. Yeah, he's not. He's not finding those big opportunities at the end of the match. Unfortunately, you know, we're getting a lot. Finally, you got fired, Donald. <laughs> now I like it. Uh, he's getting a lot of these uh, hits. You know, like he's getting a lot of those big hits. I mean, you've seen a lot of the. the the spike down with the lance, but he's always getting that on like second stock. If he got that on last stock, man, oh, yeah, no, it was a good way to end the game. 
Also, a good way to uh, show that hey, I'm back into it. But like, he does have, a lead, does have a lead right now. He's back on to the spear, which has been an issue. Wait, ooh, the dodge read down into the D Sig. One more mistake like that. That's gonna be the end of the match and a three up for Boomy. But instead, Stingray finds an opportunity to try maybe find an opener. D Light going in. No, he doesn't actually go for the D Light. He goes for a read instead. Boomy, this has been this has definitely been the finisher for him. Still living. He cannot live another one of those for sure. But doesn't matter. He's looking for it. The delay Ooh. this time not going to work out for Boomy. All of a sudden, things getting a little stressful. The side here will be enough to do it, and we get a game number four. Yeah, deep breath, sigh relief. Absolutely, Stingray now feeling a little bit better, being able to finally put one on the board. Yeah, man. I mean, that was it, it was it was looking a little scary too. He threw that weapon away uh, at the later half of that. You know, like the one of the last maybe 20 seconds of the game. Threw that weapon away. I was a little scared for him. I was like, you don't want to be unarmed in the last part of the game. <laughs> Uh, not against Boomy, but he was able to find another weapon and still, uh, you know, steal himself down and manage to get that W. So now 2-1 Boomy, thinking about it, trying to figure out what, what was that? Yeah, like origami in his hand? Like, <laughs> did he snag a Rubik's Cube? <laughs> on the table like, can somebody investigate? <laughs> we might be missing one. <laughs> Just a quick solve right now. All right, I'm back in it. <laughs> I had to make sure my brain was on. So. Say, trying to look for the pathing on how he makes sure that his path to victory stays Three, the same. And two, so far, one, the draw. stats have proven that well, Haven has been the way for him, so we're going to go back. We're going to get away from APOC. We're going to get back onto what was working before and already very similar to the previous matches. He started off hot, but he does miss a D-Light. Doesn't matter, though. No, he had to read there, too, but he still misses that D-Light. If that continues to happen, Stingray's going to start to notice and get more confident. Right. Okay, that, I don't know why that felt like it did nothing. <laughs> it's like just, just a big breeze. It's like, it's like a little hot. It's like, yeah, step back. Got the fan now, but all right. Stingray has really been performing here in the later half of this set. Boomy starting to let this set escape him. Good stuff right there from Stingray. Just great uh, shrink and then also just a slight touch for the finisher. Nice. Very similar to how that other game went where he brought it all the way back in game number one. He missed the first time he missed the NSYNC punish and then he would doubled up on it. That time going all the way down there to guarantee he gets that hit. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time I think in a while, especially on Small Brawl Haven, that he actually started the game with the lead. Mm -hmm. He needs to be able to build on it now though because Boomy's always answered right back. All right. So yeah, now Boomy, he's do he does have the damage, but he just needs to find out how to get the stock. And the, the delays are definitely starting to catch. Oh, I mean, Stingray, uh, he's been getting mixed on timing, and there's been uh, the early part of the set has all been immediate. And now Boomy is like, I'm going to wait for this dodge. I know you're going to give it to me, so. And now it's time to heavily guess from this point mm -hmm. forward, too. It's like in panic scenarios, especially in your elimination round game that could be happening here. He is, he's got his back against the wall once again, being here uh, down two to one. But Stingray still looks much better compared to those first couple games. Yeah. I think Boomy's done a good job of now, uh, um, you know, conditioning him into thinking, all right, I'm going to wait. So I think the next time he goes for another sideline, he probably is going to drop an immediate uh, reaction after. I, Unless, think, too. I think it's going to be, I think it's be right away, but he needs to get that damage on ASAP for that weapon. Stop to try and stop him, but Stingray actually sneaks his way back underneath. He has the lance in hand. Doesn't even need to go for the cider. He's just going to catch him poking above the ledge, and Stingray still holding onto the lead. The shots are out, man. He is definitely finding the hits on his SIGs. He, uh, the down SIGs have been hitting. The neutral SIGs have been hitting. Oh, man, he's just, just go ahead and finish it off. Find yourself a side SIG somewhere in here, man. Here we go. Ogos is starting to come through now, too. It looks like Stingray feeling really good about himself. Going to miss out on the side light, but it doesn't matter. He finds a D-Light anyways. Here's another follow-up side there. That's three hits in a row for him. Four. Web toss up, looking to try and carry him all the way off the top. Oh, man. Yes, it is not looking great for Boomy here. Going to lose his weapon, too. The weapon toss here. And now maybe the weapon toss down. No, doesn't he? He's going to keep weapon in hand just so he can get the down air. And then the finisher with the weapon toss after Stingray uh, absolutely dominating that fourth game. You asked for a game five. He delivered. Ask and shall receive. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I want to see it because even though I personally would like to see Boomy win, yeah. I also want to see Stingray come back to form because... He's still good for that. He's been, even with the quote unquote underperformances, they've still been top eights. They've still been there, but it's not what we were seeing where he was three, always finding his two, way back into that top three. One, Is this the time? Because last year, like we said, he had one of the best game five sets we saw the entire tournament. We maybe see another one here up against Boomy. Yeah, man, dude, look at this graph, man. He, my boy is avoiding damage, man. These are just long lows of damage uh, where Boomy has just not been able my to God. do, man. That, just long lows where Boomy has not been able to get these hits here. So Stingray, not only is his offense going up, but his evasion has gone up uh, tenfold as well. So, Boomy definitely got to figure something out, man. He's starting to uh, lag behind here on Stingray when he had such a, a hot start at the, of this set. 
Yeah, just looking back at that, I didn't realize that last stock actually was a perfect stock. He didn't get hit mm -hmm. that entire stock against Boomy. So, uh, looking a little bit different now, though. Boomy getting something started, but that is once again the first KO going in favor of Stingray. Uh oh, Stingray said, "I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put my name on the map for sure." I, again, there was not much of a difference in their PR between them, so you were expecting to see a good match, and that's exactly what we got. Looked like it was gonna be a 3-0 for a second. Now into game five, and it's going back and fourth between them. Oh, you love to see it. Once you see an answer like that, things are starting to really pick up. It's starting to heat up in the competition, and Stingray just trying to dash around, looking for a weapon a spawn to finally show up. It does. Cider comes through, and he is keeping Boomy out. Okay. Dance moves on him real quick. Try to yeah. yeah, he's keeping Boomy out. I mean, he's, the, the stage control has been all on uh, Stingray's side on the later half of the set for sure. Boomy is kind of struggling to find the answer Still to getting around his lance. Well, I think the answer he needs is the spear, but he cannot get to it because he needs to find an opener and just stall out time before he can. But at least he finds some openers, misses out on the follow-up nair, gets a dare, and he keeps looking for these nairs, but he keeps just missing. Yeah, this is not looking uh, great for the gauntlet just yet, but managed to get, there he is, finally gets himself a spear in hand, but is it too little, too late? He's already hurt here, Stingray can just continuously play this edge guard game, push him off the stage, start putting the pressure out there. Umi has a guest right on one of those side light into D lights uh, in a good while. And there's yet another reversal. That's like the fourth time now where we've seen Stingray just hop over. He's not letting him get that call. Okay. Let's get Dancel looking for the weapon. Stingray making it real hard for Boomy to do anything. The wait this time around for both sides, actually. A very uh, long air dodge coming in from Stingray. And uh, Boomy still trying to, like, you know, wait it out, but still. That was uh, very smart from Boomy, uh, or Stingray to now know how Boomy has been moving off his side lights and to continuously counteract it. And yeah, Boomy just hunting, one dude, and lights will do it. Okay, so we get to that last stock. He kept hunting for the D light or a GCD light to be able to get him in that position to try and front hunt that recovery again. But now, here's a prime opportunity for Boomy. He misses the Nair again, but he is at least in a spot where he's now actually hitting him with the gauntlets again. Yeah, I think this is probably like if he wants to do some gauntlet play right here, this is the weapon he needs to be trying to fight against because gauntlet versus lance match right now, and uh, with him specifically, has not been looking good for him. Uh oh, this could uh -oh. be an issue. Big damage, and it is an issue. The pop off, he's like, I'm here. What's good? The reverse 3 0 from Stingray, he does that. Every single time he kept looking for the reverse D light to try and be able to get that carry, he kept missing, but it doesn't matter as long as the final one that hits. They both got into a spot where they weren't getting caught on that D light after the side light, but Stingray is finally the one to make it happen. And like you said, the reverse 3 0, it's. It's something he just keeps doing. It's something about land and the presence and the pressure of the crowd. He just always makes it happen. Dude, there's something about like the knowing that you're down 2-0 and like not giving up. Finally getting that first win and being like, you know what? I can do this. Like, that's the type of resolve you definitely need. And that's exactly the resolve that we got from him. Now, again, as we go through these replays, you can see, like, there's a, a big change in, in the flow of this match. I mean, Boomy was really on top of things on those first two games. Even in the third game, I feel like he was pretty on top of things. But after that W from Stingray, it just felt like Stingray was like, you know what? I, actually, I'm in control. I am the captain. That's what he said. <laughs> I am the captain of this ship now, and right now the only place that you can take your ship to is the elimination side of bracket. Boomy has, like we said, well, quite a, a question mark sometimes because like he's performed extremely well, and then there's been a lot of streaks where we were wondering when is Boomy coming back to that prime form, and now he's got to take that question mark into the limb side of a bracket. And I'm actually really curious about something, so I'm going to look it up because we were talking about that game five last year. Stingray bringing it all the way game five. I cannot remember whether it was Wes or Kaina that he did it against, but well, I'm going to take a look right now because if that is the rematch from last time, that is going to be insane. Uh, and I think it was against. Was it against? Was it against? What? It was Kaina. Was it Kaina? I love when you see that damage spike on the on the thing because you know exactly what happened. Just looking at it, you're like, ah, this is when this man took a million damage and also lost that game. So. Oh. Big, rough form right there. Yeah. I'm really excited. What's up? Because this is, in fact, that rematch. Okay. Stingray will be remaining on that stage after getting that reverse 3-0 against Boomy. A very similar thing happened last year where we went to a Game 5 situation in the quarterfinals to see if maybe kind of one of the people we expected to make it all the way up to the top did not make it because he was stopped by Stingray.
Yeah, man. We're gonna have rematch. to rematch. What we got coming up next? We're gonna have to see how he plays this time. I, I'm, I'm excited. I always like to see rematch. I always like to see the storylines. You know what I mean? Like, I always like to see someone who off that confidence. Like, is he gonna take that confidence into the next game? You just got a reverse 3-0. A solid, dominant reverse 3-0 there of that last game too. I mean, it was down to the last dock for sure. But like, you, did you see the damage? My man yeah. did not have no damage he here. Just won't get hit. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it was. That's the big difference that happened over those past couple games. Is that early on, Boomy was having a field day. It was just clipping after clip after clip. If you cut it off at the beginning of game number one, you would assume Stingray just got washed. But at the end, Boomy couldn't hit him because he couldn't find an opener with gauntlets. And anytime he tried to get the, uh, to the spear, he just kind of got outplayed yeah. in that matchup. So <laughs> Stingray minimized and said, nah, it, it's over for you. Yeah. So uh, this is going to be a... <laughs> it's going to be... This man decided it's gonna be a slobber knocker. I mean, we're just waiting for him to uh, set up on stage, but I'm glad you guys are enjoying some BCX 2020 23 action. We know exactly what we're gonna be getting into here because, well, one, BCX is amazing. I mean, we've been to so many of them now, but two, just with everything that happened this year, like with all the stories between the uh, the Royales, the champs, like you knew coming into BCX 2023, we was gonna get some some crazy uh, matches, and this is gonna be one of them, man. I'm I'm. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. This plays right into the big storyline, the big question mark that everybody's been asking. Is South America truly the new number one? And they sure as hell made that case with how many they took. They took, I believe, four of the lands over this past year. A couple of them going to use and then spread out a little bit, but we joke about it all the time. Those who won the lands could lose to the other people they brought because they came out here strong. I believe it's 10 of them that came up. Imagine if we had to fight all of them. They have been so strong, but one of the best reps is coming up next, and he got stopped last time, so this could be another potential shot. We're in twos. They got stopped. They both got it. Two teams got into fifth place, but they did not make that Final Four Championship Sunday. Does Stingray help to prevent yet another one from finding the way towards Championship Sunday? Yeah, okay, we're gonna have to find out, man. I, I'm, uh, I'm looking over here at the stats real quick just to see what they're, what they're about to be getting into, man. It's uh, five games. They have one match right now, so it's one, one. Five games to three. Uh, that's five games, four kind of to the three of Stingray. So obviously, I mean, it's not split down the middle, obviously. But the thing is, like. This could still go either way, you know? Stats not gonna tell you that just off the games alone, but the matches will tell you that it could definitely go either way. So they're trying to break that. They wanna they wanna break that and make it happen. And we're gonna go ahead and make it happen with Glitter on the stage. And she's gonna talk to Stingray after that incredible last set against Boomy. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to, talk to Stingray here. We were just kind of chatting about it a little bit. Phenomenal performance in that last match, knocking Boomy down to the elimination bracket. So talk me through how you're feeling right now. Um, I'm a little bit... I'm like, I think I was scared against Boomy at the start, so I think I'm warmed up now. I didn't practice. I've only played like one best of three today against uh, Flower. So now that I, like I lost those two games and I was noticing that I was moving like really sluggishly, but I kind of brought it back. So now my hands are kind of moving faster now, so I should be good for the rest of the tournament. And it was enough of like a, uh, I, was, I also got two hours of sleep, but that set, like the adrenaline went so high that like I'm probably not going to be tied for a minute now. So I should be good, yeah. Yeah, you'll definitely be good for a while. Do you think that uh, you'll be able to carry now that momentum into this next, this next match? And like we've heard the casters mention a couple times, people were mentioning it in the back as well. This is a little bit of a rematch now for you. Yeah, um, I should be able to. I, I hope so, obviously. Um, I don't really know. I haven't fought kind of in a, in a minute, so we'll just see how it goes. All right, well, I like the... The, the, the humility that you've got going on right now, especially after a performance like that. Uh, I'm going to let you get set up, but before I do that, final thoughts so far on this year's BCX and your experience. I think this is like the most stacked tournament of all time in the history of the game. I have to fight kind of right now for top 32. This is like we fought last BCX in top five of the tournament and we're fighting again for top 32. So it's hard. Like it's, it's so hard. And the only way you can win is just by like constantly just trying your best like over and over. So that's my thoughts on BCX this year, yeah. All right, well, best of luck. Like you said, this is gonna be a tough match, so get yourself situated. Guys, back on over to you. All right, that is, uh, that's the talk of someone who's like, <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm just gonna try to do my, everyone has said that pretty much today. It's like, hey, how do you feel your match? I'm not sure, I'm gonna do my best. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not wrong. It is <laughs> it's not wrong. the most stacked. Like, you, your bracket path being boomy into kind of, into just trying to get in the top 32. We were talking about how they have played against each other before. They got a little bit of history. It's a lifetime one-to-one -one score. He won that fifth place finish, uh, position before. He was able to make it to top four. But when they rematched up against each other at the Winter Royale, 
kind of got his revenge. He was able to get the dub back. So now it's about breaking that. But that was the Winter Royale. It's a big invitational event. You're trying to be able to get your name out there to get that king title. But this is the world championship title on the line. So this one is going to matter a ton if he can get another dub or if Kaina can send a message saying that was just one. Yeah, man. You saw the stats again, man. Both of these guys seasoned players. They got they got W's. Uh, I mean, kind of got a couple more golds there, but they definitely got W's and then just high placings all together. Looks like we are ready to go. Big shout out to uh, Scareshot and production and, and crew uh, with all the good stuff that we got going on up, up there. And also making sure our players are in ready, comfortable, Seated well. Yep. The unsung you know, heroes it. always are those who work Production. behind the scenes to be able to make everything happen. Production does not get this uh, get get the same spotlight as everyone else, but they make everything look phenomenal as we get ready to get into this match. Curious to see whether Kaino will be rocking that Taros or not. He's been kind of changing things up a little bit here and there. Uh, feeling Three, really comfortable two, with it before, one, and it seems ball. like that's exactly what we're going to see here. The Roman Reigns has shown up, and Stingray running it still hot with that Orion. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, it really just depends on how if he's ready for this change of pace. You know, you got. Gotta get, uh, keep in mind that these are two totally different players. I mean, everybody has their difference uh, in style and whatnot. Also, you're playing against that South American aggression. So yeah. you, gotta get, you gotta get ready for that too. And they have, their defense has really been a uh, staple of this last year, too, because they mm -hmm. always had insane hit advantage. You talk about the average of uh, those previous games, they were getting like 46 per engagement. That's just, that's a day of the week yeah. for, for South America. They are scrapping right now, but like it really has been more so on the side of kind of, he's been getting uh, the better of the stray hits. Uh, we keep getting like small hits from Stingray, but he's not able to turn that into like the big damage or the combo damage that he kind of needs. From oh, nice step back from Kinda, knowing exactly where you're gonna be, and then immediately punishing that for the stop. That patience was insane. Mm -hmm. All he, he didn't actually go anywhere. It's the no mix mix. It's like I know you're afraid of the potential recovery here. I know you're afraid of me going for a ground pound, but I don't need to move. We're on Demon Island. You go below me, I'm gonna ground pound you. You decide to play that game, then. I'm still good. I got full stage control and kind of makes you feel lost in those spots. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, okay. I thought I was like, are we still going for the Russian Mafia, bro? <laughs> like, it's about to be hype, bro. I haven't seen that in a bit. Brazilian mix-up right now. Mm -hmm. They've been going with South America. They're taking over all the names. So we're going to see another KO in favor of Kaina. I think he's sending a message pretty early. All right. I think, I think for a while, so I was just calling it whatever with the R's. I, mean, I was like, the ramen noodles. <laughs> it is what it is. But, oh, man, there we go. Getting right back. Finally gets himself a stock. But, man, very, very, very far uh, down as you are one full stock now. Don't got any damage now. Starting to find some hits here and there. Sometimes I think, you know, Stingray just needs a little time to, like, one, acclimate, and two, like, he's a warm-up player yeah. for sure. I don't think he, that those type of players kind of, it's unfortunate because you don't always want to have to lose to start getting some yeah. Ws, but yeah. You, you heard it from him, too. You said he was playing a little scared against Boomy, uh, Boomy in game one, and then he started picking up. And very similar in game one, he was behind two stocks, and he brought it all the way back. We're about to look at what Stingray is going to do exactly that again. It is all full warm-up. He needs two stocks to throw away before he actually starts to remember how to play. How, was he, well, how does he do this? He's just like, you know what? I, he just tapped in, bro. He's got to turn it on. It's that, that it's that delayed start. He's still on dial up. Everybody else is out here on lands. Like the, you got you got you got to pick it up, man. Yeah, bro. He's on that still. Yeah, he just he just got broadband. He's like thinks it's the quickest in the world. Like nah, bro. That's gonna be a quick victory though. Four kind of does not take any da uh, any damage here on that last uh, stock at all, and just kind of easily handles that business. Also, very very big fan of the fact that my man has the uh, the hammer out. Because, like, last year we saw no no hammer. Like, there, that was not a thing. It disappeared. And he's one of the main believers that, in uh, how that hammer can work right now. And just Taros in general can work right now. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people were kind of pushing the bow bars away, the Taros is away because they didn't like it. Mm -hmm. But once Stop Sarah and everything started coming back, like, the damage output is still there. And a lot of people are playing real aggressive right now with Spear Three, or Lance trying two, to rush in. One, Do that in front of Taros. See how much you like it. Yeah, it's not a good time. So here we go. As we get into our, oh, okay, into our next game. Man, get scooped up. Where are you going? He makes he makes hammer look like a combo weapon. It does. It actually is insane. Now, speaking of combo weapon plays, Stingray going for a whole five piece. Gets another end take. He's still chasing. Okay. Bro, all right, do it. Do it one more time. The At confidence this point, I want to see another one. Yeah, the confidence is out right now. I was definitely like, very confident on the, on the uh, down six. He's like, you know, I remember the neutral six. He's like, you know what, man? I'm about to start dunking, bro. I'm slam jamming. <laughs> Here we go. When's a LeBron crossover? I, it's got to be him. I was, trying to really, I was trying really hard to remember the NBA GM yell, and I could not remember how to get it out. I, I failed you. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Stingray, I mean, like, he's really – he's def the ball is in his court right now. He has absolutely changed the way that the game was playing previously. And once again, the double dribble on Roman Reigns. 
already started things off hot. My man is throwing out some signatures. Like, <laughs> I got to use the whole, I can't say six. I got to say the whole thing, the amount of signatures that man just threw out. Oh, everything, everything had to happen right there, but kind of, you know, not going to allow that to shake him at all. Does not get the ground, but wait, this, oh, that could have been a crazy turnaround. He kind of oh, goes wait, up instead easy. of down. That okay. would have been real bad for kind of losing that in the yellow if he stole that. I would have traded it off easily. You would go down two to one, but you were in yellow yeah, every day of the week. Yep. Kind of just trying to look for that last hit here on Stingray. Guarding that weapon for dear life. Oh. Good patience on both of them there, too. Just waiting for one of them to budge so he can sneak through. Doesn't actually pick it up because he anticipated the fact he'd run up and try to go for the D-Light, but kind of still just gets advantage out of that. He is painted red at this point, so maybe he wants to keep whatever weapon is locked right now. Because if you get KO'd, you end up losing out what you want. So we'll see what was available. I think the next one was Lance. Okay. Yep, uh, he ends up getting the, uh, getting the Lance, and now he's back with uh, the weapon. I feel like this is definitely not his uh, particular weapon of choice, but he's making good work of it here uh, in this match for sure. I, you know what? It might actually be because of this. He's been getting very accurate hits consistently with the N-Sync, d -sync. It doesn't matter. He's finding his hits, so I, I maybe just the idea of being able to close it out. There we go again with another uh, like slide off d -sync. But yo, you were, <laughs> you were talking about it before. He has no fear whatsoever to throw him out, and he's not getting punished too hard by Kaina. No, he is not. I'm, I'm going to be excited to see that number at the end. I know, that, <laughs> I know that's going to be a high number of six that this man is throwing out. Uh, and the accuracy, I mean, it's not bad on the accuracy either. He has hit quite a bit of them uh, as well, so can't take anything away. It's not like it's, uh, you know, it's not broke, don't fix it type deal. Yep. Uh, he, he's making it work. I mean, not all of them, but a good amount of them, enough for you to be like, you know what, I see why you're throwing these six out. He's looking oh. confident there, too. A couple of just dodge read punishes with the pogo. Not even go for a huge combo, but that is the best case scenario you could have asked for from oh, Kaina. Yeah. Minimize the damage, and he could not find the wall. Yeah, could not find the wall at all. Just a quick down air to go ahead and send him under the stage. Gonna make it even harder for him. So now kind of though. Oh, ooh, that would have been a huge pickup if he was able to get that up there. That That's that kind of play that I want to go over there and just like shake his hand. Mm -hmm. I'll say, like, you know what? You got it. You got it. He's like, I'm going to steal a game. I'm leaving here with something. Right now, he's trying to see if he can leave here with a W. He's currently behind 1-0. to o. Can he actually close out this game? He was looking very good before, but Stomp's there coming through. Kind of is uh, he's starting to recognize his approaches as he punishes the sidelight. Kinda. Oh, his dash movement is crazy. He's, he's actually just not budging, but Stingray keeps whipping in front of it. There's a side light. Oops. <laughs> it worked. All right, cool. It worked. Like, you know, it worked out. It's like, bro, he just stood there in front of it. Man, I mean, he actually freed up that entire side. Now that I think about it, he actually got so much space for that actually working out, man. Threw it up. Bonk. <laughs> and then hit him with the uppercut, got back to stage, and then ends up finishing the game. I love that, bro. If he works, it looks like it. He looks like a genius. If you just spot dodges that or fades back and acts like, okay, nothing was gonna happen. I'll take the hit. I'll yeah. maybe come up, but that whole situation actually did end up leading to Stingray <laughs> leading the game. This. Uh -oh. All right, I, I, we didn't I, get the whole thing. Is, That's funny though. It is mandatory that that moment ends up on the dev stream later, just so everybody else <laughs> take a look at the crowd. Everybody's been showing up more and more as the match is progressing. Everybody's been having a good time. Shout out to every one of you who came out here to BCX. For yeah, I, man, I I've been meeting you. a lot of people for the first time as well. This is their very first land, and what a spectacular one to come to. Yeah, no, I talked to a guy yesterday. He told me he had to take four flights to get here, and I was like, where are you from? He's in Michigan. I was like, what happened? Say, what, <laughs> are, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, what happened, he brother? Get you a, a, a booking manager now. I, I, I was going to think he was going to tell me some like Lithuania or something like that. <laughs> like, just, you know, like, give me a, give me a out of country, but nah, I'm, I'm in the States. I just got unlucky. I was like, all right, well. But to be fair, Midwest is kind of like a, a, all right. a lost. All right. So, <laughs> nobody's really actually in the Midwest. But we, we got uh, game number three here. Uh, kind of uh, was looking much better that game and just couldn't finish it at the end because very interesting choices. But uh, that's the big thing, though, is that kind of still was able to bring it back after what was looking like a Stingray dominant start with those multiple combos. And once again, very similar to that last game. Yeah, I think right now Stingray has a very, very simple plan that is just working. He's like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you a bunch. You're going to get burnt up, and then you're going to dodge in, and I'm going to be there with the blaster, ready to go. And that's a huge hitbox on that uh, neutral sig, too. So it's very hard to like do anything but dash back, and if he reads that, he's just going to dash with you do the same thing. So you might just have to start trying, trying to dodge on reaction, which can be a little hard. Does find a way to even that game quickly from the middle of the stage right there, just hitting that. Uh, oh, it's gone. You it's because I put my yeah, back yeah, up that's here, fair. it's had to fall. Yeah, middle, middle of the stage, though, with the uh, down height into... Oh, oh, wait. Camera combo. Oh, wait a minute. 
Hey, yo, this is a dominant. It's like, oh my god, what a dominant play from Kaina. Untouched entirely on that. Not one, not two, but three straight reads. The crowd is feeling that one, too. Yeah, that's a message. Yeah, bro. That kind of is not a kind man, okay? He said, this, this stage is mine. You're not allowed to have it. He is in hospital right now. Left stick would never, okay? Left stick would never allow this to happen. That's so Not crazy. our king. Not, not our king. Not our king, bro. Right now, the recovery coming back through for Stingray. Trying to make something happen, but at the moment, that has not been the case. Get the trade off there by looking for that recovery into the ground pump. Not one, not two. Unless you go for a third side air. Stop sale will be it. That was a dominant performance over those last two stocks for Kaina. And still, completely stoic. No emotions. This man is about business. The hammer is back. That's what he said, bro. <laughs> the hammer is back in full like force right now. That was crazy. I... I'm so happy because yeah. that's basically how last year started playing out. It was kind of looking similar to this. And then we got brought to that insane game five. So at bias, of course, again, I love good matches. I need to see Stingray at least bring it to that game five mm -hmm. to try and replicate that magic that happened last year. And this is only just to get into winner's side top 32. Yeah, that was, man, I, he said it too. You know, he said it's most stack tournament all time and it feels like that. This definitely is what could have been finals. It still could be finals. Regardless of who goes down here, this still could become finals depending on the, uh, the way these brackets shake out for the rest of their time here. But wow, kind of. Absolutely saying, you know, I understand you got that win. That means nothing to me. Yep. That's what he said. You got a game. You got Three, a chance. There two, is five games one, to be played. Roll. And right now we're going to take another trip back to the temple. It's been a little while, but I kind of like it because the soft platform was what was helping Stingray a little bit to get away from some of those spots. After the way he got jumped in that match, you need a couple new landing options to get away from those stomp stairs. Actually, just get away from kind of period. Man, did you, did you look at the chart, bro? That middle stock, he wasted no time. The 75% time on Hammer, 461 damage dealt. Man was doing work. 47 per engagement, his accuracy was up as well. I mean, the, absolutely the Hammer was back for him. And so now Stingray's got to be on notice uh, about how to play against Kaina's Hammer. And then on top, I thought he was gone. Right, I, I thought I, he was gone, Kaina's bro. actually a bully right now. Like, this is nuts. There's another stomp. Sarah, he has been refusing to get opened up in a while. That was the strength that Stingray had as the match progressed against Boomy, where he kept consistently finding the openers that Boomy was being able to use. He shut him down. It is now kind of doing the exact same thing to him. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely insane how this one is <laughs> this one is shaping up, man, because the, the matchups, the matches look like, you know, no one's really getting ran away or ran uh, up on. But this last game, for sure, like, my man kind of was like, I'm actually in, oh, I'm playing 110%. Stingray's got to catch up. He's got to, you know, put more force uh, in to this match. He's got to start making things happen because kind of just going to run away with the set like it's nothing. And he's uh, trying to go for some big plays right now. Look for that GCD sig to see if maybe kind of would pop up in front of it. But the D-Light misses out. He could have tried to go for the Seraph finisher. He needs one good finisher. There's the D-Sig. Once Stingray starts finding those hits, that move is what allowed him to win last time. And it's usually what helps him clutch out many a set. I'm sure we're going to start seeing that show back up here. Ooh. And there it is. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> It seems like he seemed to remember something. A big part of the key factor, what makes it work, <laughs> he's going to do it one more time. Requested for it and immediately getting it to hit is crazy, too. So, all right, Stingray, though, he is hurting the one in this second stock. He's got he, he tried, tried it. He tried, he tried, <laughs> he tried to do it again. <laughs> It, it's, it's a little bit of a two-parter, too, because it almost feels like you're trolling, and it'll make someone get real confused. It's like, what in the world are you doing in neutral, bro? Why are you doing this? But Why is it working? It's working. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That time it finally broke, and it got shattered by that side air. Yeah, I think kind of that time was just looking at I me. Mean, he was definitely playing the ground game, but he was playing very close, uh, you know, the, the quick ground game, so he could just jump around that and find that hit. Now Stingray going to get on to the Lance. Can he turn this into some good damage? Got two pokes here. Fortunately, though, ooh, big three piece. We talk about those soft platforms as a way to escape, but it's actually just been combo extender territory mm -hmm. for Kaina. He was looking for one right there, but never found a hit. Nice. Like that. Not going for a defensive option. Actually, just puts out. <laughs> oh, 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 my. That was a man. <laughs> you could have just walked off the stage after that, bro, if you got that to hit. Don't even shake his hand. Just nah, leave. Nah, like, yeah, yeah. No, like he, he deserves one of those trophies up there if that finishes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you just got it. Right, here we go. Side, one side light. <laughs> there we go. Can we get another? Make something happen, but the neutralites can send him back off stage. It's starting to feel like, like kind of just refusing to give this one away. It is his game to lose the way he's been playing. Uh-oh.
He had the grimiest smirk on his face when he stood up. <laughs> Hugs going out. What a great set again, but kind of now moving up lifetime in that 2-1 set count. <laughs> you got your one last time. The swift bonk on the head. I swear, that's like IRL. If he had this spatula, he would have threw at it across the stage. Dog, the, the, the sound effects of this game are just so good. <laughs> think, don't game. <laughs> that's it. Bro. Well, what a great run so far from Kaina, man. We were talking about the run that Stinger had to go through, too, to be able to get to here. But it's it's been very similar for Kaina as well. Kaina had to uh, play up against Flower a little while ago, who has been on a tear. And that actually went game number five. So Flower almost had a huge upset mm -hmm. over in the winner's side of bracket, but that's not how they ended up playing out. And instead, Kaina gets uh, yet another rematch here, taking it, and he'll be up. Whoa, he'll be going up against Munir instead of Snowy. Munir has been on a tier of late too. That that was a three to one set. Yeah. I am actually very much looking forward to that one later. Man, that was. I don't know what what he said to kind of between sets, but he said something. He fired that boy up, man, or between games, because that was just nothing but destruction there on the on the last half of that uh, set. You know, it was good to see this thing was able to get a, a game for sure. But yeah, no, kind of was like, you know what? This is a, this, the reason why I have more games is because of this type of gameplay right there. So they are one one. Uh, they're now one two one, and that was a very dominant uh, two right there coming yep. in from kind of. Uh, we were talking about it many times over that trophy right there may find its way back to Brazil. South America has been so good this year. They have so many of those they have brought back home. And from that performance right there from Kaina, definitely making a case for being one of those to try and take it back. Yeah, I mean, I got, I, I do have Kaina in my top three. As I said, you know, it's, I have Kaina Laura's in, in Sandstorm. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people here, and there's a lot of ways that this top eight can shake out. So I would be surprised if any of our predictions actually come true. But I still have Kaina up there really making it happen. Look at this chart, man. Look at the chart. My boy was doing that. The hammer is back. 362 damage with the hammer. Absolutely making it work. We got good accuracy as well. 47% accuracy on his uh, light attacks. Didn't even throw any six. Everything was just light light attacks. You don't with the hammer, you kind of don't need six. But yeah. That doesn't even need it. But what everybody does need to do is get your phones out. And get ready to scan the QR code real quick because we want to give a shout out, of course, to Make a Wish Foundation, who's been out here. Uh, out in, I believe in the lobby right outside. If you are here, make sure you go check it out. Uh, love the organization, love everything that they do, and love that they have been supporting here at Brawlhalla. So make sure you scan the QR code here, one of the official charities of BCX 2023, and go there and donate towards that and help make a wish today. Yeah, man. Also, you get you know you get a nice little uh, little, little piece of Brawlhalla to take home with you. Get the wish maker icon as well. So definitely come on through, man. Man, like we, we appreciate it. We appreciate them for coming through to see, see the event and uh, chatting with us and uh, letting us know what they do, but also, you know, making wishes come true. Hey, take a minute to go ahead and help out with that as we go to a break. We'll be right back with more of the BCX action.
Welcome to Brawl Hall of ECX 2033 Championships as singles continues to play out. We've seen already a couple amazing matches, including a rematch, a, a reverse 3 0, and some more still to be played. And one of our favorite players coming back up, and one of my favorite people to talk to, of course, back on stage here with Glitter, talking to Cody Chavez. Thanks so much, guys. Right, hanging out with Cody here, chatting a little bit. Uh, first question we're obviously heading into a match with you in the elimination bracket, but I want to hear about your experience so far in the entire tournament. Okay. So I really don't play ones anymore, really, but I don't know. That could change one day if the ladies think so. But mainly for twos, I've just been grinding and playing with the on. I think I did well this tournament, but if you ever catch him lacking by himself, you might want to ask him his experience on twos. But for me, I just enjoy twos a lot. All right, I'll make sure I'll remember that. And if I do get a chance to chat with him, I will definitely. Three. All right, he plays a three. We'll remember that and see if we can grab him for a chat as well. Um, I heard this in the back, though. I wanted to ask you about it. Recently graduated from school. So tell me a little bit about that, because not only are you competing, but you're also doing big things in real life as well. So I just, you know, work nowadays, game, kick ass, the typical stuff. But some people think I'm a doctor. I'm not. I work with doctors. Let's not get that confused. All right, you know what? I love it. I love it. Uh, before we, we get you into this match, everything's on the line here. I know you said you you're not too concerned with ones, but what's the vibe? How do you feel heading into this match? If I win, I win. If I don't, I don't. Simple stuff. All right, I like the, the, the no stress attitude. Also, where's the jacket from? I'll show you another time. How about that? Okay. Real leather. Real leather. All right. Fashion. Absolute fashion icon. I'm going to let you go get set up, ready for your match. Guys, I want to hear your thoughts on the fashion on over here on the stage. Absolute riz coming out from this man. <laughs> Crazy riz. I mean, astronomical riz coming out from Cody Trap. What is he on, bro? No, what look, is he on? I'm in. It's cooking. He actually just... <laughs> Destroyed the interview. <laughs> also, chat, I demand copy pastas now. <laughs> it's like the no. <laughs> Quantum Rizix coming from this man, bro. Hey, Look, remember, he, remember, whoa, 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 Quantum Rizix, remember, he's, he's, he, he doesn't actually work in physics. He's oh, that's right, no, he doesn't do that. Don't My get fault. that confused, though, My okay? Fault. Remember, he's not actually a doctor. Yeah, yeah. But surgical with the way he talked, though. <laughs> <laughs> I look though, I'm gonna be straight up though. I was wondering where that jacket was coming from. It was the way that he was standing too. Like that was a stance of confidence, bro. Yeah. They zoomed out, I saw the boots. I was like, all right, bro, you know what? You're allowed to be like this. You have to be like this <laughs> look, today. Look, you can't you can't beat that confidence. And a lot to back it up, of course, as we talk about the fact that Cody has been there many times over on that stage. So changing it up a little way, I know he's talking. He has sported many a gold medals, but of course in the past more so. We haven't seen as much Cody lately because he wasn't Three, back going two, to school one. and getting things. Up. Right now, see if he can take Money Holla to school as he brings out the classic of the Bar Barraza to try and get things done. All right, bro. They said Tr Cody Travis. <laughs> All right, bro. Chill out. We're going to find out if he can make something happen, though, man. You know, you talked to, talk to a decent game here on the uh, on the, you know on the interview, but we got to make these same type of Rizzy, Rizzy plays here on the screen. But at the same time, though, he did give up the... I win or I lose, and that, uh, that's a factual statement. Yep. You know what I mean? Someone's going to win and someone's going to lose. I will give it up for that, but uh, hopefully you want to be the one who's winning. Uh, Money Holla not trying to hear that, though. I will say, though, you know, he may have had the Riz, but Money Holla got the drip. Out here with the clean skin for Jay Yoon. See if he can maybe clean up the stock right now. Looking for the ground pound, and he actually forced Cody Just to forced go him. underneath. Mm -hmm. So all I got to say, bro, is you go up there and you talk like that, you can't be the one to drop the first stock. Yeah, man. 
I mean, it's, it's too hot in there, Cody. I mean, you don't have to take the coat off. You know, right? Like, you gotta, you know, you gotta, 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 gotta loosen up. You gotta be more comfortable on the sticks. Cody not having the first, uh, a good first stock there. You know what? If anything, though, if he gives up the first one uh, and he still wins, it's like, hey, I'm reliable. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I come through in the clutch. I said, I got a clock in the overtime. I got it. Okay. Don't worry. I always got you. <laughs> As he go ahead and he loses yet another stock. So, um. That's a whole lie. Money is actually speeding him down after that interview. I'm like, what the? Yeah, I feel like we can, we, have, we have to talk to money at some point. Like, how did you feel about that? He's like, I hated the wrist so much that I felt like I had to disrespect him in the game. Like, <laughs> my fault, bro. That real leather, but right now he is not weathering the storm. Mm -hmm. Not looking too good for him at the moment. But Cody is one of those people that does take a little bit of time, similar to Stingray, to kind of warm up a bit, get things going. Uh, one stock down is Barraza. You can absolutely bring this all the way back. One of the few people who you see blasters navigating around everyone so clean. Even with some of the changes to blasters, less people playing, Cody will always be there. Yeah, Cody said, I'm gonna, he said, I'm going to keep it up, basically. He's like, I'm going to keep the, the mantle alive. If you know Cody, you know Barraza. Like, that's what you know, man. He's been around for quite some time on this character. Oh, this might be a bad spot. Managed to make it through, though. All right. Oh! Wait a minute. Yeah, we talked about, I mean, very similar to that Stingray match a little while ago. We talked about people bringing it all the way back. Cody did exactly that. It's like, look, again, it's about the show. It's about the performance. It's not about me actually trying at the beginning. Let me show you when I try. Cody hitting us with the they had us in the first half for sure, man. I, uh, that's, that's what I'm kind of seeing right now. He may still be able to turn this to a W. I mean, he has a lot to work toward. But luckily, though, you know, he uh, still has a little uh, space to work with. Well, maybe not so much anymore if he ends up getting hit by a sick at the, at the side. Yeah, yeah, Money Hala, has, uh, it's been a little while since he's actually gotten a hit. I had to burn the dodge right there and getting stuffed out, too. So finally finding some ground. But the amount of damage you've taken in a while, that could have been it if Cody doesn't find that. If he tried it, yeah. All right, Cody. If he, I think I think off the soft platform straight up, if he finds a, a down light, he can go, go into recovery and take this game. Now from, from anywhere, Definitely. I think he can actually take it. Yeah, we're looking for it. Ooh, ooh okay. miss, misses out on the bridge fall off. He's trying to close this out anytime soon he can. And Money Hall hasn't ripped any six any point. Uh, we're at a window where it's kind of scary to do, but maybe just throwing out there might catch uh, might catch Cody slipping. Cody Travis. Okay, wait. Oh man, looking for the recovery too. I mean, long uh, uh, startup time on that recovery though. Sometimes kind of hard to hit like that. Cody Travis has made this right one now, all the way. He has brought this all the way back. I don't know how he did it. He was getting absolutely dismantled on those first two uh, stocks. And look at him. One away one. I mean, this last stock, last thing, look, did not get the enough power on that. And unfortunately, though, is going to drop it at the very end. Still, though, I know Cody Travis got to be feeling good because you were getting absolutely blasted, and you brought that to a last stock, last hit game. Yeah, you already know. You're going to hear it in the crowd. Sib Zone Money Holla up there trying to get things to happen. And the crew, after that start, the, the volume kind of started to drop down a little as Cody was bringing that all the way back, but he still finished it. So that deep sigh of relief, definitely one you needed after the way that match started to go. Yeah, man, I think you got to give it up to uh, Cody to stay resilient in there, though. It was like, you know, if, if this was uh, on the range chart, like he started off with a little rocky. And then, you know, he started saying some interesting things. He just still didn't get to take it. Still didn't get the number, though. That's where he messed up. He, he forgot to get the number. So this time around, Cody has got to figure out how to close, uh, be a closer. That's what he's got to do. When you said a little Rocky, I thought in my head immediately, he definitely has I had a Tiger on his playlist. Yeah. 100%. 100%. A absolutely. Oh, uh oh. Ooh. Three piece. Uh, Cody not trying to have that rep uh, the repeat of what happened game number one where he lost those two stocks very quick. Everything past that point started to look extremely Cody dominant. So even though uh, Money was able to get that one game, he's got to be able to replicate that success. All right. Okay. He's trying to get himself back down to the ground. Now, not, oh, no, no, no. let's go and look at those stats real quick to see what, how much he even had this in his hand. I mean, obviously the blasters, we know Cody for the blasters. Yep. Okay, so 399 damage, 294 on it, and then 10% equipped on the Axe. Axe did not do him really any favor. 69 damage, dealt 130 taken. So, yeah, he's going to want to try to get that out of his hand as quick as possible. And, well, your money said, you know what, let me help you. Yeah, yeah, all, <laughs> let like, me help you. Although blasters got nerfed, it's also really good at getting those whip punishes on when you try to go for bridges too often. Uh, but Money's kind of been answering that with being way more airborne. Oh, there you go. Falling into Dodge Reed. Get some four-piece out of that. Can he keep it going? Oh, there we go. Wait a minute. Okay, Money starting to really look like it. Cashing out every single one of these big combo strings. Man, yeah, what is, yeah, what happened to Cody Travis? Finally finds himself a stray recovery to get uh, that stock off. But look how much damage he's taking. He was taking, getting, taking left and right right there. Taking for a ride by Money Holla, who is now... Looks like he's going to be able to close this one out with one more good read. That's the mini game of making great sword work. It can be a little difficult because it's all based on conditioning your opponent in ways that you need them to go. And once again, 
very similar to that first game. Money is in the lead, mm -hmm. but he wasn't able to close it last time because it was a long stretch of not getting hits in. He can't let that happen again. All right. Let's see if Money Holly can make the big plays here to go ahead and turn this into a 2-1 or 2-0 uh, scenario. Right now, Cody Chavez fight back and always wait, always wait to the last uh, stock to really start putting some pressure on here. Yeah, it, it's, it, he's trying to be very careful about when he rushes into because he sees Cody has now hit the pump the brakes mode where he's kind of hanging back, waiting for him to whiff so he can get the swings in instead. Decides to dodge, opt in out though. Money Hall is not prepared to go chase after him, maybe with recovery, but goes for the side air instead. And Money getting pushed back off. Very similar position to last game still though, where Cody is bringing it back, but Money didn't actually give up the stock this time. And Lights won't do it either. Back into the axe in hand too. I just, you know, I don't really have, not to say that I don't have uh, faith in Cody's axe, um, I just currently right now off the stats that I've seen I know that it's been a little better for him to be on uh, The blasters, but he is looking for that uh, that kill and he does manage to get it So I, I understand so uh, why you want to stay on that for that specific reason the straight hits on the axe are going to do a little better than the straight hits on the blasters Unfortunately though, you're now at blasters on your last stock. You do not have a lot of time to work with Cody trying to see if maybe he can make some success happen. He was able to minimize damage in the previous ones, but he's still in KO windows. One mistake, will take it. Money looking for that potential mistake right now, looking for that side here, won't find it. Can he find a recovery maybe on a jump in? No, decides to stay grounded. There we go, and now Money Holler up 2-0 in the set count over Cody Travis right now. And you can see, like I said, the boys in the crowd, there's a lot of support. They're excited, they want to see him take it. Money Holly, I mean, he's he's doing a good job of showing you that he can take it for sure. Like he is doing, uh, he's doing a uh, great justice with that great sword, and he's really like kind of stifling Cody's games. Cody's still able to get his glass game going, but it has looked uncomfortable when he is on the uh, the axe so far. I mean, he got he got the stock. Uh, with the axe, but it was like if you look again, you know, if we look at the stats one more time, like again, 29% on the axe, the damage he's taken on that, 221 on the axe, and he's only dealt 135. So Cody's game pre match, fire. Cody's game in match, not so much so far. Not so much. <laughs> Have to step it up, man. All right, let's see what we can do in the, this game of three, though. Cody starting off pretty well. Now he's got the blasters in hand, he's actually starting to put some damage here on some money, uh, money holla. And that's what you want to see if you want to see Cody Chavez make it. Of course, Cody, another uh, one of those longtime fan favorites, been around since the very beginning. But right now, it's about the new age, and at the moment, Money Hall is continuing the show. The first couple of games were absolutely no fluke. This has been absolutely Money Hall set all the way through, except for that one singular mishap in game number one where Cody almost brought it back. Ooh. Nice little cross up right there. I'd like to see that. Uh, go ahead and get some stage control from uh, Cody. But Cody is looking for quite a bit of ground pound here from the Blasters. And I just don't really feel like he's set up that position to really look for that as much as he is. So it's starting to get him punished quite a bit. See, what is the answer that he's going to find? Because at the moment, the Blasters have not been able to find the same openers he was having before. You talk about it as well with the axe. You know, it, it finds its hits, but the amount of damage he's been taking in exchange for when he's done with his turn has been kind of against him, but he does finally find one with that cider going deep off stage. Yeah, and there it is. I mean, Cody has not taken uh, too much here on this second stock, but he is uh, at that point where, you know, if, if he ends up getting, like, hit and then an uh, air dodge is caught, like, he's losing that stock for yeah. sure. Cody can't afford to pretty much go down in the same position again. Last game, he was not able to bring it all the way back like he did before. That could have possibly led to it if he decided to go for a GC cancel to close it out off the side. But instead, and let's get to push him back off. We're going to get access to the sword. So Delight Sayer will take it out. But instead, decides to go back to try and cover the weapon. And Cody finds it. Cody. The, the ult. Not going to be able to make it back. Tries to get the high... Uh, you know, mobility of the recovery, but just immediately gets sniped out right at the end with that weapon toss. Money Holla, one stock away from the 3-0 over Cody Travis. Cody Travis uh, needs somebody to call uh, for, for the defense or something right now. We need to uh, get some life back in him mm -hmm. at the moment. Call, call, <laughs> contact some of those doctors. He needs some help. ASAP medical emergency because he is kind of struggling a little bit to get things to work out for him because Money has just been just playing so good. He left it all on in the interview, man. Like he really we got did. Co Cody was like, he was really that guy during the interview, and then after that he he sat down. And he was like, oh, "I'm shaking." That's not real leather anymore, bro. That that, that that's not nah. truly pleather, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> truly pleather. Oh man. Crocodile shoes, nah. Them just Crocs. All right, here we go. You just get it all the way down to the last stock. So 
we've seen it many a times before where people will be put in this position, but Money has been nothing but. He's been playing so good. He needs to just make sure that he keeps that same pace up here, TK, and he finishes it with that 3-0. Uh-oh. Okay, hold on. Now again, this is where Cody Travis, something about his last stock. He decides, oh, oh okay, Money Hollow's about to go a little crazy on him. He decides, this is where I want to play the game. But he may not get another chance to play the game. That was almost enough to take him off the top. So, oh, and that this is should be the closeout here if he finishes off the side. One D-Light side there, one closeout on, uh, one D-Light recovery actually near the soft platform could take it too. He is not an answer to the great sword and he will not find one as Money Hollow takes the set. Rio against Cody Travis. Does he, does he know it's over? I, I, oh, okay. I, I couldn't tell. He wanted, some, he wanted some more, bro. He is really living in the moment. He's <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to realize it, but man, what an incredible performance. It was a performance all the way through, though. Pre-game up yeah. to this point, into that, but Money Hall taking it 3-0 over Cody. I believe that actually puts him in top 32. No, that was actually, that was on the elimination side of bracket. Cody Travis is out. out. He's out, man. You know, the struck out twice. It's crazy. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> As as rough, bro. Rizzed up to, to, to lose combo. The chat was saying it was like true combo. It is. It is. That was, that's like the, we've never seen an IRL like taunt to get bodied almost, if you will, but I've never seen Riz to get bodied, bro. That's yeah. actually. Yeah. Uh, well, out, outside of a club setting, no. Never seen that. <laughs> well, very big depth room, of course, and a big a big fandom, of course, coming in from all his friends. We're in the crowd just like, just loving it. Just seeing everything, just living in the moment. And I mean, Sheepy. I mean. How do you feel? How you feel about the Bunny Hala? Don't ignore what Just for look him. at the, look at his boys out here. This is his poly, his, uh, his org too, right? Because he's reckoning, he's uh, representing Sib, which I believe is so icy boys. I, correct me if I'm wrong over here, but yeah, those were his boys out there cheering for him. So what can we say? Money Hala taking out what I feel like is an OG player, Kobe oh, yeah. Travis, also a, a previous champion at, at some point. Like, come on. Yeah. Come on, right? He said, you know, so, Cody says, I don't do a lot of singles, right? But he was like, well, for the ladies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for saying. the ladies, he'll do it. But like, does even if he doesn't do singles, you still know Brawlhalla. You still play Brawlhalla. So even if he's not known as a singles player, like, he's still a good player. And like, you saw it in the way that he played. I mean, a lot of those last stocks became a little scary for uh, for Money Hollow. Fortunately for him, after that set, it seems like he's still going to remain a single player. <laughs> but, uh, that was really well played by Money. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So you <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it that bad, but man, like, the message that you sent going up there beforehand, and like you said, this is something we expect to perform, even when he has been taking gaps. Like, Cody is always there, but this is BCX. It's where we get to see a lot of new faces really come up, and Great Sword isn't really on the map for many people. That's something that has kind of shifted away for many, but Money Hollow out here saying, hey, don't don't sleep on Jay Yoon just yet. He's still very much here. Yeah, especially on um, the Great Sword, the Sword play. My goodness, Money Hollow really showing up. And that was all the, like you said this, the elimination side. Oh my God, that means yes, Cody Travis is out. It's out. And honestly, I want to take a really quick peek here of like some of the last matches that you guys been casting and talking about. I mean, here it is, the, oh my God, that Kaina versus Stingray match. The one even before that, Stingray versus Boomy. We were like watching backstage and just reacting and like, oh my God, like, the, I, seriously, I was like, oh my God, the reverse three. Oh God, like <laughs> I was freaking out back there, was having my lunch. like. Y'all got some matches, okay? Now, I'm happy that we got some matches too, man. Like, you know, the first one, X, uh, XJ Cool J, even though it did end in a 3 L, Vol still showed some signs of life in yeah. that match for sure. Unfortunately, just was not able to clutch out a W. Stingray, I thought we were just, that was just gonna be it for him. Like, the two, the first two games, Boomy absolutely slapped. And then Stingray yep. was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna win now. Yeah, so <laughs> that's exactly what he did. Got the W, went to the next game, we got an interview with him. He said, uh, you know, I, I haven't played kind of in a while. This tournament's super stacked and kind of showed you just how stacked it was. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we talk about all the time is you need to believe that you're the best player in the room at all times. And when you start to second guess yourself against the stacked bracket of it is today, everybody believes they're the best player in the room at that time. And kind of really looking like it, not letting what happened last year happen again and continuing to show that South America is very much still here and still dominant in once. And what's crazy is that we're still in pools. Yep. <laughs> and these are some really high level matches that we're already seeing and we're only just starting in pools. We're still in pools. Well guys, 
We're going to take a short brick wall. And so while you're waiting, uh, be sure to check out the Make-A-Wish page on bcx.live to find out more. And of course, grab your Wishmaker title reward, which is exclusive for that. We're continuing in pools with Boomy versus Sla uh, Flower, so stay tuned.
We're back with day two of BCX 2023, and things are really heating up. And we got the dynamic duo of Taza and Dara here. How are y'all feeling about the tournament so far? Pretty excited. Taza and I had the pleasure of doing uh, the doubles top eight leading up till tomorrow top four earlier today. That was really, really exciting. Had some really insane matches. Um, and then we also just saw Cody Travis and Money Hollow. What happened? I mean, Money Hollow has had one of the best performances on stream in his life. And he's probably going to be having more of those as we get throughout the day. It's been really fun being able to watch these phase two pools, right? Because we kind of like, in doubles, we had that mixture of having the teams that were really good and some teams that we didn't really know about. And now we're so far along in the singles because of how many players are actually here to compete at PCX that we're getting some crazy matches. I mean, the, the elimination side matches that we've got coming up in this block alone are blowing my mind, Sheepy. Yeah, I mean, we're only in pool still, which is the crazy thing. Now, before we jump into the next match, which is Boomy versus Flower, let's see what Boomy actually has to stay. So, Glitter, I know you have him on deck there. I sure do. Also managed to finagle Flower up here with us, so now we're going to talk to both. Boomy, I want to start with you. Uh, tell us a little bit what it's like. Obviously, today's singles day. Yesterday was doubles. What's it like going back and forth between playing both ways when you're in a tournament? Yeah, it can be pretty difficult. Uh, something that I've done to help mediate it is generally I play the same character in both game modes and that helps a little bit, but swapping between them, it's it's pretty hard. All right, Flower, I want to ask you, we're obviously in the pools phase right now, playing to stay alive, to make your way through to Sunday. So what is the mindset like for a player in these moments? So basically, most people are just trying to stay in flow, just lock in, stay in the moment, not really you know, stress too hard because land can be, you know, you can have anxiety during land. So most people are just trying to lock in. All right, Boomy, I want to ask you, um, when you're in a tournament and if you hit a rough patch, is there something that you do or that like advice you can give up and coming pros, how to keep their mental in the right state to continue pushing through in that tournament? Hmm, that, you know, I'm, I'm not notorious for having great mental, but uh, you know, the, Try and do the best you can to just recenter, refocus, take a step back from the game. Especially if you're mid-set, don't just rush right back into it. That's like common mistake that most people make. But I, yeah, I'd say that's my biggest advice. Just don't rush right back into it. Take a step away. And I want to ask the same question to you, Flower. Do you have anything specific that you do if you kind of like get a little bit tilted in a tournament and you need to reset yourself and bring it back? Well, I think it's important to have a game plan to send yourself with. You know, like have something that you intentionally like are consciously doing and not just kind of like letting the nerves overtake you. Like, have you ever heard of the saying like butterflies in formation? Yeah, if you have, if you're nervous and you, you're anxiety, you don't allow it to overtake you. You just, you control it and you put it out. You make it your output, you know what I'm saying? I love that. Definitely some really solid advice for anyone who's watching and potentially wanting to be up here on this main stage competing. I'm gonna let you guys get set up for your match because we're about to get into it. So best of luck to both of you. Sheepy, back on over to you. Thank you, Glitter. And honestly, it's so awesome to see the, the wisdom that our players have. Now, here we have the next four matches coming up. Boomy versus Flower first, and then Dara, Taza. I know there's a, we're waiting for the winner above, who's going to be against, let me see here. We got Boomy, Flower versus, and then, and then next is Snowy versus whoever wins that match. And then Viper versus Anime, then Wubs versus Bunny. Uh, thoughts about this one. I'm going to start with Taza first. I just wanted to remark on the interview there from Flower, actually, where he brought up something that I think is actually very true. We're not talking about those focus things. It was fun to hear that from him because, it, in my personal opinion, having a game plan to fall back on when having those little focus problems, this is what Glitter was bringing up, is like the way to do it as somebody who competes in other games as well. So hearing that coming from him, especially after having what was a really crazy side stream set against Kaina, is really exciting. Uh, and he's probably going to have a really great set against Boomy as well. Um, as the matchups that are going to be coming up, I mean, it's exciting to see Boomy and Snowy as a head-to-head, -head, if that's something that we're going to get. And then the ones that are going to be going forward, well, Wubs is somebody who actually at the last BCX kind of surprised everybody with the top 16 run, being a player that plays a lot of those more unorthodox legends such as Sentinel and Azoth. So that would be really fun to see as well. It's Dara, what are your thoughts on the next upcoming matches here that we got? Um, I got a feeling that it's going to be in a Boomy set. It's going to be Boomy going up against <laughs> Flower at the moment. Um, they haven't actually played before uh, in the past, it seems. 
Uh, so I'm excited to see how that's just going to go. I think there's a bit of a PR differential between the two. There's because, a few so differentials there on the screen with the There's stats. quite a few. Okay, there's a handful. <laughs> you got to now play it a little bit. Better. Okay, I was got to be nice. Which means that this is pretty much the run of Flower's life, right? Because that game five against Kaino, which is somebody who seeded to get into grand finals, mind you, and Flower could have been responsible for creating probably the best upset that could have been here at this weekend. So he's been playing very well. And on Yumiko of all legends, which is something that he told me about is a personal main of his that he wishes got a little bit more attention in terms of getting some buffs and patch notes. And this Those might be the gun to, to do it, right? It if you're be. able to actually take it over the boomy now, that is the kind of attention that Yumiko needs uh, that he's going to try to provide. And when we're talking about this kind of run, I think the match is actually ready to run. So you know what, Dar, T Taza, take it away with Boomy versus Flower. All right, Boomy versus Flower. It's got the Wushong hung, uh, hovering over here for him, although I think he didn't mention in that interview he likes to have uh, singles and doubles pick be the same legend, but I imagine he's going to be playing something different up against Flower. Flower is probably the first and only Yumiko main that we're going to be seeing on stream. And it's a, the, the unique things to remark about Yumiko's signature kit is that both on bow and hammer, she sets uh, these little uh, hazards on the stage, little like uh, faux fire uh, hazards that don't actually lead into a hard-hitting move themselves. The idea is that you use them to set up, they linger a little bit, you can move around before they despawn, and then you follow up with that with a side air or recovery or whatever have you. Can you make up your own uh, combos with those? And not any other legend really does that. Yeah, and in general, like the theory behind projectiles, right, is just to be able to set them up and to be able to manipulate your mo opponent's movement around them, right? And then you start taking some notes down. Are they going to jump? Are they going to dodge past them? And then you start to figure that out and see if that kind of set play is going to actually integrate over the course of the match is something I'm curious about, but I'm sure that this is something that Boomi is more than comfortable with. So. I'm just curious to see how it goes. Yeah, there was a little bit of a phase in North America where like when Hammer was really, really strong and Bo was one of the few things that was able to deal with it, there were a few pro players that were picking up Yumiko because of, in theory, how good that legend was against the meta at the time. And then it sort of tapered off when Hammer got uh, Three, fell out of the meta. Two, so this will be a really one, exciting matchup to see. Here we go into game number one. It is Boomy versus Flower. Yumiko versus chun -Li. Yeah, Chun Li just as popular as always, and let's see how it goes. Already, Boomy, excellent D-Light pickup. Now just gonna be holding onto the stage. Flower gonna be stuck off stage without a weapon. Boomy gonna be starving them of a weapon and continuing to do so, dealing a lot of damage and then Whoa. oh Okay. Always got to jump Sorry. check with a fully charged down stick at the very beginning, right? You let the signature rip, and you're like, oh, that's not going to hit. You can hold it, and because of the properties there, it hits on the, the left or right side. Sometimes players just like to fall right into it. But there we see the start of what could have been a great setup with that neutral signature if Boomy didn't get right underneath, get the double D-Light into the recovery, and take the first stock. Yeah, already a fantastic opening for Boomy. Just did not seem to be too phased, too threatened that entire first stock. Flowery now just going to be dancing to pick up a weapon here. Gets that bow on hand. Okay, not able to find any of these neutral lights. Whoa. Boomy running off stage, wants to close out that stock. So early, look at him fighting it down and so aggressive out there. Oh, and Flower tries to go for the wake up red ground pound off of Boomy, and Boomy spot dodges and gets right around, and that jump pivot ground pound will take Flower down twice in under a minute. And this is a huge, uh, huge lead for Boomy going into game one here. Flower's just getting kind of checked, uh, uh, is what's happening here. And Boomy is capitalizing a lot off of every single advantage state. Finally, okay, able to get a down in, but not a whole lot else off of that. Boomy being nice and patient, getting back onto the stage. Flower not able to get a lot out of these projectiles quite yet. And now again, okay. Recovery comes recovery. through. Ground pound gets the edge guard. That's the first stock of three if Flower wants to take this game number one. Nice job in the reversal there. And of course, fighting Hammer off stage, a little ill advised against all levels of play. But when you have three stocks to one, you might as well go for the risk because that could have been the three stock. But Flower now actually fighting back quite well. Two nares in a row. Gets that side light. Boomy dodges out of that down light, neutral light follow up that could have happened. But this has actually been all Flower here on the second stock. Now the down six are starting to Oh, that was great. Bow. That's exactly what you needed to do. You set them up, you voice out the resources, and then you're able to cover the landing on the way back down. Flower is dealing a lot of damage and is starting to make quite the comeback. Tasa, how are you feeling? Oh, I mean, that side six telling me how I'm feeling. That just that might as well have been a zero to knock up there from Flower. And now we're two minutes into the game, and Boomy and Flower have both taken turns, taking two stocks in under a minute, and now it's an even game. Boomy finally picks up a weapon, but Flower still has the momentum here. Yes, yeah, still holding onto the stage, still holding onto the ground, catching all of these different landings from Boomy, and now Flower has all but evened up the game. Oh. What, what is going these on? These are just catching all these landings. The neutral catches Boomy off of the double jump. He has to dodge to make it back to the stage. Flower goes for the end lane, and Boomy dashes right past him. Okay, Nair connects. Boomy lands with the down air. Sidelight in the Nair can get the recovery here. No, goes for side air into weapon throw instead. Flower uses the dodge. Recovery does connect, and Flower makes it back. That down light tries to cover the weapon landing, and Boomy and Flower are now both one hit away from taking game one. Okay, Flower 
Okay, dashing back and forth, just looking for the next opening. This could be anybody's game to take at this point. Getting the side light doesn't actually find the good cover. He's flatly dodging out to safety, holding onto the ground, not able to catch it in time. The falling side who just knocking Boomy off stage. The neutral side to position. Okay, Boomy makes it back. I can feel the nerves for both players right now. The side light comes through, doesn't put out the down light. Can't get the recovery follow up, but that gravity cancel neutral sick does go punished. Sider will put him off the right side of the stage. Hammer picked up, stops there, would do it. Is he gonna look for it? The down light catches him on the jump, oh, and that's going no. to be the clutch from Boomy in game one. What a crazy game one to open up that set. That was crazy. Flowery won like six, seven consecutive interactions in a row until Boomy finally got a hit on that last stock. I was, oh man, that's such a heartbreaker, isn't it? Because I felt like that should have been Flowery's coming back to make that game one, and Flower did so successfully. Oh yeah, Flower did everything right up until the very last jump. I mean, calling out the jump there with the spear down light, you missed that, Boomy was just, he was done for. What a, what a great call out in that situation. And then Flower, it, it, we, Reacted with the fastest move I think possible to uh, that Gravity Council neutral signature that Boomy put out, but the Bo Sayer is not going to knock out for a very long time, so it gave Boomy so many times to make it back to the stage. Three, Either way, two, I'm glad that one, that wasn't a three stock in under oh, a minute, me which too. is what I was looking at. I was like, oh no, Flower. The first two stocks went down, and I was like, man, come on. But yeah. now, right, now we have a set. This is a set. This can actually just kind of go either way, depending on the kind of adaptations that Flower is able to make. And yeah, that Bo Sayer falling, uh, that was such a hype breaker, wasn't it? Because it's yeah. like, wow, Yumiko deserved oh. that. KO, but Yumiko didn't get it. Well, we're going to game number two here, and Flower is showing a little bit of hesitance with the follow-ups off of these uh, stops from the hammer. That's twice on it. It's missed, but there's the setup. The neutral sig actually connects, but Flower also misses the follow-up with the Nair afterwards, and I'm seeing a little bit of uh, this has got to be a little bit of nerves coming up from Flower. You've got four neutral uh, wins that are supposed to lead to true combos, and you drop all four of them. That's not a really great start for game two. Still, though, no stocks have flown so far, and Flower is actually doing a lot better uh, comparatively to game one. Yeah, Flyle is going toe-to-toe -to -toe right now with Boomy in the beginning and now holding onto the stage, setting up the signature there and just catching Boomy, jumping back onto the stage, able to get the spike. Is this going to be the stock? Not quite yet. Flyle opting to play it a little bit safely, just sticking onto the stage and Boomy comes back on, not unscathed, took quite a bit of damage on his way back up. Okay, and now first stock could go either way. Flower puts up the side signature, Boomy dodges, dodges right through. Unarmed Nair has them both vying for that weapon, and there's the hammer picked up. Flower waits it out, gets the stop. Nair! That's not, not a gonna PO. knock out just yet, but at least that first combo comes through, and the falling Nair on the landing will give Flower the lead in game two. Flower has the lead, and you know what? The biggest thing that I want to see is exactly what Flower talked about in the interview going up to this, which is organizing the body of flies, something like that. I've never heard of that expression, but <laughs> yeah, just being that. able to compose yourself so you're not dropping the execution. But that's going to be the full stock on. Yeah, Boomy doing a great job with the gravity cancel down heavy. And yeah, seeing Flower uh, uh, regain his composure and have that game plan that he talked about that he likes to play around, it's being seen here. Although a lot of the follow-ups from the game plan are not working out too well, and Boomy's been taking advantage of that. Finally punishes that down. Like there is a little bit of hesitance, but the ground pound does come through, gets the damage, because we saw in game one, Flower just fell into the blast and ended up taking a lot of damage for it. And now Boomy struggling to land against Flower's bow. Boomy is struggling to land, and Boomy is also just not winning a lot of these interactions. It feels like Flower is in a pretty consistent control of the neutral. Okay, able to get that follow-up. That's some pretty big damage. Not able to connect the uh, NSIG that time around, but still, that's the down coming out. That's the stomp into the side of Boomy in a nasty angle. Has to come back onto the stage, and Flower just choosing not to commit. Ooh. Oh, that was so sick. Wow, what a fake out, too, with the neutral signature, and immediately afterwards, dashing underneath, getting the fast fall. Boomy trying to jump out of the way of whatever Flower's going to do, and Flower's like, I don't have to do anything until you get hit by the that he had set, and that fled into the recovery. Gets the downer off of that slide charge down heavy as well, and that down signature almost catches Boomy off the side of the stage, but Flower's doing such a great job with Yumiko's signature kit. Yeah, he is just constantly setting them up, and then just waiting for Boomy's next option, and then successfully punishing oh. the next option. Flower is getting a little bit ambitious with it. Okay, I respect the commitment. You stock up, and you really want to get this game against Boomy. I mean, he saw it, and that's the one ground pound in the game where if you actually hit it at white at that range, you're just going to get the knockout there. So Flower bet it all in that situation, brings it down to an even stock situation. And now with the hammer, single with the neutral signature, it's almost like the move is just there to distract Boomy so that he can dash right in and get all those hits to get the follow up afterwards. And you know what? It's just a bonus that Boomy ends up falling into the attack as well. But the double recovery will disarm Flower, and that's the lead for Boomy. Okay, Flower is slowing down the pace of the match, coming in there with the neutral light. Finally able to get the whip okay. punish on that, getting the D light into the ground pound as well. Finally picking up the bow as well. Yet again, Sido as a get off me option. Yet Who's again, is that it? That's going to be it. Flower, Whoa. game number two. And that had to have been as early as possible for that knockout there. Boomy was in orange just barely before the combo that connected there, and the neutral signature carrying with the distance has the force at the very end of the move. We'll take out Boomy on the left side of that stage, and that's going to be a tied set here as we go into game number three. This is sick.
This is a really sick set. It's pretty I great. am loving Flowey's implementation of these signatures because he is setting up the projectiles and that he is constantly mixing up what he is doing after each one. Well, sometimes he's moving in preemptively, sometimes he's waiting, and Boomy seems to be caught off guard by it. Yeah, Two, and, it, and one, the reason why this is actually really fascinating is because Boomy's showing the matchup knowledge to where at the very start when Flower was putting up the, the neutral signature on Hammer, right, um, or the down signature on Hammer, when, when, when the uh, attack was coming out, you could just dash right underneath that. As long as you don't jump, you're not getting caught by the attacks. But Flower has options that goes past that once his opponent shows uh, that they have matchup knowledge in that situation, and that's what's been catching Boomy off guard. I've been seeing setups on the Yumiko that I didn't even originally think were possible because Flower's positioning after the move comes out ends up guiding his opponent into the trap, and then the follow-up happens afterwards. Yeah, and look at this. threatening him, and Boomy feels through that, and right now, Boomy trying to get the juggle going, goes for the same exact end sig, and Flower, excellent little punish that he's able to find the down early. That's going to be a second one. Oh. Not going to be the stock quite yet, backing off a little bit, resetting neutral, Ooh. playing a little bit more patiently, and that's going to be the stock. Oh, and that is some amazing peace of mind coming out from Flower there, just being able to stop moving completely, take a look at what his opponent's doing, and be like, okay, dash jump, gravity cancel, stop, there. that's the first stock, and then getting that sidelight coming through, Boomy can't get the dodge read after the sidelight connects, that end sig will finally do it, but only after taking a little bit of damage himself, Flower still barely in the lead. Barely in the lead, but you know what? That is such a change of pace from game one where he lost those first two stocks so quickly. I think he actually just got himself composed. Yeah. This is what's happened. He is now tapped in into the game. Boomy looking for the next opening at this point, looking for the new trailer. Nice whip punish on the whip. Uh, Eli. Okay, down six are coming through. Goes in for that side light. Gravity cancel side light recovery. Okay, Boomy goes to the weapon throw, but Flower right away with the wake up nair. We'll put Boomy above him, and the landings from uh, Flower have been covered so well. Boomy's finally able to get back to the ground, and then the delayed neutral signature to get the shot. Okay, the Dodger comes through. Flower uses the gravity cancel ending to get back to the stage faster, and Boomy uses the ground pound actually to touch the wall so they can avoid the edge guard for Flower, and they both make it back. Flower is just buying time every single one of those D6, right? Because you put it out there, and then you're basically saying, hey, you do not have infinite oh. time. I have plenty of time to play with. Almost found dodge. that side of Boomy. Excellent dodge through it. Oh, and then he fades back with the stop. Okay, downer comes through. Boomy doesn't get the nair right afterwards. A flower, dash jump, dash jump, pivot, dash jump into that side air. Waiting for Boomy to land. Knows that Boomy wants the weapon. It doesn't give him a chance. That dash forward end like catches him right at the end of the stage, and Flower takes the lead once again, two to one. Takes the lead once again, but just a, a couple of hits away, and that's going to be the stock as well. So let's see. Is are going to be able to not deny Boomy of the weapon? Yes, they will. Picking up the hammer yet again, finding a way to land, tossing the weapon down, and then just faking out to the opposite side. Left weaponless, still connects the neutral, getting a good amount of damage out. But finally, whoa, that's not the KO. Yeah, it's not the KO. Flower still holding on. One more recovery come there. Oh, it could be a huge deal, but that unarmed recovery in the sidelight might be as much extra credit as Flower needs to take this game three. Gravity cancel, daylight recovery. True combos off the top of the stage, and Boomy brings it back one to one. Okay, both of them now going to be left weaponless, but the weapon toss coming back down, just catching him yeah. in all of the lag of just being in a multi-hit and being in that neutral life. And now all of a sudden, okay, Flowey finding the neutral as well. Yeah, it's, it's a classic be... uh, boomy jump check there where he goes to the weapon throw up. He's like, you know what, you can hit me during this, but I'll just keep spamming end light again. That Entic ends up getting the full amount of damage in the Nair follow-up, and that's huge. Flower because the sideline stops there. That's the game, and Flower brings the match point so quick on that conversion there at the end. I think Flower just solidly has figured out a game plan against Boomy here. This is this is a elimination bracket match, right? So Boomy and Flower are on the elimination side here at BCX. The loser of this is out of the tournament. The winner of this goes to fight Snowy, and Flower has brought Boomy to the brink. This is very surprising. This is actually quite Three, unexpected, two, especially given one, uh, Flower's previous match to, uh, to actually get knocked down into elimination side. We really do not know what they're currently capable of at the moment, but at the moment, they're poised to take the set against Boomy, and I'm curious, how much fight does Boomy have left in him? I mean, we're about to find out. It's Fortress of Lions, and Boomy is potentially on the last game here that he's going to be playing competitively at BCX. Flower in the lead in this set, and possibly in the game as well. Boomy fighting unarmed, goes for one side light, gets hit again by another side light. Boomy picks up the gauntlets, and immediately Flower attacks back with one side light, uses that movement towards the center of the stage to really keep Boomy on his toes. And no, the end lights are not connecting. Side light comes through again. Can he get another? No, can't quite find it yet. And now that end light misses, Boomy finally gets a punish. But the dare stops Boomy in the middle of what was going to be a great follow up. Okay, holding on to the hammer now, popping out that end sig, and once again, dashing out there, able to get the D light. Finally, Boomy finding his way back onto the stage, waiting. That's going to be the side light. Doesn't get the double side light, though, on the platform. A little bit unfortunate. And Flowey looking for the anti lead, looking for a way to catch Boomy on the way back down. Boomy threatening with the idea of a ground pound, but that weapon toss was huge. Oh, I think Boomy thought he could space right around it and get the ground pound to catch Flower off guard, but it was perfectly spaced. Boomy gets the gravity cancel delay recovery, though, and this is the best lead that Boomy's had since game number one, uh, which, keep in mind, despite the three stock to one, 
one lead still almost. He's only but, had uh, one lead. Let's yeah. make it clear. He's only had one lead. This is his second lead period, right? So now oh. going into this, unfortunately not connecting the daylight into the side of him. Yeah, that downlight was actually a surprise to both players, I think. And Flower just waits up patiently for that down to come through. He's punished it perfectly ever since he fell into the very first down at the beginning of the game. And now putting out his own down sigs to try and get Boomy to fall into those attacks. Follow up by the Nair. Flower now gets that stop side air, disarms Boomy as an edge guard goes for the downer. And any strong hit from the hammer at this point would just knock him out. It's so funny. Every single hammer we play, whenever they want stomp, they just start doing nothing and dash it, dash out, and they just want stomp. And they'll eventually hit it every single time. Most Brawlhalla right? Hammer players uh, grew up watching Little Captain. That is just yep. a patented thing from him for about years. But that, okay, down to get an air comes through, and Flower takes Boomy off the top. Now, keep in mind, that was still Boomy's first stock. Flower took a lot of damage during that, and this is Boomy's best chance to bring this to a game five. This is the best chance, and even then, it's still not that much of a lead now, is it? Boomy is not winning a lot of these neutral interactions, and that is something that I'm noticing between this and the last couple of games. Mm. Flower is just going toe-to-toe -to -toe and even exceeding him in the neutral. Yes, uh, and it's continuing to be that way, and Boomy still has to figure out how to get around Flower's game plan there, because it's getting stronger as the set progresses. And light comes through, neutral light can, uh, comes through as well. Boomy's got Flower off the side of the stage. Now, the one thing I will mention, right, is in the same way that kind of barely won 3-2, Boomy does have, objectively, so much more experience clutching out tournament sets at land than Flower does, right? Flower's having the performance of his lifetime, but this is still Boomy that we're talking about here. And as he puts Flower off the right side of the stage with that headlight, he's bringing it down to one stock and potentially to a game five. Yeah, this is so good. Flower basically is the one that painted his own picture, right? For us, when going on to the stage and talking about managing, um, you know, there's any excitement. And the question is, can you compose yourself? Can you keep yourself together? Can you do this? You are a little bit behind this game, but you do not want to give up your total game lead. At the moment, though, Boomy wants this. Boomy is fighting with everything that he possibly has, looking for a way to get back onto the stage. Double exclamation while he's coming out. And now he's back in it. He's back swinging. And Flower is not connecting any hits anymore. Yeah, Boomy's actually doing a very good job being like, you know what? I'm tired of dealing with that the side stick comes through. He, he was challenging the down six quite okay. often for Flower at the very beginning. Guy nice stop Cider to be able to get that stock. But now he's just kind of like, you know what? I'll wait until Flower decides to leave that corner of the stage before I engage uh, against his opponent like that. And now, one stock to one. Flower starting to put some damage back onto Boomy's stock. Actually, that's a ton of damage coming through there from the bow. Now, I was going to say, some damage is an undue statement. Flower holding off to center stage, constantly anti Boomy. Ooh. That's not going to be it, but it does put Flower in a nasty position off stage. Does Boomy, Boomy go for it? Does he go for it? I don't think he does. Side stick comes through. Okay, side light. Downlight recovery would knock out. Sider comes through, and now Boomy just has to find one good downer, but he throws his weapon away. Gauntlets are picking up, and that's a lot much harder. It's a, he, he's been hitting those downlight recoveries. Um, let's see if he's going to go for it, because he's got to expend his dodge to be able to get that to really work. Oh, Flower is menacing. Flower is not immediately pressing, just waiting for Boomy's next defensive option, hoping to react, trying to space that out. No way. Ensign could come through here, puts up the down sick instead. Weapon throw forward. If Flower could get an anti air with the neutral sick on Bow, it would just knock out with the Sarah connection. Boomy clutches that going to game in. five. That jump in and that weapon throw was the perfect way to deal with that situation. He just went up and around it, and that was way before Flower was actually ready to uh, you know, react with like a dodge or something. Boomy was able to break space, and then he was able to make that situation his own. And now all of a sudden, this is going to a game five. And they set that, you know, statistically speaking, well, given the period of financial, should have been like 3-0 in Boomy's favor, and then it opened off so aggressively for Boomy, and now it's going to a game five. Oh, this is so tough for Flower. I'm just thinking about his journey here at BCX, where it's like literally all zeros on the board when it comes to mm -hmm. his experience competitively, and then you're like, oh yeah, I placed my seed going game five against Kaina and Boomy, and that's a possibility that could come here, and that would be incredible. I think he's, like, like comparatively, I think like a, a 60 seed, somewhere in like either 65 mm -hmm. or 66, so like this is, and he's taking some time there to collect himself because he's like, okay, I know that I can win this, but I have to be able to stay with it. Meanwhile, Boomy is actually looking more comfortable than he did all set. So this is something that Polly and I talked about, and we have a missing feature. We need a feature desperately that we need on Start GG. What is that? And that is a drop-down menu that gives you an asterisk and said, okay. um, but it was close, though. <laughs> Yeah, that has been that has been the ask for like years of casting bro. Oh, you need you right? need to get the three zero, but it's the two, exact reason why one, they lost. And post bro. the clips of them comboing the piece of that. It's a two hundred and fifty six character limit. Yeah, with the clip in addition to it, we're going to Fortress of Lions here for game number five. And yeah, this is going to be uh, one of those asterisks, but it was close sets, right? And I mean, you know, luckily because you've got five games going through in a best of five. 
it's pretty easy to tell that it was. So let's go on here into game number five. Boomy goes for the end sig, doesn't get punished by Flower there, and I can already see both players realizing the, uh, the, the, the gravity of the situation. Yeah, this is yeah. elimination side. You have one last game, you have one last shot to be in for the entirety of this weekend, and Flowerly does not want to go out now. Flowerly does not want to put that asterisk online, Ooh. and now just getting all of this damage out, backing down into the ground. I love Flowerly's anti-healing, and I love the way that he has been controlling the ground and making it so hazardous for Boomy to land. It yeah, it was so what I was hoping that he would succeed with in the previous game, but it ended up uh, getting beat out by Boomy, and that end sig could get punished. Down to comes through, Flower has shown perfect prowess in punishing that now. Down it comes forward. Is Flower going to go for the down light? He does, but Boomy gets right back onto stage. Weapon starved away from Boomy, and a stop stare could do great here. And in these moments, Flower's actually been great at just posting up, reacting to what Boomy's going to do, and then getting that gravity cancel stop into whatever follow-up necessary to get that stock. And he's looking for it right now, and Boomy Boom. does get caught by that dash up stare. Flower catches him off guard, and that's the first stock of three. He's a very gentle stock lead at this point. He's not going to get knocked out by one hit, but definitely two of them at this point. Hammer in hand, looking for some sort of an anti but Boomy just being nice and patient, not able to connect that side light. Hanging on to the stage now, what's it going to be? Jumps oh, out there, in. goes through the side, and you've got to be careful as you're guarding Hammer. The, the stomp into end light actually combos because of how low it caught him, and then Boomy recovers into the down sig. Lots of damage coming through there. No dodge from Boomy could be a huge problem, but he does make it back. He's taking so much damage. These side lights are starting to rack up. Doesn't get the follow after the stomp recovery, but Flower now almost has an entire stock lead. That down sig of all moves comes through, bounces him off the stage and takes the stock, but Boomy holds on for dear life. He squeezed every last possible drop out of that stock. He has dealt so much damage onto Boomy, and now it is up to Boomy to make that up. Is he capable? He needs that side light. He needs that down light. He needs that neutral light. He needs some kind of an opening, and Flower is making it so difficult. I have not really seen Boomy Ooh. struggle this much to find an opening against somebody. Yeah, Boomy's starting to do a lot better about the, the immediate down lights that are coming after these side lights, and Flower's starting to adapt. He didn't go for the down light right away, and Boomy jumped out of it. Doesn't want to get by attack, and now the anti-airs that you're talking about are coming through. These end lights catching every one of Boomy's landings, and Boomy going for these weapon throws, not hitting them, not getting the weapons, and Flower is back in that situation again where one strong hit from the hammer. I mean, dash jumps there. That's going to take Boomy's stock here, and Flower's looking for it. Nice call out from Boomy, though. Gets that D-light side air. That's the first of a lot of damage, but now Boomy is on tournament stock here, Dara. On tournament stock, and Flower has now solidified himself an incredible lead, and this is where the champions are made. This is where we have to take a deep breath. This is where we have to compose yourself. This is where we have to keep on playing steady, and you talked about it before. Boomy has been in this situation basically more than anybody else, but Flower is dealing so much damage. How do you come back from this, Taza? Oh, he doesn't get the, he doesn't get the recovery after the downlight. Ends up getting that attack. Sidelight comes through, double sidelight. Recovery delays it. Weapon throw comes down. Does he pick up the weapon? No, he doesn't. Flower unarmed just for a bit. Fresh hammer comes through, so Bo is on, the, on deck. Boomy has a spear available to him, so he's got to get a good jump read to be able to get that daylight recovery. And he's Flower got nothing just available the weapon. to him. He doesn't have anything. Flower just continuing to deny Boomy of a weapon oh. until he finally gets out there. He gets that stock. Flower reels back in his chair after that one. Game five. All right, last stock, elimination last side, dude. Yeah, okay. Spear picked up. Flower, what is he going to find? Weapon's coming through. He's using his movement. Hammer. All right. Boomy looking for that first opening. Can he find it? Spot dodges in place. Sidelight goes wide. Second sidelight hits. Gets the nair and the dodge up. Reed. That's a good start. And the downlight side air. Boomy getting all the neutral wins here in the last moment. Nice and patient coming back on. Able to punish that down light, but nothing else after it. Finding the down on the way back down. Oh, Flower was able to get the side in. What's it going to be? Misses the side air. Boomy goes for the neutral signature. Goes unpunished. Goes for the weapon throw. Interrupts the down. So he catches the landing with the end light. That was a good recognition. Oh. He's too far away, but doesn't actually get the follow up that time. That's going to KO Flower. Taking it 3 to 2 over Boomy. Oh my god. With the side sick call as well. After the down sick interrupted his nair follow up, I thought that was going to be it, but no, he finds the attack. And Boomy said flying off the right side of the stage, and Flower pops right out of his chair, celebrating a win where, yes, he did not beat Kinda, but he does beat Boomy to move on to fight. An opponent is equally challenging, if not more so, which is Snowy, who's been waiting for him on the elimination side. What an upset. Let's go over to Glitter to have a, have a word with Flower, who apparently played in that game plan and won. All right, we'll see if he has any words right now because you look like you can't even believe what just happened. Talk me through what's going through your head right now. Butterflies in formation. No, but I thought this, you know, I talked to a couple people how Boomy was playing. I just put it into the game. I was focused. You know, I felt like I wasn't even here. Like, it felt like I was, like, inside the game. I felt like I was Yumiko, you know, sidelighting it and ends and, and stuff like that. I, I was just, I played really well. I was really focused. I mean, there was ice in your veins. You just took out a massive competitor in this tournament. Now you continue through on your run, looking forward to the next match. Is this a, a, a performance you think you're going to be able to now repeat? 
Well, I don't know if you saw, but I almost did this against Kaina, who's seated to play second in this tournament. On Pro Brawler, last stock red, 3-2. And uh, I wasn't able to close out against him, but I was against Boomia. I think, Boom Ford, if I'm this focused, if I'm this locked in, I think I could, definitely, for sure. Production's telling me that you're going to have to play Snowy next. Not right now, just in your next match. And if you were able to then win that, you would have taken out the duo from last year. So then w what would go through your head if that's somehow what happens? I mean, let's go probably. I don't know. Like, wow. I also, I might have lied to you. It might be your next match. All right, that's fine. It's OK. <laughs> OK, that means we're going to let you go reset a little bit before you get into yet another banger of a match. Guys, I'm going to send it back on over to you at the desk for now. That was an incredible match. What a way to open off this block. Flowey taking it over Boomy in game five. And you would not be able to tell that that was the way that that set was going to go, given the opening of that yeah, game. Yeah, check one. out the highlights here from the opening of the game. This is literally <laughs> Boomy on less than a minute taking two stocks and then almost losing that game. Yeah, and that was basically Flowey saying, wait a second, I'm just going to tap myself back in. This is basically just the thing that happens whenever you get lands, whenever you're playing on stream. Sometimes you just enter an autopilot state where you're not able to really totally think about the match and you get a little bit too tense. He actually just got himself together. I'm going through these highlights now. I'm realizing how incredibly close every single one of these victories absolutely was. Like that neutral signature, which he had not been conditioning Boomy with the entire game, winning to be able to bring it to match point. And then that situation where Boomy was barely able to clutch with that side air to bring it to a game five, only to be in a situation where basically utilizing Yumiko's entire signature kit, he was able to pull out a victory like that. And now I can only imagine this, this is truly a testimony to uh, how Flower is going to be able to uh, play on land because he's just going straight from this game. We'll, we'll talk about it a little bit into another one that's going to be on stream in just a little bit. You know what? I bet everybody watching at home and in the venue is very happy about that because I think he's very quickly growing into being a fan favorite, being able to be on Pro Brawlhalla, bringing Kaya to Game 5, on the mainstream, beating Boomy in Game 5, and now he could potentially knock out both of the world champions from 2022 and 2v2s in the singles format, that would be incredible. It would be incredible. It'd be even more incredible if you take some of the numbers, some of the statistics into calculation, because in the last four sets that Flower and Snowy have played, Snowy has won all four of them. As opposed to fighting against Boomy, I don't think the two of them have actually ever run into bracket, uh, run into each other in bracket before. This one is might be a little bit more difficult to climb. Last time they played was at the Summer Champs. That was a 3-0 in Snowy's favor. A um, couple of community events as well. Snowy's not even dropped a single game to him in the past. However, the, the flower that we are seeing now in front of us is not necessarily the same one that we saw all the way back in the Summer Champs. This is the flower that took up, I mean, the one that took to, uh, Kaina to game five. Yep. Anything can actually happen at this point, even if it is statistically unlikely. Yeah, and so, according to seeding, Snowy's supposed to be winning this one, but Flower has been up saying that all day. And this is, on the elimination side, a best of five to determine who gets onto top 32, right? And so that's that matchup that we just watched wasn't even to get into top 32. And that is how incredibly stacked BCX is. I can't, I actually cannot stress that enough that a lot of the matches that we're watching are happening long before we even get to the point where people are really vying for that top eight spot. And now Flower, somebody who hasn't even been in the conversation, mm -hmm. is going to be on stream once again to help go up against a fan favorite that is Snowy. And the points that you're bringing up about that 4 0 record, not even dropping a game means that the first game that Flower takes off Snowy, if any, is going to be incredibly exciting to see. It's going to be an achievement in of itself, so this is going to be a really exciting one. And the part of this that I'm really excited about as well, just because of the extra Yumiko representation, I feel like when it comes to projectile play and projectile conditioning, that's not an aspect of Brahal that we get to see too often because of how often niche it is. And yep. Yumiko is one of the only characters that gets so high in that. That's not one that's particularly popular either, and Flower is doing that. Um, and I think really the thing to look at from that last game is the option that he is choosing after throwing out his projectiles, right? The way he's dashing in, the times he's choosing to slow down. Um, yeah, it's just been wonderful. Yeah, and we're going to be able to see even more of that now. And if Yumiko, right, you, you're, you're just correct in saying that it's not a very popular play style. Well, it might be getting a little bit more popularized today, depending on how people are liking what they're seeing coming up from Flower, because I think that this is the most developed that I've seen uh, this character. Be we're learning how to zone, yeah. and that's what I'm excited Zoning about. Zoning in Brawlhalla has been like a thing that you basically, like, pretend it existed with weapon throws and it was always really risky because if you messed it up well you just were unarmed for the yeah that was usually just like a way of like hey 
If there's hits, great. If it doesn't, well, I'm just trying to get an option out of you. This isn't just to get an option out of you. This is to then specifically punish the option that you're going for afterwards. Right? So that's the part I'm really excited about. Flower and Snowy going to be coming on up soon. This was not the way that I would have expected this bracket to go at all. Yeah. I don't think anybody actually had this one in the cards besides Flowery's friends. Yeah, they're both really good storylines in general, though, right? Because this could have been like we were talking about beforehand, Boomy versus Snowy, which would have been a really great head-to-head -head because they played together so much. But in particular, right, I love a good upset story, right? I mean, I mean there's ones that quite uh, seed 51 or PR 51 upsetting number, number <laughs> the top three player, right, in South America. Not quite on that level, but still pretty darn good considering the legacy that Boomy has. So Snowy now being up against Flower next, I wonder how this is going to play out. We've got the Asuri hovering over for what Snowy might be playing here in singles, and I think Katara's actually does a pretty good job at navigating the play style that Flower likes to go for. If you're on that hammer down sig, when you're putting out those uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the fire blast up, up above your head, you can just deck, duck right underneath it with a Katara side light, get your combo started or something like that. But we'll have to see how that plays out. It's going to be a very different matchup indeed if Snowy ends up leading with Katara's and Sword. This is going to go one of two ways. This is going to be either very heavily snowy favored or it's going to be another game five where it's actually really up in the air at that point. Okay. Those are the two kinds of paths that I foresee happening. Yeah. I've there is a part of me that I just really want to see a repeat of what happened last time. I want to see this go to game five. And in my mind, seeds are meant to be upset and brackets are meant to be destroyed. Yes. Right? I mean, so that's, that's I want to see Flower cause issues. I want to see Flower cause problems. <laughs> He's already got a few coming through here. And now, honestly, I think everybody just wants to see Flower play more on screen. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Because it's, it's, it's one thing in particular when it's an underdog story. It's another thing when it's like, wait, this is a character that nobody even talks about, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's why this has been really, really fun to see. And we have Flower just getting ready and set up. Snowy's on the other side there, getting ready to fight against his opponent, who, honestly, after you talking to me about his record, has got me a little nervous for Flower, right? Because we had no data against Boomy, but this is a different story, especially if Flower's been, I'm assuming Flower's been re reporting mostly Yumiko in the past. It looks like there's some experience with playing Kaya, um, but I imagine that that's not going to change at all today. Yeah, no, not at all. Um, this is exciting. What a weapon meta that we're actually in at the moment as well. We don't really get to see Hammer that much anymore, especially in twos. We only saw one Hammer representation at all. Um, and now we get to see so much Yumiko action. So this is a pretty good day for everybody that's Three, in for the show. Two, and now, one, everybody, we will be whoa. beginning. Snowy going up against Flower. What's up? Opening up with a Zol. We've got Cannon and Axe coming up to fight against Flower on the Yumiko. This is a this is a fun matchup because Zol definitely uh, played the, the 1v1 scene for about a year or two and then fell out of favor severely as Cannon became mostly a two's weapon. So this matchup is actually just going to be a blast to watch. And in a sense, with Zol, you do outrange a lot of the traps that Yumiko can set by just holding down Sig and letting the third blast charge all the way through there. So I wonder if that's what Snowy's thinking in this matchup here as we go into game number one. We'll see if that interaction transpires. And yeah, I feel like I've seen a lot of Onyx and I've seen a lot of Zol in twos especially, but that does not matter. Snowy going to be cleaning up that first stock. Flower knocked down to two stocks so early on. And you know what? If it's going to be a repeat of anything that we saw last time, these first two stocks are going to go, and then we will actually have a set from there on out. Just yeah, Flower has to, to have two stocks fly in under a minute to formulate a game plan, and then he goes, ah, okay, now I know what I want to do, and he's got a best of five to work with to do it. So we'll see if that's going to be the case here. Although Snowy, look at a little experience with what Flower has to bring to the table. Does lose the axe, picks up the cannon, though, however, and if he can get another downlight there, oh, that sidelight doesn't get the dodge read. That's a good amount of damage, and that sidelight, side of recovery, is going to put Flower into a difficult position. Yeah, quite huge now, Flower holding off to center stage, backing off for a second. Not able to trip up Snowy at all, finding a couple of neutral layers, which is just good damage. Excellent little weapon toss, and that was the right idea. That actually should have just connected, but, you know, it was just a spacing thing at that point. Oh, the down stick actually ends up working out. Combos in the recovery, but not enough force there against Snowy. Zola and Flower putting up the same tactics that worked against Boomy's impatience are not working against Snowy. Where Snowy looks at him, he goes, I know you're standing still because you're trying to react to something that I'm going to do, so I'm just going to stay on the platform and then move when you decide to move. And because Snowy's got the lead, he can absolutely do that. The scoop finally takes him down, but only after Flower took an entire two stocks worth of damage. Yeah, but you know what? He's still holding on to that second stock, and that is what matters most at this point, especially if he is just able to play that untouchable neutral. If he's just able to space people out just like that, you, you, you know, winning by a thousand cuts at that point. But that being said, Snowy going to be cleaning up that second stock and now solidifying an even better lead for himself. I think we're starting to lean more towards that 3-0 prediction that you were talking about. And I hope that's not the case because I can just see how well Snowy is versed in Flower's game plan. Like, this is looking like a much bigger struggle for Flower than it was against Booming. And now, 
now. We'll have to see if he can get that adaptation. Puts out the down signature. Snowy just flies right above it by using the cannon side air for momentum. And these side lights are just catching flowers in the air. Oh. Nice job with that side air. Goes for the recovery. And he was just trying to take out that stock in a flash. Okay, Flowey backing off a little bit. Going to be looking through that D-Light, but I've got to say, do not underestimate last stock, Flowey, because that's what happened last time around, isn't it? Okay, dashing in there, looking for the side, who doesn't find it quite yet. Slowing down the game plan, and that's basically an unreactable weapon toss. You jump in there, you toss down the weapon, it's at a point where it's way too close to dodge. Yeah, and sometimes, even if it is reactable, you dodge it, and then you're like, oh no, my dodge is gone for whatever follow-up that's going to be coming after unarmed. Flower gets hit by the recovery, okay. stage spiked off the bottom of Fortress of Lions, and that's going to be game one uh, convincingly going over to Snowy. This is going to be defined by the game two. The game two is actually what is going to set the tone for the rest of the set. The game one, you know, Flowey was just going to need that one to adjust. But what we did actually see is Snowy responding, just as you mentioned, really well to Flowey's passive game plan whenever he just basically sits there and waits um, and dashes in and out. When he's not choosing to press a button like that, Snowy's doing the best possible option, which is, as he said, either wait as well, make him not react to anything if you don't have anything to give, or you jump in there and go in with an unreactable weapon toss, or one where it's not even fatal to dodge in that position. And so, I want to see what Flowey is able to do in that position as well. So if he establishes that he's not doing anything, what do you think is something that he should do after? I think that you should probably stop going for that option in general. So one thing what I'm, what I'm noticing is there was a lot of adaptations that Flower made when fighting in that set against Boomy that I feel like he's trying to apply to this different player that is Snowy, and all of them didn't work right off the bat, and it's just kind of like, okay, you're just playing a different player now. We, and I think he's taking that time after that game where he literally was just sitting there, head down, looks like he's meditating a little bit and considering, okay, everything that I did, wasn't working, it's time to try something. You gotta else. go blank slate, right? Because if you started with that blank slate and you molded it around Boomy, that same mold is not going to work against uh, Snowy as well. So you gotta go blank and then you'll be able to start from the ground up. So, that being said, we will be jumping into game two shortly. I'm excited to see how this goes. Um, and of course, the hope for me is not for anybody to like win or lose, but it is for us to just see the upsets happen. And if Flowey is the one that is channeling those upsets, Three, two, then I'd like to see that happen. One, yes, wow. and it would be really exciting to see Flower take his first competitive game off of Snowy, <laughs> let alone the set, right? Because so far, Snowy is looking fantastic on the Zol. Winner of this uh, is going to go into top 32. Loser of this is out of the tournament at 33rd. So a lot on the line here for this best of five that Snowy has started off quite convincingly. Gravity Cancel End Light is a good start to punish that stop from Flower. But Flower makes it back with a scoop. Can he get anything else off of this? No, the dare? Okay, oh, wake no. up stop. But does it get the follow-up? Because I think he didn't expect it to actually connect. Yeah, didn't expect it to connect and then just faded back with the new trailer and wasn't able to get the side hitbox of it. Flower now bow on hand, this is exactly what he does best, which is just to make the ground as unsafe as possible and catch these jumps. Holding onto the ground, holding onto the ground. Snowy doesn't need to land. He can just chill on that platform up until Flowey takes that space away from him. Goes in there with the recovery and dealing quite a bit of damage. That Axider does come through. Snowy commits to the downer, puts himself off stage, and Flowey, uh, Flowey takes advantage of it by picking up the hammer. Okay, one stops here, comes through, tries to go for that pivot uh, down air, but Snowy just dodges right back onto the stage to be able to pick up a weapon, and Flower doesn't get the edge guard. Falling Cider beaten by Snowy's side air, and Snowy chases him all the way around. Flower just gets right back to the stage. He's looking for that stomp once again, and that side, oh, side light pivot Nair, of all things, catches Flower off guard. And that's another one of those situations where I actually think he is giving Snowy space and comfort of mind every time that he tries to do that stop, wait, and react thing. Every time that he's gone for that, Snowy looks at him and goes, what are you doing that? And ends up beating him at his own game. And in fact, Snowy did go off stage and actually overcommitted against Flower, mm -hmm. and Flower kind of let him get back on it. He went to center stage instead of continuing pressure in the corner. Yes. That being said, guess what? We've evened up, evened up the stock count. Anything can happen at this point. Yes. This is going to be the definitive game two. This is a very, very big difference from game number one, right? Because in that situation, Flower ended up being in red down a stock against Snowy, so Snowy was able to play a much different game plan. And here now, they're vaying for the same amount of stage control. Uh, and the person who takes the next stock here is going to be at a huge lead. Oh, Sideline comes through. That was so good. The down stick da dash through. That's right. He just yeah. made all this ground impenetrable and said, hey, you don't want to land here. You want to land in front of it. Nope. And then just completely denied that space in front of him, too. He is manipulating space around him. Yeah, Yumiko, fortunately, immune to her own magic, right? So she's able to put that trap down, then dash right through it, get the side light, and that down to comes through, combos into that side air, and the end stick barely dodged out of the way by Snowy. Flowey's, uh, Flowers not able to get that ground pound there onto Snowy, but still a good amount of damage coming through. But against a nine base force legend like Zol, uh, Flower 
is at risk of going down to about any side area here. What an anti here. what a catch. But Zol just able to hang on there. Now Snowy looking for a way to get back down. Almost punished for extending in with that side area. And now Snowy looking for that neutral light. Not going to be able to find it quite yet. Flower with a hammer on hand. And okay, it's every not working. Every time it's not working. It's, every time that I see a post up, I'm like, Flower, stop doing that. Snowy's literally better reacting to you in this situation. The recovery comes through. And he boxes out Flower's attack with that neutral light and takes the lead once again off of a similar situation. Flower needs to equalize the stock count, and Flower needs to stop going through those weights. Snowy is not Boomy. These are two different opponents that you have in front of you. Gets that neutral light off now, going through the bow. Is this going to be it? Is that going to be it? No, not quite yet. Just still going to be setting up a juggle, looking for the recovery. Flower needs to close out the stock now because Snowy is getting a lot of extra credit, getting a lot of mileage out oh. of this lead. Oh, and oh, then no. the downer comes through. Snowy could go for the D-Light ground pound right now. Flowers on a dodge for three seconds because of that gravity cancel. And lights him back to the stage, showing that he doesn't even really care about going for the it's weapon. It's going to happen Snowy again. It's going to happen again and again. He walks to the side of the stage, and the stutter stepping from Snowy is showing that he's like, yeah, if you're going to keep going for this in this game plan, I'm going to show you exactly how much better I am at playing against it. Goes for the weapon throw it afterwards, and Flower does get the recovery, but Snowy looks unfazed. Snowy looks unfazed, but I know what Flower is capable of in neutral at this point in time. I know how he can play keep away. I know how he can keep up that pressure and make it impossible for his opponents to land. And the question is, will he be able to do that now? Huge damage coming out. Not able to get that next oh. down coming through, picking up the bow, and Snowy desperate for the weapon now. Yeah, that stomp side that would have gotten so much extra damage for him gets the end light, gets the nair. Okay, landings are being covered, but a falling cider from Snowy here, even on the cannon, would be huge, and he's looking for it. There it is. Falling cider takes him off the left side of the stage. He knew how much damage he had on him. He's like, okay, I can take maybe about 10 or 12 hits, but the one hit that I get is going to give me the win, and Snowy goes up 2-0 in the set. Okay, so that game two wasn't as dominant in Snowy's favor as I thought it was. And I think the only thing that Flower needs to do going into game three is cut it out with those weights. That is the thing that is consistent. We failed, have seen like five it, it openings. It has failed 100% of the time. We have seen all of them like uh, fail in game one. We have seen all of them in game two as well, right? And Snowy's just, just better at it too. <laughs> like he's done it a few times and, and then towards the end of that game, uh, he was showing uh, that he was just starting to initiate mm -hmm. that situation too because so far it had been all on flower. And then after a while, Snowy was like, okay, I'm going to do this to you and I'm going to show you how it's done. Uh, and it ended up making that last stock particularly painful for Flower. So now Flower back against the wall, loses one more, and he is out of the tournament at 33rd. Winner of this going into top 32. There's a lot on the line. There's a lot at stake. And this still feels within the realm of doability because this is not a total shutout. What is actually happening here is one habit, one tendency that Flower has is being exploited. When it comes to every single other part of the game, man, Flower is juggling, Flower is advantage state. All of that one, is equally scary. Four. And his traps with the signatures are just as effective. Yes, and so it's interesting to see that it's like, because you're talking about like when it comes to the actual neutral interactions, we're seeing these down airs and the recoveries. We're seeing him go down for the scoops right afterwards when the down six put out. He's tacking on a ton of damage to Snowy. It's just when it comes time to take out the stock that he's ending up being a little too predictable and Snowy's able to get the upper hand. Yeah, especially with some of those side six, right? That's basically the boost that's like, hey, I really want to get this KO now. I'm going to side six across the stage and it does not pan out that way. But Flower at the moment, trying to once again catch all these landings. Snowy sweating, uncomfortable right now. And, and look at this. Every single time, Snowy cannot get to the ground without taking a hit. Oh, yeah, but that time, Flower goes for a hard read on the gravity cancel down stick and Snowy's able to get a good two hits. Nice Here's spacing. Comes through, does avoid getting blasted by that attack. Snowy with the falling stare, however, Put Flower up the left side of the stage. One more side air on this side of the stage. That will knock out. No, no dodge for a while. Puts up the down to full charge. Gets all three blasts. Goes for oh, the Zeus okay. throw and the pick up dare. And that's going to be the knockout for Snowy. Flower, two stocks left. Pretty good lead. And you do not want to go down a stock in game uh, three like this because we have seen Flower struggle a little bit when it comes to getting those finishing hits. That being said, immediately Look at that. Again, Covered just through. baiting the high recovery Edgar. and then able to get the capitalization and the down and not able to touch the side of the stage in time. That was masterful. Yeah, that was really great, great positioning from Flower there because the recovery would have caught Snowy if he drifted, but made it so that if Snowy went for the down air at all, he was not going to be able to reach the stage. And now Flower with a great combo gets the recovery right after that chase dodge. Has Snowy up the left side of the stage and Snowy barely dodges through all three of the attacks coming out from Flower there, but that downlight side air will bring him to orange and light to cover the landing. And Snowy retreats to the platform where he's had the most success from so far 
corner, but a weapon throw has to disengage that situation. And now the axe has been picked up, and we haven't been seeing him rack up damage too well on the axe. And this has been all oh. flower until that side are connected. I like that commitment too, right? Because if it hits, it hits. And it was so close to actually connecting and sending Snowy into an awful position offstage. Hammer in hand yet again. Flower slowing down. This time not actually going to be punished for it though, but every time I see that happen, I get nervous. Stomp it to side. You're not going to connect because Flower didn't lean into it. Ended up drifting back a little bit. Only jumped in place. Oh. Now, okay, love that side let. as just a get off me option. Yeah, gravity cancel side let from Snowy off the side of the stage. Oh, no, Flower, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, it worked. He gets his first knockout off of waiting there on the side of the stage. Reacts for when Snowy comes back onto the stage, and that's going to be the lead. This is the biggest lead that Flower's had against Snowy all day. You know, maybe you don't even have to stop doing that. Just doing it like 80% less at least makes a little, oh. I think okay. an edge guard puts it more in your favor, too, when eventually you have to come back to the stage. But yeah, on stage, not so much. That being said, I mean, Flower could just, you know, have been losing a lot of 50-50s. It's hard to tell. So far, he's been Sometimes great Sometimes you just game. flip heads five times in a row. That's okay. true. Right, and there he gets his first tails, and that might be the motivation that he needs to be able to get uh, uh, into a game four scenario here. Okay. I mean, if he wins this, this could be the first w like, game win over Snowy competitively. Yeah, <laughs> which in of itself oh. is a huge achievement, and right now, Flower is able to get out there, able to weapon get the downing. The weapon That's toss it. is not even needed. Flower is keeping himself in it. He is keeping himself in the set, and that is the first game in all of the four sets that he's played against Snowy that he has actually won for okay. himself. We have a set toss. That's on the scoreboard, and now that the 3-0 hasn't happened, you said it has to go to a game five, so how is Flower we're going to two-stock him in this one, Dara, because that was a two-stock going into that game three. He's just going to stop waiting. That's all that's going to happen. He's going to stop waiting. And something that I do want to yeah. point out, anytime that Snowy is actually on the platform and Flower is down on the ground, yeah, he's like mitigating the amount of damage he takes, but always suspending it because by the time he comes down, he's still getting all of his platform landings caught out. There's something very sophisticated happening with Flower, which is basically the the anti potential and just how well he juggles opponents with Bo. He is doing exactly what Bo should be doing. Yeah. And uh, the thing that I think he's adapted to these single plat uh, stages where Snowy has been oftentimes uh, retreating to the platform when he's getting hit by three or four neutral lights than he would like to do is that he's just immediately doing a jump uh, buffer recovery to catch him and grab him as he lands on the platform. And since Snowy, if he goes for Axe down here on a platform, you end up getting that landing animation if you don't space it very well. Hasn't been going for a lot of those landings to cover himself. Has been cutting caught by a lot of that and the damage has been too much to bear. And now that Flower's just not letting up with the neutral wins. And he's not trying to go for this really hard reach for these stop side airs, these down tickets, Two, neutralites. One, um, he's actually just doing a very good job, at least as, a, as far as that last game went. So we're back to Fortress Alliance for game number four. Snowy on the Zol once again, opens up pretty strong with the backswing of that Axe recovery and gets a down light to boot. Yeah, and these have just actually been the best sets that he's ever had in his entire competitive career, to my understanding. He has not made it into a single top 32 of any like official event being the online ones. At the moment, though, Flower is off stage, knows how to get back on, though, says, hey, I'm not getting hit by that, you're not going to check me with that at all, and resets the situation. Yeah, neutral light comes through from Snowy, brings him into the orange, goes off the stage with the axe, and now that Snowy's on the ground, this is the hardest uh, job that Flower has, which is to get him into the air so he can start the juggle state, and that side light neutral light will basically put it to a point where if a Sair hits now, I mean, Flower is just going to go down to two stocks. Flower does him off the side of the stage, though, waits at the weapon throw. Snowy somehow manages to, like, reach from underneath the stage to pick that weapon back up, and Snowy sends him flying with an end light. Yeah, with that end light and forces out the dodge, but Snowy doesn't actually capitalize, just goes back onto the stage, playing it really safe, picking up the cannon, and guess what? Playing that patient has actually worked out. And now Snowy has the biggest lead um, compared to the last game. So this is a bit of a mountain for Flower to climb right yeah, now. Yeah, and Flower has shown that when trying to get back from this deficit that it's actually really hard to break through Snowy's defense. I mean, that side stick was almost a good opportunity to punish, but now Snowy is moving in a way that's actually very hard for Flower to track. Down ticks are coming through, Stomp gets punished by a double Nair, Snowy goes for the third blast and the scoop, still not enough to be able to knock out Yumiko here not having the greatest force off of that attack, asking the stomp there to even be able to equalize the stocks. Nice Sizing. way to get back onto the stage. Yeah. That was crazy because Flowery said, hey, you know that edge guard he went for? Absolutely useless. Just reset a neutral and now has the advantage against Snowy. The question is, how do you close? We're looking for a stomp, we're looking for a cider, but nothing is actually connecting right now. Oh, and Snowy keeping away so well here. Oh. Avoids the cider, gets the backswing of the dare. That's that stomp there will finally get it through. Flower holds on, but the deficit still there is, uh, is, is quite big. It's quite big, but you know what? It is within the realm of doability. Snowy. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, no. Snowy's controller. Oh, I'm seeing, you can see with the camera just being like, what's going on? Okay, Flower, probably going to wait a moment here just to see what's going on there. But that combo started. And so, all right, we're going to see what's going to happen there. But I think Snowy's having some controller issues during that game. And we might take a minute to see what goes on there. Okay. What timing? 
Yeah, that was kind of brutal timing. Because when, when, when he respawned in, I was like, oh, is he going to wait out his entire iframes to make a point? And then I looked at it, and it was like, nope, the controller is not actually responding. Flower just had evened up the game 2-2. to two. I think it was like in Deep Orange against Snowy's Fresh Stock before that situation happened there. And we're about to find out what we're going to do with it. Yeah, that is not what you want, especially when you for anybody involved with it, because uh, Snowy was up a couple of games. He had a really good opening, and Flowey was starting to make that comeback in that game, um, starting to get a bit of momentum for himself. So this is a bit of a bummer for everybody uh, at the moment. So we're just going to figure out what's going on here. Yeah, we'll um, investigate it, and we'll make the call, and then we'll find out, and we'll let you all know. Um, but that could have definitely still gone either way. That wasn't one of those situations where it was like, ah, oh, yes, because of that, now we don't know how the set was going to play out. We had just evened things up, so set's still very close, and we're just going to make sure everything's okay. Yeah, this is just a bit of an unfortunate momentum stopper for the time being, so we're just going to have to see what happens. But um, we're noticing an issue once again happening in that game with Flower not being able to close as easily and maybe sometimes being a little bit too hungry for it, or rather his opponents being really, really cognizant of his win conditions yes. and then avoiding them and punishing them, right? Especially with Hammer on hand, avoiding all the stomps, avoiding all the siders, or just waiting for like a whiffed side sig or something. I think Snowy is really, really good at realizing that that Flower gets antsy when the stock number is lower for him, right? Like when, it, when it's three to two, the way that Flower plays starts to become a little bit more linear. It's a, it's a lot easier to get him to go for those approaches, and Snow is just kind of like, okay, when I was going for these sidelight nares or these sidelight side airs in situations where it was feeling like a little bit of a 50-50, I can go to the side plat, you'll approach me, and then I can get some uh, uh, some counter hits, right? Like we got a situation where he went for like a dash jump, double jump, side air, misses that completely, backswing of axe air comes through, and suddenly he takes three hits from Zol, and that means that you're already in orange. Yeah, Zol's damage output is ridiculous. And really, it's the same idea as when you go fishing. Right? If, if you have, you, you wouldn't know, but you toss out your rod, right? And you can't just immediately like tug in and hope that you get something to bite. You have to slow it down and you, you can't be like too obvious with it. Otherwise, you're just going to scare the fish away. You're not going to find your wind condition. You're not going to find that closing move. Um, and this just happens when you're a little bit nervous or when you want it a little bit too much that you start just ignoring what is happening in front of you. When you start throwing out all of those KO options um, and they're just waiting for you to press it and then they'll just be able to punish you and solidify that lead even further. Yeah, and so I just got word that we're going to be going back into that game, starting from okay. a similar stock situation. So they're going to recreate the scenario there and then play it off from there. Uh, and we're going to be going into that game number four. What was the damage differential, if you remember? I think, I'm not sure. I think the wording I got was either it's going to be two stocks to two or two stocks to one. We're going to continue the matchup from there. We're just going to make sure that everything's working and getting into that matchup. And then we'll just pick it up and see how that plays out. Okay, yeah, well... I okay. just hope both I just of them said a bunch of things that are not applying anymore. The agreement is now a full restart, which I like a lot better than what I had heard. You know who <laughs> probably likes that? You yeah. know who likes that? Flower is probably. Flower likes that. I think both players actually liked that a lot better because the game state was so wishy-washy there, right? It was. It was a pretty bad... If you're thinking about it in terms of the beginning game and the mid game, the mid game was pretty good for Flower because he was making that comeback and he had a lot of momentum. But that beginning game was pretty rough because he was put at quite the deficit, right? So both of them honestly having a nice clean slate, having a nice blank slate. This might be the exact exact thing that both of them need to be able to play the best going into this. Yeah, and so we're going to see how this game four replayed is going to go here, right? Because uh, depending on the situation, I think that the person who takes the first stock actually has a lot to say about how the outcome of the game is going to be. Whereas in other situations where we were watching Flower versus Boomy, it truly did not matter. It was just a, it was just a, a game of momentum to see who was going to be able to take and do the most damage uh, in, in a row, as we saw a lot of the situations where it was like three stocks to one, then one stocks to one, and so on. This has been very much, uh, okay, I've taken the lead, I'm not going to let it go. I'm excited to see how this goes. Um, and once again, I just still hope to see that Game 5 transpire. I still want to see it at least go to Game 5, and then, you know, the winner will, uh, of course, decide themselves uh, who's actually going to advance further. But the biggest adaptation, the biggest adjustment that we've actually seen, yeah. um, the exact thing that you were, you know, complaining about a little bit was all the waiting and the fact that Snowy was playing that game a lot better. And we have actually just seen that be diminished, or the only times that it was actually being implemented was when Flower was edgeguarding uh, Snowy. Yeah, and so we'll have to see if that continues to be an ad adjustment, uh, depending on how big of a lead Snowy gets or doesn't get, right? I think that if Flower ends up having that first stock win and everything goes very well, it creates a situation where you can create a juggle state, all the end lights and nares start coming through, and then Snowy just can't get his way back into the game. Uh, but if Snowy starts with the lead, I could see Flower going back to those habits that allow Snowy just to get the win again. Um, yeah. 
We'll just have to see, I suppose, right? Okay, and it seems like we'll be getting into the game. So everybody, once again, we're getting a restart of game for you. I hope both of these players are just able to compose themselves, get back into it. This is unfortunate. Nobody wants to see this happen. Except maybe Flyler, who's like, you know what, you can totally disconnect. I'll, I'm okay to start, <laughs> I'm game. okay to start back in an even One. game. Yeah, so Whoa. here we go, Fortress of Lions, game number four here. Flower, just off the back of his first win over Snowy in a mm -hmm. game, is trying to find his first set victory over Snowy as well to get into top 32 here at BCX. Snowy on the Zol going up against Flower, who's been playing Yumiko better than anybody else that I've seen pick, pick the legend before. This uh, might be one of the best Yumiko performances I've ever seen myself. I mean, it's probably just the best one, considering that at worst it's 33rd at BCX, right? And that is pretty darn good. Flower getting hit by that weapon throw to pick up Downlight, though. We'll bring him to Orange. Okay. And so far, yeah. this game is starting out to look exactly the same as it was playing before. Yeah, looking exactly the same. And Soul's damage output is ridiculous. Look at all that knock oh. knockback from the side. Who has no dodge off stage. The weapon toss has a bit of insurance to get back on. Waiting, being nice and patient. Doesn't actually catch that jump of the side. But that's going to be it. That's going to be that stock. Yeah, that's D-Light and Air, bread and butter combo coming out from the cannon. And when you have that much damage onto your opponent, it's always going to work out. And now we have possibly an even worse game state than before, right? Whereas Snowy just now being put into deep yellow. Uh, but the neutral light catches the landing there. And Flower just cannot seem to get a single hit in. Finally gets into that jungle state, but Snowy lands, puts up the end light, doesn't punish the gravity cancel down light, but doesn't really need to have a hurry to do so. Has already bought Flower to the same amount of damage that he has on his first stop. This is not the character that you can go hit for hit with. You cannot go hit for hit with Zol's axe, but that is going to be that the ground pound, and that is going to be the stock. Oh. Flower did not take as much damage as he nearly could have. That almost got awful. Only I mean, in the yellow, it could have been a lot worse. And that's the power of bow ground pound, right? You have all that startup and that slow distance, but when you get that move to connect, you're already low on jumps, you're not making it back to the stage, and Flower, only in orange now, avoids the down signature from Snowy, but does dash up into the side light from Snowy, putting that out there as an anti-air, does get one neutral light, and I think that's gonna be it. No, side light comes Ooh. through, but he got the stuff recovery, is that it? The stock's oh, just no. gone! What a commitment. Oh no, and that was such a beautiful play from Snowy as well, just saying, hey, you're not gonna get away with that against me. Able to get that spike and able to get that stock, and now we have the same exact lead as before. And the amount of neutral lights that are connecting, Flower is struggling to match this damage output that Zol has. Yeah, side light, neutral light coming through, but he's gonna need so much more of it. And just like you said, you cannot go blow for blow against a character like Zol, especially with Yumiko's force stat, right? And so Flower already dipping into that force stance to have a little bit more is starting to get the hits. Good Once way. Snowy hits one down light, three down lights, Flower basically has only even up the damage of the stock deficit. Snowy and CQC is absolutely absurd with Axe. So had all these different neutralize, all these different delays connecting, and now this is great. Snowy isn't even trying to get closer to Flower in that moment. The only thing that could have possibly connected was that neutral. It's a good amount of damage. Nice weight coming back down with a downer. Oh, oh no. Side light and air connecting, and that might be it. Another side light and air comes through, and Snowy down to see the side air. Down air connects to punish that side, side signature, and Flower looking for something to get started here. Gets the stop, Sarah. Okay, Edge Guard comes through, puts up the down to bait Snowy but Snowy goes right above, goes for a weapon throw and makes it back to the stage. d recovery, that's gonna be it. And Snowy wins over Flower, three to one. Continues the win streak, bumps it up from a four to a five and gets in the top three too. But what an amazing run coming out from Flower here at BCX. Now he played incredible Snowy, did exactly what he needed to do. And what I am just curious about is how was he able to connect so many GC and just regular grounded neutralites? Because he just kept getting them over and over again. And yeah. Axe, in general, is the kind of a weapon that's like, hey, this thing is not going to deal long extended combos. If you're going hit for hit with Axe, Axe is the one that's going to come out on top. If you're going up against Zol with Axe on hand, he's going to come out on top twice. I think the players that play Axe the best right now in the current meta is that with dash landing providing you so much movement and allowing you to be so fast, it's also very committal because you have to land with your dash and Axe neutral light just lasts long mm -hmm. enough to where you're like, okay, you're trying to jump around me to do a mix up. I'm just going to swing in this general area. I just have to catch you with the move in some of the, what, 20 to 30 frames that it lasts. It does a ton of damage. It gets you off me and it completely resets your momentum. And that's something that Snowy did phenomenally against Flower, who showed a lot of prowess with that sort of dash dance, dash landing style movement that he succeeded with against Boomy in the set prior. I think also in that last game, Snowy started moving around uh, Flower's signatures a lot better. Um, and there was like a couple of moments where I literally just saw Flower throw out like that D-Sig once again. Um, and Snowy, instead of like trying to maneuver around, instead of trying to go into it, which is where Flower usually excels in conditioning people and trapping them in really uncomfortable places, he actually just went totally outside of Hammer's range. He was he was okay 
and willing to give up a little bit of stage, but he understands that the amount of mileage that Flowey is able to get um, off of manipulating that space, off of punishing that next option, off of punishing you trying to get in between it, I mean, it just wasn't worth the risk. So as a result, he just stopped falling into it up until the last one that you know resulted in a new trilly, but that was it. Yeah, and so that's going to be end of Flowers' run here at BCX. Goes out at 33rd. Snowy going to be going to top three, too. We've got more Brawlhalla singles action after this. We're going to take a short break. When we're back, we're going to be showing you even more here at BCX 2023. Did you think you could keep me out? I can't tell if you're sweating or crying. You're stronger than I thought. <laughs> I'm not cheating, you're just not trying. You're so predictable. I'm Loki, and you're the who again? Lord something? <laughs> Very good, Legends. <laughs> I think he likes you. <laughs> I'm finally here. Or am I? <laughs> Welcome to Brawlhalla. Kitayo uragirareta nakama yo. よ。死ぬまでこの世界を守ってみせる。失われた魂を見つけてやる。魂を貸してくれ。カルダー。仲間が倒れたが、俺は負けない。手を貸す。
うか叶わない相手なんていないはあ、仲間よ力を貸してくれ多勢に無勢だが俺にはかなわないぞラプターフォースの真の力を見せつけろお前の攻撃は強いが俺の意志にかなわないまだまだ仲間のために戦う残ってるのは俺だけだ最後の防衛ブラルハラへようこそ Welcome back, everybody, to BCX 2023. I am Darla, joined by my lovely, incredible co cast, Utaza, bringing to you some incredible singles elimination action. Yes, and the match that we are coming up next is one that's actually something I didn't realize I'd be excited for, and that's going to be Viper versus mm -hmm. Anime. Anime, a player who in the two scene has become a staple name in North America, playing Onyx in both twos and singles. And that's the, that's the interesting part for me, because Onyx, at least in terms of the treatment that she's gotten competitively because of how good she's been in the doubles scene, I never really thought of a singles primary pick, but that is what Anime has been succeeding with in both of the game modes. And Viper, on the other hand, uh, with SolarSim, was able to have an incredible mm -hmm. uh, uh, best of five against Pumi and Sansom in twos yesterday, uh, is doing really well in singles for himself here at BCX and has been a player that's been around since uh, as long as I can remember competing in Brawlhalla. You can already look at the history that he's got of those gold, silvers, and medals. Has been no stranger to being on the podium before, and especially at land environment as well. Yeah, and I know just Polymanto either like backstage or like in the audience is getting people to chant some kind of Swedish chants. He did this every single time there is a Swedish player on the stream, so a little bit of a shame that he can't actually see this one, but I know that he is chanting for Viper in spirit. So Viper and Anime have never gone up against each other. The only times they were actually at the same event have been at the past couple of lands, which were Dreamhack San Diego and the last Brahalla World Champs. They've never gone into each other. This is just a battle of uh, EU versus Anime. A. Yes, and it's going to be a unique one too because I think anime only as of the last two two majors has really turned into a player that everybody's looking at in both of the game modes as a threat in the tournament. Now, would people put him in the top eight threat at BCX? Not quite yet, but this could be a tournament where he could make that name for himself if he gets further and further into the bracket. And he's got to get through Viper one, to do that. So here we go. Whoa. We've got Onyx versus Ragnar. So Viper, one of the few players that has stuck with Ragnar for as long as the legend's been out on the Katars and Axe here against anime on the smallest stage in the game. Stocks will certainly fly in like a match a small stage when you have Axe and Cannon at once is very, very suffocating. So this is going to be an aggressive matchup. This is going to be a Chad matchup. Oh. And you're going to be seeing Viper going out there, getting all of those downers, quite a bit of damage and enemy. Whoa, what was yeah, that? Putting out the down signature there has that chainsaw effect, being able to stab that last. And if you get burned by the flames and you get hit by the swing right afterwards and Viper just covering the edge of the stage there and anime just not ready for it. Has a lot of damage on him here. But yes, small stage. That's something to be considered here for oh. anime. But if anime also just goes down to that downer, the bottom of the stage, if we could hear the EU crowd already celebrating with that lead there for Viper as he goes up three to two. Yeah, I love it. I love it when people cheer it like pop off with like one stock just taken, right? And it's still game one out of a best of five, so uh, there's quite a bit more gaming ahead of us. At the moment, though, the D light is going to convert into the neutral. That's also not the quite stock a bit quite more yet. pop offs out of us because there's going to be more stocks to fly in both directions here as Viper sends an enemy off to the right side of the stage. Guitar Sidelight doesn't quite get started into anything crazy, but the down light air will take him off the top, and only that guitar Sidelight connected before equalizing the game two to two. Yeah, not a whole lot else after that. Right now, though, excellent uh, anterior with the D light. Okay, anime going to be looking for the recovery. Doesn't find it. Side light into neutral leg, putting it back down. Good dodge. Just saying, hey, you want to mash out of disadvantage? No, you don't. I got to punish with your name on it. Oh, falls to that ground pound, and Viper tries to get hit by that ground pound again. No, gets managed to get back to the stage, throws the weapon, picks up the new spawn, gets the guitar recovery after that to get the combo, and brings the damage into an equal state. But that last stock that he took off of anime was off of knocking him off the bottom of the stage with that down air, and anime fell down to his demise. Viper's getting a lot more damage than this to be able to get him off the uh, side of the stage with either a strong hit or a signature. In anime, he just keeps taking this lead further and further. 
He's got cannon in hand. He had the jump call up, but just a little bit too far back. This time around, the new trailer does connect, and that's going to be the stock. Anime with a pretty sizable lead yet again. Yeah, Neutralite trying to catch Viper, dashing forward and back. Anime puts on another one, and that's like the job that Axe is supposed to do against a lot of dash-heavy movement that Gauntlets just can't do quite as well. As we've seen, maybe four to five Gauntlet Neutralites go wide. Viper getting some damage in here, but Anime does get that reversal, that side air in the sky, and the side light right afterwards. Attack on a bit more damage to this lead. Viper being nice and evasive, just looking for the next opportunity to come back onto the stage. Up until, okay, Anime Fan just sometimes explodes. That's what Cannon lets you do, but the double down is going oh. to be the stock, and that was the best space to axe down that I've ever seen. I have never seen the, just a weapon toss be that close. It was pixels away no, from the dare, the dare hit, and then the weapon throw hits him. But he got the he got the hitbox of the dare through the weapon before it connected. That window That's, to actually both hit that and avoid the weapon before it ended up to is like five frames. My, that actually might be too generous. That's like closer to frame perfect. I, that, that's very difficult to do. Viper got the spike Viper got despite quite the weapon what happened. Yeah, yeah, that was that was really well played. And now Viper has the game a little bit of a weaving state. Oh, that Nair would have just knocked out. If oh, that hit there, the angle of knockback would have been diagonal enough. I think Anime would have just gone down. Viper went for it all there. And now he has to avoid basically every strong hit from Anime the rest of the game. Immediate pickup into the D-Light, just knowing oh. the weapon he has next. But that's going to be the new trailer. And Anime fan, you know what? That was not an easy one victory by any means. Viper was bringing that one back and was really quite creative with his defensive options and coming back onto the stage. Viper is a menace when it comes to the edge guarding. He is constantly threatening with his downers. I think he has to be a menace when it comes to the edge guarding because if he didn't get those edge guards, I'm not really sure how Viper was going to knock out anime. Uh, Onyx, with that base defense being so high at 8, uh, is very difficult to knock out. I give uh, her a little bit of an advantage on a stage like Brawlhaven. Uh, and Viper was going to have to go for those edge guards to be even able to have a chance to get those knockouts, because he wasn't showing that he was able to connect any strong hits, right? No axe siders were really going into those edge guard scenarios. There was a lot of down airs after some sideline airs on stage. And then not a single signature was able to connect from him as well, besides that down to get the edge of the stage. Um, so we'll see what happens here in game number two on Brawl Haven as we're running it right back. One, and I've got to say, the competition so far at BCX has been a lot of unexpected people playing some of the best I have seen in a while. The fact that Viper number 25 in the EU is going this toe-to-toe -to -toe with the anime, it is genuinely quite unexpected, right? But we will have to see if he's going to be able to take game two, if he's going to be able to keep it as even as it was in game one. Yeah, Viper now trying to go for that downer off the left side of the stage, does hit the guitar recovery, neutral light catches the anime trying to slide up the edge of the wall, but the gauntlets are picked up and Viper continues to try and extend this lead, but that ground pound interrupted by Gravity Castle Downlight from Viper. Great wake up there to stop what would have been a, a really devastating attack. But that downstick gets right through from anime, and now the damage is starting to be equal on both sides. Looking for the new trailer as a jump call out was unsuccessful, over committing with that side light, and Viper going for lead though. Once again, unsuccessful with the recovery. That one actually did not KO that angle, really favoring him, oh. and now he is still hanging onto the stock, and he wants that ground pound. He is hungry <laughs> for it. I can't believe that new trailer didn't connect. Yeah, he's been looking for it for a few times. He's gotten punished enough for it, right? I feel like maybe by now he should have been discouraged. Side air, oh, no. no! Expects the drift from like 2017 to come into play there. Doesn't quite get it, but the dare dribbles off the stage, gets the side air afterwards, and takes the first lead of the set. Now we'll see if there's a repeat of last time, which is, is Viper going to get any mileage off the stock, or will we get a repeat of last game? At the moment, though, he's not able to find any big wins, any big hits. Anime fan being nice and patient here, looking for the jump lead with the neutral lead, looking for the D-Light. Okay, nice little get-off-me option. What is Viper going to do to get um, just more of the lead secured? I mean, he tried sideliding left and right, and none of those work, so he gets blasted away by the cannon, and Anime switches over to a fresh cannon, but Viper finally gets his unarmed attack, and oh, look at this. So the, the way that Viper's playing right now is like, okay, Okay, I'm fine with the lead that I've got right now. I'm gonna play purely unarmed. He's not even going for these weapon spots. It's actually been three neutral lights in a row. He's like, I'm not picking it up. Oh, and wanted that D light so bad. Maybe wanted to combo it into like a ground pound or maybe even like a GC uh, down strong. Not gonna find it that time though, but at least uh. he has now established some kind of a lead to it. He is allowed to lose a couple of exchanges to anime now. He has Ooh. bought himself the ability to do so. Yeah, Downer comes through as well. And I always love those moments when a player has a lead and they go like, you know what? I'm just never gonna pick up a weapon again. He's like, he's gonna look like it and he'll never do it. It. I can only imagine his opponents literally thinking what is wrong with you as that's happening there because if you get anything that could get started with the axe, maybe something could have happened more there. But Viper, no, playing very confidently with that playstyle has anime in the red once again. Anime bringing it back though, the neutral stick just barely avoided as Viper holds in after that side light connects. Okay, that side does connect though, and anime, ooh, that was what we call an over extension, and Viper punished it accordingly, told him that he's not going to get away with it, and now has secured himself a lead once again. Will he be able to get a lot of mileage off of this lead though? Let's find out. He's got a weapon in his hand. 
hand this time. The neutral light does connect. Landing down air. Doesn't combo into the side like it is not the backswing. And anime picks up the gauntlets, puts out a, a down signature. And that's actually a lot of damage coming in here. No, the dare ends up getting the landing hitbox and he goes down to silent recovery. Anime taking a bit of damage, but not too much to call this a real lead. And now it's one to one here in game two. Good by Boo, dashing in, dashing out, being nice and patient, looking for this next opening kill. But Anime, oh, you could even know what Onyx is capable of. You could even know what Anime is capable of with, um, with Cannon in hand. So right now, Vipu just needs anything to secure this lead once again. Doesn't get the dodge read, but okay, doesn't put him in the blender. Yeah, side air comes through, gets the down air, but Viper reversals, gets the stare. Edge guard with down to here could be huge. He's gonna look for it, maybe have the weapon though, but he went for it too late, and there comes the damage coming up from Anime. Trashed nice him, waited, but then he went back on the ground instead of going oh. like an immediate side and well, probably uh, pivoted to the other direction. Viper Crap hanging onto the stage, doesn't get the side air, doesn't get the down air either as Anime Whoa. dodges away. Oh, that, anime. that grab pal was crazy. Anime manages to make it back and he goes for it again. What is he doing? The side light just comes right through it. Viper doesn't react to it, and Viper can't find a strong hit, downsing, dodge, downer, connecting, neutral to recovery, finally comes through and Viper takes the first game of this set to even it up one to one. He put him into the blender. All he did, he just needed to wait for that dodge in. He found it, and then it looked like he hesitated for a second, and then, yeah. then he finally found it. You like say he put it in the blender, but it's like he's like, <laughs> he's only turning the blender on for like a second at a time, and he's, he's like, wait. He's pulsing. He's not making a smoothie, okay? It's a food processor. And now he's just literally doing push-ups in between the sets. I guess he's feeling a little cold after I'm that. But I told you this was a Chad you know, matchup. I, I, you know, I realized it's like, you, I thought the whole entire tradition was to do push-ups after every loss, but he's doing like, what is that? Is he have, he's having 15, was that 15 or 20 push-ups in between every win? All right, Viper, let's go. Warmed up to be able to go into game number three. God, dudes are so funny. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> so going into game number three, uh, Viper was really aggressive, especially when it came to the edge guarding. I feel like Anime had a couple of interesting commitments that last game. He kept putting himself Good way off of putting stage. it, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm being nice. Yeah, okay. the, there was those like side charge down zigs that allowed him to be reversal very easily, and there were some moments where I was like, yes, Viper did the right thing, getting the pivot side air to punish what Anime went for, Three, but at the same time, two, I'm like, Anime, if you one, go for that, that's wrong. what's going to happen to you. And a lot of those edge guards felt a little sloppy at best. So we're going over to the next flat stage in the roster, right, Demon Island, where the platform to play on is actually a lot smaller, but the blast zones are a lot farther away, so he can get a lot more out of this defense if he doesn't lose the stock off stage. The Viper, in 15 seconds, Okay, makes it back. Viper does get a lot of damage in that situation and catches the landing with the end lights, and he's looking a lot better here going into game number three. Anime, though, picking up those gauntlets yet again, just keeps on connecting all of these side lights. No immediate follow-ups, though, and Viper is just getting a lot more damage out of every single hit. He is just reading Anime's dodge options a little bit more as opposed to Anime when he connects a side light with the gauntlets. Now, Viper with an axe on hand, backing off a little bit, able to avoid that one. Oh. Okay, what a whip punish. Side Light Nair comes through. It's a Viper Classic trying to get the neutral signature on the fastball after getting hit by that attack. Weapon throw forces anime low, and that dive kick catches anime before he touches the stage, but an immediate wake up dodge to the stage to get the wall touch, make it back, pick up the gauntlets. Means Viper is now the one starred with a weapon. Guitar is picked up. Can he get the recovery here? He tries, but anime dips down low, but that down sig catches him off guard. Yes, it's a move that looks like it should spike, but actually, when it hits grounded, it's got quite a bit of force. And he goes yeah, and right it up the top. you of the all stage. the way up to the top. Absolutely. Katari's in hand yet again. You already know what Viper wants. Looking for a downer, looking for a side light. And Anime Fan is just staying up in diagonal relative to Viper. Chase Whoa. dodging in, not able to connect that D-Light, but look at all of his damage inbound. And oh. I felt like he read that dodge option too. He was ready for it. But he I think he read it and then he just didn't do the right thing afterwards. He's probably also grimacing a little bit after that dropped combo potential there because that could have been so much damage from Katar's. Side light into side air is just going to be able to take Viper out there on his first stock. Mm -hmm. But still, the damage Viper got in there is respectable. I think Axe is coming up next for him here. He picks it back up. Let's see how long he stays under that. One neutral light catches him, and that side to could have spiked anime super early on. In it was stock. a 50-50. If you go high, then you don't get hit. If you go low, hold on. We might have actually just stolen that stock away. Gets that neutral light off, gets that down light as well. Again, when you go hit for hit with any Axe, it is Axe that is going to come out on top, especially because it doesn't feel like Anime Fan has gotten um, nearly as many combos as he did in game one. No, yeah, they're, they're actually lacking quite a bit in Viper with the recovery. I cannot believe that just carried Onyx at the top of the stage. I thought was a little tankier than that, but no, Viper now has a whole stock lead over Anime here in game number three, and opening it up with a side light near end light means that Viper has taken so much of a lead off of Anime that this might be match point for Anime at this point. Viper is about to do some more push-ups. That's all that's on his mind. He wants to get that blood flowing yet again, and at the moment, though, Anime <laughs> just calling He doesn't himself. even care about the match. He's just kind of like, I need to get to my next rep. Oh, today's it's a, chest it, day. It's Did a three-minute cooldown. We can't go longer than three minutes, and it's 5.20 on the clock. He's got to get the stock right now so he can get his next 20 push-ups in. 
neutral stick comes through, and that's not going against his game plan, okay? Yeah, anime gotta... is just at least trying to make his exercising useless this rest period a little bit too long at the moment. Okay, oh. not gonna connect that neutral. Nice dodge from Viper coming back on with the down, and anime fan backing up a little bit. Neutral just... air hits, and that was the max range there. Neutral stick comes through as well. Can anime make it back to the stage? I mean, this might be a two stock at this rate. Viper does get hit by the side air. All right. Cannon can perform miracles off of one dodge read. Uh, anime might need two on this stage. Yeah, Cannon can do Cannon things. Let's never forget about that. Let's never forget about what Gauntlets can do when they get that one dodge read off stage as well. Keep I think he can shove yeah. you all the way back down. But Viper, oh, oh, okay, one what a delight. Light. I mean, I think he needs two more of those if he wants to hit no other moves for the rest of the game. And Anime goes in for that neutral signature. Okay, gets the pummels. That end six more than enough to send him off the top of the stage. And Viper brings it to match point here in game number three. Is he going to do it? I don't think he's going to do it. Oh, my God. You got to commit to the bit. I mean, it might have been like him making up for not doing it after the loss. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out in the post It's just one set of push-ups. It's not it, going to do that much. It's, I mean, he may have done that set and been like, actually, that's enough for me for the week. Yeah, he's just Three, done. Wow. He's just done. We're going one, straight into game I'm number disappointed. four. Uh, here we go, back on the Demon Island. I think this stage looks better for Viper than any other stage, but this is where anime wants to go for game four. So winner of this is going to be moving on. And this, by the way, once again, to clarify, this is not the way that this should be going at all at the moment. Viper is seated quite a bit below Anime and is about to take this really, really huge potential win. But that being said, Anime just fighting so aggressively offstage. He was basically like, hey, you've gone out of options. You have to touch the wall eventually. Yeah. All I have to do is wait, react, and then you're basically done with one. And Anime was really great at making sure that those options didn't come back. By instead of letting him touch the wall, he stared him into it. And now the Nairs are coming through, and Anime looks quite unhappy with the result of that previous game as he's doing more and more damage here. Sidelight comes through. Viper on the right side of the stage, trying to get something started against Anime, and finally an end light hits, and that's all he's found so far. An end light hits, but okay, that's going to be the landing hitbox coming out there. Anime fan picking up the cannon yet again, and we already know what cannon is capable of. That being said, Viper dashing in there, getting the side light. Anime wanting that ground pound so badly, wanted to get that spike. Viper, no nonsense, putting him off stage yet again. Okay. Down light into down air puts Viper off the right side of the stage. Neutral light connects as well. Blast him off the right side of the stage. Can he make it back? Viper has been struggling to. Uh, this is this is what happens if you don't do 20 push-ups in between your games. Yeah, this is just a lesson. Okay, so so <laughs> yeah. when Viper loses this game, because that's what's gonna happen. If they, they don't do get it, it in, then and, we'll then, and then we'll have the game five there. Yeah, I don't know. This is rough. He, he goes over the side. He's going for some unarmed side lights. Okay, neutral state comes through. Similar amount of knockback as the previous game, but uh, yeah, the deficit that he's got here is uh, is quite big to say the least. He's a lot of damage here, but honestly, I do not think it is beyond Viper to do so because when he is on the guitar, oh, he has shot. been reading all of these dodge, dodge options from anime. Double he's dodge kids. There's no way Viper's to get a zero knockout. Grandpa connects. Anime did touch. Goes for the side oh. and anime's dodge was delayed so much that Viper wasn't ready for it. Goes for the third down stick. It doesn't quite hit. And now anime has to make it back to the stage. Okay, Viper without a weapon. Wait for the neutral light. The second neutral light connects. He baits with the first one. But that was a great job coming back there for Viper. All that damage works out. Obviously, the ideal is that he gets the knockout, but... That's Viper on Katars, honestly. Viper on Katars is a bit of a menace. He is so good at reading anime's dodge options, and it just feels like maybe he's not pushing it as much as he should because he has the idea he positions himself and doesn't always pull the trigger. That being said, when it does come to the Axe Cannon matchup, it is anime that is consistently coming out oh. on top because look at that string. Look at that damage. Sidelight Cider comes through, goes for the recovery. Viper gets avoided by that, but the ground pound on the stage does get him down line. A neutral sig, no. Maybe looking for the down line Nair there, but Anime puts another down light. Viper can't get the knockout. They clash, and that's not great for Viper, as one strong hit from Anime here is going to take Viper down. Neutral Land Recovery does not connect, and those blasts from the Nairs are trying to come through. The down will take him down, and Viper, well, if he plays the stock like stick he did the at the beginning of the last one. He's going to stick to the guitars, indeed. They have done so well. They have done so well, because look at what he is capable of. Anime, though, does land, does get the side and does put Viper in the most exploitable position, which is off stage. Oh. Doesn't get the lead, though, but doesn't still... Doesn't the weapon back up. That's Neutral Land and Nair. Okay, d -Light Recovery will come through, and anime brings it to game five. Okay, Viper, the choice is yours. He just like looked immediately to see what's gonna happen. Yeah, just I don't look think behind he's gonna me. do it. He was like, yeah, I did that bit once, and he's like, ah, I'm done with that. I'm not even gonna try he's for that. He's too serious right now. He's being very serious about it. Yeah, game five's coming up here, and I think, um, I can't recall. I think this is on a winner's side. So the loser of this is okay. not going to be going down out of the tournament. Uh, this is a winner's semifinal, I think, in one of the in phase two of pools. So this might be actually to get in the top 32. I'm just going to double check here. Yeah, yeah, this is one of those sets that I did not necessarily expect to go to game five. And 
I want to see the upset happen. I want to see Viper's path continue. I want to see him do it for the Sweden. So that being said, it does look like we will be getting into game five shortly. Um, I'm trying to figure out what happened here. Um, anime is starting to connect some of his offstage Three, uh, two, ambitions, one, right? He's still wrong. committing, committing like, out there. He's not getting as punished for it as he used to. Mm -hmm. He's still whiffing it, though. And I wonder what Viper can do to make him feel a little bit less comfortable going out there through those super deep, uh, like, gauntlet ground pounds. It might just be staying off the axe uh, in general, right? Because you, you remarked on that in the previous game where it was like, when it was axe versus cannon, anime was just barreling him across the stage, left to right, left to right, doing as much damage as possible. When Viper was over the guitars, he was able to do the same thing back to anime, no matter what weapon anime had. So that might just have to be the primary that he has to go for here. And we see him trying it, but anime doing well with the gauntlets regardless. And I just double checked, yes, this is a qualifier match for winner side top 32. So really big win here for anime if he's able to make this happen. And that KO comes out very early. Yeah, for he anime. got that edge code, right. he got that ground pound, and now all of a sudden this is a massive deficit that Viper has to come back from. But we already know that he is more than capable of playing without a weapon. Weapon in hand, he's able to get that Neutralite, and he picks up that Axe. That is not his weapon of choice going up against Anime, because look at that side-to-side -side stream. Already matching him in terms of damage. Anime still ahead in terms of stocks, but ooh, the GCD Light as an extension. Yeah, nicely done from Viper there. Gets the three hit, down airs coming off the side. We saw him get a lot of success. He did it again! He's perfect at being able to get, uh, uh, corner guard those edge guards, actually, um, uh, from the weapon throws, until, well, that happened. The ground pound was very nice. Let's see if he can finish this. But yes, you're right. The weapon throw, being able to space around that, now we know that it wasn't just luck. You know, right? Because he's, he's definitely done really great with the axe in that particular situation. You know, there, there was a guy who got hit by lightning twice. That being said, I don't think that's Viper who not to discount okay, anything. Okay, his, okay. Timing, his timing was great. He got the edge guard. He got a lot of damage. And now, when he gets Katari's in hand, I think he's just going to even up anime and damage. When he's got axe in hand, he's not winning a lot of these interactions. Oh, Still somehow survives. hanging on. Yeah, that's that's huge there. If he went down to that down signature there, I, I don't know if I could say that Viper could do it. Does get a nair on the edge of the stage. Lands, pivots that neutral light to put anime off the side of the stage. That down light was trying to be an anti-air. No Fall off the sidelight, and now Viper is actually keeping anime juggled. Oh, but the dare doesn't get the landing hitbox. Sidelight, nair, and a gravity cancel. Downlight, death. He got the three piece that one time, but that time anime dodges out of the way. Even if you're getting two pieces with axe, that is still a lot of damage, right? Because you're still operating off of a dodge read. That is going to be the D light into the new trailer. And now all of a sudden, Viper on his last stock of winner's side here. Anime just has to take one more. Viper has to take two. What's he going to do? He has his weapon of choice. It is getting in. Anime oh, he got the so read. Well. He got the read, but he stayed grounded. Sidelight comes through, gets the neutral. Can he get the recovery? No, he doesn't go for it. Anime goes back to the ground. The down tick baits him out, but the neutral doesn't get the jump read. He's still doing so well. Here he hasn't taken too much damage to where this isn't impossible. But anime is really trying to extend this lead to a point where it can't be recoverable. D light down air does connect. Viper side six underneath the weapon throw. Is this going to be the neutral eight? And what recovery. A catch. There's the D light recovery, and Viper evens it up one to one. He did it. He pulled the trigger. He waited. He understood exactly where he was going to After like dodge. five he times. Reacted. And now that's, listen, if it's happening game five, at least it's happening now before it's too late. This yes. is exactly what Viper needs. But is he going to win there. in this matchup this time oh, around? Oh, the ground pound nearly dodged. The side six does connect. Gets the neutral as well. That's a ton of damage coming on to anime. He has to throw his weapon down to be able to get back to the stage. But that time, that weapon throw, trying to engage with an attack, goes wide. That Gauntlet's neutral light didn't up. connect. That was spaced a little bit too far back. Oh no, this is a really good position for anime. Is he going to get this edge Oh, the ground pound gets reversed by the dare. Two ground pound hits. Anime has one dodge to make it back to the stage. And Viper drops the edge guard. The down light, however, gets anime as he goes to the left side of the stage. Can he make it back to the ground? He Viper looks for a side light. A neutral light, something that's landing. And anime covers his landing with a weapon throw down. The neutral light sends Viper off the side of the stage. But that neutral sink misses and the ground pound connects. Anime clutches game five, pops off, and gets to the winner's side of top 32 at BCX. Securing his seat, securing his placement, and keeping himself in a winner's side just as you said, Viper a little bit disappointed. And you know what? I get it. That was his game. And there was one fatal decision. There was one point where he had anime offstage. Don't say he the push ups. <laughs> <laughs> no, he had anime decision. offstage. He oh. was in an excellent position to just wait and react um, for when he would have to inevitably touch Oh, you're the, the edge guard on the left side of the and stage. You know what? Yeah, yeah. He decided to play safe. And yes, technically, he recycled the position. He put himself in a safety position, and he didn't have to put himself through that execution check. But that it's was an execution brutal. check. It was brutal because he got the down air, and then he got the hardest part. The hardest part was getting the ground pound afterwards to make it to where anime had to dodge back to the stage. And he just had to cover that with one strong hit, and he misses that, and then anime makes it back. Gets anime the was guaranteed to touch the spot oh. in uh, to touch the stage in a certain spot. There was no way he had any mix-ups left with how deep he was coming back from, with how many resources that he had left. That was really just an execution test for the but he chose to play a little bit more passively. At the end, he made the right adjustment, which is to pull the trigger on... Okay, we got a clip of that. Nice. Oh, we got a clip of the push-ups, yeah. 
Uh, uh, yeah, and so Viper, well, doing that after his one game victory, was able to bring this all the way to a game five as we get more of the highlights here from the game three that's coming up. A little bit of a high point for Viper, isn't it? Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, we're going more through those highlights. There's that neutral at the edge guard there. I really want to be able to see those last stock moments coming out from anime there as we go. We we actually just went from Brawl Haven on the Demon Island for the rest of the game after that set opened up with a with a pretty uh, back and forth performance on Brawl Haven. And now we have that last stock scenario where that neutral light goes to the end stick and Viper missing the drift on the Sarah gets hit by that ground pound. And there's the pop off going out from anime, which is probably the strongest pop off that we've seen all day in singles on stream. That was incredible. Well, I guess Flowers was pretty was pretty good too. He just like ran out in the center. Oh, what a tragedy. God, I ah. just remembered Flowers as well to knocking Boomy out so early. That is definitely like one of my like favorite like you know BCX occurrences by far. Like, that was that was huge, wasn't it? Yes, that was an amazing run. And uh, anime now making an even better run, right? Getting in the winner side of top three too. Uh, Viper on the elimination side. I gonna have to wait a little bit before he plays his next matches, but there's still a chance that we could see more Viper this weekend. So, great performance from both players there. And we've been getting some very, very novel matchups here. Being able to go from Yumiko sets into Ragnar sets into Onyx being played in singles, where normally I would have grown about Onyx because of the combination of the, the characters that she's with in twos. It's actually really, really fun to be able to see played in singles. Um, that was a really fun set. So what do we got coming up next, Dara? So we have the one and only Wubs going up against Bunny, and that is unfortunately not an emoticon that I can sound out loud. Actually, thankfully for everybody <laughs> listening back home, that would have been off. So it's going to be Wubs versus Bunny, right? And so the legends that they got most reported right now are Fate versus Rayman. Rayman in singles has been a pick that's kind of fallen off for a little bit. But uh, yeah, so this, this is going to be fun. Wubs has been playing the game for about as long as Viper has been playing. Uh, has Beth definitely gotten to a few uh, top eights, top 16s, and doubles. In singles, he's had that one top eight placement that was very impressive, and he had a really great run at BCX last uh, last year. Uh, and so being able to see Wubs here, again, is really, really fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing how this matchup plays out, as I don't actually know uh, what legend Bunny's going to be playing here in this head-to-head. Yeah, I think it's so funny for a second I looked at him, I was like, wait, which one's Bunny? And I was like, oh yeah, the one with the Bunny. With the one with the Bunny. It'd be funny if that uh, wasn't the case. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a pretty exciting one. Historically, I believe these two have only run into uh, each other in bracket in a community event two years back. So it's been quite a yes. long time. Okay. So yeah, not a whole lot of recent experience up against each other. But Bunny always on the Rayman the entire way through, mm -hmm. right? Wubs has actually experimented with quite a few experimental ledger picks, right? Because I was looking at those le uh, those reports, right? A lot of um, the Bay. A uh, lot on, uh, actually, if we can go back mm -hmm. to what those were. Yeah. Oh, no, that's the Ember uh, coming out from Wubs as well. So it'll be interesting to see what he picks here. It, it's showing that he's got Fate hovered over here, but I know that I've seen Wubs on a few different Legends in the past, so it'll be really cool to see. PR number 14 coming out from Wubs as well. And this would be a great time to, uh, I think, is this also for, yes, this is also a winner semifinal. So this is a going to be a match that's going to be a, the winner of this is going to be getting into top 32. So this is really far along into singles here for both of these players and a win would be incredible either way. Yeah, and I was curious about the guns to actually get up until this point. Mm -hmm. Bunny took it over Luna. Okay, we were not uh, emphasizing how big of an upset this was because Wow, all right, so what was the score? That was three to one, right. I was wondering why this was a qualifier match for top 32. That is a huge upset. And Wubs' path over this was over Himway, 3-2, to two, which is actually a pretty decent upset considering how great Himway did in doubles earlier uh, yesterday. So we've had ourselves just two amazing matchups coming up here on Miami Dome as we get into Three, game number one of Wubs two, versus Bunny. One, I'm excited to see a little bit of Gray Man. I feel like I've actually not gotten a chance to see him. And now we have Bunny representing some. So game number one beginning. This is, of course, to get into top 32. And we'll have to see just how this goes. Bunny, okay, picking up the gauntlets who are going to be of course doing the gauntlets thing which is looking for a delight looking for a sidelight well you know what just getting that jump catch and honestly the matchup between um, Gauntlets versus Scythe is literally you're trying to get in that dead zone of Scythe. You're trying to just get as close to Scythe as possible. You do not want to contest in that mid range, or you just want to bait Scythe to whiff. Yeah, Scythe, uh, similar to Blasters, has that dead zone that's most uh, uh, dramatic with the Scythe downlight, to where there's actually just like if you stand in front of your opponent and they downlight, you're just not going to get hit by that move. And Gauntlets does a really good job of occupying that space. But you know what doesn't have that property? Or Whoa. downlight, which just traverses that entire range. Bunny somehow getting around that weapon throw there and being able to get two 
one on recoveries, takes the lead here in game number one. Yeah, that reversal was crazy. She was able to make it back onto the stage, and now with Axe on hand, able to get that neutral light. Whole lot of stage control going out there, looking for the side, and doesn't actually find it, though. Now left weaponless, coming back on, picking up the gauntlets. That's going to be the GCD light into the recovery. Bunny picking up a lead against Wubs. Yes, a really great re lead here on Miami Dome as well. Uh, weapon spawn comes through. Wubs picks up the scythe. Let's see if he can get something started here with this combo. Nice side air, but so far it's just been one hit at here at a time, and what we're expecting to see, at least from Scythe, right? You never really get too many guaranteed uh, combos off of this weapon. You gotta go for those dodge reads to get those really explosive stocks. Oh, and Bunny so oh. far off stage. what is this? Yeah, Wolf, what, can this even is, make it back? That's this is just... Gauntlet's off stage. That's what I'm talking about, God. I feel like it's been so long since I've gotten a chance to see Gauntlet's cheat off stage, but there you go. That's gonna be it. Oh. <laughs> the KO comes through, and that's gonna be the stock there. Now Bunny, two to one. Uh, has the Nair off the right side of the stage. What can Bunny do there? Okay, no, Wubs just ends up going back and forth with the orb down air, and that Cider comes through, and that's just gonna be Neutralite. It was almost like Wubs was like team comboing with himself there with like Neutralite and a dash to pivot Neutralite, but no, that's gonna be a lot more there. And Bunny, with that gravity cancel down, like, gets the Nair. That coverage with Weapon Toss is crazy. You just pick it yeah. back up, and you're like, okay, wait, I can actually just cover high instead. Bunny is so aggressive with those offstage gauntlet weapon tosses, and it has been panning out for her every single time. Yeah. Axe on hand, looking for the downer, doesn't actually find it as Wubs gets a spike instead. Wubs left weapon was out there, ends up getting stage spiked. Is this going to be it? Yeah, Sared into the side of the wall. Lots of damage coming through. Neutralite not going to have enough force to knock out just yet, but one more could definitely do it. Goes into the backswing of recovery. Weapon throw and a dive kick does not connect, and Bunny off the bottom of the stage gets the recovery, the weakest hitbox of the axe recovery you could possibly uh, ask for. Uh, but it does mean that Bunny could basically knock out with a downlight at this point. Okay, just looking for that downlight. Oh, you know what? Evening side light like that. Is that neutral light going to do it? Yes, it will. That was a confident game. That was, in fact, dare you say, a dominant game. Bunny is doing something, and that is just playing fast and constantly getting up in Wubs' face with those weapon tosses. Yeah, and, and also I really like Bunny's playstyle with the gauntlets off the side of the stage that you remarked on after the second stock, which is that like gauntlets do have a lot of potential for offstage early knockouts, but we don't get to see people go for those a lot in singles most of the time, and Bunny was just relentless with that against Wubs. It does take a lot of boldness to do that, doesn't it? Because it is quite committal. And you know what? The best thing about it is, yeah, she's making those commitments, but they're actually panning out and they're connecting and resulting into stocks. Um, and she's also playing fast. Right? We're not seeing a lot of Three, slowdowns, two, at least in that game one, one so far. Four. She's constantly getting up in Wubs' face and making him make decisions. Yeah, which means that this counter pick over to Brawl Haven. I'd almost given favor to her, right? So, like, Bunny on, on the Rayman was playing so aggressive on the side of the stage that really didn't even need these early knockouts from Force alone. Now, Fate. One of the highest force, uh, base force legends in the game when it comes to playing against Orb. Could find slightly earlier knockouts here, but Bunny so far has just been completely controlling the pace of the set. It gets that neutral light dashing in there. Is that going to be the other one? Not quite yet. Holding onto the stage. And again, every single time, Bunny is making those offstage commitments. Going out there for those spikes, able to get the weapon toss, looking for the ground oh. down, doesn't get it. Uh -oh. Gravity cancel neutral light actually baits Wubs to go for an edge guard there. And somehow Bunny makes it back, doesn't get the side air though, and that Nair stops the ground pound. What a crazy offstage exchange. It ends up working out in Bunny's favor, but it felt like it shouldn't have. That is so funny. She just did not press anything. And oh, I heard that connected. Yeah, the gravity cancel downlight comes through there, just barely ends up whipping, and that downlight will take him off the top, and Bunny now has a lead, three to two. That was so funny. She was just moving, holding forward, going off stage, and then at some point she just stopped and said, okay, I'm not pressing anything. Not a single attack now, I'm waiting for you to get back on. Oh, and now guarding that weapon, just standing right on top of it. It's always interesting to see what Brawlhalla players have uh, as their preferred strategy to weapon starving. And Bunny just literally likes camping that spot and attacking somebody when they try to go in. Wubs does end up picking up the scythe. Down air goes off to the right, but side light and air in two. No, just trying to wait to see what Wubs would do. Doesn't work out and does get disarmed as Wubs is able to hit that recovery. Let's see if Wubs can take out the stock because he needs to pretty quickly if he doesn't want Bunny to run away with the lead. Oh, and just barely the recovery. Not going to be able to connect. That is finally going to be it, though, which Wubs desperately needed. I feel like he's just not been winning a lot of these interactions, and Bunny has been the one that is in control of the pace. Picking up the axe yet again, you already know that she's going to go out there and able to... Wow. Dude, what is happening? That was a really great neutral signature there. That's like the... I, I'm used to Rayman neutral sig being used in that sense to recover, but not to punish a dodge to the wall, but Bunny does it perfectly there. Puts out the... Puts out a fully charged side sig of Did it actually feel comfortable dodge, uh, punishing the distance there? Because the longer that you wind that up, the more range that you actually get on the move. Um, so Bunny manages to get away with it. So I have a thought. I don't think that Bunny would be this confident offstage had Wubs had Scythe in hand. Right? But because of the fact that it's like, oh, there's not really that pressure of this kind of flipping back against you, is there? Yeah, although I would say that Wubs hasn't really shown in this set 
uh, that there's a reason to be afraid of his scythe offstage just yet. And I think Bunny is going to continue challenging him there until a stock ends up flying in a way that she's not happy with. Cider comes through here. Now it's Orb against the Axe. Tries to go for the down air up there, and that Cider is just enough to knock out. Any other stage? Probably not. But on Brawl Haven, that's going to be the KO, and Wubs takes the first lead of the set. Yeah, Wubs is picking up the pace now, but at so much damage, Bunny has plenty of ways to get this KO out, right? Able to get that Cider and evening up the stock count yet again, holding on um, to this game. Weapon throws coming through there. Bunny starving the next weapon that's going to spawn in. Gets the Nair as Wubs comes down and the gravity cancel end light is a great call out. Ground pound almost connected as well. And now Wubs does pick up the orb, putting out some downers to stop Bunny's movement from being too aggressive. But every single one of these landings has actually been getting caught by the gauntlet end light. And the down to come through Wubs avoids it and then gets the cider gravity cancel end light comboing against the wall with himself there as if it was his doubles teammate. And then the gravity cancel side light Nair will green Bunny deep into orange. Yeah, Bunny took a lot of damage there, and now, once again, going out there through the ground pound, it does not matter if it misses, it does not matter if it does not connect, because she keeps finding another hit off stage, anyways. Yeah. Luckily, Wubs making it back onto the stage, looking for any possible way to pick up a weapon, but Bunny is going to make that as difficult as possible. The down air doesn't connect. Wubs able to get the recovery. What's oh, it gonna Bunny be? falls with that side air. Wubs looking for that weapon. Bunny doing such a great job coming to the landings, then that recovery, or that sideline in air, does bring Wubs deep into the orange. Bunny's still behind in damage. Now with the orb picked up, Bunny gets one Nair. Anything else? Gravity Castle I thought there was going to be the recovery. The recovery does hit, but too low to be able to get the knockout. D-Light oh, doesn't no. get the chase dodge afterwards to be able to get the recovery because it was a Gravity Cancel, and that's not going to be the stock, but now it's either player's game. Either player's game. Wubs, sight in hand now. What's it going to be here? Both of them slowing down the pace, and Wubs did the... <laughs> They both, did it. Weapon toss? <laughs> they both did the weapon toss. Like, you know what? I'll be on arm two. What? Gravity cancel sides to out of nowhere. Wubs just not ready for the distance off that move. And that's going to be the game going over to Bunny into match point against Wubs, where you make an upset over Luna, who seated to get into top eight winner side. And now another upset over Wubs 3-0, maybe? I mean, this is the road that Bunny is on right now. That jump GC side sync is so funny. That's just like a check. She hasn't done that the entire set thus far, and it's like saying, okay, it's you know what? Classic, yeah. And you see that maybe like once a set and it's hopefully it's never again. It's a once again. a set thing Three, all, two, all the time one, in gold. Right? All the time, and listen, yeah. listen, listen. What's all the time in gold can be used sometimes, just sparingly. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it works often because it's good. You just have to be able to respond to it. And Wubs literally was it was probably a disbelief that that actually it happened. It wasn't in the mental set, yeah. was it? It wasn't even established a single time. And Bunny pressed the funny Wubs was button. like, I thought we were going to throw our weapons at each other and miss five more times. That side stick wasn't fair. <laughs> Playing the same game. And now Wubs is down 0-2 against Bunny here on Fortress of Lions. As we're going into match point, Wubs has to win three games in a row to stay on the winner's side of the bracket. And if Bunny wins this, Bunny's going to be out on the top winner's side of top 32. Which is pretty crazy to think about. And she Pound, is going throw, to secure Sarah. that space. But Wubs still able to touch, still able to come back on, still fighting and brawling off stage. But look at the damage difference between... Oh, 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 that was so sick. Okay, Bunny is actually just... <laughs> that's, that's the incredible player. What is that? The weapon throw. I mean, so many players go for that weapon throw, styling when they're up three stocks to oh, one. Oh, I saw Flydus do that, that and fail. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that was optimal in taking the lead off of Wubs. So that was three stocks to two, and Bunny's barely taking any damage. That was, that was clean, that was a clip, and now Bunny is up in stocks, Bunny is up in games, and has all of the momentum that she needs behind her. Once again, these offstage weapon tosses. I have never seen somebody be so aggressive as Bunny. Yeah, weapon throws coming through. Sidelight Cider will put Bunny up both sides of the stage, which is a fresh weapon, so it's not going to get knocked out of her hands just yet. Goes in with the axe, gets the recovery, knocks Wubs off the bottom of the stage. All right, I mean, at this point, you're this far ahead, you might as well go for the gravity cancel side thing again, right? No, Wubs gets the true combo off of that Nair into the recovery, takes Bunny off the top of the stage, and evens it up 2-2. Two two. Bunny slowing it down now, just waiting for the next weapon, weapon to come on in and spawn, but Wubs is going to make that as difficult as possible. Finally, Gauntlet's in hand, and nice whiff punish on the recovery, though, putting Wubs off stage. Avoids the third glove. <laughs> just barely. You don't want to get it by the third glove. That's the strong one. And it manages to avoid what would have been a certain knockout and makes it back to stage, and Wubs has actually brought this back quite well. Just trying to space out all of these downers, and I feel like Bunny has just not felt that threatened or that spaced out by any of these downers. She's just not run into any of them, and every time she is off stage, it is so spooky. I can't believe that gravity cancel side that worked. Okay, that time doesn't gravity cancel side signature. Wubs is ready to punish that one. She was like, okay, maybe this is a, to a twice a set trick, but no. Wubs doesn't fall for it. Disarms Wubs with that downer there, and Bunny just looking for one strong hit. I think neutral light would knock out at this point, but ooh, gravity cancel down light. Wubs is fighting. Wubs is not giving up even being down this many games. But now yeah. Bunny connecting that neutralite. 
once again has a lead. And Wub's gonna be left weaponless. What's gonna happen here? Winner's bracket stock for Wub's. Wub's looking for that weapon spawn on the top platform. It does come through, but on the wrong side. And Bunny decides to guard that with that gauntlet neutral on the bottom of the stage. Doesn't go. <gasps> Okay. I think he just misses the jump. I think that dive kick was meant to bring Wubs back to the stage to combo into a nair, and Bunny just messes that up. So Wubs goes unpunished. Gravity comes to sideline. Sarah knocks out. All right, even game. Wubs has a chance. Wubs has a chance. Wubs did not take that much damage that stock at all. And now we'll see what this Oilb can actually do here. Because when it comes to getting those dodge reads, Wubs is capable of a lot of damage output right, when it matters the most. But right now, Bunny waiting a little bit, able to get that down into the side of the chase dodging in, spaced up a little bit too high, and going out there as well, wanting that spike so badly. This is the game that is going to be defined by the offstage. Oh, and the Nair's coming through. Second Nair. It was defined by the offstage, but it's being settled by the anti-airs here from Bunny. Wubs finally manages to touch the ground. Down air dribbles Wubs, but does a combo into the side air, and Wubs does hit back with that dare down like combos. One strong stare, one neutral like could do it, and that's it, Bunny with the 3-0 oh, over Wubs. Upsets Luna, upsets Wubs, gets in the winner's side of top 32, and makes an incredible run into final Sunday. What is going on with BCX this year? We are just seeing some really crazy, unprecedented runs. That means Wubs and Luna both were knocked down to elimination side in a 3-1 and a 3-0 that we just saw right now, respectively. This is crazy. This is an incredible gun for Bunny at the moment. And in fact, is this Bunny's just best performance ever? I mean, get, uh, take a look at the stats, right? Look at that. Shouting out to the crowd. I mean, definitely deserving right there. Because, I mean, this has been the best uh, Rayman run in singles that we've seen quite some time from a player that we just didn't know anything about. And now we know so much about with that PR, like, yeah, PR43, right, has been doing well over these online tournaments. But to get in the winner's side of top 32 at BCX, I mean, that's, that's the, what more can you ask for? And by taking out one of the top eight seeds on the way there, He's I think that's the best upset of the day. Eight two twice in the past, and this was at BCX nonetheless, right? So the path to actually get here is perhaps the most competitive that it's ever been. Yes, beating Luna to get to top 32 is, a, is quite the feat. Um, and Wubs, no slouch either. We get that weapon throw into the recovery off of the Nair. And look at that Bunny being able to get that knockout. And that was just an optimal way to edge guard in that situation. What a stylish player. It Bunny is was. incredible. I have not seen somebody implement weapon tosses the way that Bunny has in quite some time. Sure, we see them like killing them in like some neutral interactions, but how aggressive she was uh, with it off stage, what she really does is whittle down somebody's options and then still pick them back up and then cover something else. Um, she plays fast and she makes it really difficult for anybody to get back against her. Yeah, so we talked a little bit before during that set about how Bunny didn't want to challenge Wubs' scythe off the side of the stage, but if we look at the damage numbers at the end of the game there, Wubs basically decided that the only thing that he could even hit Bunny with was the orb. Zero damage coming out on the side, all 445 damage onto that orb. And that was the situation where I was like, I think Bunny was able to be as comfortable as she was off stage against Wubs because the site just wasn't there. Yes, and I am curious to see how Bunny is going to continue to establish that kind of game plan, if it's going to be present or not, in some future matches. I believe in top 32, the opponent that she has to fight just sitting in phase three of BCX, um, who's it going to be? Oh no. Oh, it's going to be against Fiend. Okay, that would be incredible. We're going to have some more matches coming up in just a little bit, but after that matchup, we got to take a short little break, so be right back, and we'll have more Brahal action after this.
Welcome back, everybody, to BCX 2023. We have one more set of this block. I am joined by my lovely co-casting, Taza, and we have quite an exciting one coming up ahead of us. Yes, Jester versus Maid is coming up next, and so I really am looking forward to this matchup because these are two players that you basically only talk about in doubles but have been making slowly but surely strides in the single mm -hmm. space. Maid has some really impressive performances with Nyx, a character that he plays exclusively in singles, uh, being able to bring players like Sandstorm to the brink of Game 5 at Dreamhack Dallas. Meanwhile, Jester, uh, basically out of the Axe mains in Europe, one of the best that's able to do it right alongside Delta, who we teamed with here during BCX this weekend, was likely going to be locking in Taros or Olgrim to be able to go up and head-to-head -head against this Nyx. I'm curious to see if Maid's still playing the Nyx. No, going Three, over onto two, the Mordex. Okay, so one, it's Terrace versus one. Mordex. Exactly. So I was interested about that because Maid was really uh, focused on that when Blasters were the talk of the town, but really we just don't see Blasters that much in singles anymore. So we've got the Scythe and Gauntlets instead here for this game number one. I was really excited about that. I was too. Oh. oh, well. Going into game number one, everybody. Let's see what we've got here. Already, Jasu opening up pretty, uh, pretty strong. Maid going to be looking for this next opening and jumping in. Not able to get that GCD light. Jasu just going to be missing that with Punish. Yeah, and so you were talking about how a little, there's a little bit of lack of hammer in the singles lately, but it's been coming back yeah, slowly but surely ever since kind of got that victory with Teros over in the Summer Royale, and Jesser and Delta uh, in their own respective places have been playing it in EU for this entire time, and look at that, backswing of the Nair comes through onto Maid, and Maid is going to be trying to get something started with the Scythe combos here, and in general, nice punish off that side, so can he get the edge guard? He cannot. Yeah, no, not quite yet. Maid coming back onto the stage, picking up the gauntlets, though, tossing up Jesser, just waiting for maybe a dodge opportunity, and has the right idea with the GC, Pivot D-Light, doesn't find the connection though. And now backing off a little bit, that's the stomp into the side of the Pamela Classic. Just who's looking for it again. You know why? Because he's staying on the ground and just dashing away. Oh, and May trying to get some. Oh, that's actually very interesting where they were just both waiting for the other person to dash jump to go into something. And then May was like, okay, I'll just let a recovery rip, but that doesn't actually knock out. Nair and the recovery could have possibly knocked out here, but both players are actually just having trouble closing out this last stock between both of them. Downlight from Jester not going to be able to do it too. And this is probably the most damaging first stock of a set that we've seen so far. That neutral light's not even able to knock out either. Not able to knock out the down and definitely won't either. The good couple, he doesn't come back on. This is comical at this point. <laughs> They're just kind of like, okay, there, X down light, finally knocks out and made kind of recoiling a little bit to that because he uh, was really trying to get that knockout himself. And there's a few moments there where I think May was just kind of like, wow, really, they didn't do it. And Jester takes the lead here in game one. And Jesu looking for that GC side light. Not going to actually come out, though. Maid goes out there for the weapon toss. And now, okay, beautiful stuff. The classic, right? The GC D light into the ground pound. Maid keeping himself into the game without taking too much damage. Scythe still in hand. And you already know what Scythe is actually capable of. All you need is that one big opening, that one huge opening. You get that one dodge read, and you can carry people off stage. Yeah, and so that's a great starter. Gravity cancel down light, and then uses the active input to bring him back. Uses the Nair, brings him back off stage once again. But Jester just keeps jumping over Maid's head, and Maid can't get a follow up after that hit and then Jesser with three nares after that side light brings Maid immediately into red. And despite all the effort Maid's been trying to go for with these neutral openings, it's just been getting answered by Jesser hitting him with the same amount of moves. And when it's Scythe versus Axe, you just cannot afford that deficit. Not at all, but jumping out there, able to get the ground pound. Is this going to be the stock? Not quite. Oh. Jesser coming back on. Maid not able to fully exploit on that. Yeah, I wonder what was going through Maid's mind with that dodge there instead of going for the gravity cancel down light. Doesn't end up getting the edge guard there, but does bring it back to an even amount of damage. And both of these players here are actually running into the situation where they're just having trouble knocking out the other, but Jesser once again takes the lead. And so far, the pattern that I'm noticing is that they both get the last stock red, but Jesser ends up closing out first. We'll have to see if that pattern continues into the third stock. And if it does, Jesser is not going to be one to complain about that too much. Able to get the side out, going out there, committing super heavily. And you know what? Jesser just wanted that hit. If you connect it, guess what? You could reverse the situation and you get a comeback because of the chase dodge. Yeah, Maid ended up going really deep out there for an edge grab that seemed like it was almost guaranteed. And Jesser going onto a fresh stock, picks up the axe, side light there comes through. So much of that damage coming from the axe here in game number one. But Maid with the down air goes to the gravity cancel down stick. You could have used the active input there to be able to get the edge guard. And Maid, no, misses the wall. And look at that, goes down. And Jesser, and what could have been an edge guard that would have won the game, makes it back to the stage. And Maid just barely doesn't drift into the wall because of the down air that he went for. He got a little bit hungry for this, right? He, he wanted that. He wanted it a little bit that too much. That downstick would have been the highlight of the day, honestly. That was such an awesome attempt right there. We've got uh, the maid guns up going down because of that, and Jesser takes game number one. So going into game number two, I'm trying to think about what happened here. 
it was a bit of a difficulty to close. And I do feel like that is just the reality of Scythe and Gauntlet, isn't it? Because Gauntlet does have to, if you're only connecting side lights, you have to get a dodge to get a recovery. And if you're playing Scythe to actually get a KO, I feel like it's really good at, you know, once you do get that dodge to get a lot of really early KOs. But as far as consistent KO confirms, a little tough. It's just a matter of how good you're playing with the weapon at the time, right? And so there's that consistency that comes out from being able to uh, have a weapon like Axe and be like, okay, no matter what happens to me, if I get my neutral one with side light, I'm going to get my 30 to 45 damage, and then I can just get that one good hit with a side air, and that's going to knock it out. The trade-off is, is that if you are just that good on the scythe, you only need two Todd reads to be able to completely eliminate And Mate almost had that, right? Mate almost had end, that. He yeah. almost killed him all the way out there and then missed the final signature, which he would have needed to close out that stock. But he is establishing that he is capable of that, and I'm curious to see if it is going to transpire in this upcoming game. Too. And I will say that I think Jester had a, a definitely and a sigh of relief after the end of that game number one where it looked Three, like despite him two, taking the first stock one, every single time wrong. it wasn't like he was convincingly closing out all those stocks the entire time either and that was Maid's best performance as the game was going on so if Maid can take basically the momentum that he had before he dropped to missing the wall touch into game number two I think we could see him take this next game and even more so as the set progresses. Sometimes you connect these side swings and sometimes you don't, right? You just have that kind of a day. Right now, Maid is definitely picking up the pace. Love that way to get an opening. That was awesome. Using the weapon toss, break a little bit of space. Maid hasn't been really going through those. Yeah, and now Jester with the hammer, trying to get that Nair. Catches him on the Nair landing, okay. Gets the downlight afterwards. Weapon throw forces the dodge. Maid does not go for the edge guard, though. Doesn't even think about doing it unarmed. Goes right back to pick up a fresh scythe. And his weapon starving Jester the rest of the way. This is the biggest lead that we've seen so far, but if Maid's gonna have trouble closing here, Jester could just pick up an axe, get two side light nares, and that could be it. The recovery not knocking out. Not knocking out quite yet. Holding back onto the ground. Nice anti using the D-Light, but that is the recovery now. Coming out, made knocking Jesu down to the second stock. And that was a pretty confident opening, wasn't it? We've yes. established that, hey, you've got the spacing down, you have the dodge reads down, you have the damage out, but down as well. Now, well, we have the same issue. Can Jesu close this stock? Doesn't look like it. That edge guard does not come through after that stomp. Sider just threw his weapon a little too prematurely, and now Maid is getting a lot of extra credit. One Nair comes through. Sider does not catch the fast fall, and that neutral stick does get punished by Sidelight Nair. Ground pound back swing. Goes for the weapon throw, forces the dodge, but Maid's got the distance on the gauntlets, and the gravity cancel down like misspaced. Means that Maid has a second chance for even more damage here on a Jester's second stock. He's getting that damage, especially with the neutral light and the weapon toss. Backing up a little bit, the stomp just barely missing. Jesu can't close, and that is the problem right now. Maid is hanging on to this first stock by a thread and it is carrying a weight finally it's gone finally snipping off that thread but at what cost yeah that gravity uh, that hammer neutral light from center stage having to have enough force to knock out made there and made is feeling a lot more comfortable going into this game number two side air hits there and there hits there as well jester gets the recovery into nair however and as we saw in the last game i mean if he gets one side light and then three nairs as made tries to land through a fastball they could bring this game back real quick Gets that down, uh, waiting, 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 able to space around that D-Light as well, looking for that side light, Maid holding onto the ground now, just has control of the stage. Maid has also been in the one, um, just in the driver's seat of this entire game so far. Yeah, neutral light into, the grab cancel neutral light into recovery, the grab cancel side light. That's brutal. That was amazing. So he gets, he gets the drift in on the side light, knowing that it's going to kick him against the wall and because the damage was so high. He doesn't get his jumps back, can't make it back to the stage, and he just has to fall slowly down to his demise. What a great edge guard coming up for Maid on that second stock. Yeah, what a slow way to suffer before you inevitably knocked out. And once again, that's the recovery one of the new oh. pickup. Maid is getting so aggressive off stage, and I'm actually just seeing Maid get more comfortable with some of these edge guards too. Maid is playing phenomenal at the moment. Yeah, I think that Maid didn't let that last game get to heart too much, right? He didn't look at that and be like, okay, I can never go off stage again. He just go, all right, well, what I was doing was working. I just messed up, so I'm going to keep doing it. And now Jester, with that difficulty to close out stocks on both these heavy weapons, uh, is turning this into a an amazing game for Maid. I was about to say, until that gravity cancel sides, it completely caught Maid off guard and brought the game back to an even game. Axe on hand, Maid left with no weapon now. Let's see what the weapon spawn is going to be, and it is the Scythe. Maid has been succeeding with the Scythe quite a bit, just consistently connecting everything, oh. getting Jesu out through. This is huge. Are you going to get this neutral? Okay. Side light comes through, and the strong hit also hits. All right, Jesu does get back to the stage. Maid was too slow to be able to put up that ground pound, but well, that down tick was amazing. Double there, double dare, though. That's a ton of damage, and that down light will bring Maid into orange right away. Wait, it's, it's actually totally easy. Oh, side light, Nair, Nair. Oh, that's just it. Taros with the down stick. No way. Jesser popping off. He just hit him. 
When that, you hear that, that many axe hits connect, that's... you know something has just gone gonk. Something oh. has just gone amiss. Jesse, feeling good about that? Made trying to shake it off by going on the phone for one after the game. Oh, I, yeah, I guess so. I mean, that's uh, that's fighting Terrace and Bracket, man. I, I can't. Oh, that's okay. a fighting game classic. That's like losing a game. Nair -nair. <laughs> that's scrolling on your phone. Two nairs, two nairs. Silite nair and a nair, and then he gets the down sick. Oh no, I think there was a downlight in there. Yeah, wow. Terrace does a lot of damage. He does a lot of damage, but how did Maid get hit by so many different axes? Three, Three, trying two, to hurry up one, and finish the game wrong. when he should have been staying to his game plan the entire time. And I think he's right. Well, hopefully he's either recognized that or else Jester's going to be able to get a 3 0 over Maid, which I think would be an upset, but I don't know. The, when you do that head many head. axe hits connect, something has gone gong. It's for his opponent, it's going very well for Jesser, right? Oh, it's fantastic for Jesser at the moment. <laughs> and I think, I think the thing that Jesser's getting the most success out of, which is something that you see kind of do a lot in any matchup against any opponent, is that once he gets the side light and air, instead of going for that like three piece with the gravity cancel down light or the read with the uh, the axe ground pound, Jesser is just jumping up, fast falling, and trying to nair every single landing. That ground pound comes through, and Maid's momentum might be shattered. Yeah, Jesse is looking unstoppable at the moment. Maid had a lot of momentum going last game, and then that last stock just kind of happened. So the question is, does Maid have what it takes in him to want this enough um, to be able to take this? Well, we'll just have to see. Gauntlet's on hand, finds the opening with the neutral light. Getting in there now, what's it going to be? Side light, nair, and a nair. He's been getting so many of these nairs afterwards, and it's not like it's a true combo follow-up. He's just following Maid up after every single hit and getting so much more damage. And I still feel like Maid is reeling back from that last game lost to where he has it about his footing. He goes and dashes lands on that side platform, tries to get something started. Another side light nair comes through, and finally, a reversal from Maid. Sarah on the side, picks up the gauntlets, gets the recovery, and stops himself from being into a three to so three stock to one deficit, but it could be two to one very, very shortly. Especially if one when Jesu has that axe on hand. We have just seen the amount of success that it's able to output the neutral light connects, holding onto the ground. The second one connects as well. Maid is taking a plethora of damage with punishing that neutral light, with punishing it yet again. Jesu is pressing buttons at the moment, and some of them are connecting, and when you have a lead, you can just do that. Yeah, down air bounces off the stage, tries to get a follow up afterwards. Neutral light does not connect, and that weapon throw comes forward, tosses off the right side of the stage, and that nair into uh, the end line, the nair from Maid will tack on some damage. And I mean, if you get that one dodge read off stage right now, Mordek's down sick will just take Jesser off the stage and give Maid the lead. But that neutral light will stop any thought of that happening, and now Maid has to be so much more conservative with what he wants to go for off stage because Jesser has two socks to play with, and he has one. And do not forget that this is an elimination side, so this could be potentially Maid's last stock. And Jesse, that's quite the lead. Spiked. The weapon throw forces the dodge. The dive kick hits Maid, but he does touch the stage. Touches the stage, but at what cost? Look at how much damage he ended up taking and still just struggling to get off this platform. Jesse is dominating with those axe, oh, the hammer neutral, excuse me, and Maid. Oh, man. Well, also that side air gets the nair. I mean, it's not over for Maid yet, right? I mean, like, oh, now it might be. That stop there comes through. Jesser has so much that he can go for here. Stomp comes through. Sides and connects. Maid's out of there. It's the two stock at Jesser. Wins game three. A huge smile on his face as he avoids getting eliminated by Maid and honestly wins two really, really tough game one and twos to the point where the momentum was just too shattered for Maid and he goes Especially out. Especially after that game two. That game two was tragic for Maid. It was going so well for him. He had everything that he needed to be able to take that, and then that last stock happened. Um, so really good stuff to Jesu. Jesu is going to be progressing and moving on throughout the bracket. Um, congratulations. That is going to be the end of Maid's winner's side run. Yeah, Maid going down there to Jester. Jester still continuing through the elimination side. I'm a little curious to see who's going to be going up against throughout the day, but still what an amazing win there coming out from Jester as he gets his way closer and closer to a potential top 32. There's that moment. Oh, the moment where you put out the sight there and you don't continue holding to the right. And then you fall down and you go, what happened to my jumps? And they never came back. That gravity cancel sideline from Maid was such a creative edge guard, and we saw that he had so much momentum here, but here's the stock. We're getting this entire stock there, right? So that was Nair, Nair, Dare, Dare. What else happened afterwards, right? So Maid goes for one whiff, sends him back into the air, and then what, Jester just continues to anti-air him here? This was such a brutal stock to see because this was on a fresh stock, side light in the air. Gets the nair, yeah, he kept, he kept baiting Maid's fast fall with a jump, and then the down stick from Taros at the perfect angle gets a zero to knockout, and look at that. The pop-up afterwards was so well-deserved. Yeah, he felt really good about that. He did not want to lose that game too, and he made an incredible comeback, so um, just as you said, quite well-deserved. And that is, once again, made being completely knocked out of the tournament. And this is a little bit unexpected, given the way that that game two went. Had that been Maid's game, we would have seen a completely different set, a completely, di completely different surge of momentum. But when you're down, 
two games against you is pretty rough. Yeah, and with that win from Jesser over Maid, that 3-0 concluding after five amazing games on set, of course, I want to hear from Sheepy joining us back on the desk. Those games so far have been so amazing, and I imagine it's only going to keep getting better. Yeah, I'm going to be real. I was watching backstage and lost myself back there, which is why now I'm here, I'm on the desk. But, I mean, yeah, the last few matches that you guys have been commentating, I'm just sitting there backstage and just... Oh my goodness, especially I wanna if we can talk about some of the different matches that you guys commentate. I imagine that you're a fan, uh, a fan of flower now after uh, the mm. was. <laughs> yeah, that's... I was screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who was backstage, I was like, they're trying to get me ready and stuff like that. I'm watching <laughs> Pumi versus Flower. <laughs> I was yelling back there. So hey, it is what it is because it's BCX. We've talked about this over and over again that it's just different. When you are in person, it's a land, and not only that, it's the world championship, and everyone is out here to try to get something, you know? So it happens. I'm not a fan, but <laughs> it's okay. That <laughs> That's what happens. But let's talk about some of the other matches that you guys saw. Um, I know you just talked about uh, Jester and Maid. What about Bunny and, and Wubs there? Oh, yeah, that was the probably... If, that was a matchup that I wish we could have uh, talked up a little bit more sooner when we found out. I was like, wait a second, this is Winterside Top 32. Why is this Bunny versus Wubs? Darla looks at the, the, the path that Bunny went through, and it was a 3-1 victory over Luna to be able to get in that position, to be able to beat Wubs as well to get in the Winterside Top 32. Bunny, probably the most incredible Rayman play that I've seen in a long time. We've had quite a couple of upsets tonight, haven't we? Right? Um, Flower starting it off, and now Bunny's still continuing to run. Yeah, that was crazy. Bunny's playstyle is super aggressive, super aggressive with the weapon tosses off stage. I am excited to see how that's going to progress and how that's going to hold up. That is the biggest one that I have my eyes on at the moment, um, as established by the block. But everybody that we saw, I mean, they did wonderful. Flower especially. Um, we also have to give a couple of flowers to uh, to Viper as well. Viper almost made that. Almost upset made well. the upset. Almost. Yeah, that could have it could have been an entire block of upsets at that rate. It really could. It really could have been. And that's, you know what's the crazy thing is that we're still in pools. <laughs> like, can I just also mention that real quick? Just a kind reminder for all the folks at home who are still watching and everyone here, we are still in pools. Everyone is trying to get into top 32. And we're seeing matches that are just like out of this world in pools. That's what happens when you have uh, over 90 top 32 player uh, caliber players at the same venue at the same time, all competing to get in that spot. We're going to be seeing those upsets happening at 65th and 49th, and we've been getting them all throughout the day, and there's even more to come. Yes, there totally is. Now, guys, stick around, because as we continue to narrow things down in the polls, we got Luna versus Athena coming up next. So you know what? See you all soon. Don't go anywhere.
We are here in Atlanta, Georgia for more day two action of BCX. And you just saw a little bit of the expo floor too and what's going on there. But now sitting alongside me are the incredible Polly Monto and Sparky. Guys, I want to know your thoughts on the matches so far. And I'm actually going to start with Sparky first. We've had some very interesting ones today. Yes, we sir. saw Flower. We saw Flower pop off after taking out Boomy. Then I saw Flower backstage right after that. And Flower basically came up to me and said, what did I tell you last year at BCX? <laughs> and my brain has holes in it, so I didn't remember. Oh. But he said, I'm going to win BCX next year. Now, unfortunately, then we saw Snowy versus Flower. And Snowy came out on top. I say unfortunately, but that's a big dub for all the Snowy fans out there. Those two matches, like back to back, I really liked watching those two. And Polly, how do you think, what do you think about everything going on so far? I mean, just one moment ago, we just saw, you know, Jesser take down Maid 3 and 0, and you know, you know I'm here, you oh, know, you know who I'm rooting for. I know, for. I, I mean, know, yep. I'm the, I'm the only EU caster on, on the side stream, on the mainstream. I mean, if anything, I should be allowed to I should be allowed to show my bias. Of course. <laughs> it's, of course. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, I mean, that's a big W for you. And I'm sure you're super happy to see your region move through. Now, before we jump into the next match here, which is Luna versus Athena. Glitter, I know you got someone down there to chat with. Thank you very much, Sheep. We're hanging out with Luna. Now, I want to ask you some questions. And this is a question that I asked earlier before. Um, but I want to get your opinion on this because obviously playing in both the doubles and the single side of the tournament. So what is that like having to bounce back and forth those two types of play as a competitor? Uh, I think 2v2 is much more aggressive. Like you can throw a lot of more attacks and uh, you can feel a little bit better. But in ones, you really have to be in a good mindset to play. So in 2v2, you can get away with more stuff. But in ones, you really have to be in the environment to do really good. So I think uh, the mo most of it is the mindset in ones. Well, speaking of that mindset then, what is your mindset like right now? Obviously playing through pools, on your way to try to get through to Sunday. So how have you felt about your performance so far here on the weekend? Uh, I'm feeling a little bit off because, you know, I have like some arm issues, uh, as I've sp spoken about on Twitter before. But it's, it, I feel really good if I can get past this set because I can rest until tomorrow. Uh, because when you play Top 32, you know, you rest. and. Um, I think I just have to go into this set confident if I really want to win and ignore all the pain that I'm getting. Um, so if I really want to win, I'll try my best to ignore it and just go through with the set. But, you know, better player wins at the end of the day. Do you actually have anything that you do specifically, whether it's like a ritual or anything that helps kind of reset your mental when you find yourself struggling a little bit in a tournament? Uh, I just think I should take a minute, slow it down and think about at least the main mistake that I did in the previous game, because if I can find the main thing and go into the next game doing stuff that's good, it'll make me feel more confident. The more things that you do good in the game, the more confident you'll feel going into the set and throughout the set. All right, well, I love that. Self-reflection is definitely important. Well, Luna, thank you so much for chatting with us. I'll let you get ready for the next match. For now, we're gonna send it back and over to the desk. Thank you, Glitter. And yeah, it's always great to chat with Luna. And that's right, he's been battling and like an injury on his like arm and like wrist. So that must be tough to go through. Uh, but I do want to talk about your y'all's like predictions on this upcoming match. And Polly, I'm going to start with you. Luna versus Athena. What do you think about this matchup? Now, I know that Sparky has some th uh, things to say about Luna. Personally, I'm not very familiar with Athena, but I mean, at this point, we're getting pretty deep into the bracket. So, I mean, Athena, just by the fact that they are here, they are definitely coming in here with some game. Luna, uh, you know, hasn't had the strongest year in terms of, you know, their entire Bohala career right now, but I is still reminiscent of the last year. I would say, I would not be comfortable saying that Luna is not breaking top four, top eight. I think Luna still has what it takes to get back onto the podium. Athena is the goddess of heroic endeavor. <laughs> yes, I knew that beforehand and you didn't did. just look it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> what a heroic endeavor it would be to take down Luna, one of the best 1v1 players that we have seen in recent time here on the main stage at BCX for the World Championship in 1v1 in 2023, especially after, you know, you look at DreamHack Dallas 2023, Athena was there, 49th place, not too shabby. This is a player who knows how to play this game, knows how to play it well. I'm putting it on Athena.
Oh. You're putting... Oh, oh, oh. oh, okay. All right. Oh, my. Okay. And I do want to remind y'all that this is on the elimination side of their pools. So whoever is knocked out, that is it. And I'm getting word now that they are ready to get going to see who's going to be the winner. So Polly Monto, Sparky, bring on the action. Polly, just look at you ready numbers. for this one. I saw PR one versus PR one hundred and fifty three. Yes. You're putting your money on Athena. I'm putting my money on Athena. I believe it. The fact that Luna is down here this early means he is not unbreakable. He is not unshakable. And the crazy thing is, is when Ann mentioned that it is on the elimination side, but this isn't even the qualifier to make it out of pools on the elimination side. This is one set before the winner of this. They don't get to celebrate very long because, Polly, they're going to be going right into Raidish. They can't even look that far right now because they have to look across the stage at each other as we get into this game. And we are loading into it right now. And Luna, as you can see on your screen, is starting on the Diamond Head. Of course, that is the crossover for Caspian. Three, two, one. We are seeing one, Athena one. on the, I believe that should be, yes, that's a Kaya, which again, this year, Massive Kaya here. It looks like we are going to be going into a quick reset. Perhaps something technically has gone wrong. But we have been teased already. Uh, the legends that we are going to be seeing here. Athena on the Kaya. I saw that you had them pulled up. Was that something that you were expecting coming out from them? Uh, Athena, yes. So far, the way that Athena has reported Legends, it has been Kaya six different times. Meanwhile, if we look at the other side of Luna, of course, we know he has a full suite of characters. We've seen him pull the Volkov out every now and then. Of course, he has the Caspian. Usually, that's a little bit deeper in his Legend pool, but he is bringing it out right in the beginning against Athena. Of course, he's played the Mordex some. We all know him from the Taros, and of course, he had that long spat where he was playing the Lucian as well. So there's, there's a big old trunk of Legends that he he can dig deep down inside in case this diamond head doesn't work right out the gate. Yeah, last year was good for Qatars. It looks Three, like this year, two, in terms of whatever one, the pros one. are picking, this was an even better year for Qatars. However, we are now finally getting into our first game of the set, and it's going to be Athena versus Luna. Now getting into this one, first weapons for both of these legends. Luna's going to have the gauntlet, so of course he's going to force that off stage. Athena smartly going to disengage, get back on the stage, really try and utilize that range. The only move that Luna can really outrange Athena with is the downlight, which yes, you can gravity cancel it like a lot of players do, but Athena, if they use the range on the spears as best they can, pretty much going to be able to get away with a lot here. I mean, spear into gauntlets is just really, really painful yes. for the gauntlet players. Like, you throw out a side light, spear is ready right there with a D-light. Again, as you mentioned, the range. So Luna swiftly going to be changing over to those Katars. Already dealing quite a good amount of damage, but taking a Sarah to the face. And Athena wants to uh, potentially commit to that, but Luna is able to pick up that side signature. I think Athena was really just trying to play safely there over on the edge, didn't want to overcommit, had the damage lead. Now that the bow is in play, of course, we're going to be looking for the D-Light recovery. Could just be looking for the side sig as well, or the neutral sig also. Athena, I'm telling you, the goddess of heroic endeavor. Athena gets the first stock here. Let's not get too carried away here, Sparky. I mean, yes, indeed, it's a very, very good first stock, but Luna is going to be able to take that right back. Luna also now having the weapon advantage. Going to see if he's able to squeeze out any extra damage here against Athena, able to do so first with a Qatar Nair, able to start a little bit of a string too. Luna, I mean, he's picking up the pace a little bit here. Yeah, you saw Athena try and slow everything down instantly upon spawning back in. Went over to that soft platform. Gonna really love Apocalypse for that. To just stay away from Luna while a weapon spawn came back in. Was able to grab it. Has the bow. Man, that's that bow neutralite being able to pick up basically stacked. It'll pick up grounded opponents as well. It is such a good weapon, especially if Luna wants to aggress with the down air on the Katars right at that 45 degree angle. Again, range is the name of the game for Athena. And especially when Athena has the bow, that's gonna have some stack options as well. Polly, I'm telling you, the goddess of heroic endeavor. I mean, I didn't just I'm, make that up. I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time not being a believer right now. But Luna is here every every once in a while to remind us and take us back to reality, <laughs> hitting a couple of good strings. I mean, Athena. I mean, this game could end right here, and Luna could literally three stock every single game. I'd still say Athena put in a good job. Oh, absolutely. I think so far making it this far into game one, even if in it, if, if the whole set ended it's somehow over. right here, it's not over. This is this is a major BCX moment for Athena here, and I can't wait to see what Athena has for the rest of this set. And uh, Luna, you know, might struggle a little bit here. Okay, on this final stock, we're seeing things change. Gets the huge guitar 
Marie almost got the turnaround down there. Oh the God. GC sidelight as well, and the neutral signature to call out the spot dodge. Gets the weapon, keeping Athena away from the, the, the D-light into the recovery, and all of a sudden that game is over. Luna said, hold up, let me start playing. Picked up the Kataris, one read into the next one, into the third, and he's going to be finishing that off with two stocks to pair. As you, as you mentioned, Athena, amazing start. Um, something that both you and me, we've mentioned several times before, whenever you have a player that is, you know, especially in terms of PR, a little bit worse than whoever they are going up against, the first game is their best opportunity because in the first Three, game two, they can throw one, off their opponents and they can use this, you know, these aces that they have up their sleeves. Uh, but Luna, I mean, he already turned up. I think he's going to be leaning a lot on the Katars here. I mean, you're already seeing it start. Okay. Oh, he went for the recovery there. Not really sure if that was a miss input because you might expect the ground pound, but maybe he just wanted the recovery so that he could go up, get back towards the stage rather than forcing himself down a little bit more to where he would have fallen and then just trading out the stocks, which would not be in his favor. Athena looking quite solid on that sphere, though. He's going to get disarmed, and Luna is pushing this advantage off. There we go. Beautiful GCD like ground pound lined up incredibly well and he is going to be taking the first stock with the weapon advantage here. And of course, you saw him pick up the gauntlets. That's going to deny that weapon spawn. Swap back over to the Katars. If we look at the damage spread last game, 490 on Katars compared to 106 on gauntlets. And he's chasing as hard as he can onto Athena with these Katars. There's the neutral air. Hit it from right below Athena. Still able to get back. He is getting towards KO damage now. Nice dare. The weapon toss does not make a connection, but it didn't have to. Nothing Luna can do there. Even if he did use all of his options to get to the wall as, as as quickly as possible, he has no options to that point, and Athena can just throw out that ground pound. So on Luna is going to be going down there, and it looks like Athena is still in this. Wrapping up, getting so much damage immediately after Luna has spawned. I can't believe he's already orange. I feel like I'm going to have to pay attention to Athena more, because, like, yeah, Luna Luna got some amazing Katara reads, but Athena is doing significantly better than I thought they would have done. Like, this is this is a real game. Don't get me wrong at all. This is very much a real game. This doesn't look like round one of pools at all. Athena putting up a great fight here. See if Athena can really use that range game. Oh, that's going to be a tough punish every single time Athena misses one of those D-lights. Maybe you start going for that poke neutral light. You'll be able to outrange the side light that Luna is initiating on top of Athena with. Not able to get something Oh, nice. Yet again. Yeah, the side signature would have been massive. Oh, staying away from but both Athena, of those. Athena knows how to space those yeah. out. This is definitely a guy that has been studying Luna, or at the very least, studying how to fight Caspian, because these shenanigans are not working on him. Getting out of a D, uh, getting out of an end light recovery is going to be difficult, though, and that is going to be Luna 2-0 on the board. Luna's going to be taking a sip of water here. Athena really looking at the game plan, hoping to find something to use against Luna. This Diamond Head is working so well, but even this game, this game is actually more heavily Qatar focused than the last one. 425 damage on the Qatar's poly compared to the 44 on Gauntlets. Didn't even break three digits with that. It's all Qatar's three, here, which two, especially when one, we're looking at the signatures, one. most players really lean into that Qatar side signature, as you saw Luna do, but we also saw Lena, uh, Athena knowing that and seeing those side sigs coming and not really falling victim to them. I mean, you saw already in the first stock, Luna gets that massive read. Of course, he's going to be feeling good on the gauntlets, uh, sorry, the Qatars, and he's going to want to continue that kind of train going. Uh, now, though, as we are moving into the match point, and potentially this nice could be Athena's last game, we're in the start, both players down in orange, and Athena, I mean, if Ooh. there's anything we can say about Athena, this guy has neutral on the same level Absolutely. as Luna, and he might not have the reads, he might not be able to push his advantage as well, but having as good neutral as Luna, I mean, that's just crazy. Absolutely doing such a great job here, especially doing a great job avoiding, oh, Ooh. I think Athena didn't really expect that to hit. Okay, the yeah. side signature on the gauntlets, that's the second one we've seen make that connection, but when Luna has the gauntlets, he's been, he went for like three times in a row, he would grab reach up with the neutral air, throw down, and then try and turn around and pivot the down air. Athena got hit by that like one time. Luna threw it out two more times and didn't make a connection there because Athena was able to get away. There's the D-Light into the recovery, makes a connection. Polly, we are at an even game. Athena having a very strong performance so far, but Luna, we've seen it several times in a row now. Whenever things heat up, he turns up and he turns up big time. Athena, though, Ooh. looks like he's not out just yet. Getting Luna all the way down into orange already. Luna has an answer of his own, okay. though. Gets the massive read. DCD light doesn't hit off the bounce, though. 
Athena. Athena's instant neutralites. Athena's yeah. bone neutralites. I mean, this is crazy. It's just the anti-air defense system from Athena is neutralites all over the place. Anytime Luna wants to float above, but you see the ground game. That's where Athena's struggling a little bit, especially with the side signature or the side light that Luna's been throwing out to initiate. Great turnaround there, though. Now Athena has the lead, of course, really leaning into that bow. That's been the stronger weapon. That's been the string weapon. That's been the KO weapon. That's been the most successful weapon so far for Athena. Was to keep an extra close eye on how he's dodging right now because Ooh. Luna is not missing these reads. You oh, that was so nice! Luna. That what was, was so that? clutch from Luna, able to pick up the gauntlets and get the recovery KO off the top of Demon Island. Still behind, but it's going to be the spear for Athena. Maybe Athena's going to be hoping for another weapon spawn, or might just have some serious neutral here. Backing up, looking for the side light, didn't make the connection. Okay. Getting a little bit too high, got to be careful there. But he keeps it going, he catches the landing. Okay. Athena, though, able to catch that D-Light, now over onto the bow. He, his signatures have been doing magic so far, but Luna able to get a couple of grounded attacks in response. Luna's Katars are unstoppable right now, but Athena might have oh. something to say about it. Able to get that end light out, tries to go for the second one. It doesn't connect, though. Luna! It's still not enough. Athena is just barely holding on. Needs the victory here. Needs this stock. Almost picked that one up. There's the side light. Yo, Athena went for it. Went for the D light after the side light. You see the smile on the face of Athena. Athena is the goddess of the heroic <laughs> endeavor. Polymanto. We learn it in our history and we see it happen in front of our eyes right now. Game three went to Athena. The bow play is filthy with a capital F. The dream for Athena is still alive. I can't believe he closed that out. Last that was sick. moment, as you mentioned, the bow. It feels like, I mean, you, you got the stats in front of you right now. He has been leaning more and more towards that bow for every single game that we have seen so far. I mean, I see 75% bow equipped. Yep. And all I can say is, Athena, you're on the right track. Keep this going. And, you know, we're talking about Luna. Luna loses one game. It's going to be hard to take the, 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 the following one, right? Athena needs to win twice in a row now. Going to be very difficult, but he is on Three, the right track. Two, the spear one, was solid, four. though, at the end of the game. Like, I saw Athena pick up the spear as things were starting to wind down, and I was like, okay, maybe this is where Luna takes it, and unfortunately, this might end in a 3-0, but we saw the spear really turn up, and then the transition into the bow, and it was beautiful gameplay on both weapons there at the end. Okay, backing up off the stage after hitting that side air, keeping Luna on the edge. I feel like Athena's gameplay on the spear is also amazing. I'm just not feeling the confidence. Like you can look at I would Athena's, agree. you can look at Athena's bow, and you can just kind of tell that this guy is confident. He's feeling, uh, he's feeling great. He's able to hit a lot of really nice attacks. But whenever he's on that bow, you know, things aren't connecting the same way. Luna able to get that first knockout has got himself this early lead, and Athena is going to be playing from behind this time around. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a mountain to climb so far. We're not talking Everest or whatever the like actual tallest one in the world is, but it is going to be difficult, especially when Luna starts hitting these guitar signatures, starting off with the D-Light, then going into the down air, then usually a side light, continuing on from there ad nauseum until Athena's able to get out once that dodge comes back up. Keeping Luna weapon starved, unfortunately not too long. Almost gets the read there, but then goes with the side signature after the neutral signature. We're seeing the confidence come out from Luna. The signature game has been good. There's been moments where it certainly worked. Obviously, first stock in this game was taken, but again, it hasn't been the Qatar side signature. Athena has seen those coming almost every time. There's the neutral light. It is the KO option. Luna is turning up, making that lead even larger now. I mean... It was, a, it was a mountain to climb to begin with, but I feel like this mountain is growing bigger and bigger. Yep. We went from Kebne Kaise to Mount Everest. I mean, Athena playing from super far behind now. This is what I was talking about, Luna. You take one game off of him, he comes back stronger than ever before. Oh, Luna. Could it be a three-stock even? Luna, I mean, he's showing no stein, signs of stopping whatsoever. Going <laughs> for the GC side signature, Athena's not having any of that. I'm going to want to look at the graph after this game. Oh, the goofy interaction with the side signature when he gravity canceled it with like half of his body above the stage, half of his body below the stage. So he didn't get the movement forward to get that final hit. But this game is really starting to wind down here. I don't know what Athena can possibly do at this moment with how confidently Luna is playing. There's the D-Light into the ground pound. You saw it on the screen, not only in that final moment, but throughout that entire final game. It was destruction. Right there, we saw it. Luna woke up. Luna was playing super, super well to begin with. Athena comes back, growing in power for every single game that goes by. He's able to take one down from Luna, 
As soon as that happens, I mean, that was a completely different player. That was a three stock. We didn't even see. Yep. I didn't even see a timeline in that game where a three stock could happen. But that's just how good these top players are. The bow play had no room to breathe whatsoever. Here was like that first big Qatar read that Luna started with. And then the GC sidelight was huge because the way that Athena was initiating trying to outrange with like the bow D lights, if you're just off the ground, you can get That's away from play. that. That was a two stock that game. Then I can't remember which game this was. This might have been, no, this wasn't the final one because we see Luna is on his final stock here. That was so good. Dude. Just a little bit behind. He was like 50 damage behind. You see how close this is here. The last moment goes for it with the dash D lights light into the side air for the KO. Beautiful work there from Athena. You see the fire up. That is a massive BCX moment. And then you see the heart of a true champion come out and Luna with the three stock there at the end. I mean, either way, this is PR 153 going up against PR1. If I'm Athena, I mean, if I'm anyone facing Athena in the future, this, this story on his PR, this is not complete. This is a player... This is the beginning. This is, this is the beginning of a player that could perhaps be on stage next year and maybe even take one more game off of Luna, maybe even beat Luna. So Athena, a player that I'm going to be keeping my eyes on for Brawlhalla 2024. Unfortunately, as this is in eliminations, uh, they are done for this weekend. Yes, but I want everybody to look at that graph and look how long... Oh, man. Oh, man. Well, well, <laughs> I'll describe the graph to you. The graph was very long for Luna. Oh, no way. No, hey, the repeat. Hey, the let's go. That's why we love production back there, everybody. <laughs> you can see, look at that yellow wedge. That is going to be Luna's wedge for the graph. That is his damage taken throughout the game. That's insane. You're seeing those really long, flat sections. That's where he's taking absolutely no damage. That's where that bow gameplay found no penetration. That's where that spear gameplay found no penetration like it did in the previous games. Luna all of a sudden got Athena figured out, and it was curtains. And I mean, like in that second stock, how many how many times do we see like a staircase staircase upwards? Like that was two true combos that he was able to hit. Two true combos in the span of an entire stock. Again, Luna, amazing performance. We can see here also uh, signature usage, kind of interesting. Nine to one. I think Kaya signatures incredibly strong. We didn't see Athena use too many of them out of bow. Out of bow side light, you have like a signature follow up for basically every single escape option. And uh, yeah, Athena. Very, very interesting uh, player indeed, and I am yet again excited to see them in the future. Yep. Luna is going to be continuing on in the bracket, and I hope we get to see them later. I love seeing, not that Athena is a new player by any means, but like a new quote-unquote main stage player. I love seeing a new main stage player uh, any, any time, yeah. even when it's in pools like early of on course. in pools yes. and it's like you know maybe it's a guy who started playing the game a month ago and they're going up against sandstorm so like yeah. you know how that's going to play out yeah. but that's their bcx moment i love moments like this where we get to see a player like athena and we see some real skills coming out you see the way they play spear you see the way they play bow and you're learning how athena plays as the player like luna is learning how athena plays as well you get to see their strengths you get to see their weaknesses and then over time the more tournaments they attend you get to see them start moving up because everybody that's a regular on that main stage now they were in Athena's position at one point so we talked about it right at the end of that game it's definitely not the end of Athena's story even though it's the end of the BCX run this is the beginning of Athena's story it is indeed and it is also the beginning of our next game we got Jesser it's your boy. and Wubbs on the screen it's my boy indeed it's Jesser coming out here representing the Dutch community we saw him just a moment ago beat and made. He's playing super, super well today. Uh, however, Wubs, he has also been having a pretty good run. Have you been playing, uh, have you been paying close attention to his games? I haven't seen too many of his games. I was actually going back to you and my DMs <laughs> because you've been telling me about Jesser for a while. I have a message here from February 26th of 2022, Polly, where a year you came ago, over in a year ago. and you're talking about XJ Cool J, who's here at BCX doing really well, Munir, who is of course here at BCX doing well, Jesser and Blitz. So you are the talent scout for EU. I always go to you because you are the master of knowing when people are on the rise. I mean, what can I say? I'm just the best. You are. You truly, <laughs> like, like you're, you're I mean, an dude, you go. I, I don't say I, that lightly. 
I'm out here, I am rooting for EU, and you know, if you're rooting for EU, I'm not gonna lie, we have had a rough couple of, we have had a couple of rough years, so, you know, I have to, especially, you know, February 2022, I have to look at the future and be like, you know, which players are on the rise uh, in that list that I sent you. I sent you a couple of players that didn't quite make it as far. Jess here, one of them that did, though, uh, going back to Wobbs. Wobbs, PR14, he's made it deep into the bracket, yes. and I know he has had some heated games. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to check those out. Have you seen what Wobbs has been up to today? I haven't seen too much of Wobbs today. I'm trying to remember. I believe I saw a Wobbs 2v2 game yesterday over in the gaming pit. I was standing around some people watching, and I think they ended up losing. I think they were playing against, Bo yeah, they're playing against Boomy and Sandstorm, and I think they ended up losing that set, if I remember correctly. But if we're looking at past placements of Wubs and Jesser, now they haven't really met in tournament, or at least, yeah, they haven't met in official Three, tournaments, so two, they have been one, in some wrong. of the same tournaments, kind of close to one another. DreamHack San Diego, Jesser was 33rd, and Wubs was 25th. Wobbs, of course. I mean, I'm still reminiscent of uh, of Wubs whenever he was on uh, on the Azoth, right? Because that yep. was Wubs. Oh yeah. Uh, the the bow uh, the bow side signature, the Wub step. Uh, but yeah, he is going to be locked in on the Fate today. Jesser on the Terrors, also a pick that we know and love from Jesser. Been repping that for a super super long time. Jesser. So far patrolling the ground, we have a pretty even start here. Going out through the D Sig, but Wubs is going to be able to find a pretty sweet punish there. Jester kind of setting up. Oh, goes for the stomp side light. Knows not to go for the stomp side air because of what you do when you pick up that D light right over the corner when your opponent is a little bit over the edge. Tried to go for the down air there with GC side light. No punish coming out from Jester right away. He attempted it but didn't find a connection. Jester is trying to control the ground as best he can. We're seeing Wub spend time in the air, really using that down air to hit that 45 degree angle where Hammer kind of has nothing, especially at that range. Yeah, so far both players incredibly low. It's going to be Jesser that's finding that first knockout with the stomps there. Going to be sticking to the hammer as well. Bubs, lots of missed attacks. So Jesser, some crazy options Ooh, coming okay. out on the hammer. And he's okay. keeping going! Gets the stock, Jesser, three stocks against one Sparky. And this is huge. This is that like game-changing potential that a legend like Taros has. He was already starting to build up the damage quickly enough that we we're like, okay, is he gonna be able to run away with this? And then he hit the side signature. Nice in sync from Wubs there, starting to bring this one back. Didn't take too much damage on final stocks, but keep in mind, this is elimination quarterfinals. To move into top 32, this is a massive match for both of these players, whether they want their run to end to Day or whether they want to make it to finals day. There's the GC sidelight into the nair. Okay, Wubs starting to really come back. Only has no. about 50 damage on this stock, so the comeback potential is very real, Polly. Yeah, Wubs kind of waking up here on the last stock, able to deal out a lot of damage. He still needs to find this knockout, though. And I mean, you don't really think about it, but Teros has misleading, uh, a misleading amount of defense. He's actually pretty tanky. Jester on the axe. I'm expecting a D Sig recovery at any moment, but Wubs is able to get one for himself. And Wubs, I mean, he's just sticking close to Jester right now, giving him no room to breathe whatsoever. Charging up that side signature. He knew how low Jester was. Oh, and that time he did the minimum charge time, so he got the little shotgun blast on it. That's really the trade off that you go for, whether you want to go the long range with some charge up time or whether you want to hit that shotgun blast right in front of you. You saw both options there, but overall, Jester's going to take it with a JV2. Had a fresh stock to his name by the time that one was all said and done. And that is going to be game one closed out with Jesser taking it the first stock. Now, you know Wubs better than I do. You know these any players may, way better than I do. Are you expecting Wubs to Legend Swap here? What do you think is running through his mind right now after this game where the beginning of the game didn't go as great, but the second and third stock were going so much better? Three, you two, know, I wasn't one, feeling the vibes coming out from the orb at least yet. Now, we are in a best of five, so you oftentimes see players, like, they'll run two games on their main Legend until they're like, okay, it really isn't working now. Now I'm going to swap. I I think he's likely going to be staying with this one. He has a few Scythe characters under his belt. Okay. He has reported the Jiro. He has reported the Nyx as well. I doubt we're going to see the Nyx, but of course he also okay, has reported Jester. a lot of fate. He might be thinking about changing after this, but you know, going against Jester here, the orb, not my favorite thing that he's been using so far. We'll see if he can sort of turn that around this game.
Yes, been on the orb right now. Jesser is just Ooh. landing D light after D light after D light. And you see Jesser going for another one. GC'd all the way up, getting a little bit funky with it. But Wub is able to get some response attacks in his favor. A little bit of a neutral scramble, but Jesser is going to be able to pick up that knockout with the Nair sticking it to the axe. Yes. Wobbus no. needs to figure out how to deal with this D-Light, man, because while you were talking, yes. Jesser hit like seven of them. That's, that's what I was just about to point Dude, out, is and especially I mean, that D-Light, the anti-air potential of that, especially if Wubbs, well, really has either weapon. He just threw that the wrong way. Either weapon he has, like the Orb Dare was his main initiation before. On Hammer, that's great. On the Axe D-Light that Jesser is spacing so well, you're not going to have as easy of a time getting through it, and you saw that. Just keeps going for them, but Wubbs is finally able to pick up that knockout. Yet again, of course, he has the weapon advantage here, so if he's able to squeeze out just a couple of attacks before Jesser gets that weapon, which he will be able oh, to. Oh. That's a big read with the Ensign to fall finish it off as well. Jesser now evened out HP on both sides here. He's on the hammer. We've seen this hammer able to do some work. Dude, it's I don't so know how much scary. faith I have. It's so scary when like Wubs gets hit in orange and you see how deep oh. he sent off stage. Partially due to Taros, but also heavily due to hammer as well. Charging that one up. Goes for the GC in sync, but Wubs oh, is so way close. too far back. Oh, he didn't throw out the recovery there. He was looking for the side air, maybe to bounce off and turn around, hit another side air with the hammer. Chasing across the stage. That sends off screen. The weapon toss hits, interrupted the recovery. Goes oh. for the D-Sync. That was his Hail Mary. Almost so had close, enough distance dude. on it to touch. It wall. was so close as well. I mean, Jester almost got caught in that. That would have given him, uh, given him the opportunity to come back as well. Jester, though, with this lead, able to pick up even more <gasps> he damage. He goes for the sidelight into the neutral air poly instead of the sidelight side air. True KO combo. Yes, sir. Able to rack up even more damage. Two Nairs coming out. Goes for the third one. Not able to connect that one, but he still has such a large damage lead. Wubs, I'm always talking about the weapon advantage whenever someone respawns, and Wubs has shown us that he, 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 he's able to play these kind of encounters. He's able to find two attacks. You know, still, this damage, when you're in a situation like Wubs is, you take it. Ooh, the stomp side air. You see Wubs in KO damage, dodging through that side air, getting back to the main stage. The turnaround down air, down air giving him enough room. Okay, a little bit of juggle action coming through with the double neutral airs. Trying to find his way back in. Again, these down airs are going to be his way in, especially when Jesser has the hammer. He just needs a stomp there. He's looking for it. He's looking for the right opportunity to strike, but it looks like he's looking for an opportunity that doesn't exist. Bob is just continuing to throw out attack after attack, and Jesser is just kind of taking Ooh. it. Zare comes out. Jesser doesn't know what to do anymore. Recovery? No, but Wubbs doesn't go above him. He's smarter than that. Side Sig misses. Okay. Wubbs gets the sidelight there. No weapon. Almost got the bounce off the wall with the down air. Jesser at the weapon disadvantage. And Jesser was doing like what you need to do when you're the Taros player in that moment, especially when your opponent is as damaged. That, that's very ominous looking. <laughs> I'm a little bit frightened right now. I'm a little bit afraid myself. But, but the yeah. fact that like Wubbs was just basically running all over Jesser towards the end, and that's not because Wubbs is that much better than Jesser. He was it's that Jesser was just like waiting for his moment to find the stray hammer side air, the <laughs> stray axe side air, because he knows yeah. that he is Taros, and he knows how rough shape his opponent was in. So really, he only needed that one stray hit, and he could have taken that game. Jesser needed to create that opportunity, and I mean, in the beginning of the games, Jesser always coming out super, super strong, and that's a player that creates his opportunities. He runs in there, he swings that hammer, and he gets Three, his attacks. Two, but towards the one, end, I think four. he just got a little bit too scared, and uh, this time around, he is going to be swapping over to that Olgrim. Yet another pick, Jesser. He's been uh, he's been ripping this Olgrim in 2v2 for the longest time. So this is a pick. I mean, this pick makes me happy. And this is his most reported legend in 1v1s. It may not be the legend that he plays the most, but it is the legend that he certainly reports the most in the, the bracket. I, I would agree as well. Uh, There's the side light into the D light. Doesn't go for the Nair option there. He wants those juggles, man. He's been doing a great job with it. That's likely why he's carrying over the axe rather than going to another hammer legend. Yeah, Jesser. I'm excited to see what he's going to be able to do on that Lance against the Wubbs, but so far... I mean, you've been saying you Ooh. didn't. You've been saying you didn't like this orb for every game that goes by. I'm liking the Wubbs orb even more and more, but as I say so, Jesser giving him a hard time offstage with that Lance going in for the d seek as well, able to pick up that knockout. I liked the orb against Hammer for sure, but the Axe was just shutting down the orb so much. That was the matchup that he was really, really struggling with. Let's see what he does 
Here, there's the side light nair coming out this time. There's the strong D light with the big kick. There's the weapon toss over the edge. Did not get the touch. I don't so believe. Close. No, he did get the touch. Bob's almost just barely getting the knockout. I'm not sure how he got the touch there, but uh, in Wub's favor, Jesser is not going to be able to get a lot of damage out of that opportunity that was given to him. He's going to be picking up that axe again. Wub's disarming himself, and we're back into the matchup. This is the matchup that you didn't believe in. <laughs> you, you keep saying I keep saying it because you said it, dude. I, I said his orb was good. How can you cast Flayed on Wub's orb, dude? He's I, going I, crazy I, I on I said it. his orb was good. I liked his orb. <laughs> he was doing, I said he was doing what you're supposed to when you're playing in the hammer, but he was struggling against the axe, which he was, man. Come on. Yes, sir. Able to pick up that recovery, giving Wubs a hard time yet again off the top of the screen. Charging up that d sick Wubs isn't going to fall for something like that, but it pushes him off, giving him the opportunity to then later go for that ground pound. Swapping over to the last, nice. able to get that Sayer, and now he has himself a lead again. Now, we haven't seen like that much from the Lance so far from Jesser, but like the second he picked it up, he's been able to find okay. a side arrow. Oh, dude, that what is so that? good. His what is that for so Jesser? He keeps good, it bro. going. He's pushing this advantage. Wub's finally able to get back up stage and picks up a side. There's the recovery with the weapon toss, getting maybe a little cheeky with that arcing motion in that weapon toss. The inlight sending over the edge. He's going to hold on to that. He might throw it soon. Okay, Wub's is able to get back, so he picks up the orb which Polymonto was saying was not very good earlier. I thought it was great, but Polymonto really did not believe in the orb whatsoever. He said it was bad, I believe, is a, is a quote. Jesser now on the lands. Looking for a Sarah, looking for anything. Jesser had a hard time last game to be able to find this knockout. Nice Bob is patience. Again. Very good patience indeed, able to pick up that side signature. And this, uh, these are the moments where I, 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 I am fearful because Wubbs Wubs is able to rack up a lot of damage very, very quickly. Jesser is on that axe. We can get a DC, we can get a Sarah, we can get anything. He just needs it to connect. And you saw, like, the first two moves he threw out, he was looking for that stray side air. Similar fashion to the end of last game. There's the DC, but Wubs is staying above it. Double down. And there is the stray hit to take that game and put him up 2 1 in favor of Jesser over Wubs. I really like the Lance gameplay there. Not that we saw like a bunch of it or that was that it was amazing, but the fact that he was able to pick up the Lance for like the first two stocks and then instantly find a side air, which is really one of your major KO moves when you're a Lance player. He didn't have to have any huge setup. He didn't have to fish around for 20 minutes. He wasn't hitting side light nair while his opponent was at Three, 250 two, damage. He picked one, up the Lance, wrong. he found the side air, he got the stock, swapped back to Axe, do the damage, and then rinse and repeat every single time. I do have to say though, I like the Terrors better. Jesser, I think, maybe he got a mental reset because he, he still, like, his strongest weapon is Axe, and his Axe is stronger now than it was on Terrors. This is the same Axe. I mean, you're using the same light attacks. He has the D-Sig, sure, but he only connected one of them. So uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not so certain. Maybe we will see a little bit more of that Lance action, but Wubbs has something else in mind. His orb, I mean, he's, he's, he's all Mr. about those Dare, stairs. Bro. Oh he's all about goodness. those stairs. See, now Jesser has the 360 degree with the neutral A. Like, Wubbs is finding connection. This is like the only move he is throwing out. I wish we had statistics to tell us how many times he threw out the down air. I mean, it's working. Well, you don't, you, you don't got to fix something that ain't broken. How do they say that in Swedish? I don't know. Do they have a phrase for it? I don't think so. Oh, there, well, there might be. I might just not know it. Ask me on Twitter if you know it. <laughs> Sweet, sweet, pick up that sweet, we need you for this one. Yeah, the three Swedish people watching in total. Hello. Sideline air coming out. Jesser, GC, D light isn't going to be able to connect. Wubbs, he <laughs> is in a disadvantage. <laughs> Wubbs has had like two crazy weapon toss. There was the one that was completely the opposite direction, and then there was that one that went completely high while Jesser was so low. Jesser does have this lead though. He's able to grab that weapon almost immediately. Picks up the neutral light. Wubbs, of course, staying in the air, hoping to not get juggled. Now he's the one kind of controlling the ground, but the falling down air from Jesser. I love it. It feels like Wubbs' game plan and gameplay don't change whatsoever depending on whether he's in the lead or not in the lead. He's still playing the same way, still going with the same game plan, and it is working out phenomenally well for him, able to pick up that dodge. I actually think he just straight up didn't have enough aerial options to be able to continue that read. Used like most of his jumps, used that chase dodge as well. Yes, you're able to pick up an end light though. Wants to try and commit offstage, goes for nice. the weapon throw, ground pound maybe. 
Oh, he didn't charge that one up. I thought he might for just a moment, but no, one of the kind of more minimum charge time on that signature when you do have the option to hold it and keep that chainsaw out. One of the few times we've seen a Lance D light coming out. There's the neutral light sending over towards the edge. Try to go for the read with the turnaround recovery as Wubs recovered high and over. There is a weapon spawn on the field. We'll see if anyone changes. It's likely going to be Jesser. If he does, I don't know if he has enough room here. If he gets hit, it could be sending him far away because he is in the orange, which means he's going to be disarmed. And then Wubs can cycle out weapons and refresh for another orb. Somehow he had the rage with the GC sig. You see the side sig off the stage in celebration of that. And once he feels safe, swaps back over to the axe. There is a spawn on the field. Jesser just kind of playing around it. Doesn't immediately try to strip the field from Wubs. Yeah, Jesser in general seems to seems to prefer weapon guarding over yes. weapon starving, right? And uh, Wobbus as well has been very successful in doing so, especially whenever he's on that orb, able to pick up some good reads. Wobbus now very damaged, but he is still trying to find this stock. He's on the side, going to be swapping it over to the unarmed now with the orb. Ooh, Jesser that finds was... the Sarah though, charges up the end sync, it's not going to be connecting. Two big reads, one from Wubs with the side signature while Jesser was really high in the air, and then with the neutral signature from Jesser on on Olgrim's axe over on the edge. Neither one made contact. Jesser with a nice lead here. He is in KO damage, but Wubs is in orange on final stock, and Jesser's up a game. Finds the end light, wants to commit to that offstage. D-Sig isn't going to be connecting. Recovery does, though. So close at this point. Side signature won't connect either. Looking for a D-Light, gets the D-Sig! He it's thought not he won! He thought he won on that, but we he thought didn't! thought it was over, it's not done yet! Wubs has a chance, goes for the second D-Sig. Sarah oh, the whiff side air, and there there's is. the D-Sig, it makes the connection. Do you hear the siren, Sparky? Uh, what, uh, what do they sound like? I can't. Eew, eew. <laughs> do you hear the sirens? I, you know, I'm, I might be hearing the sirens based on the way that... It's uh, the EU sirens, baby. Based on the way Jester's playing right now, based on the way we've seen Godly and Zen play this weekend, who knows? Jester's oh, got to be feeling oh, good after that. Yeah, you can see, yes, is that a light? Is that a light skip in a step I just saw there walking off stage? That was a great game for Jester. I, you said you didn't like the swap on Ogrim. I like the swap on Ogrim. I thought the axe was great. You're gonna pick up a couple more. Wait, what, 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 what are you pointing at? Tell me. Tell me. I mean, the Lannis users, 39 percent. It didn't yeah? feel like 39 percent. It really but didn't. It felt like he played a lot more with Lance. It felt like you played a lot less. I saw what, are you so crazy? much of the axe, so much of the D so much of the D6. He was edge guarding with those dares. I mean Oh man, that D6 was so close. That was such a Hail Mary that he threw out that he had to throw out. You can see the frustration in that set. And th there was one of those like side airs that he picks up so quickly. There's a nice down there with the weapon toss down. Almost cleaned that one up, but then he went back up the stage to get stage control, to get weapon control so he can find the D-Sig. And he was the wall in between Wubs and the weapon spawn. You're right, both of them were really kind of focused more on weapon guarding yeah, than yeah. weapon starving. And I think part of that yeah. was because we were on that tiny stage, Brawl Haven. It can be really tough to weapon starve someone on that stage without being a little risky with it. Yeah, and uh, Jesser is going to be advancing through the bracket. Wobbus unfortunately sent down. Remind me, is this elimination side? This was elimination. This was a top so 32 Wubbs qualifier on the elimination side. Wubbs will not be making it to finals day. Meanwhile, Jesser will be moving on. Jesser in finals, huh? So uh, also additionally, I do want to mention I'm not casting shade on anyone. Jester and Moonir. Ooh, get ready for this one, boys. Jester and Moonir, they have been they have been friends for years. They go way back. Jester and Moonir, right? Moonir absolutely blew up in skill, and I'm just sitting here thinking, like, you know, I'm I feel bad for Jester because Jester, you know, his best friend, he's making main stage after main stage. Jester is, you know, he's kind of been left behind. You know, he's not able to get the same kind of placement. Now Jesser, you know, he's able to redeem himself. He's been able to show that he also belongs on the main stage. And I mean, even though they're not playing together in tournament anymore, Nice and, sorry, not Nice, uh, Jesser and Munir have been playing together so much in 2v2. I'm just happy to see that they're both succeeding. And uh, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of like that Kaina Lores factor. We were really focused on Kaina, and like Lores was kind of, you know, in the background doing Lores stuff, yeah. and he was, he was kind of junior. And then yeah. all of a sudden, Lores really showed up as well. Love seeing those players rise. And we will be back in just a few moments. Don't go anywhere. We're about to see Knees versus Faison. I know I'm really excited for that one. I'm sure the crowd is really excited for that one as well. We will be right back in just a few moments with the 1v1s here at BCX.
And we are back as we decide our top 32 here for the 1v1 Brawlhalla World Championship here at day two, baby. It's Sparky87A. It is Sparky it is Polymonto here on the main desk, and we will be moving shortly over to our lovely host, Glitter Explosion, on the main stage with knees, with FaZe on here. We're going to be throwing it over to her right now. Thanks so much, guys. That's right. We're hanging out with the boys before their match. And I've got some questions for the two of you. Needs, I want to start with you. Uh, finding yourself on the top of the leaderboards all the time, making it through to all the Royales this year. What were your expectations for yourself coming into this event? Well, honestly, my expectations for the event is just to... I really want to win. That's it. Like, I've, I haven't won since 2019. I've been getting second recently. Like, uh, I just have to win. Like. All right, I love that. Second place is not good enough anymore. And for you, Faison, a similar question, but like obviously legacy player, been around since the beginning. Do you have high expectations for yourself? Do you kind of set that bar pretty high and hope that you meet it? Uh, I'll be honest, I just practiced twos, so I'm just <laughs> glad to still be in winners right now. I already upset Truck Stop 3-0. So uh, it'd be nice to do that to knees as well. I mean, listen, I made a grand. I made my money back. I'm a content creator, 2024, Pavelski route. So just going to do as best as I can. I love, I love that mentality. All right, I also want to hear from you on your mentality then. When you're going through these events, like what are you doing for yourself to kind of really stay focused and play your best? Well, to focus, uh, basically I just take it one game at a time, right? Like usually in the past I've uh, just thought about games ahead of me and like winning, but uh, I need to take one game at a time and just like only focus on the game. It's like it. All right, all right, very professional. Last question for both of you. Do you have any like rituals or superstitions that you have to do before you get ready for a game? Uh, no. No, I just, I come, I play. I mean, I've been playing several years. There's no ritual that's gonna make me do better or whatever. I don't really buy into it. So just play, try my best. And if I win, I win. If I lose, so be it. And Nies, what about you? Uh, yeah, I don't have any either. I just like play and try my best and stay focused. All right, well, best of luck to the both of you. I'll let you get set up and ready for your match. Boys, back on over to you. Thank you so much, Glitter. This is huge for Faison. I really want to point out where we are in the bracket right now. We are at a top 32 qualifier, not on the elimination side, Polly. We are a top 32 qualifier on the winner's side, and Faison is here with the 3 0 over truck stop knees is here with a 3-0 over Pringles right before this. I'll tell you what, 3-0 over Pringles sound, sounds like me uh, when I'm hungry at lunchtime. Hey, yeah, it's going to be a really big game indeed. I mean, watching you through that interview, it's very, very fun to be able to get a peace of mind from the players. And I, more than anything, am just happy that I'm not the only Swede struggling with the English language uh, here tonight on the mic. Uh, Nies, I thought Nies did a great course. job. That's kind of that's kind of messed up that you of thought course. he struggled. I did great. Nies, I believe in my boy. Uh, you've been memeing on Nies believers since like day one. Yes. Uh, Nies is PR two now. Yeah. Are you finally starting to see the vision? Yeah, because he's finally like showing the vision. The problem is, is he was inconsistent before, and you know me. I don't mess with inconsistency. I'm going to look at the consistent placers, but now, all of a sudden, since like Summer Championship, he got fifth. In front of me, Frenzy, he got second. In Summer Royale, he got fourth. Then Campus Clash 2023, he got third. Then Autumns, he got second. Bearded Brawls EU Throwdown, he got third. This is from the guy who earlier in the year was like getting last at the Royales, and he was getting destroyed in the Royales, and that's what I was looking at to form my opinion. And now we have new data, so I'm happy happy to change my mind on this one. I am so happy to say Knees is a consistent player now. I knew he had it in him. He just wasn't showing that at the beginning of the year, but now he is. We have the evidence. We have the empirical evidence. I'm a Knees believer, but in this case, because I'm sitting next to a Swede and I'm from North America, I'm stoked that Faison is here, man. Because if we look at Autumn Championship for Faison, 17th place. He's outside of top 16, just in North America in an online tournament. Then all of a sudden you add everybody else in the world into this and he's on the precipice of top 32. That's huge. Not just top 32 overall, but on the winner's side. Yeah, I mean, Yet again, you know, you already know me. I'm going to be rooting for a Swedish player if there is one, but it's hard to not like Faison. Like Faison, he has the longevity, he has the experience, and, you know, Faison, if anything, he's been in the game for so long. 
one of the OG Val players. I do hope we get to see that Val come out. I see the Val on Nii's side. Maybe a Val mirror match could be fun. But uh, yeah, Faison's Gauntlet, one of the first ones to really, really play that out, you know, along, I believe it was with like Adimestic yeah. in those days, yep. you know. Faison also always live on Twitch, super friendly guy. Hard to not like him, but it's also hard to not root for him. I'm looking forward to this Val from Nii's though. His sword, ever since like when Godly and Nii's were teaming together and I asked him, I was asking him about like, how are y'all feeling this weekend, blah, 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 and all that. And that was of course, few months ago while they were still teaming together and he was like yeah i put knees on the val because he has an amazing sword and that is absolutely true he is not capping whatsoever that is all big facts and i love seeing that sword coming out from knees he's very strong when he has that in his hands and then of course he has he look he, he has that crazy factor when he gets the gauntlets in his hands as well i yeah. love seeing that from any gauntlet player out there guys like pavelski of course guys like sandstorm a, like made an experience, man. We saw some insane gauntlet play from them. And of course, I'm adding these into that Three, conversation two, as well. And one, we're getting one. into game one here. Top 32 qualifier, winner's side. And I'm almost rooting for Nis here because he's playing a bald man. <laughs> Nis on the Wushang, something that I think neither you or me uh, predicted. Again, he was locked in on the screen, but Nis indeed going to be on the gauntlets as we were hyping up. Faison on the Val, I mean, can it get any better than this? And we're starting it off with a gauntlet v gauntlet brawl between these two players. Okay, Faison gets the turnaround. A little too far away to find that down air, but now he's swapping over onto the sword. There's the D-Light into the dare, into the side air. Knees overstuck on the edge. Beautiful spiking down air, and that's first stock going to Faison. He only has like 50 damage. Polly, is Faison back? Is phase on back? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. That's a pretty good knockout at the beginning of the, uh, beginning of the game, though. I do have to give it to him. Going for a super massive commitment off the top as well. Nice able to get that side signature on at the landing though. Goes for the end. Oh. Yet again, massive call out. Not able to connect Ooh. it though. Nice is in a flow state, but like he's not flowing. Okay, he, and phase like on. Phase on is. You saw him putting a lot of pressure over off stage. He does get hit with the Gauntlet Neutral Light. Not really a KO option anymore after it got that major nerf. Gauntlet players were mauling after that one. There's the side light. Okay, he immediately went for the signature read rather than like back up into the side light, into the D light, into the recovery once the dodge came out from Faison. So he went with the read, wasn't rewarded right away, but then cleaned up the stock right after. Does have to be careful. He's getting past 100 damage here. GC D light into the neutral air. And there's the D light side air from Faison sending over to the edge. Yeah, Faison finding a lot of grounded potential right here now on the sword. Going for the Ensign, but Nii's ready right there with a Nair of his own so far. Mutual interactions have been leading, leaning in Faison's favor. You were talking about the crazy factor on Nii's. I think he might have to start, you know, tapping into that if he wants to win this game because Faison, he, he's just too dominant in, in, the, in the neutral. I want to know whether he has it on Spear or not. I'm not saying that, that he doesn't, but it's just I'm more used to seeing it on the Gauntlets, which he has in his hands right now. He's still been going for these side light read options after that rather than waiting. He's been going for all the different options, side light into the recovery, side light into the GC, side light the other direction, all of the flow chart options there. He's finding these dares. He has Phazon KO damage. He needs to find this KO before Phazon's able to add too much damage. Last time it happened, again, he's going for these signature options, which are playing Wushong. That's not crazy whatsoever, but we haven't really seen the recoveries coming out too much. It's been a lot of signatures. Faison playing absolutely Dude. phenomenal right now, able to pick up several end lights in a row, going for that D light, not able to connect it just yet. Nice with that Spear Sair, he's able to pick up that knockout. What I'm thinking right now is, could that be too little too late? Nice, you're already all the way down in red. He has the gauntlets in hand. We haven't seen a Nice pop off just yet. Who is popping off? It's okay, Faison. Three. Nice able to pick up a dodge though. Now Faison just like basically has to hit a gauntlet recovery. I don't know if it'll KO in this. Okay, could go with the side signature as well. Side air to set up the off stage. It looked like Nise's hands were off the keyboard because he knew the writing was on the wall. And game one goes to Faison. One moment that we did see was we saw a D light come out from Nise, and then we saw Faison try and punish it with a sword D light. But of course, because you're that spear player, you're not going to touch down by the time your recovery frames are over. You can still jump out of that while you're still in the air. So he was able to get over that D light. Now, Faison was in that moment looking for the KO punish. That's why he went for the D light option rather than like, oh, I'm going to throw out a neutral light and add up a little more damage that doesn't really mean much. Or the side light that, you know, there's a little more damage, but doesn't really mean much.
Danis. I am looking Three, at who is going to two, be selecting, and it's going to be that one. Wuxiang yet again. Now, phase on, as you mentioned, the gauntlets were clean. What I was really looking at was that sword, because his neutral on the sword, he was finding so many attacks in quick succession. He was unstoppable on that sword. Nice, though, able to pick a ground pound off stage already. So far, it's a fairly even start, though. They're both starting off again. The gauntlet v gauntlets. Last time, Faison was the one to get the better of it. They are even so far. The, the spear gameplay, it was good from Nice, but again, he's not going for the standard, like, I'm gonna go for the side light, then wait to see where you dodge, and then maybe go for the side light, D light, side air. He's really going for these follow up options, like a, a signature out of the neutral light. So his, his spear gameplay is somewhat unorthodox. There's the neutral light punish instead of the D light, because he knows how aerial Nice is at that moment. Those and it didn't so make the off. connection before. I thought we might see the recovery there, but Phazon recovers low, and Nice gets the KO right when that hurt box from Phazon peeks over the corner so many times where I'm like, phase on, that was a free D light, he goes for that end light instead. And I think you might be onto something with doing that because of how uh, aerial Nice is. And it's been working out super, super well so far. Nice has the stock advantage, and this is not a position where you want Nice to be. And he's <laughs> already he's starting to kind of pop off on these gauntlets. Yeah, he's finding like two hits, three hits, then there's a little break in between, then he finds two hits, three hits, again, has weapon control here. Faison's done a great job of outspacing so many of the spear options from Nice. It feels like Faison is just so adept at this that specific matchup. Faison. Should have had a pretty simple knockout onto Nice there. Nice is able to pick up one or two more attacks before Faison does finally manage to find that. Able to get that sword as well. Just the last couple of frames before Nice was able to take it. And this is a fairly, fairly strong spot for Nice here. He can already start looking for something to knock out. Great anti-air from Faison. And Faison is on some kind of train right now. He keeps getting more and more damage. So one thing I think Faison needs to do is when Nice has the spear, he needs to find a more potent punish option. Okay, okay and he gets the ground pound there. But Faison that, might be back. When that neutral signature comes out from Nice's spear, or when a D light comes out from Nice's spear, Faison needs to find a better punish, better than the neutral light, better than the D light that may or may not whiff. Usually has been whiffing. I'm not sure if you have sword in your hand, if the neutral sig will have enough like lateral movement to get over there. See if Nice can finish this one up. And the nice down air to clean it up. We have an even game, Polymonto. Managed to even it up indeed. Still on these gauntlets. Able to pick up a dare. Able to pick up the Sarah as well. Almost got that read. And these now already, he got that advantage. He pushes it as far as he possibly can. Almost wanted to commit to that offstage as well. Finding so many connected attacks right now. Phase on. He can barely recover from what's going on at the moment. There's the sidelight. Oh, he finally gets that follow-up after it. He hit the neutral air into the GC sidelight, into the recovery, finishes this one up, and Knees is going to tie up this set against Faison. It's going to be 1-1 one, one between these two players. Tying it up. Knees showing at the end some of that gauntlet magic that you and me are all about. And I was going to say by the end of last game, I wanted to see Nice change that legend. I still don't know if I believe in this beer coming out from Nice. What do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not feeling Three, it two, yet. If we look one, at the damage one. difference, like it's been pretty good. We have 370 coming out from the gauntlets compared to the 201 from Spear. So he is finding some damage with it, but I feel like he just lacks the standard Spear fundamentals. That right there, that is some Spear fundamentals. That's what we see from a lot of the best Spear players in the world, that it seemed like Nies was a gauntlet player who just happened to pick a Spear legend rather than someone who really knows the ins and outs of that weapon. Yeah, and especially, you know, if you've been playing a legend like, uh, if you've been playing a legend like Gauntlet for so long, the movement that you have are kind of going to be based around that weapon that you are most comfortable with. And, you know, Spear and Spear and Gauntlet, they're fairly different weapons. Nisto, able to pick up a ground pound off the edge, almost getting an early knockout. He's starting to use the Nair a little bit more. That's, of course, a very safe move that a lot of Gauntlet or a lot of Spear players use. When they're in the air, they'll just throw that one out. You don't have to be super precise with it. Your timing. Oh, he went for the sidelight into the recovery off the top. Gets the recovery anyway later on for the KO. For stock yet again, going over to knees. He's really starting to figure out how Phazon is moving, and we're starting to really see those knees gauntlets pop off. Able to find that either way, and he has a gentle lead now as Phazon, he goes for that dare, needed to jump just one extra time to be able to connect that. 
Jump there off stage, super, super strong uh, option, but Faison is going to go back down to the stage and get the knockout with the Sair instead. Now Nice in the weapon disadvantage, able to pick up those gauntlets. And he has been, he's, he's been crisp on these reads so far. And even when he misses the reads like right there, he's able to bounce back and he finds that next attack straight away. The sword is starting to struggle. That was the weapon that Faison was doing so well with. That was great spacing though, but the sword is starting to struggle, especially against the gauntlets, but you not against the spear. We're seeing a little bit of that spear weakness coming out from these. I don't know if this is gonna make Faison maybe think about swapping over to the Hattori that we've seen in the past, because his gauntlets are starting to struggle a little bit as well against Nis. Nis is absolutely winning the gauntlet game against both of Faison's weapons. Nice. It's on the gauntlet right now, but it could be going down oh. any moment. Phase on neutral signature, so close. Not going to be connecting though. Oh, the GC nice. sideline, so close. Phase on. Seeing the recovery, going for it immediately. Super good option, but Nice with a charged up D-Sync is going to be able to pick up the next stock. Two against one. Nice is so close. And Nice actually goes over. He wants to juggle one more time and goes over to the spear. There is a weapon spawn. He's going to snake that one away. There's the D-Light into the gravity cancel. Neutral heavy. This means Nice's next weapon is going to be the spear. If he finally gets one, Faison now moving over onto the gauntlets. Nice is going to shark around until the weapon spawn comes in. Faison got the hit away. He didn't immediately go for that spawn. You're seeing the spear in Nice's hands. There's the neutral light. He doesn't immediately go for the signature after oh, like he was doing previously. We're seeing the spear gameplay change oh, in that's front so of our eyes. Phase on and knees. So many close encounters and knees. He keeps going. I mean, that was kind of a that was kind of a prey and sig that we saw come out there. Not going to be connecting. Phase on now patrolling the ground with these gauntlets. Almost just barely got that side light with no dodge. Phase on would have been done for. He gets it this second time around though. Able to string up that sair. Faison keeps coming back onto the stage. Side signature. Knees so close to finding it, but Faison somehow comes back up. Knees yet again. Faison without the weapon, he's going to be looking for it, or he's looking for those kind of safe recovery KO options. Faison is behind in damage, and he's being very careful. Didn't immediately aggress onto Faison. The neutral light, not what it used to be. He's going to have to find at least one more of those if he wants to KO. He's looking for that Nair as well. Oh, he's looking for the recovery. He wants this so bad. Oh, Phase on! Phase on really well, went deep with this one. Knees turns it around, gets the side air for the KO. Knees now up 2 1 in this set. And I want to point out the precision of Knees' gauntlets versus Phazon's gauntlets. And it was this one specific moment that I think shows it really well. It's because Phazon has great gauntlets. I think Nises are just a little bit better. They both essentially did the same thing. They both did a neutral air, but then the follow-up after was where things changed. Phazon did a neutral air, went for a gravity cancel neutral light. There was too much damage on Knees for that GC in light to make a connection. He was too far away after the bounce. But then Knees right after that, reached up with the Nair Three, and then did a two, side air one, right after. Whoa. That gave him the extra distance because he knew how much damage precisely was on Faison's stock. It gave him the movement he needed to make a connection that Faison didn't see when he went for the GC in light. That last Sair that Faison threw out though, that, that was just bold. barely, just barely dodged. I'm gonna see that when I close my eyes for the next couple of weeks. But we are moving into this next game and that match points now. 2-1 oh, okay. on the scoreboard and knees already getting to work off stage. Faison wanted to answer to it. Oh. Rampa comes out and that is a good lead already for knees. Faison tried to get a little bit cheeky with it, thinking that Nies was immediately going to go back over to the wall so he could turn around and hit the ground pound to get the KO there, or at least set up the edge guard situation. Nies, these, his gauntlets are really firing up here against Faison. Trying to patrol the ground, able to get some anti air. Sayer comes out, neutral light comes out. Faison taking control, taking stage control for just a moment, but Nies always comes back. Ooh, does he get the D-Light Punish on the landing? Knees using the range. Little bounce pass to himself into the sidelight, into the neutral air. I'm really loving the adaptation that we're seeing from Knees. He's looking more like a Spear player now than he has throughout this entire set. Despite playing, what are they doing on the edge? This they is clash. Knees being Knees, and this is Faison wanting to go along with it. Able to get back up, both of them though. Knees looking for this knockout, gets that unarmed Sair out. <laughs> Quick little bait with the weapon throw, but Faison able to connect that neutral signature. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of neutral signature usage coming out from Faison. Not a lot, not a lot of it has been actually connecting. That's 
partially due to the nurse. Of course, it definitely has a lot less force on it. So we immediately saw Val players really start to move away from it. Once it caught that major nerf way back when, that might have been earlier this year. I can't remember exactly when it was in the Brawlhalla timeline. But Faison, he's going to have to find something. He's going down really low. Knees doesn't immediately go over to it. He did before because he was so red on his first stock, and he had a massive lead on Faison. Losing his stock here, though, is much more devastating because he can just find the GCD light into the recovery, and now he has a full stock lead on Faison. He's now just one knockout away from advancing through the bracket. Faison is right now just scraping for any kind of hits that he can get. He's on the sword. The sword has been working so well for him, but Nice is not allowing Faison to get any kind of ground attack. The aerial gameplay, that's what it's all about for Faison. But Nice, as soon as he picks up that advantage, he pushes it and he pushes it hard. That side stick from Faison was a Hail Mary. It could have been huge. It could have at least set up a great edge guard situation, but the read didn't happen to make that connection. There's the GC in light. Nice has a lot of damage on him. He's really in KO damage. I don't know if a D-Light recovery would KO. I imagine it would. But again, he's only hitting these in lights. And even that is almost sending off the screen on the right side. Went for the spiking down air. The follow-up from Nice, and he's pushing over to the edge. Again, he has the stock to work with. He's so damaged, and he could take out Faison, giving him a two-stock. He does have that extra wiggle room. He's going to be picking up the gauntlets. He knows he doesn't have to stress. He can look for the perfect <laughs> opportunity. Quick though, both players are on our knees going to be picking up that spear though. Faison with the D-Light into nothing. I'm not sure what's going on. Faison is able to pick up that knockout though. I think he didn't expect that D-Light to hit because it gives you so much stun time that you can easily find a follow-up after which would send Nice further away, giving him the, the free weapon. So I think he just didn't expect that D-Light to hit because it was like the max range of it. Faison, he does have knees on his final stock, but Faison is so damaged. It's going to be... Oh, oh, he goes for the D-Light into the side sig. Knees trying to get a little cheeky with it there. Maybe it. with the signature read, the weapon toss goes down. He, he can't goes back find the it. Stage. Faison keeps racking up the damage. Knees can't there find the knockout, but he gets the Sayer. And Knees is going to be advancing through the bracket. 3-1 on the scoreboard, representing EU even further into the bracket. That is a qualification into top 32 on the winner's side for Nice, coming all the way from Sweden. You see him looking at the crowd with a smile, but the run is not over for Faison just yet. Of course, that was a winner's qualifier he match. So well. Faison is going to go well. down. He's going to wait for the winner of Sack versus Sprite to see who will make it through on the elimination side. Yeah, Faison. I mean, it, I would be afraid of Faison in, elim in elimination side. Faison has been. I mean, this is a this is a different kind of Faison. You asked at the beginning, is Faison back? I mean, Nice is PR two. I would say yep. Faison is back. Faison was looking really good. It just it really seemed like the spear gameplay totally stepped up, and it feels like once that stepped up. It gave Nies enough confidence to, to play gauntlets like we know he can play oh, gauntlets. There. He started all of a sudden finding the offstage engagements, finding the extended strings, finding so much unanswered damage. He did, he did a great job with it on both weapons. You can see right there, he only did 137 on the spear, but his spear towards the end was very different than his spear in game one. That second stock I will from Faison, maintaining it so, so well. Um, I mean, all in all, Super, super good performance. As I've said before, Faison, I'm not sure who is going to be facing in the elimination side of things, but I would definitely be on the lookout. If you're watching this on Twitch, you should be able to do exclamation mark bracket. Make sure to check up every now and again on Faison because I, you don't, you, you don't want to miss out on the games this guy is going to be having. I'm going to be looking forward to that set. Like we said, he is going down into the elimination bracket, and it will be streamed over on the side stream. And you don't have to worry about having a tab open for the main stream and a tab open for the side stream. You can do that all in Command Center if you are watching on twitch.tv forward slash Brawlhalla. You can go into Command Center. You have a view of the main stream. You have a view of the side stream. I think you might have view of some of the like weirdo like spy weirdo? that are in here. <laughs> and you can choose which one you want to see, but you can also see a little bit like picture-in-picture of you of the other one so you know what's going on you don't miss your favorite players but 
We are here at, of course, BCX 2023. The X stands for Expo, which means there's so much to do here. And one important thing that you should do while you're here or while you're at home, the official charity of BCX 2023 is the Make-A-Wish Foundation, an incredible charity that has done so many great works across disciplines, gaming, movies, music, everything you can think of. Make sure to scan that QR code, and with your donation to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, you will get an in-game title that I don't remember the name of. I, I remember. It was cool. That, that's the only thing what? that really matters. It was cool. It is wish maker because you are making those wishes happen for so many people around the world. It's huge. If you have anything to give, anything, there is no donation too great or too small. Make sure to scan that QR code, whether you're here at BCX or whether you are at home for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah, it's a great cause. We are going to be moving into our next couple of games shortly. I'm not sure if you have them pulled up, Sparky. We are going to be moving on to use versus Santi. And I'm really excited for this one. I haven't seen Santi in a minute. I happened to see him on Friday night, and I screamed like a little child. and went, ooh, Santi! <laughs> and then I ran over and gave him a big old hug. I am so happy to see him here on the main stage. And it's, he's going to be going up against Yuz. I got to see where we actually are in the bracket. This is a winner's side qualifier match for top 32 as well. And Santi is here. Of course, no surprise that Yuz is here. No one's looking at best at this bracket being like, Yuz, who let you get in here? I mean, Yuz, of course. We've been talking a lot about SA. This is definitely, I mean, this is the first BCX where SA is really part of the conversation, more than they have ever been before. And uh, yeah, I actually, I have the controversial take. I've said it a couple of times before. I think it is entirely reasonable that in this BCX, we do have an SA winner. Perhaps it's crazy that you think that's controversial. Perhaps, uh, I just waiting until we hear the controversial part. I think we're going to have two SA players on the podium this year. Yeah, like I do too, bro. You're not, you're not alone. I put kind of more. <laughs> I think kind is gonna win in one. You, you, you act like you're, you're the soldier taking the knives in your back while, while everyone else is <laughs> sleeping safe and sound. Like that's, that's not a bold take whatsoever. There are plenty of people out here that My would, that would as, an, you're, as a European, that's a bold. Okay, maybe as a European. Yeah, bro. I mean, I, I, I did not gonna, take that into consideration. I was, I was gonna put out a prediction of like, yeah, Godly's getting first, Nice is getting second, S Grip is getting third, Mooner is getting fourth, and you know, just gonna keep going like that. But I decided. Decided, you know, maybe Twitter's not ready for for that kind <laughs> of. Uh, they're not ready for that kind of level of based. Uh, oh, yet. okay. I think the global mind outside of EU cannot comprehend those possible results. That is a controversial thing. <laughs> uh, I guess unless you're in EU and then everyone else is like smartest EU legend, <laughs> smartest caster in the whole world, Holly Monto. <laughs> yeah, my bad, I guess. But I mean, I can you really blame me? I want I want EU to win. There's nothing wrong full, with that. Full EU podium. There's, there is a timeline. There's a universe where that happened, and I would very much like to be part of that universe. So Santi is a longtime player. We're talking about the Brawlhalla universe. Santi has been there for so long. One of the top 2v2 tours at one point. He had a great team alongside Simba. Santi and Simba were oh, a yeah. regular so good. on the scene. We were always talking about them on pre-show. Always, I don't actually pre-show probably didn't exist then, but if it did, we would have been talking about them on pre-show. We always saw them on stream going deep into the bracket. But it's been a minute here for young. Well, I guess he's not young anymore. I probably knew him when he was young, but everyone's young to me. I'm 31 or two years old. I don't exactly know. But if we look at what <laughs> Santi did in the Autumn Championship, was inside of top 16, 13th place, which is which is pretty big. Very, very big. Santi, of course, super strong player, has been around for a very long time. He has that experience under his belt. Absolutely. He has those placements under his belt. But we're talking about use. This is use. This it is, is one is. Of, this is one of South America's finest coming into this tournament. One of the players that a lot of players, a uh, lot of people have on their mind to get really, really deep into the bracket. What do you think about this matchup all in all? I mean, here, I love Santi. But I really got to give this one to Yuz because Yuz has done a great job of moving through the track of what I like to call like the true pro, pro player Brawlhalla end game experience. You start off by winning a community tournament. Yuz has done that. You start off by winning an online major. Use has done that. 
Then we have Royales now. That's kind of the next step. And then you're also trying to build consistency in between these. Build consistency in the community tournaments. Build consistency in the online seasonal majors. And then Roll. he went over into the Royale, won a Royale. And then he went to DreamHack Dallas and won DreamHack Dallas. So he's basically won every single step that you can except Seven. for the World Championship. Yeah. And guess where we are, Polly? We're at BCX, and this is the time to do it. Santi is going to be locked in on that Asuri, and Yuse on the Jayun. We have some great sword action on the mainstream. And Yuse is like one of the best placing. I mean, he really is the best placing great sword player in the entire world. He's been one of the few champions still playing on that weapon in 2v2 and in 1v1 as well. And Santi coming in with the Asuri. We don't see too much Asuri anymore. If we see Katars, it can be on some different legends. Of course, if we see Sword, it can XJ be on cool different J legends as well. Yeah, XJ Cool yeah. J, one of them. Actually, Cool J, that's about, that's about as far as the extent goes. And I mean, we've been having our little small cute chit chat uh, Yus is not having any of it. He's already yeah. taken a stock off of Santi. I barely know how it happened. Yus, he just kind of did his magic and a uh, stock went flying. Yeah, he was able to clean it up very quickly within 50 seconds of the first game. And he's keeping that pressure going. We were talking about weapon guarding versus weapon starving in the previous game, but so far Yus was really on that weapon starving game. Now he goes back over to the Great Sword. Though Santi does come from North America, so he probably has at least some experience against another one of the Great Sword champions, Hardy MJ. So he likely has more experience maybe than your average player. Absolutely, and Santi is using it to his advantage right now, able to pick up a lot of damage Ooh. on this sword. Great side like coming out from Yuse. He's not going to be able to extend that into anything kind of crazy, but still, Yuse is extending this lead, looking incredibly comfortable, starting to think about picking up a knockout here. Trying to look for these neutral airs, maybe a little bit of a juggle game. Trying to land on the platform. Nice interruption there from Santi punishing the landing. You saw him move and actually dash away rather than burning his dodge to get out of the range of Yuse. Now Yuse is going over to the sword. So it has those more consistent KO combos and he finds them almost immediately the second he picks that up. So now it's great sword time. It's damage build time. Moves over back to that weapon. So he has this kind of two phase system, but then he also can move over if he wants to strip the field and keep Santi off the weapon. He's not beholden to the great sword as the only damage. Option. Yeah, Greats have been looking incredibly strong so far. Whenever he's on that sword, though, I feel like on the sword, he's a bit more pushy. And I feel like that's almost a bit uncalled for, because what do you imagine when you when you, when you think about really good great sword gameplay? You're thinking about someone that's constantly going in, you're hammering your opponent with a bunch of, you know, connected attacks and a bunch of dodge reads, but Yu's actually a pretty calm and collected great sword player. It's when he, he is on that sword that he tries to kind of commit harder. Speaking of hammering in, Santi on these Qatars able to pick up so much damage. Over stuck on the edge. We'll see if he can make it over the corner back on the stage. He does, and Yuse is just going to completely disengage. Even though he has a pretty solid lead here, he's not going to take any huge risks going back over to the sword. You see those recoveries coming out, those KO moves. Even though Santi's not quite in KO damage yet, it is still a very good damaging move. Can be a reasonably safe move. And Santi's looking for the same move, but in different contexts. He's looking for that KO here on to Yuse to get that second stock. As his final stock is winding down, GC D Light into the recovery. Juggle these weapons to delay the spawn back over to the Qatars, he wants to find those huge strings. He has to find those huge strings or maybe an offstage engagement, and he is instantly punished for it. That down air put him in sweat beads. Used didn't immediately go over to the weapon. He wanted to punish as Santi came back onto the main stage, even though he was disarmed. Santi had a dream for a moment, wanted to go for that massive ramp punt, but Yuse immediately stripping him of all hope with really, really precise sword play is going to be able to take that last stock off and give himself a 1-0 on the scoreboard. Staring at the screens now, thinking about what to do for the next game. Use face, I mean, use face tells me it's going to be on the same legend. I would definitely agree. I don't think there's any reason to swap whatsoever. Of course, he does have the potential vector in the background that he could be using. But if we look at so what crazy he really me. leaned on, like vector? Yeah, Vector's vector. Crazy. Like, yeah, vector in 2023. Like, what are you doing? I, I like, I, I, 
uses one of those players, kind of like Pugsy Three, was like, okay, two, you play Jala, one, no one else plays Jala, like you you have the Jala pass. When you lock in Jala, it, it doesn't surprise me, you know how to play that legend really well. Initially, when Yuz was playing Vector, it was like, okay, what all right, what is this? He's trolling. What, yeah, yeah, what are you doing here, brother? And then, like, Yuz has the Vector pass. He can play that legend better than anybody else. It's he's not allowed a surprise. to. Absolutely, yeah, he's allowed to. He's the one Perfect player way to allowed it. to pick Vector in tournaments, but we are going to be seeing that J unit come out yet again. Santi, amazing start so far. Neutral Signature isn't going to be connecting, and again, we see use on this great sword. His great sword is so precise, calm and collected, able to pick up that Ooh. dodge, getting a lot of damage off of it, swapping over to the sword. He always applies so much pressure. Use is always, use no matter where he is on the stage, he's always chasing you. In one way or another, he's always chasing you down. We've seen him like push Santi off stage hard. We've also seen him like guard that corner really hard, really close. He's not just gonna stay back and like maybe poke out with a sideline, do something safe, maybe to try and catch it. No, like he's sitting right over on the corner and the punish from middle stage. Perfect KO there with the four piece from Use. Could be running away with this one as well, unless Santi's able to find this stock. Instantly, the weapon toss comes out. Point Blake hits Santi. The weapon starving game from Yuse. He's been weapon starving so much harder than anyone else we've seen during our block, Polly. But Santi is able to fight back. Is he going to swap back over and stay on the Qatars? Yes, he is. That's been the weapon that he's been leaning on for the damage buildup game. Kind of like Yuse has been leaning on the great sword, but of course, I think Yuse has been a bit more uh, flexible. It's just like, oh, I have a great okay. sword. Now. This is what I want. Look Use. at the sword coming. Coming out. I the see damage you. build is here too as well. Sandy gets three piece, four piece, doesn't pick up the five. He's not grabbing the Kaniac combo just yet. And that is so crazy. Use was it was leaning in Use's favor so badly, and then all of a sudden Santi just takes all of that damage back. And I mean you're looking at a pair of guitars, all it takes is one or two reads, and that is already like half a stock melted away, giving Santi a hard time here though, swapping over to the great sword for the for the knockout. Trying to go for the re these recoveries, nothing is connecting just yet. Darren's Nair, not going to do the job just yet though. He's looking for it. He's continuing to try and fish for these down airs into the neutral airs, but he's not just a one-trick pony. He doesn't have like, oh, I'm going to do my great sword combo. It's always going to start with a side light, or it's always going to start with an end light, or anything like that. He's very flexible on his great sword. He doesn't have to fish for one thing too often. He tries to go through all the different decision tree options before really finding what's going to be successful. Now he's doing the dare into the neutral air quite a bit. Now he's holding the ground, and you're starting to see him go in with those side lights. So he does a great job of burying things up so that Santi has to keep up as well, figure out what's coming. That time okay. he didn't immediately go for the down air into the neutral air because he hit that grounded dare rather than the aerial version. Santi's oh. stuck on the edge, just barely getting back. You saw those sweat beads come out. Yuz immediately moved over, applying that pressure like you said earlier. Yeah, two of the most important things about you use the way he's playing. Always keeping his enemies on on edge. They never know exactly how he's going to play and always pressuring them. And that together, I mean, that's just a deadly combination. There's not much you can do against that. But Santi would beg to differ as he is getting closer and closer to bringing this back to a 1-1 on the scoreboard. Use though, able to pick oh. up that dodge. Not able to knock out just yet. He's gonna have to go for one more attack. Tries to look for the nair, tries to look for the recovery. Nothing is connecting just yet though. So close. Oh, he almost got hit with that. Santi, he tried to go for the big play there for the GC and Sig didn't quite make a connection. And there you go. Use seems to be more consistent than a lot of other great sword players on finding KO options. And so the variability, the flexibility that Yuse has as a Jay Young player, he does have the dynamic of, I'm gonna damage build with the great sword, then I'm gonna swap over to the sword. But he's not a one trick pony, he's not one dimensional. If he can't get that sword pick up, I'm just gonna find the dare into the neutral air. I'm gonna find that consistently. I'm gonna fish for it maybe a little bit, but then I also have other KO options that are based on reads as well. So the variability that he has, the improvisation, he has so many options in his bag of tricks and he's able to consistently hit Three, enough two, of them one, more than draw. a lot of other great sword players out there. Like he makes it look like it's, it's almost easy to KO on that weapon. And I saw something actually really interesting from Santi in the last stock there. Now, Santi wasn't able to close it out, but what I saw, Yuse got a sidelight on the Greatsword, and Santi straight up did nothing. He didn't dodge. 
Yuz went for a dodge read. Santi literally just walked away. Yep. Calm and collected, just walking away. And that's the kind of mix-ups that Santi is all about. And that is the kind of things that you needed to throw off. I mean, this is a great sword veteran. This is a great sword extraordinaire. And if you're able to throw him off, I mean, you're doing quite well. Yeah, and there you're seeing the mix-up right there. Like, he's starting off with a side light. That time when he made the connection, he went for the D light into the full string. Before, he went for the side light, got the hit, went for the turnaround neutral light. So he's kind of doing what you do with gauntlets when you hit the side light, whether you do the GC side light, same direction. GC side light, Use. oh, the four piece coming out from Yuz, not able to quite punish the landing. There we're seeing the side light into the turnaround neutral light, the variation, always keeping it Use. going, guessing, does it turn stop around, this man. keeps it going, the same direction and gets the KO off of it. I'm telling you, Use makes Great Sword no. look easier than it is. Not again. Use oh, is going for it again. It picks up another dodge read. Not like this, Use. And oh another my one. Gosh. There's no stopping this man. He said, hold up. Last game was close. Let's change that for our match point. I want to call out like what he's doing, but then all of a sudden he starts doing something else. One and minute I can't keep and up. 23 seconds. Use is finishing it up the last game in style that is going to be the end of the set what just happened one minute and 23 seconds sparky i, I can't get over that one minute and 23 seconds i can't wait to see the graph on this i mean i'm looking at it right now really i can't wait for uh, everyone at home to see the graph on this one i want to see it i haven't seen it yet he has like no damage he took 85 damage that entire That's game from Santi. look at the graph dude. dude the end of it for you is in the yellow is so low dude he didn't even turn red and you have those long stretches where he's not only just not taking damage he's not sharking he's not running away he's not throwing out his weapon to while Santi's on his heels no dude he's doing so much damage look at the damage build early on in the second stock then there was like a little bit of a lull and then it's like Boom, 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 you're done. And then he gets in on that third stock. It's it's like each stock was quicker than the last. Yeah, use. I mean, something just clicked. All of the reads, I mean, that if anything, that's you know, that's what a great sort of download looks like. Use had a Santi completely figured out all of these two games. Feels like they, you know, they led up into this last one. Use going absolutely insane. We're going to take a quick look at these uh, uh, past few games that we've had, and I really, I want to see every single stop, stock from that last game. I mean, it was 1 minute 23 seconds. We, we, we have that time. time. I said we have time to literally watch the entire, you know, last game over again. That was the second stock that came out. You can see it on the left side of the screen, 436 damage on the Great Sword. He just waited out that signature, instantly punished with the neutral signature for the KO, the fist bump, and use speed ran that last game. That was incredible. He truly showed us a Great Sword that we don't ever get to see, except for when use is on our screen. Yeah, I think, I think you said about everything that I could ever possibly want to say. There's just one thing I want to add, add uh, to all of that. Vamo Brasil. Vamo Brasil. We're going to be heading into a break right now. We just saw Yuz take it out over Sandy to qualify for the top 32 on the winner's side. When we come back, we will keep this one moving on. We will have Lores versus Blaze. Don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss a second of this action at BCX 2023.
What's up Rohala and welcome back. If you are just browsing Twitch right now and you don't know what you're watching right now, this is Brawlhalla Championship Expo 2023. My name is Polymont and I'm joined here by Sparky. How are you doing? Dude, these games have been so good. We have been blessed with amazing Brawlhalla action during this block. We still have more to come as well. We are about to see Lores versus Blaze for a top 32 winner's side qualifier match, EU versus SA. And we're going to throw it over to the main stage, over to Glitter Explosion, who has an interview coming up for us. That's right, you're talking about fantastic matches. Let's talk about this upcoming match. You've had a really solid performance this year at BCX so far. Now we're in singles, another banger of a match right around the corner. So talk to me about how you're feeling. I mean, I'm not much of a once player, so honestly, I'm just happy to be there at this point. But at the end of the day, it's still a game, so anyone can beat anyone. You know, we've had a lot of players come up here and say that they're not really good at ones, and then they turn around and have a phenomenal performance. Do you think that this matchup has the potential to go all five? Oh yeah, surely. I mean, just depends on how I'm playing today. We'll see. All right, all right. Now, if you have uh, any predictions for, we'll include yourself in this, for who might end up in, you know, that top four situation, who do you think that you could potentially see there? Oh, well, Goalie is winning at 100%. Nice is most likely second. I'd say either Lotus or Kana third. And one of them fourth as well. I mean, yeah, that's my predictions. That's it. I mean, those that's that's some really, really solid prediction. Very similar to what a lot of our casters had said as well. Uh, before I let you get set up for this match, do you have any final words for Lores or for anybody in the crowd? I mean, good luck to Lores, and yeah, that's it. All right, well, good luck to you as well. I'll let you get set up for your match, boys. Back on over to you. Thank you so much, Blaze. Thank you so much, Glitter Explosion, as well. His predictions are not too far from your predictions as well. At least your your all EU wave uh, joke predictions. But at least you put Godly first and Knees second, which I mean, Blaze agrees with you on that one. Yeah, of course. I mean, Blaze. He has all of the intel. PR11. He's already high up in the rankings. He knows all about it. He knows how this tournament is about to go out. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited for this game. Lores, of course, PR2 SA. This is a very, very, very strong opponent that he is going to be facing. I always say this now, this is 2023. Whenever I see Blaze, we have to remind ourselves, this is not the same Blaze that we know from like a year back. This is a completely different Blaze that has out of nowhere became really, really good in 1v1. Also not really playing that much Brin in 1v1, leading over a lot more into this Hattori, sometimes even the Asuri. Uh, so yeah, what do you think about him? That was going to be my question, is who yeah. is he playing now? Because I can see some of the reportings in front of me, but it's just like the years reporting. It's not necessarily what he has been doing as Hattori. of late. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward, of course, back when he played on the Brin, had an amazing axe. Everybody knows Blaze's axe had a great spear as well. So if he chooses to go with the Hattori, he'll have that experience. But we can see it on our screen right now. He is locked in with the. I didn't. I didn't happen to see it. Three, I'm, I'm pretty two. sure this. My is eyes aren't good enough oh. for that. Yeah, we're seeing. We are oh, seeing, seeing the, the Hattori yep. going up against Vekaya. I mean, just look at that. I just keep on being right. I mean, there's not really much anything I can do. It's just great. Yeah, I'm, look, you're just you're just that darn good at the end of the day. <laughs> now, one thing though, we talked about the spear. Of course, he's gonna have that with the Hattori. But like modern spear was kind of defined in South America. Who is the South American player here? Lores. He is going to have so much experience against the way that modern spear is played. But at least so far, it's been the sword coming out from Blaze, and he's been doing a great job. He has the damage lead. One more hit, and Lores is going to be in KO damage. Nice shutdown on that from Lores with the back-to-back -back. neutralites the juggle game. But all the way up on that soft platform, the defense of Kaya just barely holding on. I mean, Blaze, Blaze is my man. I love Blaze, but truth be told, I think his his way of playing Spear, it might still be a little bit still stuck in 2020. Okay. He has not really picked up that level of secret sauce that some of these top players have started figuring out. I would love Blaze to prove me wrong, of course. He's been playing better and better for every single tournament, so he is slowly but surely catching on, but the sword is where the magic is at for Blaze. Lores able to pick up that knockout though. We are two and a two on this first game. Blaze's sword was looking really good. That was the weapon that did almost all, if not 
not all of the damage on that first stock, giving him the lead on this one. And this is from Blaze, who got 17th at the Autumn Championship just a few weeks ago in just EU. Now, all of a sudden, he's fighting for that top 32 winner's side qualifier match. And his sword is amazing. I didn't know Blaze had this sword in him. This sword, I mean, it is absolutely crazy. But Loris, yet again, on this spear, trying to find any kind of damage that he can. I'm kind of I'm kind of just waiting for that moment where Loris is just going to show up. Because so far, Blaze, I mean, this show has been all, all, all Blaze. It's just a matter of time. Ooh. It's just a matter of time before this is the Loris show. Now, what we're getting from Loris here is that kind of modern spear that I talked about Knees not having at the beginning. Oh, that, that Zeus throw almost made a connection with Loris. But the modern spear that we saw Knees kind of move more into as the set went on, and it stopped being those like signature follow-ups that you play when you play in Wushang. It was that standard jumping around, some nares, some side lights looking for the dodge. But Blaze is keeping this one going, of course, going back over to the sword. That's been his weapon of choice so far. He has, I swear, one of the cleanest swords I've seen in a minute, and it's coming from Blaze. It is coming from Blaze indeed. It's from the brain of the Olgrim Extraordinaire. Uh, sword has been incredibly clean so far, finding this anti-air right now, building up even more damage. He had a really, really good start, and he, at this point, I mean, he's just been keeping those even trades up. Loris, yet again, able to connect a D sig on the spear, though, to take that stock off. And Loris is definitely not out of the equation yet. Now, we're seeing a lot of those, like, dash jump fastballs, the dashing back and forth, the kind of dash landing. Loris is one of the players out there that does that more consistently. That movement right there. The he was in, he was lights. out, he was around. He did it so quickly, and then he threw out a hitbox as well. He's not just, like, doing that in the moment, and it takes all of his brain power. He's able to incorporate moves. He's able to incorporate hitboxes. He's able to maneuver his hurt box around, and I think he does that might be the best in the world. He's able to execute it so consistently every time, and it just flows into his gameplay. Loris, yeah, flow is flow is the, the, the word that I'm, I'm looking for. Flow is the word that describes what just happened there. Blaze, as we mentioned, amazing start. Sword was looking so clean. And Loris, you know, of course, he was not playing bad, but Three, he was struggling two, a little bit. He was able to one, pick up those four. knockouts whenever it was needed. But at the very end, he picked up that bow and he just went home, dude. The movement set the foundation, and the trappings on top of it were the bow choices that he made. Of course, those beautiful neutral lights that he was able to throw out, the extensions on his strings as well. The anti-air game was so good. And now we're seeing the spear really come alive here for Lores. Early on, 20 seconds in, he definitely has the damage lead so far, but Blaze isn't too far behind. There is a weapon spawn on the field. Neither one is making a move over to it. Again, we're seeing those hops across the stage Jesus from Lores. Christ, you Lores. never know if he's going to be high, if he's going to be low. Over on the edge, Blaze kept going high, and that's where Lores was, playing the spear like the helicopter that it is. Just exploiting the fact that Blaze was going high every single time, throwing out Sare after Sare after Sare. There's not much you can do in that situation. Loris now patrolling the ground, and Blaze, I mean, he's still trying to recover from what happened last game, last stock. He's not able to do so, though, as Loris just keeps on going home with this bow, the bow that we've been talking about. It's looking so clean. Blaze, how is he supposed to recover from this? He can't. Like, he, Loris does not give him a moment to breathe. Even after that whiff signature, Blaze hits the whiff, Loris hits the punish on it, and he finds the stock. He is not even truly deep in the orange yet, and he is up two stocks on Blaze. Loris has already leveled up from what we saw in the previous game, and that one was a victory. Oh, my God. Yeah, Loris. Dude, he's just on in the your Oh, face. He's just in your face. I mean, flow, flow state. He's in the flow state. Everything is connecting. He's able to just throw stuff out, and it's just working out for him. End light after end light, D light into D light. Everything is working out. Could this be a three stock blaze? Please don't let it happen. Dare Sir coming out. Oh, or is he still in the game? Go. The weapon toss the other direction, maybe expecting a dodge. Okay, okay Blaze okay. does pick Thank up the God. double D light into Thank recovery. God. But I love that like we're able to look at Lorez's flow like from our position, and it's it's this beautiful movement, like a rushing river with these sharp turns in it. But to Blaze, it's like he's standing at the bottom of a waterfall and he's just getting destroyed. The tons and tons of water are just raining down on him. He has no room to breathe, and Lorez is now up 
2-0. The spear was shut down. The sword, which was so successful in game one, even though he took the L, still completely shut down. And Laura's is in complete control. It's just Three, more and two, more and more. Malay is still going to be sticking to that Zuko for a final chance, a final game, and a final opportunity to be able to take this back and show the stage what he is capable of. Lores going off stage already with that dare, able to pick up some early damage. Blaze is on the sword. This sword hasn't been working as well as it was game one. It just got completely shut down. He only put out 106 damage on the sword, and he put out even less on Spears. Only 66! A total of 198 damage coming out from Blaze. Even though the dodge was burned, it's going to be so tough for Blaze to punish that successfully, so he just stays back, waits for the high recovery, and punishes that with the juggle game. Side air sending over to the edge. Spear, or sorry, the sword of Blaze showing signs of life here. He definitely has the damage lead, but I'm just like eagerly awaiting that bow to come online. He's going to be looking for the weapon spawn now that Blaze has the spear in his hands. There is a spawn on the stage. Does he immediately go for it? No. And the side stick from Blaze means the stage control, the weapon control is up to Blaze. And you know, Blaze, uh, his sword last game around, we mentioned it. It doesn't necessarily have to be that his offense was bad. It could more so just be that his defense wasn't good enough to be able to deal with Loris. So we are kind of seeing this sword that we were seeing game one come back to life again. Doing great work so far, but Loris with this Anta air. I don't think Blaze is going to be able to get much of a lead here. Ooh, just barely getting the dodge through on that recovery, but it doesn't mean much ultimately as the D-Seek picks up. Blaze still does have the lead, but Lorez is swapping over to the bow. Not going to be losing this one anytime soon unless he throws it away, which I don't really think he's ought to do. Blaze able to pick up that side light, going for the D-Lights, even though he didn't have a read for, uh, readied up still. Quite evened out, it's any man's game, but I feel like it is so slowly but surely the scales are being tipped in Laura's favor as he just continues to take control. As I do say that though, Blaze is able to set up a pretty nice edge guard. Yeah, Laura's all of a sudden is really only finding one to two hits, oftentimes one, and then Blaze is also finding one or two right back. So they've been keeping it very even so far. The damage lead just favoring Laura as oh. a frog's hair. He gets the falling side air, sends Blaze over to the edge, but he's not running away. Laura's isn't quite in his face as much or at least as dominantly as he was previously, Side Sig is gonna get punished. Dude, Loris keeps TCing back up and I'm just not seeing the side light double D lights coming out from Blaze. A little bit too afraid perhaps. He knows that Loris is really, really good at wake ups. He's good at keeping himself safe, so he doesn't really want to throw those side lights out just because of how uh, punishable they are. But I do want to see one of those come out eventually. Blaze still now on his last stock, scrambling to get this final knockout, but Loris finds the read, getting Blaze further and further into the red. Nice, side sig though. He's definitely keeping himself in this one. He's gonna need a victory here if he wants to deny the 3-0 from Lores and move in, or at least have the attempt to move in to the winner's side of top 32 here at BCX 2023. That's just the winner's side of top 32. And he has to come back against Lores here, who's right on the precipice. One more recovery will do it. There's the side light. You saw how far that sent. He tried to chase with the D-Light, the max range. There's the side light, still going for the D-Light follow-up. He waited Flash. just a second, but it's not over. found the interruption, keeping himself alive. Goes for the ground pump, but it doesn't connect. And lights, he just wants to throw him off stage for one last opportunity. But Loris, with the air, is going to be closing it out in 3-0 fashion. Blaze, he had opportunities, he was close, he had his moments. But Loris, he's just too consistent. His flow states are too massive, and it was just too much for Blaze to be able to handle. Lorez is cracked, man, and that's him getting the 3-0 victory after, right before that, Blaze took out Vim Tankilo 3-2 in Game 5. So he's getting a little bit of that region revenge for his fellow South American brother to move on into the top 32, but it is the winner's side, like we said, so Blaze's 1v1 journey is far from over. He's going to be going down into the elimination bracket to fight against I'm Llama for the elimination side qualifier. But Winan, what did you think about that systematic destruction of Lores versus Blaze? And the, and the, the, the caliber that Loris plays Kaya in, fantastic. I know some of us backstage were actually rooting and shouting both ways. Like, because Blaze is also 
a fantastic, well-known EU play, and Polly, I saw you here live on the desk, just oh, just reeling over the sheer fact of what just happened. These results, dude. <sighs> I had my hands together. I was praying, Blaze. I mean, it was close. It was possible. Never give up hope. But you know, I, I, I still in my heart, I'm, I'm confident. As Blaze said on the stage, you know, he's a two v two player. It's yeah. tight. It's tight. We can take these. We take these, Blaze is going to be going down 3-0. And I mean, there's not much you can do other than just say props to Loris. Like, he deserves that. Loris played amazingly. And, uh, you know, I can't, I, I, I cannot be too upset after after Loris, the, 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 the quality of gameplay that he was delivering. Really, for sure. And uh, like what Sparky was saying, Loris is now going to be qualifying himself into top 32 on the winner side. And also, you said this too, Sparky, that Blaze, it's not over yet. It's not over. It's not over yet. It's double elimination, which means he's just now in the elimination side of the bracket, but that does mean he has a longer run, about more challenges to come if he wants to qualify for top 32. Now, I do want to talk about some of the last few other matches you guys were commentating because, man, were they something. Uh, let's let's talk about like Yuz and Santi for a second too. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm telling you, Yuz is uh, I, like he's got to be the best great sword player in the entire world. I doubt anybody is going to challenge me on that. Uh, he he truly makes great sword look like it's the easiest weapon to play. It's yeah. just the, and that's that's the mark of a good player. Is you watch them and you're like, oh, that looks easy. I can do that. They make it look so simple. Yuz is an incredible great sword player. Of course, his sword is fantastic as well. So he's just so suited to. J Yun as a legend. Again, also one of the best things that you can have as a pro player period is kind of that exponential skill growth that you see in a set. And I mean, use if you're three stalking your opponent in the last game, I mean, tell me, tell me, tell me any other scenario that doesn't scream exponential skill growth. Use has that factor. He has it locked in and he played absolutely amazing. I can't watch to see what he and his South American friends are going to be able to pull off in this bracket. Everyone always says great sword can't KO. And <laughs> Use like, is you, like, I let you, me show you, you. let me show you how it's done. Yeah, you, use, you straight up figured it out. For real, exactly. And these other past matches, like matches too, knees versus phase on Wubs versus Jester, and I'm sure Polly, you, I like were, you were, you were, yeah, Polly. I like those better. Those, the, those, you like those results? <laughs> those, those results are, are, are a little bit more fun. Nice. 3-1 against Phazon, Jesser 3-1 against Wubs. Again, both Phazon and Wubs, amazing performance. Uh, as you mentioned, Phazon going down to the elimination side. I don't know if he's actually played any more games, uh, but we were saying very, very strong performance today. He's looking good, and we are definitely looking forward to seeing him uh, more uh, on stream, potentially, uh, because Phazon seems to be back. I, I hope he is. I, I really hope he, he's able to like take the gameplay that he showed us here, that, that potential top 32 qualifier on the winner's side, and then use that practice in the offseason and come back even stronger next year. We, uh, I'll tell you, I'm just, I'm just going to take time to look it up right now because oh. uh, we'll be able to give you the, the live update here. Give me a second to be a man on the computer real quick. I'm going to type in Phazon's name. That's P-H-A-Z-O-N. Yes, sir. He uh, streams, I believe, at uh, maybe Phazon VR. He's, That's his name on Twitter. Let's see. Is he still in, Winnie? He is team? in top 32. He made it in top 32. On the elimination side. Phazon top 32. People cheer. Yeah, I'm happy. Uh, oh, they're all oh, we are. Uh, the crowd's there's up some we won't, we won't there's face some off. on fans <laughs> back there, but it's always great to see. Uh, 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 I mean, like an OG, like an OG still making it all the way through um, into top 32. And that's what everyone's fighting for. And, and I'm not joking when I say this, it still blows my mind that we are still in pools. Yep. And we're getting this high, intense caliber of, of gameplay. Um, it's insane to me. Now, what's also insane is our merch because you know, you guys, we always try to do it up. And so for those who are at the venue, we got new merch here, live, new t-shirts, joggers, mouse pads, water bottles, you name it. Um, but I also wanna talk about what we've done in the past, which is with the Yeti. So if you go to theyeti.com slash Brahala, they're having like a really awesome sale right now. Um, the ultimate Brahala sale, 25% off of their entire collection for this weekend only to kind of celebrate with us. And who doesn't love a sale? And also who doesn't love that merch? Because 
I literally wear all those t-shirts. I use that tote bag. Everything I love. <laughs> that a Miami Dome bag that I'm seeing? Yes. Yeah, I need to get myself that. That yes. looks awesome. This tote bag I love so much because it's big and awesome. You can carry so much stuff, including like your laptop. But what I like to do is I like to put the pins, the enamel pins. Oh, yeah. I like to put like the legend heads on it. And you can see here the Yeti also has like the gadgets, the weapon sword pick. I, I put all those in there. It's like a real battle happening. You know what I mean? So <laughs> don't miss out. The Yeti.com slash Brahala having a fantastic sale. 25% off. And of course, if you're here at the venue, like I mentioned, we do got new exclusive merch. Um, and I was literally wearing those joggers yesterday. They're so comfy. <laughs> so awesome stuff here. Uh, and for those who are at home, this new merch, uh, we're going to actually put that online sometime next week. So you guys don't miss out either. All right, official That's for nice. Hollow merch. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. They, they didn't have to do that. I they told did. them not to do it, and they were like, we're going to do it anyway. We have to do it. I said, oh, a guy like me wouldn't do it. Ooh, uh, I don't remember you saying that, but we're going to say you said that. You weren't that. there. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't You were there. on the desk. Uh, oh, interesting. Oh, I thought I was watching the games in the back. But no, okay. it, was, yeah. it, was, it was me and John Brawlhalla chopping it up in the back. <laughs> Okay, but yes, we do have this merch um, exclusive here at the venue. You can pick it up. But if you're on, if you're online, you're at home, you're watching, it will be available for y'all um, sometime next week. So after the break, we're gonna continue our singles competition with Impala and Acno going head to head on the main stage. Stick around.
¡Jaguar pone las reglas! ¿Quién sigue? ¿Te faltan pantalones? ¡No puedes detenerme! ¡No temo a nada! ¡Nada nos puede detener! ¡Somos imparables! ¡Bienvenidos a Rollhalla! And the singles competition at BCX is only getting more heated. And I'm joined by my fellow devs here, a mythical duo Woo! here. Of course, Foda and Steven. Let's go! <laughs> All right, guys. Let's go! I love Sorry. this excitement. I love this enthusiasm. I have to ask you, tell me your thoughts so far on day two. I'm going to start with Foda. Okay, day two. Um, controversial opinion, oh. better than day one. Ooh. What? No, I know. I thought you had doubles. Amazing. Wait a minute. No, okay, you're right. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. But just the atmosphere out here. We've got the crowd out here. We've got the homies Ooh. all over the place. The energy here is awesome. We did, I took so many pictures with people today. I love everybody to death here. It's, we, we are partying on Brahalla right now, <laughs> and it is amazing. Steven, do you, don't you agree? Yes, yes. <laughs> Listen, we have, what we did here, okay, we took <laughs> a lot of money, okay? We got a lot of glory on the line, and we did all of that to try to entice the greatest brawlers to ever brawl into one roof to have the most explosive competition ever, and it has been delivering. We've seen champions fall to people who have entirely straight zeros in their stats. Are you because, talking about flower no, versus? No, I'm not talking about anything in specific. <laughs> Okay? I don't want anyone to know in specific, but I'm saying there's the best brawlers on the planet here, and we don't know You're talking about yet. Dude, You're talking about everybody. You could, any one of you, you could be, You're where's my camera? Was, you could be That was the a one. good match, right? You Chat, could be the one. We don't know. This is the most open any Brawlhalla tournament has ever you been so in the history right. of okay, ever. You are, you are so right that there are so many people actually contending for champion. Yep. It is ridiculous. We do not know who's gonna win. Personally, maybe use, but I Ooh, wait, Paula's wait, whoa, out here. Wait, wait a minute. Okay, wait a second. Wait a minute, hey. whoa, wait a minute here. Okay, whoa, whoa, the crowd whoa, is whoa, whoa, with whoa, this. Wait, whoa, <laughs> dude. My bad. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, photo pick the favorite? Uh, Look guys, <laughs> no, yes, there is. No bias, no bias. It's okay, it's okay. And we can talk about some of this stuff in just a second here because I know you guys are excited. We're excited. But we got to talk about this next upcoming match, which is Impala versus Acno. Yeah. And now that we've heard from you guys, now let's hear what Acno has to say with Glitter. Thanks so much, guys. That was, a, that was a great intro, okay? I'm loving all the energy over on the desk right now, but we're hanging out with Acno talking about this next match. This is your opportunity to keep your duo's hopes alive in the single side of the competition. So how are you feeling? I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling comfortable. I'm excited, and I just want to play this game. Just ready to get into all of the action. Now, when we're talking about this weekend, obviously you guys still have Sunday to look forward to as well. Does that kind of help keep everything on like the positive mentality side of things, like really focusing on the big goal, which is tomorrow? Yeah, definitely, since uh, most people don't really get to play tomorrow. And yeah, that keeps us going, definitely. All right, I, I know you can see this over there on the side. They're starting to get their SpongeBob 
props ready over on the desk. I want to ask how hyped you are to see all of the SpongeBob stuff in game at the end of the month. Honestly, I'm actually excited for this. The skins look good. The crossovers look amazing. The sigs look good too. Let's see where it goes. I think it's going to be really cool. We saw how hyped everyone in the crowd was when the reveal happened this morning. But as always, thank you so much for chatting. I won't hold you much longer. I'll let you get ready for your match. I'm excited to get into this one. And I'm excited to see all of the chaos that this duo brings to the desk. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. It's, thank you, Glitter, for that. <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing over here because we were actually putting our Krusty Krab hats on in preparation for Woo! this. <laughs> SpongeBob and Rahala. Yes, on, I'm, I'm, we're, we've worked really hard on, on this crossover, and That's it's so sense. great to finally talk about it and announce it and stuff. My hat is yeah. falling off did here. You notice in, did you notice in the trailer that when you equip an axe, you get this, this? hat? Yes. Whoa. And when you equip your gauntlets? It swaps? Oh, you get the whole it's, karate. You get it the karate. swaps the whole karate you know gear, OK? What? 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 I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I have no idea. Oh, God. All right. And when you, when you drop your weapon, the hat comes off, just like I demonstrated that, there. That was, yeah, that was when tech. You, wet, when you, we have, when you just threw your weapon. Yeah, we just have so much that we want to share and talk about. So you guys have to look for the next upcoming dev stream so then we yeah. can talk more about this about SpongeBob it. crossover event because we've done so much and we are so excited, as you can see, to talk about it. But let's get back into yeah. the BCX Day 2 competition here with Acno versus Impala. Now, I do want to get your thoughts on what could be the possible outcome of this match and I'm going to talk to you first Voda. Okay, thank you. I was about no, to I know I saw you. I okay. <laughs> what, what possibly we may see the best match of the day. This okay. what? what? This truly this hey, this truly has the potential to be the best match of the day despite it being a battle to get into top 30. Can you believe that we're in a world where the defending world champion has to fight against Acno just for top 32? This is a world, this this is a grand finals caliber match. We very may well just see this match in grand finals. It could still happen, right? Because of like the, the elimination bracket, it could still happen. And and and, and would you be surprised? Look, Akno, $144,000 in earnings. This man, he, he can buy, a, he can, he can buy an apartment easy. He can buy like such an apartment. A an apartment. He can buy more than that. What are you talking about? An apartment <laughs> on the moon, baby. Car. Oh, you can. Okay, what? How much does a Lambo cost? He can probably buy a Lambo. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, am I? Have I got yeah, how many far? Lambos in is he on this winning? He's, how many Lambos in is is Zach, though? Versus Impala, who really upset last year's world yes. championship. What power rank was he? 13, I think. And then he just won the entire event. That was insane. It was this, insane. This, and any, what's going to happen? We don't know, but you know what? Wait, you're going to find out soon because I'm hearing oh. that the match is oh, actually ready? ready to oh, go. Oh, I'm so, sorry. so honestly, oh, Foda, Steven, and Paula versus Akno, Let's take go. it away. Okay, I am so excited, Steven. I know you're super excited for this yes. one, too. Check out that 1v1 Ooh. trophy. That is truly the nicest trophy we've ever had. <laughs> That's probably true, that honestly. True. That is just true. It's, it's huge, too. All right, okay. here we go. The champs yes. at Impala, a man of uh, few but important wise words. Yes, I tried I to get some words normal. in with him earlier. He was having none of it. He is locked in today. <laughs> He's locked in. And honestly, listen, you are right. We are getting to enjoy our dessert before dinner. So get ready to have your appetite well spoiled because this is going to be huge. Well said. You are absolutely correct. Acno has accolades beyond comprehension. He is the most winningest player in the entirety of Brawlhalla. He has I the longest win streak. That could what ever was be. it like? Twenty six. It was. It was like two years. It was. It was two it was years. Right. It was two years. He never lost a single tournament. So here Three, we go. Two, Impala one, versus Akno one. starting right now. Let's get it. Let's go, Ooh, crowd. Akno. Crowd's getting hyped. Let's go. Right. Let me hear it, crowd. Okay, bit of a classic pick for Acto. I mean, he's got one of the deepest pockets for character picks in the entirety of Brawlhalla. Yeah, coming like in here with the rag here. Oh and my Impala God. is playing exactly what he dominated yep. the 2022 World Championship with. Same skin and everything. It, it would be, yeah, for to see Impala not on uh, Kaya would be like dire straits. Something bad. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I don't want to live in that world, bro. I don't want to live in that world. So far, damage trade is very even. If not Impala, Acno getting just a little bit ahead on him. Oh, Whoa, that's what? insane! No, Why would you do what? that? Who, I've never even I've seen that, never seen that combo. Life. I've never seen that. It, no, it, 
Me and Foden, no, it's normal for oh, Rakko. <laughs> That's it. Weapon throw on the wow. gravity cancel. There's nothing he can do after that. Impala already taking the first stock less than a minute into the match. I, I don't even, I'm still comprehending that crazy weapon throw ground pound spear combo he pulled off there. Okay, so we've not yet seen the depths of this man's crazy plays. And uh, maybe a player like Akko could be the one to push him to the brink where he needs to pull everything out of the pocket to come out ahead. So far, he's doing quite well here. He's got oh, the lead, dude, dealing Akko. the damage on the second stock. He's falling farther and farther behind as Impala just keeps finding ways to open him up in neutral. Now Akno without a gravity mm. Oh my, he that earned his dodge on the gravity cancel. Impala nearly got him there. But look at the damage. He's practically two stocks ahead. He's done it. Two stocks ahead. The former world champion showing why. Okay, there's no way Impala comes away with this. He did the down throw regram. I like that slick it's little so, play. It's so, it's so cheeky. It's, it's so, so cheeky. He's it's, got... It's a, a psychological attack, right? Like, right. it has no other benefit other than... Ooh, okay. okay. Three stock right. denied. All right. Yeah, That's three good. Three stock denied. <laughs> there's a moral victory in there. We're less than two minutes into this game. Three stocks have been taken already. Impala, one full stock ahead. Nice little unarmed combo. Kept, kept it true because of the low damage. Uh-oh. No! Hey, oh. He almost finished him right there. Okay, uh, this is, I don't know. I don't know that Akno can make it back from this. I'm okay. gonna be real. I'm just gonna, hard prediction. You think, think it's Akno. already go next? No way. I, well, look at him. He's bleeding out. I, I know he's like a robot, but oh, okay. Wait, oh, I take it back. Never mind, never mind. I, I didn't think <laughs> that, I didn't take it back. No, no, no. <laughs> you took it back one frame too soon. <laughs> frame. Oh my gosh, the coldest Impala. man on the planet, Impala. Two stock victory Did he just finish Akno. filing his taxes? Did he just win a game against one of the greatest players in the world? You would never know you looking would at his never face. Know. But that's one of the scariest people in this room right now. I think now. he's taking online classes right now. <laughs> Dude, I do. I think I he also have. Oh, I wish we could see what's going on in there, <laughs> but we never will. Okay, getting into game two. We got to change the scenery Three, here on Apocalypse. Two, Let's one. go. Hey, Whoa. but no character switch from Akno. He's confident in the Ragnar. It's It's got to be in the play. It's got to happen in the play. It was I'm, a very decisive yeah. victory from Impala. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Unarmed Impala, completely unafraid, okay. but maybe he should be. Akno dealing a Ooh. lot of damage to Impala on the really? first stock. He keeps finding he's got Impala in the red already. Yeah, right, moments of genius one. on this first stock from Akno. He's dealt so much damage Ooh. with this Axe. Oh, he's, he's in trouble. The stock. This could Maybe be it. Right here. He oh. can finish him right now. Oh, Impala not only gets away from the edge guard, but he punishes Akno for trying. Can he do it again? Oh, what? How did Impala? He made it around everything there to make it back to the stage. Dealing out some damage okay. now. All finding right. himself in a position where he could take this stock first. No way. Stuffing him. I, has Akno off the oh side of the stage. Oh, my gosh, Impala. Okay, no, he can make it back. That's the Kaya defense coming in. Go, oh, Akno, with a great okay. finish off the side. Slide kick, ground pound. 50 okay. seconds Ooh. for that first knockout. Can Akno push a damage lead now? Because that's what it's going to take. First knockout is great, but without dealing a bunch of damage on the second stock, it didn't matter. So far, so good. He's already dealt some damage. Impala trying to finish this stock off of Akno. That oh. could have done it. Big punish from Akno. He gets hit for it a little bit, but it was totally worth. Look at the damage buildup. Akno is getting so close to taking Impala's second stock already. This is like the same thing that happened in the last game, but the reverse. reverse. Yeah, this is amazing to see the switch up here from no. Akno. Yes, that, you gotta go, you would believe if, in that if dragon If that spread. landed, Steven would have freaked <laughs> right out. Oh, Two stocks up, Akno! Exactly. Takes the second one off of Impala. Man, he managed to turn it around. Impala had such a decisive victory in the last game, and I don't want to talk like it's over or anything, but man, Impala's really, I mean, uh, Akno's really brought it back here on Impala. This is a whole new uh, definition for- No! Oh, wow, oh, he's going crazy with this, this guy! Can anyone stop him? Okay, finally gets disarmed. Maybe this is Impala's chance to claim this stock oh, to he's bring in it closer. Then. Okay, Akno oh, Akno. his way back up. He's going no. for the finish. He's he going for care. the three stock. He's actually no way. No way you three stock Impala on the stage right now. No oh, way. He does no it. Way. He does no it. Way. Annihilation, Annihilation in game two. Okay. Oh my wow. gosh. All right. Well, there you go. If you thought you knew how the set was gonna go, you are surely Woo. wrong. We are tied one one. We got game three coming up, but this is a close battle between two titans. All right, now I'm thinking Akno's got to feel really good about this Ragnar pick now. He knows he can yeah, get it done. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad he didn't switch. Oh, we are Three, taking a tour two, around the world one, here at one. the uh, Order of Exalted Lions. Uh, third map on the third game. Akno again. Luck I don't want to say luckily, but it is random the first weapon you get. He draws that axe, and that's what he's done 90% of his damage in this set so far. So, yeah, no, a it's good not pick luck. for him. It's, it's Odin's favor. He's, yeah, he has been blessed, but. Impala will make oh, you feel less wait. and blessed very quickly. Hold on oh. a second. Oh, Big oh my. Off stage. No. He keeps it going down he's here. Gonna, down he's going to go. He got it. He got it. Anyway. He got it. Oh, less than 30 seconds. 
Akno deleting Impala's stock. This is not what I expected. Okay, I'm alive. I'm awake. This is real. Akno has a chance here. Not only a chance, he's dominating the prior world champion. You're the no, largest. Again? His, dude, his axe That's is the impeccable. nastiest combo. Oh, he's in orange already. He's going for How it. How in the world did Akno just deal so much damage to Impala? Oh, if you're oh not. Oh my, if, no, don't. If you're going to swing uh, no, and never no. miss, Axe is a good weapon to be holding because it deals tons of damage. That's and a the good accuracy point. Accuracy from it's Akno. designed to miss some. It's slow. <laughs> it's, it's, we didn't it's, I mean, it's look, slow. It's slow. It's slow. You're not supposed to hit that much. Yeah. Like, like chill out, Akno. All right, all okay. right. Okay. You chilled him. He, he's on the freezer good now. Okay, too, good. Man, jeez. For all now. Right, all right, all right. The Impala, Impala believers are rejoicing. Okay, get the triple. Triple, 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 let's go! Yeah! If it oh, works dude, once, if it works twice. Triple. Oh, no. get it again. Okay, 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 that okay, would have okay, been. okay. I mean, he didn't need, look at that. He's going, he's popping off. He's absolutely tied up the game. After oh. such a strong oh. start from Agno, he's tied up the game. I know he missed that triple. You're oh, oh my but he goodness! He didn't even make up for it, Steven. He made up. He made he, up for it. I don't he, think. Normal, normal. He, I normally he looks can't, normal. I normally can't normal. decipher the graphs at the end of the game, but this one I may be able to read because I don't think Impala took a single lick of damage for that second stock as soon I, as uh, Akno was down to his second. Impala has entered a flow state here, and Akno, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> Akno, I was going to talk about. How okay, important it was for Akno to break that up. And, it's uh, still yeah. important because they're both down to the final stocks, and this decides momentum for the set. It's oh. the best of five set. We're tied up. But this is the swing set game. Is so important, too. As the set count is tied one to one, first one to three wins. Impala has him. This could be it. No, oh, it's over. Oh, he gets the chase. Oh, 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 he dodged wow. it. Oh, oh man. man. Okay, oh, okay. man. Nice play by Impala. Dude, he looks like he feels normal. That was a perfect dodge by Impala because uh, Akno would have got that chase dodge, made it back to stage, but perfectly played off stage at the end there. But a close battle the entire time in game three. I am so er, so excited to see how this set turns out. But now Impala with the advantage up 2-1. Can Akno bring this back? I mean, we deserve a yeah, game no, five. We, we deserve a game good. five. This is my Christmas. I deserve the, a game five. You hear five. the crowd just 3-2-1 brawl, bro? Let's, now, dude, dude, that's, that's it. That's, we're doing that. We're doing that. You got Steven will join in on the next. We, <laughs> we that, that, will. It's happening. It's happening. Especially if we get there it. There might not five. be another game because. No, Ak no. We're getting the game five, dude. I mean, and I'm feeling Ak it. He's already. He knows the crowd wants it. He plays for the crowd. He fights for his friends. Akno was leading game. Uh, game. Nice three. dodge. Oh. Dude, oh. Getting the slight invulnerability from the beginning of that dodge, then transitioning it into the gravity. Cancel. Oh, he can finish him right here. Impala avoids the weapon throw. Akno going for the gravity cancel. No, he has to bail out as he missed his gravity cancel. Great dodge by Impala. He's got him where he wants him right now. Akno can just finish it. Oh, but Impala avoiding the killing blow. Another opportunity. Man, Akno's playing fast and loose, getting close to that down sig. It's, we know he's frame perfect and all, but that's dangerous. Oh, every, every swing of the axe is a killing blow from Akno, but Impala steals away the first stock. This fight. Akno's dominance at the very beginning of the game. I mean, every game of this set is getting closer and closer. I don't know how anyone could determine a winner from here, but Akno needs to close this out quickly. Nice dodge from Impala now without a weapon. Impala going to do a bit of weapon starving here, holding it down. Ooh, oh, Akno's stolen away. away. Now Impala does not have a weapon. Akno with the advantage, and he takes it. He takes it, man. He had three seconds of advantage, and he capitalized on it perfectly. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. I think he wanted to come away with the axe, but he kind of got interrupted in his whole weapon juggle there by Impala, impatient to get back into the fight. But here we are. Retreats back, grabs the bow. Now Remember, deals damage. If Impala wins this game, it's yeah. over, man. Akno's going down to the elimination bracket. Akno's That's not really over. Not over. Oh, it's over for the set. You're right. It's over for the set. But we're still on the winner's side. Yeah. So everyone here Everyone's has not lost yet. This is the most elite champion players we have left in the competition on the winner's oh, side. Oh, man, it's getting, starting to get away from Akno. I'm worried, bro. I'm worried. Never mind. Never mind. No, never mind. I'm not worried. He's got this. He's got this. Look at him go. Look at him go. Yeah, he needs oh, my axe. gosh. Okay, finally, Impala manages to get a hit in here, breaking up Akno's momentum. He avoids what certainly would have been killing blow. Again. Oh. Off the side. Oh, I, go, dude, I believe. It's going to work one it's of gotta these It's going to work, dude. going to work, dude. He's got to keep going for it. <laughs> He's just got to, yeah, eventually. You have to. Oh, there it is. Oh, Akno just took the lead. All right. He needs this. He needs this right now. 
Okay, see, there it is. Given the choice. He's, I don't even know. We're going to have to check You're his right. damage stats. Has he done any damage with guitars in any of these games? I don't I mean, think he used... Oh, yep. what did he do? Okay. Yeah, you know what? He had what? time to decide. It's not 2017 anymore. We all know how that works. You know, we don't have to run into that. I mean, I still do, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Akno took the right choice there. Let's see if he can finish out this last nice. dock. Oh. Nice. Now that's oh the my gosh, down to the last dock. I would be freaking out if I was Akno right now. It is do or die for Akno. He needs to take this stock right now. I know, and for the people, I mean, we deserve this. Let's see it, okay? Lighting him up, oh I like the flow there. The, the, he's got these great ground pound connectors on the axe. Yeah, yeah, Once yeah. Once he gets aerial. All these times that uh, ground pound just usually doesn't connect. Akno's yeah. finding it. Getting he knows how to catch damage. the bottom, catch uh -oh. the top. He's got the opportunity. He goes in so aggressively off stage, looking for the knockout on Numbala. Like, what a perfect dodge for Numbala. Oh, he's I hungry see. for it. Oh. He wants it. He burned his gravity cancel. Wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait. And no Paula's got him right where he wants him. Can Akno survive? Oh, we gotta get that weapon. Oh my god. <laughs> it's like, oh, in the face. Recovery the time. The guitar's to finish it. The guitar's to finish it. Oh, this, this could be it. He needs an axe. There it is. He's got it. No, oh, finish. What? He's doing it. What? No. no. It could be it. Oh. There it is. There it goes. The the oh man, good game, good game. Hug you it know out. what? Hug it out. Hug that's it the out. best way to decide. Yeah, that's a good game. You gotta love the sports. That's a good game. An amazing set. I mean, from both players and Paula kept it together though. Woo! It just shows why he is on everybody's list to look out for. Dude, I was freaking out. That was that was insane. And I think. The, what what stuck out to me most in those final moments was that weapon throw from Akno. Oh. I don't think that was the play. But yeah, who I mean, am I to say, like, man. Hindsight's 20 20. You, know, you try 20 to break neutral in some way, shape, I, or form. You know, if he maybe if he landed that weapon throw, he'd have easily true comboed it into a finisher for the win. Look at these guys. They're talking it out. They're like, oh, bro, why did you weapon throw me on that last dock? Like, that was a missing play, bro. I did not mean to do that. You know, <laughs> that yeah. That's probably what. That's definitely what they say, <laughs> yeah. probably. Let's All check right, out let's the check highlights. Some... Yeah. All right, and Paul, that, I mean, that is basically a signature move from Paul, the chase down with the bird. Yeah. And here we see flame breath Dude, coming through. I remember when Agno 3 stocked him? That was crazy. You're right. That seems like I a forgot. forever ago, but I that forgot. did happen. There was a three stock in that game, and it did not go the way of the person who won. So. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. That's that's world championship stuff right there. And that's a testament again to what we were saying about how close in competition this yeah. is. I mean, these are the, the smallest margin of error, or, or or that little bit is the, is the difference here. I mean, this is truly it's oh. like um, it's like what's that type of racing oh. where the cars go fast? Uh, Formula One. Formula One. Yeah. It's like Formula One. You got to do every little thing possible to shave off a millisecond per lap, and that's what these players have to do. Oh man, that is a very good analogy. Okay, you were asking about the weapon damage breakdown, and here it is. Uh, yeah, certainly, almost all acts from yeah. Axno. I mean Axno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean there it is. I don't even know. I mean basically even in damage as well. Man, okay. Woo. Man, I'm still I'm coming down from that match still. That was crazy. That was crazy. Impala versus Akno. What a game. Man, Akno was so the, the score does not tell the story, man. We were so close to a game five. <sighs> that yeah, would have been want crazy. It. I'm seeing I'm seeing Impala getting dapped up by his homies over here on the side for that win. GG Impala earning it out here. He's got a lot to fight for now that he's the defending world champion. Last time he won the world championship, he was like the underdog. Nobody right. even expected him to be in top eight. So now he's every fight is like against the defending world champion. You know, he's, he's got he's got everything to prove or nothing to prove and everything to lose right now. Wow, well, you know, there is something about being the, a two-time, claiming that type of title. Yeah, yeah, but we know what that's like. We've seen a two-time in our before life. Before we get to any two-times, let's talk about some potential one-times here with some candidates we got with Java and Sarme, our next matchup. Java I mean, versus Sarme. I wonder, is Sarme really going to play core? I hope so. That would be, that would be awesome. I'd love that.
I mean, Java, again, Java's one of those players who I think is at that level where he could take the competition on the right day. He has some of the I most agree. elite movement in all of Brawlhalla. I agree. If I had to, if I was just looking at this one, I'd have to favor Java in it. Uh, Java feels like one of the best players in the world yep. because he is, but, but it really looks like it. When you watch him play, sometimes he just gets so smooth with it that you're like, this is like, this is... Is that a chosen bot? You know, like he's like, <laughs> he does have those like, chosen bot plays. He's got chosen bot plays. It is crazy. All right, let's look at the tail of the tape here as we got more winnings on the side of Java. Uh, no gold medals. This would be the first, but he's got the second. He's got third. He's been in top eights plenty, top 32s uh, all over the place. And one of those, one of those silver medals was a BCX championship, man. Uh, I mean, we're looking at power rank number five from North America going against EU power rank number 23. I mean, I'm it's guessing, I don't know if we're going to see a, a chat vote here, but i got to <laughs> imagine it's in favor chat of Java. Probably in favor but of Java. But you know right what? Now. The thing is, we saw their record against each other, 0-0. Zero, yep. zero. Sometimes exactly. you can just be somebody's kryptonite. They, they don't even know it. They haven't even met you yet, but you're, you're their kryptonite. We'll I see. I certainly believe Sarme is capable of winning despite the statistics not being in his favor. Uh, we know Sarme as an amazing player. There he is right there. Check him out. Good. Getting the right playlist. It's yeah, all yeah. about what the right look, playlist. Is he on Spotify right now? What, what I know. playlist I gotta, has he got? What is in the headphones? That's what I want to know. Well, you can, I mean, he's listening to game sound on the headphones, but you see he's got, he's got the little earbuds in underneath. Whoa. That's he's dual-wielding headgear? Okay. He's dual-wielding headgear, yeah. That's the level that Sarme plays at. And uh, here's Java getting prepared to play. They're probably button checking right now. Boom, boom, yeah. Now we're at a land here. Everybody changes their controls, you know. Java making sure he's Make like sure short hopping like as good. fast as possible. Like, honestly, yeah. It's like hand Everywhere. warmers, hand warmers are real. Man, look at that keyboard. Sheesh. <laughs> the glowy keyboard. Oh man, I wanna know what he is listening to. If it's like the stream feedback, that'd be I oh, bad. that would be. <laughs> I, I played in a tournament once, just listening to the to the commentary happen, like twenty seconds after <laughs> it would happen, and it was the worst. Um, it did not work well, and I turned it off. Ooh, look at that flamey monochrome logo. That was to the new logo, though. Sarme versus Java. So you're giving it up to Java on this one, <sighs> dude? I don't want to because. What if Sarme wins though? Then I, then I, then someone, uh, I don't know, someone give me a wedgie. I don't know. <laughs> that, you heard it here. Wait, that, that, the stakes this, are way this, too high now. That's what's at stake right the now. The stakes are way too that's high. That's what's at stake. They are battling to get into uh, top 32 winner side, which is a big deal. But better, yes. better is the, the earning of a wedgie. A, a, a wedgie on Steve. Oh, my gosh. Why did I even say that, dude? They should have put <laughs> me on the mic. I'm all happy. hopped up on SpongeBob, dude. I don't even know what to think anymore. We're all hopped up on SpongeBob. It's crazy. You guys know that SpongeBob is... <laughs> Joining Brahalla? Isn't dude, that can wild? I tell you guys? Listen, I'll give you like the the deets, but we literally. Oh, like, dude, we're getting oh, it. Wait, we're getting we got it. The, we got the playlist. That's the playlist. That's the playlist. Hello. Oh, what did you say? Oh, we, no, Hello, someone, something? someone in chat got it. Uh, please link it in chat. Like, oh, oh my wait, gosh. Uh, the, one of the mods maybe can link it in chat. If we're lucky. All right, game's loading up. Here we go. Whoa. Here we go. Java versus Sarme, Three, two, one, one of North America's one. best versus European underdog. Oh, and Sarme, I like how Sarme's playing Val because he's ready for the new. Oh, no! no! Dude, oh, my! That would have been a lot. That yeah, would have been too was much, bro. With, with bated breath to see how that turned out. The, the juggle at the top. Sarme oh. now taking a little bit of control back, dealing some oh, damage. But, my. Oh, my! Dude, Java, he's he's going for an early knockout. I think, don't don't be in the air against Java. He's going for these vertical knockouts. There's so much air. Uh oh. There's so much air out there. Oh, that. <laughs> he was go he's going for the flashy plays. This is crazy. I mean, Java's one of those players who really splits the line between flashy and optimal. When into he's a flashy, play style. it is optimal. Right. That's the thing. That's the thing. He, he takes he takes those chances when it's best. Okay, still duking it out for this first stock. Who's going to come away with this star main? Oh! Been battling back, doing a good job, tacking on some damage, keeping himself close in this fight. Ooh. Java using his movement to be unavailable. Now he's got a chance for an edge guard here. Can he close this out? Star main able to make it oh, back. Oh, big first. punish. Java Whoa! with the three piece. Oh my yes. god, that was, that was optimal. That was Had optimal. he just done the regular old downlight recovery, it would not have knocked out. He needed to add yeah. that down air dribble into it, and he even then just barely got the knockout. 
That is such a good play by Java. And now he's got a pretty big lead here as he is only an orange. Oh, wait well. a second. Oh, wait a second. Whoa, Sarmé! Okay, what that a knockout! Just got doing? munched, Sarmé. Yep. Coming back big time. <laughs> Pulls away the gauntlets. That's what he wants to deal this battle. But listen, that was crazy from Java. He's got some of the best swords, some of the best spear in all of Brawlhalla. And like you were saying with that optimal sword option, it's like a thing you only really see with players like maybe Pugsy or somebody will do those things consistently at the exact right time. You have to know your damage ranges very well to be able to pull that off. All right, so quick movement from Sarmay, work his way around the field, yeah. both of them looking for an opportunity to get an opening. Java's ahead by a little bit here. He keeps pushing himself ahead. Sarmi burned his dodge, and Java oh, goes no. real aggressive Overcoming. on it. He can finish him right here. What a play. Oh my gosh. When you use a gravity cancel, yeah. you burn your dodge for three seconds. And that's all the time Java needed to land successful blow after successful blow to get the knockout. He, he, he just kicked it into high gear. He turned on the turbo knock. Uh oh, bro. vertical? Give no, oh, no, no! What a turnaround! That's that's what Sarmi needed. He was down by a full stock, and now it's practically even. Oh my! Oh you, my! You gotta God. give him so much credit because Java's been playing for that positioning the entire game, and Sarmi gives it to him. He says, "Okay, fine, chase me up here to your doom." To <laughs> your doom. Now we're down one stock apiece. Who's gonna come away with oh. game one? Signatures coming out flying. Everybody's looking for these uh -oh. hard hits to end this game as quick as possible. Off on the right side. Both will make it back up on top. Sword throws going either way, trading out for the gauntlets now. Sarme trailing just a little bit behind in damage. This is such a close game. This would be a big upset, I would say, for Sarme to take this game one. Okay. Oh, Got Sarme, the, the finish! The oh, he went so deep! Oh, what a play! Sarme okay. is insane! The play Two of the times game. he did the highest risk, most ridiculous ass, and he answered. Wow. That's tough. Dude. That's... Can that's, you do that twice, though? That's what I'm saying. That's what, like, that's... He literally... He had threw, two miracles in one game. He, <laughs> I mean, it's like at the buzzer, he threw the ball blind over his back, <laughs> and he made a three-pointer. And it's like, you can't count from, on every from game. From, like, well beyond half But point. the thing three, is, the confidence two, boost of winning game one, going into game two, let's see how that Ferris Army, the first one to grab a weapon, grabs that sword. You know he probably wants those gauntlets. But Java, unarmed, is never afraid. Ooh. He's one of the best armored players in the entire game, I would say. You, I think you're right. I think you're right. Java with an opportunity. Oh wow, Dude. he went for it. No! What? what? It was enough! Oh, no! Dude, sometimes you you do a flashy play, it's like a flashbang. He was, was dazed and confused. <laughs> yeah. He didn't know how to make it back to the stage. Exactly. He was lost. Oh, my gosh. He this broke his huge. ankles midair. Sarmay's going to need to steal another stock. I, yeah, something. we've seen him do it before. It's a it's a tall order to make. Oh, uh -oh. Java. What the, why okay. would, who would even? Wait. Who's ever gone for that it's, option? It's, BCX just hits a little bit different, and Java's feeling it too. I mean, I am into this. He is a full stock lead nice. here. Does he get? Nope. Goes for the down light into Sider. Consistent damage. Keeps it going. He's overlapped now, Sarme, as far as damage and stocks. And this is full control for Java here in game two. This is maybe a little Gosh. bit more like what we were expecting when you look at the table. Oh. Hey, wait a second. Works his way around the weapon. Throw. Doesn't get caught by anything. Okay. Nice quick movement there to show he's got look, the it, stuff it takes. Sarmai Sarma doesn't get hit. He could totally come back from this. Yeah, if he oh, never gets hit, start. you're right. That's actually... Yeah. Wait a second. It's happening. Good exactly what Foto predicted. Sarmai never getting hit. Oh. Damage. No, okay, finally. Okay, he's good. He's good. He's got gauntlets. Uh -oh. He can use the cider to help him get back to the stage. Okay, nice punish from Sarmay. Oh, again! There. He's gonna do it! He's gonna do it! He, he, he got his right. He's gotta get it again! Oh man, there's no way. He was playing for he's playing for the highlight reel. I mean, he knows he needs to go Gonzo on these plays to make something happen here. I mean, the stocks are tied. That means he can come back in damage as long as he doesn't get knocked out. Keeps this stock healthy, or keeps it at least on the field, not healthy. I mean, he's one good hit away from being blown away, and Java okay, is looking for it. That's okay. it there. Sarmi did a good job of uh, of bringing it back, though. He's got Java in, he's not in knockout range, but close to it. If he's got a good stock ahead of him, he can tie things up. But it's not too far gone for Sarmi to bring it back. And, and remember that Sarmi basically just lost his first stock to almost nothing. He's doing this with two stocks. Oh man, Java is just, Java's not giving him anything. He's playing perfectly. Oh, no way! Clean, clean, clean. See clean. how clean that movement was. I mean, that actually was pretty crazy. Okay, Java. 
He's one oh, hit. Oh, huge dodge. Reed, he almost got the finish, and he needs it right now. Oh, that's it. <laughs> what? Okay. Again, with an amazing dodge, Reed. Sarme gets the knockout. Got Java down to his final stock, but look how damaged Sarme is. He's in knockout range. He just got disarmed. Things are not looking good for Sarme. Java can finish him off right now. Again, with gauntlets, you can you can play for your advantage stage. You can find a position that maybe you uh -oh. can win it. Oh, he had him. He had the finish. No, okay, oh, crazy he's ground crazy. Pound. That's what he needs. He goes That's right to whip. He goes Get for it again. Sarve. Oh, he's going, he's going crazy. He's all right with he's the escape. I, okay. Oh, no way. He, defense, battle okay. defense is huge. That's the last chance that he gets, though. There's no way he survives another one of those. Bad. Java's looking for it. You can see him looking for that side air or recovery attack. Java, no. Neutral light's not enough. Java, unarmed, no. Retreats back for the spear. Tries to finish him off with a weapon throw. True combo. Sarme is dying for a weapon here. And Java is just starving him out. Just Sarme's got the advantage. Can he finish him right here? Oh, oh no, no, just barely. Stuck by the wall. Just barely. Oh, my gosh. Caught on what? the break. There's no way. He's so hurt. He's and, so I think hurt. even an uh, emo would knock out at this point. Sarme <laughs> needs to be careful. Oh, there it is. I can't no believe it. No. It didn't finish. Not yet enough. He's got it. hit away. Sarme with the most epic comeback, and he finished him right here. Oh, oh, how is Java still alive? Oh, my God. He did it. Oh, Unbelievable. What a play. What a play. Oh, my gosh. Sarme, he did that with two stocks. He did that, dude. He did he, that with only two stocks. He went against the best pitcher in the world with a plastic bat and hit a home <laughs> run. How did he pull that off? That's he was working with nothing. That's a good analogy. That's crazy. <laughs> Oh my god. If gosh. you watched 90% of either of these games, you would think it was 2-0 in the other direction. But just like the Globe Trotters, it's that last Ooh. that last bit of the game that really counts. That's all that counts. Okay. This is the most insane 2-0 I've ever seen because Java has I mean look at the look I, at the graph. Wait, I can't just I thought Java won game one. No. No, I remember because now. Because it felt like it. It felt like it. It tasted like it. It smelled like it. It was yeah. it was not. <laughs> Sarme somehow is just like muscling back these victories on the final stock. He hits those breaks and he will not let up. Okay, let's see how he pulled it off here. I mean, the way he was oh, shadowing him at the like, end there, that's bold. That's so many hits that were like, oh, that should do it. Yeah. And then it did it. And it's like, oh, that's hurt. That okay, hurts there's a pop off. So let's go. Love to see it. You'd have to see it on Still a game like that. I mean, that was a nail biter right to the end. And this is Dude. potentially a 3 0 yeah, sweep what from was Sarme? It? Yeah, power, Europe's power rank number like 24? 20 something. Versus North America's number five. Right. Top so, five? Oh. Are this? we going to see a reverse 3 0? Oh, let's get the 3 2 1 brawl. Let's get the 3 2 1 brawl. Okay, we'll try to get let's it on. Let's go. We're, we're in on this. Let's at go. At home, do your best. Let's go. <laughs> Everybody at home, let's go. Three, two, two, two one, one. bro! All right, I got, I got uh, stuff in my ear. I got messed up with that. That was fun. I was off. Uh, you can blame me. Uh, all right, game three. This could minute. decide it all. Somehow, Sarmay's fought himself into a position this where he's dominated this set. Man, Sarmay 3-0 over Java? I just cannot. That's not the timeline we're living in. That's it's a whole a, different universe. Oh, okay, it could be the timeline we're living in. This could be it crazy. Could be. Java knows he's big oh, face off the side. Get Sarmay no with way. the confidence. Dude, Sarmay is so all about, like, getting really... Oh, wait! Uh -oh. He finally got punished for it! Uh -oh. Okay, oh, no. okay. All right. Look, Java now, saw it one too many times. Wait a second. Times. That's we the game Sarmay was playing. Get really low and use his vertical <laughs> reversal that exists in the gauntlet Nair to get it. And... Java was like, no, I have the counter. He keeps going. He kept going for it. If you look at the damage done in stocks pattern, this tracks with every game we've seen so far. So I'm not counting Sarme <laughs> out quite yet. He's still yeah, very much in this game. has got him right where he wants. He has some sort One of crazy stock ahead. Ooh, X factor. He went for the dribble, misses the connection, but deals good damage. And he hasn't been hit hardly at all in his second stock. He's actually in a position here to bring it back. He's got the down light stare. Edge guard opportunity. Oh, oh goes Whoa. up the wall and down. Whoa. He did it for the movement, for the dunk from the top Whoa. rope. Sarme brings it back, tied 2 2. Right, that in was game very three. cool. And once again, Sarme defeated defies the odds, and despite losing his stock to practically nothing. What? Go for no. it? No. He ran out of gas. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he had. <laughs> he, he used everything on that road trip. He ran out of gas. <laughs> he was pulling in on empty. But he, I, you got to appreciate him going for it at the top there. All right, now the game is dead even here. But this is not uh, the position Jabba wants to be, and he needs this game to stay in this set, or else it's 3-0 goodbye. I mean, are we, we're still on the winner's side, so. 3-0 goodbye on Java? I mean, You're right. We're, on the win yet. we're still on the winner's side, so it wouldn't be over. It'd be over. Oh, my gosh. Whoa! Whoa. Believe in yourself? We all got to do oh, it at some point in your life. Did. He certainly did. 
Java's playing a perfect second stock here, barely taking anything from Sarme, but wow, that was so slick. What the heck? Sarme is so nice with it, actually. No, the chase dodge that Java did actually made the combo untrue, but it might not have reached anyway. Sarme, ooh, without any corner options guard. left, Java just left him on the corner to come back. And now with a weapon advantage, Sarme looking for this weapon, but he burned the gravity cancel. He's got no dodge here as he returns back to the stage. Java stealing away all the weapons. Sarme, he doesn't have anything left, but he makes oh, it he back. It. Oh my god. What? Oh, no one's ever done that. He pivoted it so that he got the front side first. His slow charge so broken. Slick. That was how sick. Oh my gosh. Downlight in a gravity cancel break dance? That's not on my flow if chart. He wanted him off the stage. It wasn't going to be enough to send him upward like You're you right. usually see. The gravity cancel neutrals. Go get him, Sarmate. Oh he's so god, courageous. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh this my gosh. Final stock, Sarmate. He's, he's, he's playing it. He's playing to win. He's uh, he's up by two stocks. He may as well. He's up by two games. He may as well go for a high risk, high reward play and maybe just take out Java before he has a chance. Nice. This Wait, could be it. can still make it back. Cool. What you're talking about, about, baby? Here. Oh, Sarme is one game away from taking down North America's number five power ranked player. Holy smokes, Sarme might be able to do this. But no, there's no way Java allows this to happen, right? right three times in a row, Sarme with a heavy comeback being pushed to his final stock so oh, early. Oh my gosh. Sarme's going so hard. He's playing such a good game. Nice combo. Again, a huge combo oh, opportunity. A huge read. Sarme, he's still going. No way. He, Java burned his dodge. Now it's Sarme's opportunity, but he makes it back to the floor. Sarme opening him up in neutral again. Oh my gosh. Wait, Sarme's in the lead right now. He's in the lead. He can finish this. Oh, no. he caught him. Bounce off the wall. Thing. Java's no. going to finish. Oh, Java brings it back. Oh my and God. North America lets out a sigh of relief <laughs> as their Ooh. chosen champion stays in the match. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. I, I, dude, he barely survived. Barely survived. That was Sarme. He was. He, the, he worked his way into. He was in the lead at the very last no, moment no, somehow. It, After he was down a full stock. Remember, he he died when when uh, Java was in white basically on his yeah. first stock that time, and he brought it back to almost winning again for three times in a row. But Java will say none of that, no more. Let's see. Does Java keep the? You know, is he is he is the baton in his in on his side? Does he is he have it now? Does he have the talking I, yeah. stick now? Is is it I time? I think he just keeps. I think he just keeps this going now. He's got momentum on his side. Okay. Look at this play. Perfect slide kick ground pound. Ooh. Boom. I mean, that was a momentum changer for this game for Sarme, but it was not enough to clinch it. He almost. That Three, would have been the craziest 3-0 in the history of Hollywood. Oh. Listen to that crowd. Yeah. Let's go. They don't need us. They're, they're better without us, honestly, when they do that. Okay, wow, I don't even know how this is going to go. This this has been a, such a volatile set between these two players. We've seen basically everything you could possibly see as far as upsets, turnarounds. I don't even know. Okay. Here it is. Big game. I mean, we deserve a oh, game five after all this. <laughs> I kind of want Sarve to just run away with it, but I, I, you're right. Game five. We always cheer for the game five. I, get, I mean, the 3-0 would have been the Sarve run away with it. Now Java shows. Yeah, He's like, all right, good all right. Point. You're good. Now that there's a game in, we got to see a game five. I mean, game is on. All right, still duking out for this first stock, Sarmi. If Sarmi gets the first stock, though, I mean, it's I can't almost even imagine. a lot. He's Wait, never had that type yeah. of lead before. He's never, in this set. He's never had all three of his stocks in the match. Okay, but his, his first stock is more even than it's ever been in this entire match. Yeah, that is kind. Of, that kind of does bode not so well for Java. <laughs> if you look at the history of this. Yeah, just just mathematically. Oh, dude, again, again with that the was slide? slick. Is that optimal? Can you tell me, Foda? I'm, I, not, I'm I, not good enough to know. He's more comfortable with him off the side of the stage than above him. But I want to say on this stage, it might have worked. The neutral stick might have worked. Okay, well, first stock goes to Java, but like you said, I mean, compared to where Sarmi's been playing from before, yeah, he's, like, barely, he's like a lap ahead of that. Yeah, he like, barely has to hit Java to knock him out on this first stock. Oh, he needs one more hit than that, probably, but Java is hanging on by a thread. It's With the sword, he's got a lot of great uh, true combo startups here that he might just be able to catch Java with, but Java very well aware as a sword user himself. Very aware of what could knock him out, and he is avoiding all of these downlights. Sarme is not allowed to get anything, but there it is. And he, dude, just in time. Yeah, just in time. I mean, this is. It's only in yellow. Again, still, this is the strongest position oh. we've seen Sarme oh, in the no. entire set. Wait a second. This is what Sarme loves. 
He's got him on the side. Java running. He's like, no way. I'm not fighting off stage again. I've seen what happens. Sabe gets so deep underneath him. Catches him with the vertical reversal neutral air. Oh, okay. Dude, okay. Light him Whoa, up. okay. Show him what you got. <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. Yeah, Sarmay has these really amazing, like, ground oh. hit nair starters. Okay. Man, that dash jump pivot down air. Oh, wait, oh, wait. he got him. Get out of the way. Oh, that was Dude, so that perfect. Was like, that was a horror move. Like, get out of there. Get out of there. Well, it was like, dude, yeah, yeah. All you just got to close the door behind you so a, Jason doesn't follow you in, and he did it. It's that chase dodge he's worried about, right? Had dude, Java got any nair, attack on Sarmay, he would have been able to get a chase dodge and get yep. himself back up to the stage. But Sarmay did a perfect job of just avoiding any possible attack, even if it means falling down below Java. Ooh, oh, my gosh. What a finish. Combo. It looks so good. It's so nice every time. Yeah, I mean, Java, when he when he's when you're at that damage range, he just knows it and he can light light that up and send you home. But here we are on the final stop. Good damage. Oh, it's so close. Wait a second. Java might just bring us to a game five. It's it's so close here on the final stock. But Sarme needs a few more hits. He's, we need like a super cool Sarme patented Dominic combo. Here it comes. Wait. Yep. Patent pending. Patent pending. Starts with an air. Then a side uh -oh. air. Oh, he's Into got another. him on stage. This is where he. This oh. is where he thrives. Whoa! He's gonna get him on the recover. What? Wait. What a Pop play off. by Java. Sarme bringing it back. Okay, this could I'm go. Scared. I'm scared. That's I'm scared. No, disarm. That's his last one. Sarme does not survive another one of those. He burns the dodge. Oh, he no does survive way. another one of those. He bounced off the floor. And it was, oh, oh I... he's, like, he's crazy. He's crazy. Sarme rearms himself. He can finish Java right now. This is it. Oh, Wait, oh no. What? Oh, what my the... gosh. He went for the flash. He, he should have went for the finish. But it's here it is. For Java. Oh, we're going to game five. We deserve this. Woo. You've all been good. Oh, Christmas man. We deserve early. this. We deserve this. All right, oh. game five. All right, crowd. We are popping off on this game five, three, two, one brawl. Am I right? Yes, okay. everyone together. We are all going hard on this one. I know. Everyone in here has is got to be a fan of one of these players. So give them your energy on this next three, two, one brawl. Okay, get hydrated. Perfect. This, and they're this, in the zone. This is it. All right, I'm, I'm going to watch the TVs with the crowd for the three, two, one. That's how we keep it. Inside. Oh, that's how we sync it up? That's how we oh, that's the tech. Up. All right. Watch with Perfect. the crowd. We are just, if we turn around, we just become crowd. Look at this. That's true. Look how easy. Oh. We are we are the crowd now. What's up, crowd? Woo! Let's, Let's go! go! Oh, there they oh, are. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see those screens. Woo! Oh, man. Game five. I can't believe how close this match is. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, Sarmay. I didn't realize he's... Okay, wait. Hold on. Here we it's go. Important. Here we go. Here we go. Three, Three two, two, one. Bro! Oh, man. Let's that get it. Game perfect. five. The next game wins. We fought on this map before. And this, oh, he's Sarmay's already, dude. He's so powered up by the crowd to be going for that move on the first engagement of the match. Yeah, I am loving nice. what I'm seeing so far from Sarmay's. He's playing hard. He's, he's so ball, aggressive. Dude. He's so aggressive. Is this like in Pokemon when Ash would have like a fight <laughs> and then like his Pokemon would evolve mid-fight? That's, That's what Sarmay's exactly doing. That's what happened, dude. <laughs> Don't press B. He's evolving. <laughs> and you're about to see it right in front of your eyes. Okay. Damage even so far. Nice play by Java. He almost caught him. Sarmate, dude. Both of these players are playing so well. This is amazing. Hey, the first stock is going to be huge. I mean, typically it hasn't meant much for this set for some reason, the first stock. It's really all about the final stock. We've got to fast forward to that one, first, but we got to get to this one first. First stock is huge. In this match, the first stock has always been huge. And, I mean, game five in general, here it is. Oh, okay, he disarmed. disarmed. Java disarmed off the side. Sarmay with an aggressive edge guard taking off the first stock. Okay, trading out for the gauntlet. This is, this is where, now, if he can open up with one of these classic Sarmay. Okay, he went for it there. The huge gauntlet strings to build some good damage to get a comfortable lead before Java can Java's Java's got to finish him right here. Oh, he's got him. Oh. He's got him right. Wait. The di oh. diagonals, dude. You got to do the sacred the geometry. That little bit of his... Gravity cancel neutral saying touch the wall and he got his jumps back right when he needed it. What a great play by Sarmay. Now he's got so much opportunity to push his damage lead against Java. He keeps landing attack after attack. Is he really about to? Don't do it to him. Oh, oh my you god. You went for it. Dude. Oh, Sarmay. What a monster. Go for the weapon? No, he goes for the knockout. Oh, dude. Oh, Sarmay. 
He's a full stock ahead. This is the biggest lead we've seen on either side so far this set. And Sarme. Uh, Sarme's definitely never had a lead like this. Not on the first dog. Wait. Oh, wow. He got his dive Perfect. back just in time. I can't believe it. Somehow. Okay. Hold on, all right. All right. There it is. Finally there it is. lost that first dog. Wow. What a great stock by Sarme. All right. That's the momentum he needed. He could push this into a victory now. Yeah, Java's going to need to go bald and become Mr. Clean if he wants to turn this around because he cannot Whoa. get hit a single time. Oh! And there it is. That's oh, what? Like, what? Takes it. He's one stock away. One more stock. That's right. Yeah, this, la this one stock stands between him and this huge upset here on the biggest stage we've ever... This would be such a huge upset yes. for Sarma to win this. And he's got the advantage right now as he is a full stock ahead. Europe, Europe's new champion, Sarme, is defying all odds here against Java. Oh my gosh, what a combo! He's got such a big lead! Java trying to turn it around, but the momentum that Sarme has is just too powerful! I don't know if he can be stopped at this point! Wait a second. Yes, he can. Java! Telling you, he's gotta go Mr. Clean mode. He's activated it. Here it is. This Down is light. It. He's activated air. it. I Weapon throws in play. I can see it. Oh, Sarve! What a play! He's one good hit away from the huge upset on Java. Is this it? Is this it? Oh, Sarve! What With a the play. recon! I can't believe oh, it! Oh my gosh! What an upset! Do it he's to him! He's done it! He's done it! Give it up for Sarve! Oh my God! Look wow, at him! Look mean. at that champion! Oh my gosh! The difference between the attitude in his face Ooh. and his hand was a stark difference there. He was <laughs> riling the crowd up, but still seeming very chill. Like, that was Ooh. easy. That was not easy. Java, again, one of the favorites to even win this competition. PR ranked number five in North America, taken down by oh my gosh. Sarme. By Europe's power rank number 23. Sarme with an amazing game. I love the way he played that whole game. He was yes. so aggressive. He was going for some wild plays, man. Really like unorthodox moves here. Let's check it out in the highlight reel. Woo, dude, Sarme. He had so, like when he was in neutral, it looked like he had the advantage. The whole, like every time he opened up Java, he made so much happen. It was insane. Look at that. Look at the passion. Ooh, but oh, when it doesn't. I, I, oh, no. but the head nod. That that is, dude. The mark of a champion is when they make they make a mistake. They and they lose a stock. And they just nod their head. That's how you know. Yeah, I mean, and it did not hold him back. He recovered from that and is continuing on the winner's side of this bracket as we work our way through day two here at BCX 2023. I mean, the crowd was electric. I mean, we. I do. I a, love this, this like crowd. This is like an all-time set. I love this crowd. I've never seen, dude. Th the first two games, I can't, I can't tell you enough. Like, I've never seen anybody muscle back a win in the same way that Sarmite did in those first two games. Those first two games, he was down by a whole stock in some of those wins, and he still, it still went to game five. I mean, and then it was full control here in game five. You see how long that one bar is there on Look the graph. Sarmite pushing yeah. it forever. Just in time on game five, it took him to game five to be the first one to take the first stock. That's and, true. And, did, and he took that stock nearly for two entire stocks. It was insane. That's the first time we made sense of that graph. <laughs> you know, I'm Crush not. that graph, dude. We're not, like, dude. We're I didn't it. get into this for math and graphs. <laughs> I got into this for pogs and uh, naps. I don't know. That was good. The, the passion that came from Sarmi there. You could see every time he won a game, you saw the passion in his face. And then as he won that event, when he won the entire match and he did that to the crowd, man. That was so awesome. Woo, and that's man. exactly the type of thing that I, I, I hope to see, and I almost expect to see here at BCX, where the competition and the crowd and everybody brings everybody to their best level. And we haven't seen, like some of these players haven't seen maybe how crazy they are at this game until they even push this hard. Exactly, themselves, they don't even know their own potential until you've got this electric crowd powering them up. Woo, man, that was insane. I, dude, I love the way Sarme played that whole time. That was so, so exciting. That was so exciting. BCX day two is, has been such a treat and there's so much more to come. But first we need to take a quick break, a quick break, and then we'll be right back with more awesome BCX action.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. BCX Day 2 is underway. We have seen, Stephen and I here have seen two matches so far as we've been up on this Catholic desk that were absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. But the next one we've got coming up here is Kaiser, uh, also very familiar as uh, power rank number 1,871. Who is Kaiser? Who, Kaiser? who is Kaiser? Dude, Dark Horse of the Tournament. Dark this Horse of the Tournament. Now, it's not like I he hasn't competed that. before because you can see that he's earned $450 in official Brawlhalla tournaments from top 32 placements. I got to imagine that was like way back when, 2017 maybe, 2016, mm. going up against Skeldra, widely renowned as Europe's best greatsword player. And you know what? Skeldra had to defeat Hardy MJ, largely largely known as North America's greatest great sword player, greatest great sword player. He had to defeat the best American. He had to be, defeat the best North American player to get here. Great sword versus great sword. It must have been such an insane duel. But Skeldra's come out on top as the number one great sword player. Well, besides use, right? Can we see Skeldra? That would be Skeldra it. has to win this for us to see Skeldra versus use. That's Three, what I'm that's two, what I'm saying. One, Here we go into the first game. Kaiser versus Skeldra. Now Skeldra again, you know, greatest great sword player in all of Europe. But Kaiser, a, a huge dark horse, right? We don't we don't really know much about Kaiser. Power rank 1800. Um yeah, it's not awful. Going up against like power rank number 6. Uh -oh. Okay, Kaiser. Oh wait, wait. Kaiser. Oh, he oh. thought he had him. I thought he had him. Everybody thought Skeldra was done, but Skeldra had just enough gas left in the tank to make it back. Nice. Oh, and he gets it with the slide kick ground pound. What's amazing about that is that the slide kick started on the ground. It wasn't a gravity cancel. He just caught it in the perfect position. And now Skeldra's got a big opportunity for a lot of damage. The weapon throw misses. Oh, man. I love Kaiser's aggressive Ooh, the, Dude, that weapon throw re-grab was actually kind of nasty the way he positioned himself. He yeah. Some extra damage now with the small sword. What's he going to do with it? We haven't seen much from it here. Oh, oh and he, he can finish oh off the Oh, my gosh. Me. Skeldra. Holy. Oh, it hits okay. him. I mean, damage is damage. Damage sometimes, is damage, yeah. Sometimes you got to hit him up to do a little damage. Dude, Skeldra is looking, like, invincible. What in the world? Skeldra is looking pretty amazing so far. Oh, Game what one. a dodge! Oh, my no gosh! No way! The finish? I can't what believe the it. What the reaction? He's a ghost. How can you hit him? He doesn't exist. That's what one the of the heck? fastest startup signatures in the game. Skeldra just spot dodged it like it was, was nothing. That? Now, that wasn't on reaction. He was, you know, he was already, oh, okay. Yeah. Just barely. Okay. Even say All right. Well, that was, I mean, he was so damaged on that first stock. He, okay, okay. Maybe just better off getting rid of that stock. I'm wondering who, uh, I don't know who selected the map here. I, I imagine as a great sword player, you don't want soft platforms. You just want lots of regular platforms. But. Uh, Skeldra definitely, uh, Left it open. Okay. Um, and Kaiser picked it. Okay. Oh, what? My, the spike oh that a was finish. nasty. Wow. I that mean, was gross. That was just shy <laughs> of a JV2. <laughs> I mean, okay. Oh, man. Kingdom wow. Esports. Shout out to Kingdom Esports. Okay, I mean, we heard a lot. You know, the word Kaiser. on the street was uh, Skeldra, number one great sword player in the world, potentially. Potentially? And, and so far, I, I'm believing the hype. I mean, hey, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good from over here. Oh, we made oh did you see Kaiser just switch his legend? Oh, He's going oh, to wow. Kaya. Well, yeah, that, don't you we, like how quickly our like dynamic system updates the graphics? On that, the, I didn't know we had that type of technology. We we do we do we have some very good programmers on the team. Here we go. Three, two, two, one, one bra. Love it. All right, here we go. Kaiser switching to Kaya. Let's see if that does any better for him. Skeldra. Keeping Kaiser weapon starved here. Burned his, oh yeah, Kaiser yep. used his gravity cancel there. Skeldra interrupted it and punishes. Kaiser still looking for his first weapon of the game. Here we go, Spear. What's he gonna get done with this? Kaiser's movement is like swift. Kaiser, can he find an open? Okay, there it is. Kaiser, know he's doing a good job avoiding all the crazy like dodge read mega combos that come from a great great sword player. Yeah, I need to watch Kaiser's defense on this. I can't get out of these combos. Oh, oh that, you can't even see that he coming. He jumped up over the corner using a gravity cancel sting. He actually almost had the checkmate play there with that that, that uh, teardrop weapon throw. Wasn't quite able to clinch it. Kaiser still holding on to the first stock, same as uh, Skeldra. Yeah, both players very damaged. Kaiser surviving that. Whoa, Dude, that was perfect. How do you? 
he used the, the hezzy, he used dude. the dodge part of a gravity cancel to avoid that weapon throw and finish off Kaiser with a true combo. It's I've seen beautiful. I've seen that so much this weekend that I'm like, people really this good at Brawlhalla now? Yeah, yeah. No, just... people. I promise, people just do that on purpose, and it's these amazing players that get it done. Okay, that is pretty incredible. All right, Kaiser <laughs> has an opportunity to maybe oh, take this dog off of Skeletor. No, Skeletor doesn't even go for the weapon. Tries to push the unarmed advantage, dealing on some more damage. Kaiser fights no. his way back to stage. Great no. punish from Skeldra. Man, yeah, I mean, a, when, when you're without a dodge against Great Sword, you are just like food. It is. You have to be so careful with your dodge against the Great Sword. Sometimes a combo is jumpable, and you'd rather be jumping out of that combo so you save your dodge for the next crazy thing that Great Sword players got coming after you. Okay, Kaiser <clears throat> equalized the stocks, but very damaged on the second stock. Already in red. This is trouble for Kaiser. And man, Kaiser, a, a huge underdog in this, right? Power rank 1,000 something? Yeah, underdog. versus power rank 7. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest discrepancy you kind of see since pool. It's, uh, <laughs> not often you see yeah, that power rank up here. Too. So it's amazing that Kaiser's come this far. He's really got to prove himself right here. Oh, nice good play, punish. nice play. Is he? No, oh, my oh, gosh, oh, Ghost Rider's the win. Boy, okay. I can't believe he it. He has proven himself. That's all we needed. Okay, that was a crazy play. Make a good use of that slot platform. Play. Now with a little bit of that energy on his side, can he close out this game two and bring us to a tie here? I would nice love punish. to see it. Skeldra keeping Kaiser unarmed and a perfect finish from Skeldra. Ties up the stocks and the damage here. Final stock situation. But Skeldra is ahead in the set count by one. Oh, Skeldra. Okay, when, I see, when you see that great sword just start connecting, it's it just scary. doesn't stop. It's scary, it's scary. Here it is. Oh, my, oh. dude. Oh, my gosh. That's so smooth. Oh. No! no! Oh! He does it to him. Oh! He goes for it. Everything works oh! when you try it if you're Skeldra. Let's go, Skeldra. Okay, that's, that's 2 Skeldra right there. He's, pretty, he's pleased with himself. He's a little, he's chuffed. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Now, that was a much better performance from Kaiser. We saw him fight back, and it was pretty even. But then Skeldra just went full on. He poured the gas on and lit that fire. And it just blew the lid off the top. And now we're here in game three. And it could be a clean sweep from Skeldra if Kaiser does not find the answer. Hey, Kaiser, what, you, what is he thinking right now? It, it looks like he's going back to Mirage. No, uh -huh. I don't know. It's, it's still, he's still hovering over the Kaya. You no, know Skeldra's sticking with Jayun. He's Jayun main for life. Yeah, I mean, after, after these two games, I, I don't know why he would be pushed to change. Uh, let's see. Okay, wait. Oh, we're back at this no, game. This isn't a replay. Wait, is it? Yeah, it is. No, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I was, dude, I was worried. I was like, worried they've been too. Playing for like five, like a minute, what we were looking. That was such a hard read on that break. <laughs> here we go. How did he know? Kaiser switched to Mordex. Oh, oh boy. my gosh. Okay, I mean, three games, three legends. That's you know, you're 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 grasping at straws, and and Skeldra seems to have the answer for himself. All right, wait a second. This is big. Best we've seen him so far. Has him off on the side of stage. Can he reverse this situation? He's got the weapon advantage Wait. now. Oh, he's crazy. Okay, Skeldra makes it around the other side. Oh, what the? Okay, Skeldra. Where's this sight oh. coming from? Where was this in the first two games? Looking nice out here. All of a sudden, I'm feeling a lot better about Kaiser. Oh, he's crazy. Okay, okay that's it. What a madman. Wow. He the first stock decidedly. Wow, nice you got... Dude, you got this like hot Mordex burning a hole in your pocket. You know, you don't think to use them. <laughs> in game one, you wait till it's desperate hours. Okay, well, at the right time, Kaiser comes through with the pick, dominating here in game three. Now, I think this set might be put. Well, actually, Ooh. never mind. Hold Whoa. on. Whoa. Hold on. Oh, I've Skeldra. What's happening? Oh, my gosh. Clang, clang, clang. Skeldra on fire. Oh, that was okay. Yep, Skeldra on fire. That was incredible. An okay. Incredible series of successful attacks. All right, well, that <laughs> was quite a way to turn this around, and now all of a sudden I don't know what to think about this set. Who's going to come away with it? Skeldra looking back in rare form against Kaiser. Still trailing slightly in damage. Kaiser's got the opportunity here. Nice weapon throw to stuff. Oh, goes for the reset off the side light. Doesn't get the read. Skeldra hanging on to the second stock, but dwindling Kaiser, here. Yeah, oh, Kaiser's nice. still got a lead here. He might be able to finish it up, but wait. Wait, I didn't Skeldra. get that. <laughs> that was a slick weapon throw. Uh, they connected to anything, but I like the flash of it. Here we go. Now back with the scythe. I'm I'm excited oh to see Kaiser with this back in his hand. Can he get this stock? Goes nice to the dodge throw. by Skeldra. Unarmed Kaiser Edgar. trying to take advantage while Skeldra does not have his dodge, but Skeldra manages to just make it back to the stage. 
Off that the could side. be enough. Is that enough? Yep. Yeah. A Brawl Haven, certainly it is. Oh, yeah, you're right. This is a very small stage. Okay, keep that scythe, maybe? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking, too. That's what I'm thinking, too. That's Do the work. Here it is. Okay, he starts it off in that <laughs> final stock. Nice. Oh, Keldra. what a dodge from Kaiser. That gravity cancel just barely avoided the down air from... Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Okay, last stock. But consider this. Kaiser's down, zero to two. It, it, this, this could be the last stock for Kaiser in the winner's bracket. He's got to play out of his mind right now. Finish this up and then reverse 3-0. He oh, charged it, I believe. <laughs> Why not? That was for the crowd. How the that moon was for a little bit. Okay, final stocks here. This could be Kaiser's final stock in this set if he doesn't pull off a win. The damage is so even. Oh, dude, Skeldra's dodges are insane. He needs to chill out. Okay. Uh oh. Kaiser, crazy oh, read. He's got to get this. Kaiser in the red. If he can finish off Skeldra, he's got a chance. No, what a Ooh, dodge. Escapes. He's fighting for his life. Oh. And that's it. Skeldra with the hot 3 0 victory. It's over. Man. Man. Welcome to the top 32 winner's side. Skeldra playing out of his mind. He knew that last game was close, though. I mean, Kaiser was coming back. Yeah. But Skeldra manages to put it away. He, I think seven, eight. eight. I was <laughs> off by one, dude. What the heck? I mean, push him up to seven after this, oh, maybe. We'll, we'll see where it goes. GG. I think Kaiser fought extremely well. I mean, yeah. the fact that he was in the battle for top 32 already is absolutely incredible. Definitely defying all odds. Uh, definitely going to shoot up the power rankings come next season. Yes, for sure. With, with a performance like this. But it's not over for him yet, as we've said before, in a double elimination tournament. You have to lose twice. That was only his first time losing a game, uh, losing a match in this tournament. So he's still in it. Still got a chance for that beautiful trophy. Let's check out some highlights from the last match. I know there's a lot of epic Skeldra. Oh, dude, oh, the, he really did a lot of work with that down. <laughs> that break dance was, uh, he was doing a lot with it. You're right. Yeah, it's a break dancer. It was perfect. And ah, there, dude, yeah. every, wait, is every he's stock going to be a, Hold <laughs> a on. disco? Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, Skeldra. Oh, dude, I mean. <laughs> okay, I love that reaction. If you, if you nothing not, else, not entertain sure yourself it up here. There's no way it happens again, right? Oh, <laughs> Wait dude. a second, actually, every, <laughs> every, all three games every ended with a break dance. Came from a, I didn't even realize <laughs> that at first. break dance, man. I thought we were memeing. It was just the truth. It's, it's the, the break truth. dance. It's the best move in the game, apparently. Oh, my goodness. That was an incredible match. Dude, 116 uh, breakdance damage. I think that's what I'm reading there on the unarmed <laughs> side for Skeltra. That's all dancing, baby. It was all breakdance. He's two-stepping to victory. He might just waltz right into grand finals. We'll see. He continues to run on winner's side. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're lucky to be joined here by White Sheepy back on the desk. Sheepy, did you see all that breakdancing? Yes. There's nothing wrong with more breakdancing. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, hey, what? <laughs> Nothing wrong with going into maybe, yeah, f further along in the bracket to top 32. Just break dance some more, you know? Break dance your way through, Skeldra. We'll see you <laughs> in uh, top 16 now as he battles for the next uh, way. He's got a battle for top 12, winner side. So I do want to, I, I want to talk about these last couple matches that okay. you guys have been commentating because yeah. they've been epic. They were really Like, good. I've literally been yelling back there. <laughs> <laughs> they were really good. Yeah, pretty lucky. So, yeah. Yes. So we just saw Skeldra, we just saw Kaiser, we just got your thoughts about that. But also, Java versus Sarme. No, 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 no. That's, dude, I think that's oh the contention gosh. for set of the weekend. I don't know if yeah. I've seen every single set, but that was insane. I've never seen a player play from that position so well. And by that, I mean Sarme on his last stock, literally losing by a lot of damage, a lot of yeah. stock. And losing always... his first stock to almost nothing, coming yep. back from so much, it's amazing. And yeah, that just proved that. I mean, upsets are going to happen all the time in this competition, and that was an amazing one to see here live. I know. The back and forth, too. Just seeing who's going to make it, who's going to win. And let's go all the way even through the first match that you guys commentate, which is Impala versus Akno. That, oh, my gosh. I was the most I was, excited for that one. Yes. You know, and yeah. I knew we were coming in hot for that one. I think that one, that one ended 3-1 Impala, right? 
Yes, but Asterix, it was almost that, that, that last game. We were ah, dreaming so for the game we were, five. Agno was so close. Uh, yeah. And that weapon throw, we were looking we were looking for like a side air. He had the finish. It was so close. He threw his weapon, which may, could have led to a knockout. But Impala perfectly dodged it. And then it was over. He had nothing left to fight against Impala. And Impala managed to finish him off. But Akno played so incredibly. He actually three-stocked Impala earlier on in the set. How much more do you need? He three-stocked the world champion, but he couldn't beat him. It's the best-looking three-one you can get. It's a really <laughs> like the one. Yeah, but I three-stocked that one. Three-one. I'm just saying, back there, that last match. Oh my gosh, the the last game. Excuse me, where literally the insig came out from Impala. We got the mammoth. We got blue coming out. Like I, I was. <laughs> Screaming when that happened, like it was just so crazy. This is Acno. This is not just somebody, nobody. Like this is Acno, the winningest player in Brawlhalla history. Right. Yes. First is Impala, our world champ, who is looking so good, especially sitting on the winner side of top 32. Like hello, and that's the thing. We are still continuing along and and finishing pools so that we can get all the players to th top 32. Top 32. Yeah, we're having Coming such. Coming up later. Yeah, we're day just, two. We're just having so many crazy matches already at pools. All right, guys. Woo. Woo. We're gonna take a quick break while the players get ready as we are heading to top 32. You know what? We'll be back just in a few minutes.
to the arena. We're just moments away from getting into the gameplay with Meg D versus Delta. And with me tonight is the Everdrip Master. Hey, yo. Duke and Flambo. Guys, what do you think of this competition so far? I'm gonna look at you, Duke. Look, we knew it was gonna be bangers on bangers, and we've been getting bangers. <laughs> I'm talking about specifically that Java set. Oh my goodness, I was in the back screaming my head. There was a dude, I don't know his name, and I'm not gonna out him in any <laughs> specific way, but he almost fell out of his chair. That is how hype he was for that set. We were popping off. Yeah, thankfully, that didn't happen, though, because I don't want to have to call any <laughs> medics <laughs> in the medics, venue because we keep things very safe here at BCX. But it's hard to contain all of the hype. And, I mean, you were saying it right there. We're going to have Maggie coming up against Delta. That's how often do we get to see stuff like this? I mean, I love the international competition that we've been go got going on. We've got all this goodness that's been coming. And again, the, the caliber of play that we're getting at the World Championship. We're having these matches that happen. Impala versus Akno to qualify oh, for no. top 32 winner side. Hello? Yes. That is just the sheer caliber of gameplay we've got. Well, you don't have to wait any longer for this goodness because it seems like the game is ready. Meg D versus Delta, Flambo, Duke. I'm gonna let you guys just take away the final action for tonight. Let's go. Woo! Let's get into it. Y'all at home, y'all know Meg D, one of the most notable names in North American competition. Coming in with that Val, he was one of the first to tweet out. EMG, thank you for this. This meta dev Val is for me. No, for real, I mean, honestly, Meg D has had such a cool arc in the history of Brawlhall. Really, 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 honestly, kind of going from, I mean, there was a time where he was almost infamous in the way that the community was treating him, and then had a beautiful turnaround in terms of just the level of respect that people were kind of forced to accept after a while. They're like, wait, no, this player isn't a gimmick. This is 100% raw, neutral, true skill, and he's really paved the way for himself. And then on the other side, you've got Delta, formerly Hazer, now of the Orc SG. GP, not sure what that abbreviates to, hopefully something <laughs> good. But he's been like the big Taros guy that I'm used to seeing, especially out of the EU. Yeah, there's a couple people who will pick it up. Maybe they'll dip their toes in the Taros waters, but Delta's been a true blue Taros for so long. Yeah, and something we're seeing there is that Delta has a gold medal, whereas none on the side of Megdi, which is a little Burn. bit interesting to me. I mean, Got Delta, him. of course, playing that, that cow, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely been a bit of a popular pick today across all the regions. Yeah, I, I think uh, I said this earlier on today that kind of really kind of reminded everyone Three, that Taros two, is a good one, pick. We'll roll. see how well it works for Delta as we get into game number one. No surprise on the character picks. All right, here we go. We see Megdi trying to get these falling neutral layers. Not quite able to land him, though, but I love the retaliation. He is swinging, he is chopping, and you are seeing Delta having a tough time getting down just in that one exchange alone being brought into the yellow. Yeah, he was not able to, to really scrap against Megdi, that vertical game from Megdi, and now Delta going to swap over to the hammer. Big horizontal pressure potential, but needs to get that opening hit onto Megdi. Megdi playing so smartly around this hammer so far. Oh, and I love the fact that we're seeing more hammer overall today, a weapon that kind of was sent to the Shadow Realm by a lot of the community, but now making a splash here at BCX. Megdi trying to play around it, still trying to get these falling nares, but just not connecting, but not really taking much punishment either. You see, gets right out of the way there. Ooh, try to sauce? Yeah, he tried to get a little greedy with that second down light, and Delta was ready for it, had the reaction, got that jump out of the way, stomp side air, no greed on the side of Delta, going for two weapon tosses, but he's not going to commit to an edge guard. And I like that we see Megdi go for the exhausted recovery there as the final ditch effort to get that wall touch. To just make sure he's putting out a hitbox on the way back to the stage to get that touch. But still, no first stock taken. That down air is going to be enough from Delta, but he's taken quite a bit of damage thus far. If Megdi picks up any weapons here, whether it's the gauntlet or the sword, a delight recovery will seal the deal. But it seems like Delta really wants this hammer game. Starts off with a neutral light. Didn't quite get the read with that side light. Megdi was definitely ready for it. It's a, a very classic kind of hammer bread and butter. Oh. Oh my gosh. Delta starting to chef here, forcing Megdi into the corner. Megdi still not able to get this first stock. Looking for any stray blow here. Goes onto the sword. Maybe that D light's going to come. Neutral lights will chip Delta off stage as well. That Sayer is going to be good. Jumps. The weapon throw hits as well. I mean, Delta was already in the air when that side air hit, so he was definitely running out of movement. And then, of course, that weapon toss guaranteeing the KO. But Delta did a great job, primed the hammer. This seems to be the weapon he wants. 
Hey, now is Megdi gonna go over there? I think the answer is no. Whenever Hammer is sitting on the corner like that, usually you just respect it and say, hey, I'll wait for you to come back onto the stage. But Megdi still trying to find these openings, really has been struggling in the neutral, which is kind of rare in terms of what Megdi tends to thrive on. Yeah, I mean, in terms of like gameplay territories, Megdi is all about that neutral. If there was that like pentagon of different like stats yes. that you put into, Megdi like purely puts in to the neutral stat. We're going to see here how Delta is going to be able to respond. Finally, some strings coming out from Megdi. That's another one. Gets it on the dodge as well. Guaranteed Ooh. three hit in the Kobe from downtown. It's going to secure that second stock. Megdi finally getting a lead in this game one. He is two for two with those weapon tosses to KO Delta from deep. And now Delta playing from behind. And this is exactly where Megdi wants his opponents to be because he can extend these stocks. He can really make Delta work for it. But Delta's not going to have to work too hard. That neutral act going to finish for him. Yeah, especially with that extra force from Taro securing that knockout with that neutral egg. We're going to see if Megdi can even get this weapon picked up. He does, but not without taking a side air, and that's going to hurt. Delta is tacking on all these little extra chips of damage while Megdi's trying to regain his bearings. Yeah, you, you do not want to go blow for blow against a Taro. He hits so incredibly hard, and Megdi coming in on that Val, likely in the attack stance, yeah. So he's going to be bringing that up to five, but still not that much. Here, I love that D-Light coming out from Delta there, using it as an anti-air tool. Megdi trying to get a follow-up, not able to get the second hit there, trying not to overextend, but still kind of a game of blow for blow. Luckily, Val, with a solid amount of defense here, able to kind of keep up with the strong blows from Taros, but for how long? Delta trailing behind by a bit. Does get disarmed by that Nair, and Megdi wants to keep this sword, wants that consistency, downlight recovery, could KO. But Delta manages to pick up an X, opens up with a weapon toss, but no follow-up means that he's still in that damage deficit. Oh, and he disarms himself. Megdi has the opportunity to go for a weapon throw here if he'd like to. No, just falls down and goes for the gravity cancel neutral light, recognizing there wasn't a whole lot of options that Delta had left there, just knew where to place the hitbox and secured that first game. Uh, this is something that Steven actually kind of pointed me towards when we were talking before this, is that Megdi has some of the cleanest edge guards. He was talking about specifically like corner play, where well, he'll sit back and really respect the opponent. But also in that instance, you saw Megdi, he's not going for anything crazy off stage. He's not over committing in any way. Instead, he goes for one very Three, simple two, option, gravity cancel one, neutral line. Yeah, no, I love the way Megdi plays off stage. I think it's kind of like the hidden thing in the pocket in his gameplay. People get so used to the, oh, we're gonna be playing the neutral game, we're gonna be playing the neutral game, that when he gets you off stage, sometimes you see Megdi capitalize into this ginormous string that leads to the stock being taken extremely early that you're just not prepared for. All right, here we go into game number two. We'll see if Delta has made any adjustments. Honestly, they went right back into the map so fast that I think Delta was just, I already knew what to do. Oh, the neutral light catches the dodge in as well. Megdi not going to go for the weapon throw instead. Going to hold the corner. Yes, that's Ooh. a light, and that's a double side light pickup. Megdi getting that first stock with relative ease. Yeah, he is starting to get those extensions. He's starting to get the reads, the double side light into the recovery. Delta, once again, playing from the deficit. Let's see here, Megdi once again getting these openings. Neutral looking a lot easier for this guy this time around. Delta needs to find some answers. Just trying to kind of dash jump around, trying to find how do I hit Megdi? Is it going to be D-Lights? D-Lights seem like a good option here if Megdi decides to go for these dash jumps. But what if he just goes for the dash landing and dashes forward with a side light? It's going to catch you. Delta has to play the rock paper scissors game. I mean, Megdi's definitely forcing yeah. Delta to throw something out, and he's getting punished for it. The down sig will launch. Delta keeps the stock count even. And I love the use of the Taros down sig there. Megdi doing a lot of crossing up, dashing through Delta on the left side, on the right side. Delta saying, if I get you on the timing where you try to cross through me, I can get this down signature and remove your stock. And that's exactly what we saw happen. But Meg D able to find a response with that neutral signature and Delta starting to bleed out here. The juggle's happening once again. Delta not able to find any damage on the second stock until that down air. Delta, I love the use of that neutral light there. Was able to outframe Meg D with the frame advantage. They're just Ooh. a faster attack, but Meg D catches the landing with that Val side signature, slides across the stage, takes that stock, and still has a pretty healthy lead here. Delta needs to explode on this stock. Yeah, he needs some big oh my plays, God, and Meg D's not giving him a chance again. for it. Meg D's bringing out the big plays right now. 
This is ridiculous. Megdi just has the complete download on the defensive options from Delta. Has been getting dodge read after dodge read. Getting three, four, five, sometimes even six unanswered hits. And look at this weapon throw. Megdi is feeling himself. You saw the confidence he went for the edge guard. It didn't hit, but at this point, Delta has been figured out that NSIG almost sealed the deal. Ooh, and he went for a second one there. Delta narrowly able to dodge to oh avoid it, but God. another one, and Megdi's up 2-0. Yeah, no, I mean, Megdi, Megdi sauced him up in that game, too. There's no... <laughs> There's no doubt about that. We all watched the same game. Toward the end of that, Meg D just had all the momentum in his favor. Started going for NSIG after NSIG after NSIG on that final side because he knew, you know what? You're not going to punish me, and this will hit you eventually. And we saw that by the end, it was what ultimately took the final stop. Dude, I swear, whenever somebody hits three SIGs in a row, that's an ego chant. Right? Yep. Like, you're you're doing the same option. They are in your head. They know exactly what you're doing. you got to change it up when you're eating three SIGs. I mean, granted, this is Val Neutral SIG. You know, as far as SIGs go, this one is pretty pretty up there. Oh, it's nerfed. It's fine. <laughs> it, it is nerfed, but... <laughs> Barely, <laughs> you know, it's still really darn good. Three, but two, Delta one, has to figure four. out some sort of answer here. We've been sticking with the same legends, the same stages, more or less. I mean, like, what what do you do here if you're Delta? Oh, maybe trying to deny weapon pickups from Meg D, but Meg D able to pick up those gauntlets as Delta went for the weapon toss, but he has got the hammer. He's not finding any of the momentum with his hammer the way he oh did God. in game one, and Meg D is once again finding extensions. Yeah, and I think the tough part about this is we're really watching Megdi's gauntlets put in the pressure here. I mean, oh. beautiful ground pound coming out from Megdi to get that first stock. He's speed running. That was only 30 seconds into this game three, and Megdi's gauntlets have effectively put Delta in the dirt. Do you see this? Dude, he, he is just not respecting Delta at all. That ground pound against a hammer in game one, he was like, I'm going to respect the hammer. But now it's game three, and Megdi's like, time to put you in the dirt. Yeah, no, it's looking bad right now. I mean, we're going to see if Megdi ends up putting the wool over the eyes of Delta here as Delta's just trying to fight back this hammer, not able to find the hits, getting punished on every swing. Megdi looking so confident on the ground, gets caught by a stomp, though, but Delta can't get more. But when Megdi finds an opening, I mean, look how many hits he's getting per engagement. And that's something that you really need. We talked about not going blow for blow against Taros, but the recovery will once again even up the stock count. But look at the damage. Yeah, Delta really needs to clean it up right here. I was able to pack up that first stock, but now I need to see the stock of legends. I need you to show. Oh my gosh, Meg D was trying to shout, bro. <laughs> He's he like, had the hat on. Let's see some legends. Oh, geez. I don't know. Delta, can you bring it back? Right now, I'm trying to see if you got the Ratatouille behind him on the, on the desk or Little something. Chef. Somebody pilot. Somebody pilot. Patton Oswell getting in the in the ship right now, but Delta still has this second stock. He still has a chance to at least get some damage. What was that? Oh, he's trying to cook something fierce, but it might be a little too late to get with the new recipe. We'll see. Delta, if you can get a recovery right here, if Magdi's willing to go off stage, that side stick from Val, always a potent threat, and it forces you to delay when you come up. You start running out of options, and boom, dash up, neutral light, easy enough to cover. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those things where, like, day one, you'll get caught by a Val that does it if you are not ready for it, but... Maybe you're respecting it a little bit too much on the side of Delta. Okay, not too far behind. I mean, still not in the best spot, but Delta could make this comeback happen, but needs to get more unanswered hits. Every time he gets a hit, Mega hits him like two to three times. You can't have that anymore. This is potentially it in terms of your winner's side of bracket run. You got to really turn the Jets on, man. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the reversals happen before. Oh. Right now, Delta's got to do it here as he's taking more and more oh hits from Megdi. Down light, gravity cancel, down heavy. Delta running out of room. Yeah, this is looking pretty bad. Megdi effectively one good engagement from tucking Delta into bed and reading him a story. Good night, because Delta cannot seem to find the answers. There we go, a stomp sayer. Maybe this is the momentum that he needs to get something going, but immediately oh. Megdi responds. And he avoids the recovery of all things. He burned his dodge on that gravity cancel downlight, but Delta was not able to punish. Still a stock behind this one as Delta's still taking damage. Oh, Meg D manages to close out that set with a pretty convincing 3-0 over Delta. I think Delta tried as hard as he possibly could, but after that game one, especially game one was the closest one that we yeah. saw, Duke. After that, Meg D was like, I, right, I, I know what I need to do, bro. I read the job description and now I'm just gonna clock in. Yeah, he definitely, he figured it out. He took game one to kind of just figure some things out but once we saw those game two game three like we're saying those extensions he was really getting into the mind of delta and delta just he wasn't able to change it up in time yeah and 
you know, it, it goes to show that, like, sometimes the game plan doesn't have to be too deep or too layered either, right? Like, Megdi was like, all right, I'll make some small few adjustments. And I think on the side of Delta, it was really tough trying to find a lot of advantage with that hammer. We were saying before that we've been seeing more and more of it. But against Megdi, it proved not to be that much of an issue. Yeah, it really felt like uh, the hammer of Delta got shot down was not able to get too much damage off of it. And then on the other side, we saw Megdi's gauntlets just coming alive, just finding so much with it. He really wanted to be a gauntlet player for a moment there, especially because it's Megdi. That's weird, because yeah. he, he has himself said he is a sword player. He figured it out really quick. I mean, 346 damage, I believe, to like 110-ish some odd damage on that sword. He clearly was like, man, my gauntlets are really cooking you right now. I think I'm just going to keep what, using them. What if I just keep using the thing that's working right now? Yeah, and as I always say, it's rule number one of fighting games. If it works, keep doing it. That's it. It's as simple as that. I know. When somebody gets mad at me for only throwing fireballs, that's their fault, not me. It's true. It's true. And especially in Brawlhalla, you go into chat, they'll be like, oh, man, we got all of these freaking spammers, spammer this, spammer that, the Lord Vrax in my rank queue. I'm like, bro, that Lord Vrax is a low-key genius because you keep falling for it. So... Hopefully, we'll figure out if uh, Delta is able to make a much deeper elimination side of bracket run. But for Meg, D definitely happy with that performance. Going to be going ahead and sitting pretty, trying to make it toward that top 32. So that's that's great. Yeah, I mean, I guess technically speaking, the end result wasn't that surprising. It is Meg D, of course. He did make it out to the Royale, representing North America, made it into the top four of the most recent Royale. He's been doing a good job being kind of a representative of North America. But I still feel like people sleep on him. They still, they're just like, ugh, it's Meg D. All he does is play neutral, and then he's still, he's still cooking people. Yeah, and I mean, it's funny because TK had this thing where he was like, no neutral November, right? But for Meg D, that's never an option. <laughs> you know, always has the clock in no matter what time of day it is. But with that said, he'll be moving on forward. We got a new set of combatants here duking it out, and that's going to be Vecina and Blue Guys. Vecina, another South American representative. People all over the Brawlhalla world have been saying this is South America's tournament, and Vecina, of course, being a South American, people are going to be rooting. For him. On the other side, there's Blue Guys, who's been in the scene for a really long time, but despite the fact that he's been playing for years, only PR number 44 only has a handful of medals to his name. Yeah, no, honestly, I'm looking at this head-to-head, -head and I'm kind of surprised that I'm seeing it. I'm like, okay, Blue Guys, let them know that you still got that sauce, but you're going to have some work to do here, because Vecina, I got to get uh, a view of some of the earlier games today, and man, let me tell you, homeboy knows how to cook. And so I don't know if Blue Guys has ever quite played a player like Vecina. There's a different kind of seasoning that comes with a player like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely know that the South Americans as a whole tend to bring their own kind of flavor to the game. They tend to spice things up in a way that people aren't really ready for. And especially like, once again, if you're in the shoes of blue guys, you're, you're a North American, but you're not one who's been able to make it out to all the lands and play against all the different regions, then it's gonna be a little bit of a tough showing. On the left, you're seeing Vecina. On the right, that's blue guys. All right, and this one's going to be fun, man. I mean, especially, I, I think you described it very well. A different kind of a flavor, right? A different kind of spice. Like, difference between, like, oh, yeah, I like eggnog. And someone's like, I like coquito. <laughs> you know, <laughs> those are not the same thing. And so we're going to see if maybe that difference is going to be a little bit too unfamiliar for blue guys to deal with on the side of. Because it's funny, because I always think when, you know, someone from South America pulls up against someone from North America that I'm always scared for the North American player. It's never yeah. the other way around. It's always like, because South America just, they play so differently from the way that North Americans play. And a lot of North Amer Americans tend to kind of stick in their own mindset, right? Like they come in with this very specific game plan. Three, and two, if it doesn't go one, to that game plan, they'll struggle a little bit. But we're getting right into it. Vecina on the Sidra. Blue guys over to the Dalsim, the Rayman crossover. Yeah, and I'm also always happy that, you know, Sidra's getting some representation because she is one of those legends that doesn't quite get cycled through so much. If someone's playing Sidra, it's usually because they are a Sidra one trick or yeah. main, and Vecina, one of those players. Yeah, it's like, oh, I really want to play Cannon, so I'm going to be playing Sidra, and usually those Cannon players do not swap off of it. All right, let's see. Blue guys, though, with this Rayman trying to make the magic happen. A weapon throw from Vecina is going to go ahead and break up the mold. But going to whiff that side air, which would have been a huge punish and given positioning. But instead, Blue guys has a perfect position to potentially get an edge guard. Oh, but goes a little deep. Nice dodge back to avoid that. Uh, the anchor from Vecina. 
Ooh, D-Light recovery. He's not going to have enough juice on it, but now Vizina has that cannon in hand. We go for a D-Light neutral air. That'll probably be enough. Tries to go for the forward signature, but Vizina ends up getting interrupted there. That ground pound from Blue Guy's not going to connect, and it lets Vicina come back into it. Gets a down air, going to take that first stock, but damage is doable. Blue Guy's, I'm not sure a down light recovery will quite do it. Guys, looking, here we go, and you can see whenever you get hit by the cannon, they are immediately are starting to try to put you in that vortex. Can I get a down air? Can I get the turnaround down air? Can I get the dodge? Instead, you're going to catch this fire as Vicina gets burnt by the flames of Dalsin. Got that yoga, he's got that fire, he's got the axe now as we get into the second stocks here in game number one. Blue guys trying to deny the weapon, but Vecina able to put some hit stun on the blue guys and walk over to that cannon. See, oh man, that down signature is so pesky, but Vecina perfectly counters with some great movement of that cannon and tacking on a bit of extra damage as well. We have blue guys trailing behind by a little bit. Oh, the weapon toss, stopping that ground pound coming out from blue guys. Down air is not enough. The neutral air, beautiful conversion to side air as well. Maybe a ground pound. Oh, blue guys is going to be patient here. Doesn't want to give up his positioning. And what a down air, or rather, ground pound out of disadvantage coming out inside of Vecina. Yo, but it worked. Blue guys wasn't ready for that spice coming out from the South American. And now he's over to the gauntlets, hits him with the recovery. He's going to be denying weapons, but Vecina still swinging despite being unarmed. With the light, not enough. Even with the assist from the platform hitting that high up, just not quite enough juice to that? get the stock. I know, that was weird. Just went for a little slide, throwing out those wiggly noodle arms, but it's not going to connect. He's like, yo, I can do something weird in the kitchen too. I can throw some, some odd spices into the pot, but he's doing a great job denying these weapons from Vecina. It's giving him that range advantage, that hit stun advantage, but the recovery from Blue Guys will give him the stock advantage. Okay, but this is an incredibly close game here, Duke. I mean, we have Blue Guys in the deep red. Vecina just needs one clean hit. D-Light recovery, maybe even just a regular oh. unarmed recovery will be enough. A down air is surely more than enough, and we have a tight battle yet again. Yeah, a little bit of panic there from Blue Guys. Thought Vecina was going to come down. He kind of faked out with that dash jump over the corner. And Blue Guys ended up throwing out the nair and not getting the wall touch. Oh, got him! Vecina taking Blue Guys out of game number one. I'm like, am I bugging, bro? Did Blue Guys <laughs> dodge? I swear he had it the entire time. Did I miss the moment where he dodged? I thought he was doing the, like, no mix-up mix-up where he was just kind of, like, waiting to see, like, I didn't dodge yet. You're going to wait for me to dodge, right? But I'm like, maybe, maybe I missed it. I don't know, we might need the replay on that one because Vecina really just, he had blue guys in the vortex, kind of like he said. He was like, you know what? I know you're not going to press anything. And so I'm going to go in for the full commit. Got him with the second side light into the Sayer recovery and took blue guys off the map. Man, the power Three, of two, cannon. One, so, wrong. so treacherous in that way. You give it an inch, it takes a mile. That's just what the weapon does. We've seen other similar weapons in the game can tend to do that to you. Rocket Lance, another one that kind of similarly carries you across the side. But despite that, I mean, Blue Guys played a pretty immaculate game. It was really that last sequence that made things go out of the realm of possibility. If we play the similar game, you just watch yourself on that cannon on the last stock, you could very easily win this game too. Yeah, this very much could go in favor of blue guys but despite that Vecina really coming into this with so much momentum here as he's throwing out neutral sig after neutral sig trying to catch blue guys and blue guys cannot find any damage back onto Vecina. Yeah Vecina is moving confidently swinging confidently especially after snatching that first game away and we need blue guys to kind of slow it down a little bit you know take a breather but Vecina is not trying to let that happen. Yeah, I mean, like you said, that confidence that Vecina's bringing, like, Blue Guys really has to make a mental check right now. Doesn't punish that wild ground pound, but it'll find the side air. Whoa. You see Enlight just trying to deny any wall touch, but the recovery's gonna hit. Okay, Blue Guys has more or less done it now. Oh, I love the chase with the recovery. Definitely not a guaranteed conversion by any meaning of the word, but we did see that dodge get burned, and so it was a read on the movement of Vecina. He's like, as long as I know you're going to be in this general direction, this axe recovery should hit. Yeah, that's such a weird situation that not a lot of people will find themselves in because Blue Guys did axe sidelight, wait, jump recovery, whereas Vecina's like, well, you just didn't go for the combo, but he will find the side air. Keeping this one close. It goes a real deep to throw out that punch. Wanted to make sure that the stock was taken for certain. But now, I mean, we have an unarmed blue guy's man just to finally pick up that axe and get a nice three-piece string. Ooh, he just tries to overall. slide out on him. He was trying to catch the ears of this uh, Sidra skin, but 
didn't connect the Neutralite will, though. Blue Guy's finding great damage, but he goes into the explosion! <laughs> it's so active. Blue Guy's thought he was good. He was trying to time his way back in for a potential punish or just getting that positioning as quickly as possible, but got caught, but still in a very good spot here. Blue Guy's with the weapon throw, forces out the dodge, could potentially go for a ground pound, but unarmed. It's really hard to do against the hitboxes of Cannon. Oh my oh, god! It KO! Double recovery! Blue Guy's gets taken off the top of the map. Final stock here for Blue Guy's in game number two. He needs to get this momentum back. Vecina's feeling too good right now. And that's one of those moves that I was talking about with some people in the green room backstage is that, like, that recovery from the cannon, it, it's like a bow, but, like, different. You know what I mean? You feel <laughs> yeah. like it's not going to hit you, but somehow it always finds a way. I've been playing the game for years, and it's still I still can't get the spacing right. Oh, but Blue Guy's doing a really good job. Sidelight recovery. Knew Vecina wasn't going to dodge, and going to charge that weapon, but he doesn't steal it away, so... Final stock, final weapon pickups. Hey, goes for the jump down air as the third follow-up pit, potentially reading a jump out of hit some, but instead we see a fast fall from Vecina, who right now gives up the weapon, but finds an unarmed D-Light into a recovery. We know what the cannon did last time, Ooh. dude. Beat out one side air. Vecina swinging Ooh. down air, misses Ooh. Blue Guys, goes off. He's gonna get the wall touch. He's playing the offstage game. Vecina goes back onto the main stage. He's looking for something here, has to be careful. Gets caught by the nair, it's Arms. not enough. Oh, the neutral light beats out the side sig. You heard the charge up. Down air misses. Oh. Where are you going? <laughs> Wouldn't Grab you like pound. to know that might be enough? Hold on. Can Grab that be pound. it? And that might be why it. Why are you following? Blue guys, what are you that? doing? Blue, Blue guys, guys, why? 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 He no. just, he, he said I had it, but I don't want it. He just, he just gave it back to the store and said, keep my money. I don't want it. Blue guys had that one in the bag and he just falls down alongside Vecina. He's like, wait, wait, you're not fast falling. Wait, I need a recovery to try to find a hit on you, but I don't have any movement now. You know what I think it is? It, watching that replay, we actually saw Vecina get the wall touch right before that ground pound. So it means he was able to refresh Three, all two, of his jumps one, and his recovery. Roll. And so Blue Guys, I think, wanted the underside hit of the Axe recovery to secure the KO and got the unfortunate luck of sending him straight up. Had that sent anywhere to the side or down, that would have been his game. But it's unfortunate because now he's behind 2-0. Yeah, that was a, just a madman's gamble right there. But Vecina coming into this one even more confident. Back onto the cannon, but he throws it away over to the sword. Okay, I think Blue Guys, after that one, I feel like he's locked in. Despite the fact that that was not a dub, I think he understands what he has to do now. I'm feeling a little bit more confident going into this game three. I think he might be able to do it. I mean, he's been so close to the finish line against Vecina, but the anchor! Blue Guys, does he have the movement? Gets a wall touch, but Vecina, down like ground pound. Big lead for Vecina. I will say after that, I am a little less optimistic, <laughs> but I am withholding. I'm Master's open on curse. a little bit. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just, oh, oh my gosh. Okay. okay, cool. Blue Guys is back in it. Down take. We get some flair. I was thinking the same thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we got to cook him, bro. Just throw out something, keep him on that corner. But instead, Vecina gets back up onto the stage. He's got the cannon once again. Blue guys swinging for the fences. Uh, let's see here, blue guys. Once again, trying to answer Punish. that. Ooh, that was, that was like a frame perfect punch. He didn't even get to sit down on the anchor before he got caught by that side tick. Yeah, he just went for that. That is, uh, that is just a pure knowledge check from blue guys. Oh, man, but will that be enough? I mean, Granny to brought him back into this game before was looking a little bit precarious, but now seems as even as it can be. In fact, a slight damage lead for Blue Guys. Red He's cooking three side every row. He goes for it. He gets the recovery. He's gone. Blue Guys going to take the lead here in game number three. Can he keep it and get himself on the board? So far, it's looking like the answer is yes. Can he hang on here? Vecina, of course, is not going to make it easy. The madman. Down light, down air. Gets the side air. Spot dodges inside of the neutral light from Vecina. Okay, using this platform as the Miami Dome here. Gets a reverse neutral light, putting Vecina in the corner, but he swings his way back into control of the stage. It looks like the gauntlets are being lent into quite a bit more here from Blue Guys, feeling like this is the route to victory. Trying to catch the landing from Vecina, throwing out those side lights. Vecina able to dodge high enough to avoid these nares. Blue Guys just trying to tack on some damage, goes in with a side air, not going to commit for more side airs. Fire. Is it coming? Nope. Wait. <laughs> it's hard. Because, you know, every time you're in that position, even Vecina's thinking, he's like, is he going to do it? <laughs> I don't know. Down air. 
Doesn't catch the movement of Vecina. Vecina does find some response damage. Another side air. Blue Guys doesn't have the movement. Final stocks here. Yeah, right there. We saw that Blue Guys dodged into the stage and not diagonally down into it. So he didn't actually get that stage touch to refresh his options. So getting hit by that side air just spelled doom. Oh, July. Okay, Blue Guys resets, has the stage control. Once again, not throwing out those down six onto Vecina. Okay, it's a burn dodge. Trying to burn him. Vecina's in this corner, but he is just keeping on to this stock. Slides up. Oh, Blue guys can't get the double side light. Vecina with the up and away dodge. Blue guy's not able to catch him. The neutral light, it's adding up. Oh, burns the dodge there as well. And Blue guys, it's the side air. It's not enough oh, weapon throw, maybe. No, doesn't actually let it rip. Still has that fire if he wants to let it go, but I think, oh, oh my God. Citra players, they all want one thing. Cannonballs on the corner, but it's the recovery from Blue Guys. Wait. He will put one on the board. Okay, and you can see the crowd reacting a little bit there. They did not want Blue Guys to get knocked out like a buster. Put a point on the scoreboard, and now I want to see, can he put one more? Can he force the game number five? Man went outside, said he's not washed. Just a little bit of dirt on the clothes. No character swaps, I believe, from either side, because what Blue Guys is doing, it's so good. He just lets it slip in those final moments. Okay, and you can even see right here, 335 damage from the gauntlets of Blue Guys. Really not Three, trying two, to use that one, axe much one. at all. Maybe for a little kerfuffle here and there, but outside of that, we're going straight gauntlets. Yeah, I mean, that second stock from Blue Guys that really took away Vecina's, that was all about the gauntlet play. Dare thrown out, Blue Guys. Oh, Avoids a ground pound. In a good spot, but not able to find more hits. Okay, and honestly, not too bad considering how low damage both of these players are. Getting a stock in that scenario can be a little bit difficult. Oh! Double. Bill has a dodge. We see three. That's One more. Three. Do we see four? The fans. One okay. more. Keep it going. Oh, but the weapon toss up. Vecina stops the pressure. He gets back up. Oh, and the turnaround with the D-like ground pound baits out so many options here. Oh. You can see the turnaround attempt because he saw the dodge brings it. If I get this down dig right now, I can really get something, but both of them make it back to center stage. Flambo, look at the health bar. He hit him with so many ground pounds, and Vecina still has the damage advantage. Sideline, side air, blue guys onto his second stock. Oh, this one's going to be tough for Blue Guys. Despite managing to get that last game, Vecina making it difficult to maintain any sort of lead here. Blue Guys just needs to get his hit. He needs to find the KO here. A delay recovery will be enough, but look oh. how many hits he gets every single time he touches Blue Guys. He is flying around Blue Guys. He has got to find a fly swatter to take down this character because, man, Blue Guys is struggling against Vecina now. Okay, side light gets the chase, but he doesn't let the recovery rip early enough. And now he's not going to be able to get the KO. Blue Guy's still trying to hit him. Vecina doing such a great job of spacing. Hits him against the floor. He dodges down and gets a D-Light into a Nair. Blue Guy's is not getting oh. good trades. Finally gets that first stock, but he's in the orange already. That's like the first gravity cancel down light recovery know. What the heck? from Blue Guy's. <laughs> yeah, actually. But you know what? Hey, better late than never. It's like, oh, I forgot. Gauntlets. This is how you do it. But also, toss up the fake out. it's a tribute to just how uh, how good Vecina's movement has been. He doesn't really know where to place the D-Lights, I guess. I mean, Vecina, once again, is tacking on so much. So much pressure from Vecina. Already has Blue Guys in the red. Another side air, another recovery. Could take Blue Guys down to his final stock, but it'll be a ground pound. This is going to be so much more difficult for Blue Guys here. Sitting behind by an entire stock against one of South America's greatest. Really has to find something. Gets interrupted on the side. Sig by a neutral light. Hold on. This could be the turnaround. The weapon throw yet again saves Vecina oh. from what could look like certain doom. Blue Guys starting to get some good damage here. Another cannonball thrown out from Vecina. Giving him some oh. breathing room on the corner. The weapon tosses up oh. once again. You can see Blue Guys going for some reads here, doing the side airs in the other direction, expecting a cross through, but not quite getting the timing. The weapon spawn is taking its sweet time. There it is on the opposite side of the platform. He has to give up some stage control to go get it, and that gives Vecina this opportunity to get the lead again. Vecina, now he's got all the stage control. There's the side air, not quite enough. No weapon toss from Blue Guys. Gonna look for the ground oh. pound, but Vecina goes to the outside, got the wall touch. He's running out of things here. Their exclamation points were really stacking up, but still was not able to get the stock. Good dodge through, avoids the side air, ground pound, final stocks here. Can Blue Guys force this to game five? 
Okay, you need to have a, a near-perfect stock here for your blue guys. And Gauntlet's definitely a weapon that can do it. That weapon spawn, not going to make things easier for a blue guys, though. I mean, you get hit by a neutral sig, a down sig, a D-Light. So many options from Vecina are just going to take you out oh! right now. And there it is. The tentacle from down below is going to secure Vecina the win. 3-1 over blue guys. Vecina feeling good. Looks straight to the camera. Gives a double thumbs up. He's like, yeah, South America still playing strong. Yeah, no, I mean, that was... That was a great play from Vecina there. I mean, I'm still thinking about that game where Blue Guys was so close to having it. You know, that yeah. axe recovery that didn't quite send in the correct direction really could have been the difference between that being like a 2-2 two -two set, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, if, if he hit that axe recovery correctly in game two, or if he just kind of maybe played it a little safer, did something different instead of getting that axe recovery from below that ended up helping him out, I think we could have seen a completely different set where it would have been 2-1 and then Vecino would have been playing from behind. Yes, exactly, man. No, that was a great set, though. We're going to go ahead and check out some of the highlights here. I can't wait especially to see this string right here. I'm like, Blue guys, you have your dodge, right? Like, there, there was no, he just, he got carried, bro. Yeah, he's like, wait, okay, you don't so want to dodge? He's like, bro, he's like, I was he's mashing, like, yeah. bro. He's like, I was, I was mashing that button, bro. What's going on? That's what he's saying. Like, my controller, did somebody unplug it, dog? What the heck? <laughs> oh, I, got I can't believe that KO. I watched that again. I'm like, really? The double recovery is coming out. Man, Blue Guy's had so many pressure situations where he's going for these grab pads, and this is that, that game, too. Yeah, that axe recovery that ends up just giving Vecina the victory. <laughs> You know, that's that's a good way to take it, because I think a lot of people would have been, like, very upset with themselves. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm the same way. It's, it's very, oh, man, the scoop right there as well. This was such a good set, despite the fact that Blue Guys wasn't able to force the game five. We got to see so many moments of brilliance, so many quick adaptations as well. I think leaning into the gauntlets more was actually a very amazing choice. Granted, I do think that, you know, Maybe a little bit more axe into the cannon could have been helpful. It is a weapon that has these huge disjoints that makes it difficult for cannon to approach on, but it didn't really seem like blue guys were trying to run that. Yeah, it is interesting because I think if you go back and watch that set back, there was a lot of moments where Vecina would try to get something started and it would get stuffed out by the axe from blue guys, where you, like the neutral light would just get beaten out by the hitboxing. So I, if blue guys goes back and watches the replay and is like, what could I take away from that? I think that's one of the big things is, is playing the axe a little bit more into that cannon matchup. Man. I can't wait to see what else we got in store for tonight because we just we just warming up, baby. And tomorrow, Championship Sunday, dude. I I've never felt, and we say this every year. We have no idea who's gonna be the BCX champion, but th this is the most I felt it. Yeah, I know. A lot of times we, we kind of jokingly say it, like we're not actually meaning it, but now we got to sit and think about it because we're going to take a short little break. When we come back, we'll be bringing you Java versus Experience. Stick around. Did you think you could keep me out? I can't tell if you're sweating or crying. You're stronger than I thought. <laughs> I'm not cheating, you're just not trying. You're so predictable. I'm Loki, and you're the who again? Lord something? <laughs> Very good, Legends. <laughs> I think he likes you. <laughs> I'm finally 
here. Or am I? <laughs> Welcome to Brawlhalla. ガルダ。仲間が倒れたが、俺は負けない。手を貸そうか。残ってるのは俺だけだ。最後の防衛。ブラルハラへようこそ。Welcome back, everyone. We've still got some more spots left in the top 32, so we got some more gameplay that we get to bring to you. Flambo, how you feeling? I'm feeling fan freaking tastic, dude. The matches have been nothing but super hot fire. Super hot. But, you know, I love hearing your opinion. I love hearing everybody else's opinions, but I even love hearing the, the players' opinions. Okay. So, let's hear from Glitter Explosion over on the stage area. Duke is spitting bars, bringing us back into the show with those rhymes as we kick things off. But that's right, I'm on stage. Final main stage match of the night here. And I'm excited to talk to both of our players. Now, I want to ask you, because we got the chat last time around, all right, experience, and you said you were tired. And I asked you before we started this interview, are you feeling a little bit more energized this time around, especially now we're at the end of a very long day? Um, I'm more awake, but like not that much more to be honest. Like, I mean, a little bit's better than than nothing at all. Do you think you're gonna be able to at least have the energy to do well here in this final match? Because this is last opportunity for both of you. Oh yeah, no, for sure, I'm gonna win. All right, now Java, I wanna get your feelings on this too. You've been playing all day as everybody has, but we just saw you in your last match as well. It was very, very close. Now, how are you feeling? How do you reset after that to now get into the next match? Oh, yeah. I had to get up, I don't know how many people know, but I had to play 2v2 top 8 at 10 a.m. So this is about, I, I don't know, 11, 12 hours later or something. So it, it has been a long day. I took a nap in between though. Yeah, after winners, I've played some pretty crazy sets. I'm just going to play my best again. That's, a, that's definitely a long day actually. And I kind of want to talk about that because I've been asking the pros a lot for some tips or advice for potential up and coming pros when you have to have a long day like today, sometimes that's just how the tournament works, right? You said you took a nap, but do you have any other strategies at least for kind of like keeping your energy up to make it through the long hours? I think having proper warm up is important. Definitely making sure that you just allot enough time to prepare for an upcoming set no matter what and get your mental ready. After that, I think summoning the energy, if you want to win bad enough, will be possible. All right, I love to hear it. Before I send you guys off to your matches, any final words? Good luck. Uh, no, good luck. All right, we got two good lucks. I'm gonna take it. Let's get into the last match of the day, boys. <laughs> Good luck to everybody involved, but it seems like the chat says good luck to Java in particular because experience is the fan favorite at home. 
So what I like about what Java said in that interview that we just witnessed is that he said, despite having long days, one, preparation is always important. Give yourself time to warm up. But two, the thing that I actually really love about it is that he said, you can summon the energy to win if you want it bad enough, effectively, right? And so he's like, no, despite the fact that it's been a long, hard day, despite the fact that I'm tired, I've been in the trenches fighting for my bracket life, it still means that as long as you have the will to live, you can go ahead and win in this bracket. So we're gonna find out in just a moment, but we'll see, experience is tired. <laughs> I mean, it seems like both of them are tired. This is like a battle of the bedtimes right now. And, and the, like you said, the question comes down to, it seems like, who's got the will to win? Who wants it more? And we love to point that out because we always like to see hungry players. But here, it seems to ring the truest because both of them are fighting their exhaustion and for their tournament lives. Yeah, and there's a reason when you look at that trophy and the Brawlhalla logo in front of you that that sword is in flames, right? Because legends never die. And it's never die. that heat, that passion that will bring all of these players, well, not all of them, but the ones that make it to top 32, to top 32. And so we have a bit of the head-to-head -head stats here between Java and Experience. Three, I believe it was 2-5 two, two, in the favor one. of Experience. And so I can kind of understand why the vote went the way that it did. Yeah, it seems like the chat definitely had the stats pulled up and knew that Experience has the history advantage over Java. But once again, this is BCX, the world championship, where anything can happen. But right now, Java needs to pick up a weapon. Or maybe not with the way he's grabbing. <laughs> Another one spawns, though. But no, I think you're right. I mean, at this point, he's already in the orange experience. is still pummeling him. Yeah, I think having that spear now should be pretty helpful. But it might be a little too late. Already burns that dodge. And experience just waiting patiently. Java oh. finds an opening, but doesn't get the hit. No chase dodge means the stock is gone. He really wanted that Nair for the chase dodge and experience doing a really good job burning all of the movement out of Java and then staying just outside of the range of the hitboxes so that Java couldn't get the wall touch. Oh, wow, what a dodge from experience there. The spacing on that neutral stick just not quite enough. Experience, uh, despite being tired, playing very awake. I'm here with the way that he is cooking up. Java right now interrupted that neutral stick and is still going with that weapon throw as well. Java needs to muster that energy he was talking about before. I mean, he's got to summon all the energy he can right now because experience is just running over him. The adrenaline has got to be kicking. But Java comes down, hits the side sig, needs one more hit, but experience goes real high, and Java can't deny the wall touch just yet. Let's see. Goes for the down air here. Java still looking for the first stock on experience. Experience, he does the side air in the wrong direction. I think he was trying to drift back and space it properly, but didn't quite get the input correct, and it gave experience another chance to get back to the stage. That might be enough. No, not enough juice on that side air either. That down air will seal the deal, though. Java, though, warming up his hands a little bit. Going to pick his weapon. Likes to lean into the spear a little bit more for the 1v1s. Okay, let's see if he's a little oh, bit more. There. Man, experience is so confident. Just fast falling low and jumping up and grabbing someone by the legs and throwing them down toward that bottom KO box. And it's just been so tough for Java up until this point. I'm really hoping he activates soon. It's such a good call out of specifically how Java likes to play oh. cards because Java likes to do that up toss rather than hold onto the weapon and go for like Nair or Dare in response to the gauntlets. And experience is just oh my God. immediately calling that out. Oh my God, that's four side, side lights in a row. Yeah, Five yeah. side lights in a row. We're counting up here. That's a whole hand of side lights. Oh, but now Java goes over to the outside. He needs a lot more than just side lights oh to finish this stock off of experience. Okay, let's see at this point now, though, he can kind of fish for D-Light recovery if he wants to. And there's one. Goes for the dare instead because he recognized the recovery would have been, I think, just a little bit shy of getting that stock, so wanted a reset, but uh-oh. Down light. Oh, again. Hey, but it doesn't matter. The Nair still beats out Java experience, takes game number one. Man, and I'ma say, like, experience took that game one pretty convincingly. We clearly saw toward the latter half of that game, though, that Java was starting to wake up a yes. little bit again, right? I mean, the side light after side light after side light, while entertaining, because it's like, ha he's picking the same option over and over. It was for good reason. It was connecting, and clearly, he was playing this game of, he won't think I'm going to pick the same option again. And then Java was like, he's going to pick the same option again. <laughs> you know, he, he was willing to play that game and win it. And so I'm like, if you're able to make that kind of adaptation to the player that's in front of you at the start of this next game, it could very easily be a dub for Java.
And we'll see. In particular, I want to know how Java's going to respond to Three, the gauntlets two, of experience. Because one, experience's gauntlets oh. have really been the thing to pick apart Java so far. And now we have a different change of scenery as well here on the Western Air Temple, which I think, honestly, pretty good spot to go if you're Java. I mean, oh, be careful here. We got an offstage play. Touch. He's going unarmed. Doesn't want the weapon pickup. Now he's got it. Sword in hand. Oh. No. <gasps> going high. I love the decision there for the down sig. That will launch vertically, but it doesn't connect. Yeah, and it has so much coverage as well, right? That entire horizontal plane, but experience still picking the proper defensive option here. But Java looking so much more confident in this game, too. You know, the fire in Java is heating up as he is warmed up. Oh. But experience, full stop. He is a period mark, and he's just sitting in the middle. But no, for Java going to challenge him. He said, pause, and then just look. And honestly, Java was, was kind of thrown aback by it. I mean, sometimes I talk about this all the time, just not moving in Brawlhalla, a game that is so much about movement, can really trip your opponent up. Yeah, I mean, like, with the way he just completely halted, I felt like he disconnected. And so Java had to have also been like, OK, well, I'm going to sit on these platforms as you figure out what's going on. OK, but honestly, I think he might just be moving weird. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're throwing Java off. He gets that side air, and he's like, OK. I guess I have the stock lead, even though things are going a, a little bit differently than perhaps he thought it was going to look like. But experience starting to answer back here, picks up those gauntlets, is going to go start swinging, and this is going to be a good stop. There's no dodge on Java there, so that was a guaranteed three-piece straight. Yeah, experience gets some big damage here. Could easily clean this one up. Where's the recovery? Nope, Java just a little bit too high. Experience not able to connect. Let's see, the exhaustive recovery is not going to connect either. Experience looking for that final blow here. Burns the dodge. Java can go for two hits here. And honestly, he gets it. Yeah, nice. But a good ground pound from Experience evens that one up. What is the answer going to be here from Java? He's looking for that weapon spawn. It's on the left side of the stage. He punches Experience to clear the way, but doesn't go for the weapon. Goes high, and Experience oh. cooks him for it. Does he have the movement? Gets to the wall. Experience not able to complete the edge guard. Yeah, and Experience was even assuming that Java's going to immediately try to dash up onto the stage. He did an immediate jump near to try to catch Java going up, but Java waited. He was smarter. Dude, oh. Experience, though, he's just like, come at me. He does the spot dodge and light. Java eats the weapon toss, but he'll still get the wall touch. Ooh, goes for the ground pound as well. Java just resets, wants to gain some space on the stage there. And here we have a moment where he could get something. I love the dash to center stage, right? Make it look like you're giving up space and then immediately turns around, dashes in with that D-Light and secures the knockout. And that high movement speed and great recognition of where that D-Light hit because he didn't jump and end up whiffing that side air. Weapon toss up. Neutral air, not going to connect. Wow, great spacing from experience to not get caught by that spear recovery. Oh. And it better intercept on the recovery from Java there. I mean, experience is looking so good. But granted, we do have ourselves a tight battle. Java making this second game a whole lot more competitive. I really feel like experience has Java's number in the off stage, But when it comes to on stage, Java might have a solid chance. Puts experience onto the platform, but experience gets back up. Oh, hold on. Huge oh, turnaround. No. Twinkle Still toes. Touch. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. Wait, he's sweat beating. Pogo. He's still touched. He doesn't get the Pogo in time, and he gives Experience the ability to refresh everything that he had. And now Experience is taking his turn, and Java doesn't want any oh. of this smoke. Red and that should drop. be the stock one ground pound. He no, he doesn't go off stage. He sends him into the stage as well. Why did he not go for it? Nobody knows, but now they're both on the stage here. That could have gone either way, but they just didn't close out the edge guards, Duke. Oh my goodness, both of them. Playing so narrowly, but able to get back up safely. Sword versus Scythe now. Java might be looking for a downlight recovery experience. Throwing out some hitboxes, wants the heavy hit. Oh, he's throwing out some signatures That's here. Neutral six. Uh -oh. Uh oh, got the recovery. Recovery, and that'll do it. Java gonna take game number two. All right, that one was looking a little scary there. There was a moment where I was really fearful for Java there. We all saw that sequence from experience with the reverse nair into the wall, thrown to the right side of the stage. and. Burned all of the off. We saw the sweat beats on Java as he was drifting into the stage, but Experience decided, no, I'm not going to go for that ground pound now. I'm going to instead maybe go for the follow up after the wild touch. Couldn't quite convert the edge guard, and Java was able to sneak back into that game and manage to seal the deal.
It really felt like, for me, game two was experience almost completing the puzzle of how to beat Java with Scythe in the offstage. And he's just missing that final piece to complete the stock. Because there was twice yes. where he had a big edge guard, and Java's just like, look, I'm Hattori. I got so much movement speed. I just hold right, I get back to the wall. And a completely different game than the first one as well. I mean, even looking at the damage numbers, Java, a sword main for this game, right? But also experience leaning into the Scythe. In that game one, we saw a whole lot more of the gauntlets from experience. And so now, he's basically Primed three, both of his weapons. Two, Going into this game one, three, roll. he knows what to do with each weapon in every scenario. He's tried the both out. He knows what works and what doesn't. So Java has to be careful. He's got the weapon sampler, and now he knows which one he wants to pick the next time he goes to the restaurant. But oh, weapon we got toss, caught. dare, experience, can't touch Java with an explosive start to game three. Yeah, getting your recovery caught like that so early in your sequence to make it back to the stage can spell certain doom. It doesn't matter if you don't have a whole lot of damage racked up because it's just such a useful tool in terms of being able to get that verticality and experience loses that sock because of it. Completely stuffing that out, and now experience with a massive deficit. Ooh, 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 ooh. Out the back step, down light neutral sig because that was a burn dodge from experience. That was amazing. I mean, he really looked at him like <laughs> Obi Wan Kenobi. He said, I got the high ground. He's like, oh, I'm going to take that step back. Yes, sir. I'm going to go ahead and send you to the right side. But despite that, no stock taken. Experience trying to swing back here. A whole stock behind in the orange. Java just goes for the oh, deal. Like, goes on triple, the platform oh. as well. He was trying to test him, bro. He's like, Why aren't you dodging, bro? Press the button. Like, you don't think I'm going to go for extra, but Experience manages to dodge in time. But, man, look at how much damage he's eaten on his second stock. Java's still on his first. Well, yeah, I mean, Experience was on the other side of the stage for that end though. Who really was <laughs> expecting a dash, and Experience just looked at him. And there we go again. Experience doing the no mix-up. Mix-up. Where am I going? The answer is nowhere. And for some reason, Java's getting extremely tripped up by it. He's a stationary target. I mean, it's uncomfortable, like you said, in a game like Brahalla where movement is so important, to suddenly stop and not move can really feel awkward to play against. It's just, it, it's it's the rhythm, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, oh man, can you dance on beat or not? We're hitting the cha-cha slide and you're just completely on the wrong dance move. It's not even that, it's like that you just cut the music out, right? Yeah. Like you just, <laughs> oh, okay, I guess we're not doing that right now, but great start Ooh. for Java on this final stock of experience here in game number three. Misses the nair, Java. Able to get back to the wall safely. Okay, and experience now kind of getting dissected a bit by Java. That's almost a punish, but the gravity cancel leaves him just high enough that he doesn't get caught by that slide kick. And now experience, I mean, really on the back foot here, has to get this first stock but can't find the blow. Oh my it's a lens sig. That's a burn dodge. Experience with the recovery, not quite enough. Downlight doesn't hit the recovery. Dropping them true conversions. That's not what you want to see in game three. And there we go. The no mix up. Mix up again from experience. Just hitting that stutter step and stopping altogether. Finally getting that first stock off of Java, but still has more work to do here. Now we saw that Scythe almost be brilliant in the last game. If he was able to get one of those sequences again, but actually convert the stock, we could have an even game. It's again experience. Oh, nice. Just hang in there. Trying to make Java make that forward movement. Good jump over the downline. Downline recovery, not quite enough. Oh, Java's unarmed. Oh. Another dare. Gravity cancel side six gonna whiff, and Java goes for the turnaround. It's final stocks. Yeah, Java, I think, just trying to end the game right there, kind of gives up a stock relatively for free because Experience did not get the read proper on that side sequence. But despite that, still one D-Light conversion away if he wants to end light and just force Experience off stage. A side air will do as well. He can keep resetting the scenario. Eventually, he will chip Experience to his final stock loss. I mean, it's just a matter of time. Java could add up the damage, but uh -oh. Experience, once again, starting a big side string. All right, one more side air will do it, and end light in the corner from Java will do it as well. He's not going to go off stage. There's no reason to. Doesn't want to get caught by the reverse nair from experience, but an end light will close out the game. The nair isn't enough. Side light, not going to do it. Not a lot of force on that one. Experience, one more wall touch. Can he get back up safely? Can he, can he turn this around? Oh, he got caught by the reverse nair. But no dodge from Java. He just swings back, and he's going to get himself the game 2-1. And one thing I do love about the way Java's playing into Scythe in these scenarios is that he got sent down to last stock. He'll get caught by experience, and he'll just swing out of his zone. One of the best defensive options you can do against Scythe is not dodge. It's just to swing after they hit you, because if you dodge, that's exactly what they want. That's Three, where they practice two, all one, of their flowchart options. If you just swing, suddenly they get taken aback. Well, here we go. Into game number four, experience. One game away from getting knocked out, because I believe they're both on the elimination side. Ooh, 
this is going to be a tough one. Java trying to regain his bearings here. I mean, has the lead in the set experience. He was looking so strong in that game one. And we saw those gauntlets really go off, but now he's been almost exclusively leaning into the scythe. And we've seen some great moments, but I'm wondering why he's not doing a little bit more of a switch up. I guess he's really confident in his scythe gameplay and not for bad reason either. He just needs to close some of these stocks out. Yeah, it really feels like he took game two and was like, okay, I'm just going to make that slight adjustment into game number three. And you started to see that come alive, but he just was doing it a little bit too late. Now we're here in game number four, and it seems like it's all about the scythe right now. There oh. misses, and Java can't get the wall touch. Okay, and Experience definitely happy about that one. Something that's been really hard for Experience to deal with has been the speed of Hitori. There are so many moments where he's able to bait out all these options and he's trying to catch Java on the landing and he's able to just drift just far enough outside of the range of a Scythe Neutralite that Experience is unable to capitalize. Sig thrown out, side Sig thrown out, but still not quite enough to finish off Experience. He's gonna come back down. Java gives him a lot up. of breathing room on that landing. Ooh, okay, hits that back step one more time into the poof. And then suddenly there is a spear coming under and just taking your stock away. That is going to be a tied game between Java and Experience. We were talking about before that Experience has the, uh, quite a bit of an edge in the head-to-head -head here, but today might be a day where Java puts that three on the board. Man, we keep saying it's the world championship. Anything can happen, upsets can happen. Experience, though, wants to make sure that it doesn't happen here. Ooh, and he's trying to get closer to Java. Java's doing such a great job of backing off. You see Experience is like, all right, you're going to keep running, bro. I'm not going to move. And I'm like, bet, bro, get frustrated. But Java's going to take all the free damage. You have to catch him. He's not just going to let you hit him. Yeah, I mean, you can go ahead and do the uh, no movement move, but you also have to be ready for the approach from Java. Java comes back down. He's getting some decent damage here onto Experience. Experience not winning out in the edge guard where he was before. Okay, but this is still a close game, all things considered here. Java with a slight edge. We're going to swap back over to the side. Yes, waits a little bit because he doesn't want to try to pick up the gauntlets by accident. So he has to wait for them to despawn before picking up that side. said, all right, bro. I'll watch. <laughs> this is my favorite episode, bro. I got this on the side monitor and we're chilling. Okay, Nair falls down. Experience with the weapon advantage. Doesn't hit the side light. Java able to spot dodge through it. Has him off stage. No weapon toss, not yet. Ah, this is the bear. Yeah, he just fastballs a little bit too low, and that causes Java to have a chance to sneak back onto the stage. But the idea was correct. Pummel getting some good damage. Needs that big hit, though. Neutral light going to launch, but it's not going to KO. That's new gauntlets. Why are you <laughs> emoting it? Because he was like, remember when that would have KO? <laughs> That's what he was saying with that Pretty one. Good. Yo, okay, the salt. Statement. Let's see. But he still gets back safely. Java does not care, but experience th third time is the charm. All right, hitting him with the Wahoo. He's trying to send some mental signals, some subliminal messages. It's funny because online, that's like one of the most disrespectful emotes. But here it's like, okay, you didn't take the time to change your emotes. <laughs> yeah, for real. But come on, man. Get the salt shaker on deck. Nice catch from Java, but it's not enough to get the KO. Experience pretty happy about that. Going to go to the corner because he wants Java to go off stage with him. Doesn't get the correct side on that neutral light, but that could have been a great potential to set up for an edge guard. Still manages to get back to the stage safely. He's going to add up extra damage here. This is boding well for Experience, uh -oh. forcing that game five. Ground pound thrown out. Hasn't touched the wall in a hot minute, but there's the recovery from Java. Final stocks here, game four. And we're watching Experience hold the corner a lot more. Really reminiscent of an earlier set I saw today with Fridasol and XJ Cool J, where he just kind of slowed things down to a crawl. And honestly, historically speaking, Experience kind of used to do this. You yeah. know, before Wall Slip Chain just came in, he would just hold that corner and wait. He was more than willing to really slow things down. And against someone like Java, who's on this high movement speed character, they generally don't want that to happen. Let's see, back on the scythe now, has the damage lead as well. I mean, at this point, a sig from Mordex will KO Hattori. Bacon for the offstage, the down air keeps Java in the Ooh. open air, misses the down light though. Ooh. Down sig misses. Has to be careful here, has no dodge. Goes low because he doesn't want to get caught by Java on the way back. That's going to be a turnaround down here. Awesome. Weapon throw's not good enough. Grab cancel. Right. There it is, and that's going to be the game. Experience taking game number four with the GC D-Light into the ground pound, recognizing what his win condition was, and Java unfortunately falling right for it. Yeah, really well done from Experience on that edge card. Do we had the distance, went for the weapon toss where he's kind of been reserved with that. And then he was like, okay, I'm forcing out all these options. You're gonna have to go to the wall, down like ground pound to complete the KO. And he's forced to game five here. <laughs>
<laughs> Just had to let him know, you know, but then the turnaround side air and then you had to make it back. It was it was such a scramble, right? They've been having so many scrambles off stage in terms of like guaranteed clean edge guards. There have been so few, but in that final moment, their experience was able to clutch it out. He did what he needed to do, but can he do it one more time? This is to determine who's going to go onto the elimination side. Top 32, Three, Java two, or Experience, one, game five. Now we're going back to the Western Air Temple, and this is such a good spear stage, right? And so for Java, going here has to be a, a pretty good option, I have to say. I understand why he's bringing it here. I mean, look at all of this, right? Guess the chains with the D-Lights has so much damage racked up. Experience, though, has to run at him because he has the damage deficit. Oh. Another Pogo. Experience still getting the wall touch. Has him in the open air, but Java fights oh. back with an air. Experience can't get the reads. That side take is not going to be enough, but almost is. And that side air is going to close it out. And Experience is trailing behind. Java has effectively two-thirds of a stock to work with. Now, this is a big lead for, a, uh, for Java. Experience likely wants the scythe. That's what worked so well in game number two, where Java had that big lead. Or actually, those game three thing. Oh, and I can feel the stage really playing a factor into this final game here. And Experience is having a tougher time trying to force Java to be where he wants him to be. The dash landings on the platforms really making things silly. And Experience trying to use them to his own advantage there. Manages to get that Ooh. down here because of it. And this recovery. Oh, the dodge through. Java does just enough to get past. Down air. Weapon throw. Still out there. there There's a weapon toss. It'll hit. Experience. Ah, oh, the so weapon smart. toss from Java covers his head so he gets back safely. And then, you know, Experience did all the right things there. Yep. <laughs> you know, I really, I don't have any criticisms for anything he did there. Java just had a fantastic defensive play to make sure that he kept this stock. Uh-oh. Are you going, Experience? Recovery from deep. How low can you go? All right, that down light is going to be enough to get Java and only, you know, light yellow for experience. So it didn't take too much damage here. Has these gauntlets in hand. We haven't seen too much of them in the like, later games in the set, but here, going to play into them a little bit, but it's going to be against the spear. So if he misses any side light, Java gets a free D light as a punish. Got to be careful here. Trying to approach onto Java. Misses the down air, misses another one. Java doesn't find the dodge read. There's just a spot dodge, but Java not able to react in time. Okay, and he's gonna go ahead and recover high there. Gets thrown down, goes for the guaranteed conversion with that gravity cancel and light. Look at the movement from Java. Hold on, it's hard to track. Experience knows it. Might start using those weapon throws to kind of use as a stutter step to see if he can try to hold Java down. Yeah, that's actually kind of crazy that Java ate two hits and was like, okay, time to dash land. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Ooh, another snare. Java picking apart experience. Down air, experience gets past though. Java still scrapping. Immediately going for these reversals. I mean, Experience knows what he wants here. And there's been so many times he's gone for that final gravity cancel D-Light off stage, and it just barely misses Java. Either he dashes at the right time or it's not quite at the right height. But if he's able to get it, I mean, that'll be the difference maker. At this point, this could potentially be Experience's final stock here at the Brawlhalla World Championships if he's not able to make the comeback against Java now. It would be a massive comeback for experience if he can do it oh. with Java. Oh. Really trying to deny it. Experience going out wide, gets past him. Okay, going for the scythe here. He knows what weapon he oh. wants to try to do this. That end sync was almost perfect, but it doesn't find the mark. Java getting little bits of extra damage. Experience can't seem to find the opening. Experience not finding any hits. Just off the mark with that recovery. Down air, recovery misses. Java once again finding hits onto experience. Oh, needs something. Oh, that's oh. a beautiful conversion. A gravity cancel at end light halfway off the stage into a recovery to secure that stock. And we have effectively a tie game here. He had to dig deep in the bag of tricks for that one. That was something he had not thrown out at all until just now. All right, let's see that confidence we saw from Experience before Yo. because Jabba Yo. is chasing him. What a turnaround from Experience. Gets pogoed out here, but he's in the red. If Jabba gets any signature, that's pretty much going to be it for Experience. He has to get the perfect string, the perfect sequence. Jabba was sweat beating, but he got the wall touch. That recovery, the side air. Experience is out of there. Jabba going into the top 32. Man, and that side air just barely hit hard enough. I thought Experience might be able to drift back onto the stage and get another shot, but just not quite enough defense. That's going to be a sad one for Experience, but we have to give a hearty congratulations to Java for pushing on forward.
really well played from Java, was able to make the adaptations. I think he pointed it out so well. Going to Western Air Temple, a spear favored map, really played to Java, because you saw him pick up the spear and immediately go to town. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's part of the way the flow of these games go, right? It's why winning game three is so important, but it's also why even if you lose game four, that counter pick advantage from just the fact that you won beforehand can really, really help in terms of making sure that you can close out these sets. There you see in the final stats, 458 put out on the Spear of Java. It was all about that Spear. Just like that, I want to go ahead and see what our bestest friend in the world, Sheepy, has to say about all the <laughs> things that we saw there. Oh, you are too sweet. Man, I, I was sitting backstage. I, I'll be real. I was rooting for experience. We, we love to see, like, when he is on and he's going through it, like, we've seen him done a great elimination bracket run before. And so, so my heart breaks, but Java just... He just outplayed. Like, you know, you, it's literally what you guys talked about, the map pick with Western Air Temple and his spear play. Oh, my God. Literally, when they were up in the air, I was like, oh, no. What is going to happen? Where are you going? Like, <laughs> I was sitting here at the desk just like, what is going on? And uh, it hurts. I, I don't know what else to say. I'm almost speechless because it hurts because you, you want to see, of course, everyone do well and, and, you know, keep going through the tournament. But there's got to be someone who moves through, and that is Java, top 32. He is, he is now in, and I believe we have our, our complete set here of top 32. I'm gonna, I wanna just very, very briefly, very See, briefly just go through who they are, just so you know, just in case you're not looking at the bracket, which you should. Explanation my bracket. Okay, I'm just saying. But on the winner side, for top 32 in singles, we got Godly, Zen, Meg D, Peer, Bunny, Fiend, Loris, Impala, Kaina, Mjolnir, uh, can't, oh, I, I'm Munir. so, M Munir. Okay, I yes. always say, I always yeah. mess that up. That's my fault though. Sarme, Skeldra, Sandstorm, Anime, Knees, Use. That's all on the winner side. That is a crazy list of names I just named. But wait a minute. There's more. There's more because Ooh. on the elimination side, wait a minute. We have XJ, Cool J, Stingray, Walshy, Java, Luna, Escrape, Acno, Phazon, Snowy, Seabass, Vecina, Delta, Costalix, Jester, Truck Stop Burrito, and Blaze. Hello? Wow. I, I'm, I'm just saying, just some of these names I'm, I'm already mentioning, this is your top 32 bracket. It's going to be crazy for tomorrow. Like, I don't know who's going to take it legitimately. And that is probably the most exciting thing. I know I keep saying that over and over, but I love it. We, um, we, we love it. You, you set it up so incredibly well. This bracket is so stacked, and the, the mystery of who's gonna win it all will be determined tomorrow with our World Championship Finals. If you're at home and you're like, oh, but I, I, gotta, I gotta go to my cousin's baptism, just, she doesn't matter, <laughs> it's, a, it's fine. This is the World Championship. It's more important than your cousin, okay? Okay, well, what an incredible turnout from our competitors. Seriously, what amazing matches today. Now, guys, this is probably going to be really hard to answer, but I got to ask you, what do you think will be the best part of today from what you've seen? Like, all of the matches you saw today, what would have been the best in the singles competition? Let me start with... Lambo here. So today was a really great day. I think one of the standouts for me is actually Flower, despite not making it all the way into the top 32, was able, I mean, Boomy, that set with Flower and Boomy, ridiculous, the set with Flower and Snowy, someone that, you know, people have probably slept on for a while. He said even last year that he was going to show up to BCX and do some damage, and that's exactly what we saw. That kid is absolutely phenomenal. I can not wait to see more of him. Yeah, I think I think you hit the the nail on the head with the flower call out because you know that something big has happened when I'm walking around. I'm like going over to the metal detectors just to hang out. I'm just walking around checking things out. Hang out and, the metal yeah, detectors. You know, it's just, that's where the cool kids hang out. But that's like you hear everybody walking in like, hey, have you heard about this flower guy? Have you heard about what happened? He took out Boomy. Oh my goodness. But also on that note, Bunny is another one of the big yes. call outs for me. Bunny playing out of his mind. Yeah, he beat Luna. He beat my guy. But then he continued on and he showed, you know what? He's not. It wasn't a fluke. He's not a one-timer. He ended up getting to the top 32. Well, I got to say, those are some 
fantastic matches that you guys just mentioned completely. Now, let's talk about tomorrow, okay? So we kick things off tomorrow with our doubles top four, okay? So we're going to do doubles first, doubles top four. So here's a look at our first three matches and oh my god <laughs> we have zen godly versus made and experience and yes this is on the winner side this is winter finals for doubles top four uh duke thoughts about these next couple matches here? um all i'm saying is like if zen godly wins that's still a win for na we take that one that that's that you see the american flag is the higher <laughs> one that's our guy ah. okay so that's still for 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 north america so that's a north america dub oh okay yeah. flambo yeah. thoughts <laughs> I, you know i'm kind of in agreement with <laughs> on okay that one. actually yeah i mean eu can't do it on their own yeah. You know, I'm just saying, if y'all gonna do it, if y'all gonna claim it, y'all gotta do it with two dudes from EU. You can't poach one of our guys and then be like, we're the best at 2v2. I'm gonna leave it at that, bro. Look, I'm just saying, Agno Blaze is there. You know, I'm just saying, that's just look, look, if you're rooting for EU, look right there. All right, so day two is in the books, y'all. We've seen, we've still got one more entire day to go. And of course, it's Championship Sunday. So be sure to mark your calendar, set your clocks, and tune in for all the official BCX coverage. You can see it right here on your screen. Twitch.tv slash Brahala. It's the mainstream A stream. Twitch.tv slash Pro Brahala is the side stream, B stream. And you don't want to miss that either because they have some incredible matches and, of course, more incredible talent there as well. And they've been doing fantastic. So there's so many places to watch. You don't want to miss out, okay? And... I bet some of y'all might not have remembered this, so Mama Sheepy is looking out for you, okay? So as a kind reminder, tomorrow, you're gonna need to set your clocks, okay, back tonight because it's daylight savings. And that takes into, that goes into effect at 2 a.m. Eastern time. Now, most people's phones and watches will probably automatically set, but I'm just letting you know, there is a time change, all right? So don't, don't forget, don't forget. Now, I want to grab y'all's final, final thoughts as we wrap up on day two, Duke. I wish I had a million heads and could watch a million different things because there's so much amazing action that happens over on the side stream. There's so much amazing action that happens over here when I'm busy hanging out at the metal detectors, which again is where the cool people hang out. But there's just so much because there's, there's matches that were happening over there that I was like, man, I wish I could be in the pit watching that, hearing what's happening over there. But I'm so glad that we're going into the final Sunday where everything's going to be happening in this auditorium where you get to sit down watch and feel all that energy all i gotta say is we got scaldra and we got use in the top 32 <laughs> great sword representation we're gonna have a great sword in top eight it's gonna happen i'm calling it here i don't know if they're gonna win the whole thing if they are they're just better than everyone else i'm just saying it but <laughs> otherwise i just want to make sure that my boys get the proper credit because they are absolutely slaying it out there i can't wait to watch tomorrow it's gonna be such a fantastic time tomorrow so guys Today has been such a wild ride for the competitors and honestly even for us too, the talent. We've seen upsets, domination, and close calls. Remember, you can watch along and engage with us on Twitch and socials like we want to see your viewing setup. So be sure to tweet us using the hashtag ECX2023. We want to know how you're watching, how you're tuning in, all that good stuff, okay? But that's going to do it for us today on day two of BCX. But we've still got one more amazing final day to go. Who will be our doubles and singles champion for 2023 and claim that BCX 2023 Man, trophy and prize that. money? Find out tomorrow with us live at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time right here on twitch.tv slash Brahala. Until next time. Here are the sights and sounds of BCX 2023 Day 2 coverage. Good night, everyone. Kinda just refusing to give this one away. It is his game to lose the way he's been playing. Uh -oh. So he wanted the more, bro. He is really living in the moment. Money Hall taking 3-0 over Cody. That was a good
good as that can get it. Oh, wait, but that's actually get the ball over that time. That's gonna KO Flowey, taking it. He played incredible Snowy, did exactly what he needed to do. They have done so well because look at what he is capable of. Anime though does land. This is the ground pound connect. Anime clutches game five. Is this Bunny's just best performance ever? Throughout that entire final game, it was destruction. I want to call out like what he's doing, but then all of a sudden he starts doing something else. What are we doing?